The feedback from the competitors has always been the heart and soul of how Norwalk has changed. Having the builders first, I think will always be our top priority. They are the bread and butter of this tournament. Without them, we'd be nothing. NHRL is controlled chaos. Uh, I would say it's mostly controlled chaos. It's the most glorious thing you can ever lay eyes on. This is a place to have fun and compete and learn, and that's for everyone. This is mayhem, this is carnage, this is madness, and I love it. If you're gonna fly to the U.S. to fight, it's gonna be a big event. I think Norwalk Havoc is the best organized competition that I've been into, that I've seen. So that, that's why we're here. It's gonna, it's gonna be fun. We're always trying to make it inclusive and comfortable place to fight. Just come and have fun. That's all. Good morning and welcome to beautiful Norwalk, Connecticut for the September edition of Norwalk Havoc. My name is Luke Stangle. Joining me here in the broadcasting booth is my best friend and brother-in-law, Chris DeSico. Hello, Chris. Good morning, Luke. Chris, uh, I am so excited for the action here today. This is going to be our biggest event, probably our longest event. Yeah. And uh, we are going to be seeing so many fights today. I th yeah, H hundreds. Hundreds. All right, let's take a quick look at today's agenda. There, we're, we're going to be fighting more than 230 fights today across six cages. There are 90 beetle weights in the field today, our highest number ever. There are 20 12 pounders, also our largest field of 12 pounders ever. 118 robots are going to be fighting today in this one day tournament. They are battling for a spot in the December championship. Now, speaking of December, this is a list of robots that we are watching today in the field. In the three pounders, we have Shredded Bro, Sepial, Project Liftoff, Fully Defined, and Voxel. These are top ranked, very good robots. We've seen them fight many times here. Before. Who have not yet qualified for They're December, but they belong qualified. there. Yeah, exactly. This is uh, this is ranked at, you know, this is listed by rank. You know, Shredded Bro is at the top. He has yet to qualify, which is pretty, pretty, uh, pretty unusual. I mean, Evan has qualified multiple, uh, multiple years in a row. Uh, you also see two WPI robots here, Sepial and Fully Defined. I'm really going to be watching that. In the 12s, it's going to be Huge, Disco, Bugsby, and Kemenote. Really interesting list here. Huge and Disco are run by the Dorfler brothers, who are also running uh, other Disco in the 30s. Um, you know, these, these are the robots really to watch as we go through the bracket here today. All right, let's take a quick tour of the facility. Chris, what do you think? It's our production room. Hello, production staff. My goodness, it's the people who make it happen. All right. This is the Steel Arena, Chris. These are cages one through four, and uh, we are going to be fighting 12s, 30s, and Beatles here. Look at that pristine floor. Oh, my gosh, it's brand new. Um, we're going to be fighting a, fighting a, you know, robot fight here in just a second here in Cage 2. Let's go over the Titanium stage. Chris, tell us about the Titanium stage. So, Titanium stage, it's uh, boxes uh, 5 and 6. It's right there adjacent to the VIP lounge area. Uh, and so, we have even more boxes here so that we can get through even more of these fights. Uh, no matter where you're standing, somewhere here in Norwalk, you're, you're watching bot action. Now this is where the magic happens. This is the pits. There are more than 100 builders up there frantically trying to get ready for their round one fights, which are going to kick off here in just a moment. Here's our shop, and uh, run by Ed, and uh, this is where you go if you need uh, some serious, I guess, bot surgery. You yeah, know? yeah, triage. You get dismantled in your fight, you take it back to Ed, and he works his magic. I will tell you, Ed, I saw something very cool last night. Um, Christian Cooper from Team Ribot on BattleBots was back there and he brought one of Ribot's massive uh, weapon discs. Yeah. And it had been bent like in one of its fights. It had been taco. Taco. And he was using this like industrial strength like press up there to like put literally like exert tons of force yeah. to try and bend it. It's like 80 tons. Yeah. 
Mm. Um, all right, let's check in here with your wife, Chris. Oh, hello, wife. Oh, hello. Hi, how are you doing today? Uh, I am super excited. We had a chance to go through the pits last night, a little today, and see all of the new bots. I am so excited. There's going to be a full day here. And if you're watching at home, which I suppose if you're seeing this right now, you are, uh, you should hop into the YouTube live chat because we are in there. There's so many people from all over the world, all over the country. If you can think it, someone is from there in the chat and we're talking about all kinds of things. So speaking of people from all over the world, look at this. So this is regarding our builders. Teams have traveled a total of 44,750 miles to compete here in Norwalk, Connecticut. And that's one way. So if you can do a little math, you can figure out what the round trip is. Um, so that's equivalent of almost twice around the circumference of the Earth just to be here fighting robots with us. So like, subscribe, follow, because uh, we're going to be here all day. Awesome. We've got robots here today from Mexico, from Canada, from Scotland, mm -hmm. and of course all over the U.S. We have people who have flown here from the West Coast to come here and fight. And uh, you're going to be seeing a lot of really famous builders here today, people who've made their names here at Norwalk and also elsewhere. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, very, very exciting. All right. Uh, I see that uh, we are prepping Cage 2. I can see them loading in. The bee's knees versus Zach. I love it, Chris, whenever uh, whenever they name a robot after just somebody's first name, like Zach. <laughs> yes, you know? Bob Bob is a, Bob. a deadly a deadly bot. Zach. And listen, if, if you're disappointed in your robot's performance, just Zachary, you know? Oh. Zachary, I expected more. <laughs> I expected better performance, Zachary. Uh. You know? All right, uh, the cage is locked. Let's go to this first fight. Very exciting, my goodness. Getting started with action immediately. We see some brand new uh, house bots that just oh, came yeah. out of the shop for... Oh, Brett is looking zippy. For Look our, at that. Yeah, September event. Look at that. Wow. Doing All a little right. Tokyo drifting right there. So in the pink corner, we have the bee's knees, and in the blue corner, we have Zach. Zach and the Beast Knees, it sounds like an indie band, Chris. Yeah, I saw them in Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it was a free show back then, yeah. Oh my gosh, look at this! Oh, no way! This is the team behind War EZ on BattleBots. And this, look at this tiny little driver, I love it! Wait, Zach, is, this is the five-year-old, is this right? I believe so. Oh my gosh, I love it. Okay, we're starting right off here with a fight with a kid. I love it. Amazing. Zach versus the bee's knees. Sounds like a children's book. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right, looks like the, uh, the drivers are all set. Eight. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robots, fight. All right, first fight of the day, Luke. Good speed, right out of the box. Oh! Zach, this massive black egg beater here. The Beast Knees is running a, uh, a horizontal. Wow, look at this. Really successfully getting Zach into the pink corner. Oh, boy. Zach is having a little bit of trouble staying squared up with his opponent. Running there into the uh, into the rail. Not afraid to go weapon to weapon there. Absolutely. Wow, oh, good little pop there from the bee's knees. What you're seeing from the bee's knees is really controlled driving, just these tiny little motions, staying very close to his opponent, landing good pins. But I'm gonna give it to Zach. He's really hung in there. I mean, like this, uh, this is a very tough little robot. Oh, two minutes left in this fight. The Beast Knees is just showing incredible drive here. Yeah, despite being up against a, you know, a four wheel drive, it's, it's definitely winning the ground game here. Oh, there's 
there's a big hit. Big hit there. Yeah, you would say, you know, like, um, there's, there's kind of three major pillars of combat robotics, you know, aggression, drive, control. Drive here really is amazing. Wow, all right, Zach landing a huge hit on the bee's knees. And it looks like the power is off on the bee's knees. The bee's oh, knees, wow. it's not moving. Wow, for the first half of this fight, they were dominating. The bee's knees is dying. Oh, I hear a count out. That. Two, one. Wow. That's a knockout. Wow. Zach hung in there, winning his first match here at Norwalk Havoc. Knockout. Incredible. The awesome. Is the bee's knees. The winner there was Zach. Definitely Zach. Yeah. <laughs> it was a Zach attack. That was a Zach attack. Wow. Incredible. <laughs> Wow, and uh, like having to stand up on that full, like that stool to like get a view into the box. I it love was, that. It's just an intimidation factor. <laughs> you know? Listen, like when you do it, yeah, people really start to worry. Oh well, I kind of worry when I'm also up on a stool too. <laughs> I'm, my Amazing. balance, you know. Now that fight was really about durability. Yeah. You know, Zach hung in there and uh, really was m managed to land enough good hits and just turn off the the, the power on yep. the bee's knees. Amazing. Yeah, it's 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 one of those uh, reasons why like you never give up. You always keep pushing. All right, we're gonna go to another fight here. Flash in three. versus Wormhole. Ah, uh, Wormhole, Steven Bogus, one of our favorite builders. Wormhole made the highlight reel earlier Eight, this year by seven, being burnt to a crisp six, by, by mixtape. Oh my goodness, four, that was three, hot, hot, hot. Two, Let's hope one, Flash doesn't have fight. any fire Robots in it. Robots fight. <laughs> wow, okay, it looks like Flash might be a front hinge flipper. Facing off against Wormhole. Ooh, now, Wormhole oh, a there's a belt. Oh, wow, look at that. Wow. This is the big thing that Steven was working on in the offseason, trying not to lose his belts. Now they are both push bots here, and it's going to come down to uh, driving. But it does it does look like Flash is down to one wheel. Yeah, that's right. That right side wheel's been ripped off of Flash. Not so fast anymore, Chris. Two minutes and 15 seconds left in this match, and it's going to be... Uh, it's going to be kind of a shoving match, but Chris, not too much shoving. Chris, that was a shoving. superhero joke. Because the Flash is fast. Sorry, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not that quick. <laughs> Good job. Um, Steven Boggess, one of my favorite builders. Uh, one of the best things about Wormhole is just this constant iteration. Every time I see Wormhole, this horizontal here, this big black horizontal, you know, you see something new, something different. And um, one of the big things he was working on was really that belt reliability because we saw it get twisted off in, in fights, uh, you know, uh, two months ago here at Norwalk. And if any type of bot is really going to test uh, your weapon and its durability, it's going to be a front wedge. Yeah, that's right. I am yeah. seeing a little bit of smoke coming out of the flash. Got to wonder if maybe one of those speed controllers burnt out. Oh, and here's a here I see I hear a Ooh. count. All right, we have 75 seconds left. They're calling for motion on the flash. They're gonna get a little nudge here from our house bot, Brett. Brett is going in there. Oh to wait, see. no, this is Bert. We're in cage three of the Steel Arena. Bert, I'm hearing the count out. It's happening for Flash. Three, two, one. That knockout. is it. That is a knockout for knockout. Wormhole. The winner is Wormhole. All right, good job, Wormhole. All right, we're seeing the uh, the driver here of Flash. There's Steven Bogus. There, victorious, winning his first match of the day. Round of applause. Amazing. Okay. Now, uh, in that fight, you know, one of the one of the challenges was that that belt got ripped off almost immediately. Right. I was really looking forward to seeing, you know, the the improvements to his weapon. There we go. There's the Bogus family. Love it. All right, and we're going to go back over to Cage 2. We are loading in. This is Killer Angel versus Impact Crater. Killer Angel here is going to be in the pink corner, and Impact Crater here in blue. 
Now, Killer Angel, you know, uh, the, the, the big takeaway that I had for Killer Angel last, uh, last time I saw it in the box, just beautiful styling, you know, like you've got those the angel wings on the top of the robot, mm. and um, just like a really powerful weapon, good build quality. Um, so yeah, really, really looking forward to seeing Killer Angel's performance here. All right. Wow, the stands are filling up. I love it. Hello, hello, audience. My goodness. Hi. Look at all these people already. Sawblaze is best, Blaze. My goodness. <laughs> I absolutely agree. Yeah. We we are Sawblaze stands here. Sawbays, they're called. Sawbays. Sawbays. Yes. That's yeah. right. Mm -hmm. I think Jameson Go is also here today in the upstairs in the pits. I believe so. Gosh. Yeah, this is great. Two fights, two knockouts. We're kicking off uh, September with some um, some great action. Yeah, typically we send it to the judges a lot here in these early rounds. I'm sure we'll get to them eventually. Yeah. If not, we'll let them sleep in a little bit because I'm sure it's going to be a long day. Yeah, that's right. Uh, while they're getting their robots ready, let's see if, uh, let's see if this works. They're going to do a little twitch test. Killer Angel, and, uh, kind of inauspicious start here. All right, taking out their weapon locks. All right, you can hear their ESCs. Now they're, uh, they've made connection with their, uh, with their transmitters. That's a good sign. Can Killer Angel make it over to the pink square? Oh, there, there we, we go. go. It's mobile. Love that. Vertical versus vertical here. We've got Killer Angel here with the angel wings in pink. And uh, over there in the blue corner is Impact Crater. So we have the, the classic matchup of Forks versus Wedge. Impact Crater versus Killer Angel. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robots fight. All right, good speed right there oh. from Impact Crater crossing the box. Getting hit almost directly in the face by Killer Angel. And look at this, they're two wedges, they're too large, Chris. I guess the, the forks, they're keeping Killer Angel away from making engagement. That's not good. One of the challenges with forks is you want to get under your opponents, <laughs> not keep them away, Chris. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh. oh, no! Killer Angel ripping off what looks like to be a wheel from Impact Crater. Impact Crater. There is just waiting. Killer Angel somehow found itself on its head. It's a very odd match indeed. See if we can get this house bot to try to give them a little assist to get back on their feet. All right, back on their feet. Let's do a little wheel check here. Oh, it looks like all the wheels are still intact. I love that. That big black piece I think was maybe... A self-rider? Self-rider. Interesting. Okay. Got a little bit of twisting motion. Yeah, it definitely looks like we have um, a drive okay. issue. Okay, here we go. Oh, That's wow. a pretty big hit. Yeah, I would say like the drive is not great on either of these robots, Chris. Tap out. Whoa. Ah, there we go. The winner is Killer Angel. Okay, round of applause there. All right, Adam Kennard with uh, Killer Angel advancing here to uh, winner's round two. Impact Trader going to be going down to the elimination bracket early. All right, I can see that we've already loaded up Cage 3. My goodness. Stag Beetlebot versus Wakey Wakey. Now, I was able to, uh, to speak to the builders of Stag Beetlebot. Um, they were VIP ticket holders two months ago. Right. They took the VIP tour, and they were so inspired that they decided to come here and build a robot, which is very cool. And we also... All right, this is a highlight from, uh, from our last fight. Oh, yeah, ripping yeah. off that big black piece of plastic. I thought that was maybe a wheel, but it's not. I think you're right. I think that was a self-rider. Yeah. Yeah. Stag Beetlebot, uh, this is like a Frankenstein bot using parts from many different kits. You're going to see a D2 body. Mm -hmm. You're going to see a finger tech uh, spinner. And, Stag um, Beetlebot versus Wakey Wakey. 
Now, wakey wakey, that sounds a little bit like wake and bake, wouldn't you say? I would say Eight, so. And it looks seven, like a couple of familiar six, faces over there this. as well. Five, Evan four, Arias rocking three, the cow onesie. Two, Let's go, bro. One. Fight, robots, fight. All right. All right, here we go. We're fighting. We're fighting. Here we go. Wakey wakey, looking very similar to wake and bake. I think that this is the exact wow. same robot with just a different name. Whoa. Oh. Okay, All right, Jack Beetlebot, let's go. All right, the green robot and the pink robot. This is Wakey Wakey. The purple is Stag Beetlebot. And oh. here we go, Angel the Doll with Wakey Wakey pushing Stag Beetlebot up against the rail. We've got Alex Beza coming in to help out Angel. And I'm gonna give it to Stag Beetlebot. They've hung in there. Yeah, totally. First Landed time good driving at a, at a combat robotics event with your first bot. This I is a true rookie here. Super fans of Norwalk, super fans of BattleBots. They built this Frankenstein robot, and it's kind of doing well, Chris. Amazing. I can't even imagine the adrenaline on that team right now. Now, Wakey Wakey, these are, this is a multi-bot. And look at this, Bird is coming in here to save. Tipping Angel Vidal's uh, wedge bot up against the camera. That's not <laughs> great. Wow. Here we go. Stack Beetlebot is actually winning these exchanges here. Incredible. Wakey Wakey's now burned up their one save from Bert. This is a surprisingly competitive match, Chris. I, this is incredible. It's just such a cool story. The first bot, first time here. Yeah. It's working. Facing off against two formidable opponents, Wake and Bake, the, uh, you know, basically same version here. They ended up qualifying for December back in May. And um, look at this stack. Beetlebot is like killing here. I love it. 60 seconds left here in this fight. Stack Beetlebot now is ahead on points. They just need to stay alive. They haven't lost their weapon. They haven't lost their forks. They haven't lost their wheels. This is amazing. Only, with, with only one wakey still working. I, I feel like I shouldn't be so incredulous, but I mean, it's, it's amazing. This is great. 30 seconds left here in this fight. It does look like his weapon is down, though. So now he's just got to use those forks and see if he can keep Setting up pins stuck and up against the rail once again. 20 seconds left in the match. Wow. Amazing. 10 seconds. They have escaped the count out. This one will go to the judges. Incredible. What performance for a rookie. All right. Applause. Let's go, Stag Beetlebot. Wow. All right, true rookie, first spot, first competition, first fight, going up against veterans Alex Peza and Angel Vidal and doing really, really well. I am so interested in seeing this judge's decision. Now, I think for the early fights here, I think we're, we're going to just have the judges sending in their, their scores, and I guess we're going to go over to Lindsay. Is that right? I think I've heard that. I will say also, I love that Evan Arias is wearing the cow onesie, okay? We've got a little bit of cow onesie solidarity it's, happening yeah, in the There's pits. a whole herd uh, yeah. here today. Let's go. Here we go. Do we have the same one? Dude, we do. How many different yes. cow onesies do you think there are? Look at this. Here we go. Yeah, we've got the same. Yeah, all right, dude. We got to. <laughs> here we go. We got, we, we got to put on the head, Evan. I, I was told that we were going with tropical shirts today. No, no, no. It's I all, left it's all, all my... about cow onesies. Yeah, let's go, bro. Good morning. Here we go. All right, Evan. We're going to see you later today with Shred It, man. We're going to see you later today with Shred It. Good luck. All right. Okay, now I see that we've already loaded up cage two. Are we going to go to the judges with a decision? Chris, I, you know what? You know what's delightful for me? Maybe someone here in the audience is brand new or they're on the live stream brand new and they're like, what is up with the cow motif, you know? Right. Like, it's just two random people wearing cow onesies. 
And I, there's one specific team that I think we can thank for that, right, Luke? <laughs> yeah. Mm. And mm -hmm. that is uh, uh, local favorite Milk Tank yes. and Milk Tankette. That's right. Yeah. You're gonna see a lot of uh, a lot of cow patterns up there. There we go. Ashley from Milk Tank. Yeah, we've got the same one. Here we go. Here we go. We came all the way down here, and we didn't get to do this together. Yeah. Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> An another, another person in a cow costume. Chris, we gotta get you one. This is amazing. Good to see you. Can't wait to see Milk Tank. Yeah, we're almost done. And um, I'm gonna go get ready to play. Good. All right, we're gonna go to Lindsay with the judge's decision. I feel the great honor to be able to announce a unanimous judge's decision for Stag Beetle Bot. Yes. All right. Yes. All right. Well done. Winning your first fight in a convincing fashion with a unanimous judge's decision. A you gotta love that. Against a really proven team. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Absolutely. All right. We're gonna go over to Cage Two. I see we're locked in here. Professor Hex with Brandon Bennett Young, Bone Dead Robotics facing off against Cannoli. One of the most delicious food-themed robots in the field here today. Cannoli it, versus It wins by clogging Professor your opponent's arteries. <laughs> Eight, seven, Cannoli six, here built by Pazzo Ragazza from Team four, Shred It. Three, two, one. Fight, robots fight. Woo. Wow, good speed right out of the box from Cannoli. It's this massive vertical spinner, Division X. Deep six X X and uh, looks like the weapon's not working. <laughs> and uh, oh no! What? That looks like a wheel from the minibot. Professor Hex here, uh, built and driven by Mammoth team member Brandon Bennett Young, is this horizontal undercutter. And Cannoli is spending more time on its face than I'm sure that it would like. That weapon is down. Got a chaotic start here. Minibot just shedding parts left and right. I think this oh. is just a oh no off the shelf target minibot, Chris. Now what Brandon really needs to do is make sure that his weapon keeps oh. running. Oh, oh no! Ripping off two wheels from the minibot that does count as damage in the Norwalk Havoc judging scheme. Yeah, uh, teams have uh, have lost matches because the the target RC car that they bring does shatter. That's not great. Cannoli here finds itself up against the rail, unable to be saved. Did they already burn up their one save with Brett? Oh, oh! Wow, big hit there. This is a little bit of BattleBots on BattleBots action. Two pit crew members from two teams there. You see Pazza right there. And just the absolute sheer determination and focus from Brandon. 75 seconds left here in this fight. And look at that. Again, Cannoli finds itself up on its head. Professor Hex has definitely had some issues on that right side of its drivetrain. I can hear a count out happening. I think this is a count out on Cannoli. Oh, wow. All right, that's a knockout on Cannoli. Professor Hex stays alive in the bracket. Knockout. Round of applause, Brandon. The winner is Professor Hex. I guess that's how the Cannoli crumbles. <laughs> yes, yes, that's good. I, you know, listen, I, I love a food-themed bot. More food-themed bots, please. You know? Mm -hmm. Absolutely delicious. Uh, Pazzo's also running, um, is it ravioli later today? There's like, there's a couple of pasta-themed robots. I think it's, I think it's ravioli. We have pasta-themed robots, beef-themed robots. Yeah. I'm, there's, there's a whole cheeseburger fighting a little bit later today. That's true. Yeah, exactly. Bugs beef. Gotta love that. Brandon Bennett Young winning his first fight of the day and uh, doing really, really well. Oh, oh, boy. I see some interesting things loading into cage three right now. What? Including, oh, my gosh. Uh, what? Oh, my gosh. I love it. Come on. <laughs> wow. OK. We're Serial about to, we're about to love, bring you over to cage like, three. Like, I want to see. Oh, really? Oh, we got, we got some. 
We got some big boys. Neil has into just cage informed one. me we are going to go to cage one. We are going to see a big fight here. But let me tell you, what's happening in cage three is absolutely delightful. I can't wait. <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah. All right, nope. uh, this is the first 12-pound fight of the day. Let's go over to cage one. Let's see who's loading in. Um, yeah, let's see who's loading into cage one here. Ah, right. we have Cronus versus Honey Shock. Honey Shock. Now, this is part of the Honey Cracked team. Um, so this is uh, Zoe Lambert's crew. They do bee-themed robots, honey-themed robots. Fr facing off against Kronos. Cro Kronus. 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 Mm -hmm. I mean, listen, they were one letter off from Kronus. Like, they could oh. be another food-themed robot. <laughs> do they make Kronus anymore? I, someone does. But, like, they sell them, like, commercially? Uh, maybe it's like, uh, I don't know, uh, Charleston Chews, where they, they stopped producing them in 1996, but they're still available. Right. Cro right. Cronus versus Honey Shock. Okay. Eight, seven, six. Here we go, our five, first 12 pound four, fight of the day. Three, two, one. Fight, robots fight. All right, Honey Shock has successfully gotten out of the box. Oh! Eating the corner and getting hit. Oh, in the air. there goes the front wedge, or at least it looks like the front plate of that front wedge. Wow, Cronus is finding the low ground here. That is a mean looking robot, Chris. <laughs> wow! Oh, wow. You see that bottom plate armor is now completely peeled up. Even if they get self righted, I don't know if they're going to be able to drive. Yeah, that's a good call out there, Chris. Even if they get onto their feet, they're gonna be high centered. Kronos just has to sit here and wait. Kronos is oh. gonna have to show a little bit of motion. Up oh, with a little nudge. Sprung back to life. Wow, I love the geometry on Kronos. That is absolutely brutal. Oh. Huge hits here, staying absolutely planted to the floor. Honey Shock is dead. Wow. Wow. A minute 40 left here in this fight. Yeah, there you go. They've high centered themselves. Their wedge is gone. Is it going to be a count out or a tap out? All right, Tap so there out. we go. Tap out. The wow. Cronus is, is your winner. Cronus. And a new robot to watch. Look at that thing. Cronus, built by Julian Mott from Burlingame, California, flying all the way out here from Silicon Valley. Julian is a high school sophomore, Chris. Can you believe it? Wow. It's a fierce looking bot. All right, in my notes, outside of combat robotics, he uh, also enjoys competing in ranked chess tournaments. And, uh, you know, pretty smart kid. My God. I just ate checkers. <laughs> right, as a sophomore. <laughs> All right, let's go into cage three. Oh, uh, here we go. Prepare yourselves for joy and delight. I love it. The, the, like, there's so many people here, like, crowded around this cage. We've got Serial Killer here from Kokoto Main, which is a serial-themed robot. Gotta it's all that. part of a balanced, deadly breakfast. Facing Blood off against... Bloodfish versus Serial Killer. Bloodfish here, Eight, uh, built by Luciano seven, Johnson. Six, five, and, uh, four... The driver here sitting two, on a, a stool one. because uh, they're too short to uh, see into the cage. Look at all those googly eyes. You gotta love it. All right. All right. Oh, here we go, serial killer. Wow. <laughs> wow, this is a, a serial-themed the... oh, pastor no. robot. Oh, no. Kakodo, no! Wow! Can the breakfast cereal self right? Now that is the question. Yeah, part of the balanced, uh, you know, diet. 
Maybe not the most effective combat robot, though, Chris. Watch it, Bloodfish, at, at Tricks is for Kids. <laughs> yeah, wow. <laughs> now, I don't know what a house bot can really do with a cardboard bot no. to help themselves right without absolutely <laughs> obliterating them. <laughs> wow, you know, I have to say, there's a lot of air armor here with Serial Killer. Let's go, Bloodfish. Wow. Not a lot of movement out of the cereal box. Oh, no! Bloodfish should be careful because I think that there is a prize inside. <laughs> I just, I, I, I am, I am uh, floored by the size of this cereal box. Like, <laughs> this is like a mega cereal box. I think Kokoto had to eat like four or five boxes of cereal to tape this all together. And very sadly, we are hearing the count out. I think this cereal box is being counted out. Wow, Bloodfish winning their first match of the day. Knockout. Cereal box. The winner is Bloodfish. So uh, they're gonna try and return that to the grocery store there. <laughs> wow, all right, good job, Bloodfish. Yeah, there we go. I love that, like, the kids are winning their first matches here. Yeah. Winning it's, round it's, one, that's incredible. It's a, the lucky stools. Okay. All right, loading into uh, cage two, I see somebody wearing a full face mask, and it's terrifying, Chris. Uh, oh, wow. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, yeah. Yep, that's just a it's, full Is skull. that Ghost Rider? I think it's Ghost Rider. Is that yeah. Nicolas Cage? Uh, all right, Osiris facing off against Frostbite. Frostbite versus Osiris. <laughs> yeah! Seven, six, I love five, it. Okay. Four, I think we three, might have a celebrity two, here, you know, standing one. cage side. Fight, robots fight. All right, Frostbite I would have tapped here. out already. <laughs> Frostbite here in blue is this overhead cutter. Osiris is an undercutter. Ooh. Interesting. Let's see how the, uh, the rock, paper, scissors here shakes out. We've got uh, this undead driver here of Osiris. Wow. Oh, it looks like a. Oh, there's the weapon blade. Wow. Ripping off the weapon blade. And a wheel might be tucked under. Oh, no. Wow. All right, I think that uh, Frostbite here is Tap out. dancing in the celebration is here. Frostbite. Osiris. Yeah, going uh, going oh, down to an early it, death. Yeah, you see his face went it went totally pale. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh, I love when teams just kind of get really into it and they Me got too. costumes and yeah. the whole nine yards. We're here to have fun. All right, let's check way out to this replay here. The overhead cutter of Boom. Frostbite coming in, ripping off that undercutter from Osiris. Yeah, that poor skeleton man just uh, tapping out right there at the end. He almost burst into flames. <laughs> hey, he's got to ride a motorcycle out of here, right? I think so. Yeah, okay. Oh, we're gonna go back to cage one. That's what I'm hearing. All right. Wonder I who see we people got loading, loading in. in. All right, this is gonna be another big box fight. I think uh, this is gonna be a 12 pounder fight here. They're turning on the lights. I see light blue. Does that mean that that is possibly blue cheese? You're right. Ooh. It is blue cheese versus Semtex. Okay. Blue Cheese, built by Matt Luther from Pennsylvania. He is our dairy farmer slash combat robotics builder. And uh, Blue Cheese, very famous for uh, being violently disassembled by Bugsby earlier this year. I'm sure it's one of those things, one of those painful memories that Matt is not happy that I keep bringing up. So I don't know if you know this, but Blue Cheese is actually a regular bot that they store in a cave for six months. <laughs> Blue cheese. Semtex versus here. Semtex. Semtex built by Andy Russell Eight, from the United seven, Kingdom. This is our six, first UK bot five, of the day. Four, Let's go, three, Andy. Two, one. Fight, robots fight. And here we go. Blue oh, cheese 
immediately is. backing into its corner. Not great. Oh, my God! Yes! Wow! The winner Lexi is did it again! Wow! That was a one-hit KO from Holy Semtex. cow! There are parts of blue cheese everywhere. Wow! That is a crumbly cheese indeed. <laughs> Chris! The UK is here, all right? They did not fly across the Atlantic to lose round one, Chris. Wow! Incredible super slow-mo this. Yes! I love it! Oh, that's the destruction that I'm here for. Come on, Semtex. Did you see how they stayed absolutely wow. planted to the floor? Ordered uh, blue cheese on the amazing. side. <laughs> <laughs> wow. They're going to have to send them in there and uh, try and get Matt's parts just with a broom here. Wow. Amazing. Go in there and see how many parts of blue cheese you can find there. Incredible. <laughs> that was wild. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> that one's... <laughs> That one's making the highlight reel for sure. Oh, yeah, yes. absolutely. I want to watch that, like, uh, all day long. That's totally. great. Totally. We're, I want to uh, see what the weapon on Semtex is. Did you see how it was just, like, totally... It looked like um, stayed like, a, like stacked verts to make a drum. Yeah. Uh, so it's interesting. That that exchange, you know, it obviously went to the weapon of greater mass. Right. And, uh, yeah, if we can get, like, a slow-mo shot of that weapon-to-weapon -weapon contact, that would be great. Yeah, that's awesome. We're loading into cage three right now over here in the Steel Arena. All right. We're facing Crisis versus Chicken Nugget Machine. Chicken Nugget Machine. Wasn't that your nickname in high school? <laughs> Crisis. <laughs> Yes, Eight, yes, I just shook seven, that uh, as, a, six, as a nickname, Chris. Five, Thanks for four, bringing it back to painful three, memory. Two, With a side of blue one, cheese. Fight, robot Here we fight. go. Chicken Nugget Machine here is uh, the multi-bot. And Crisis is this beautiful baby blue egg beater here. Crisis, fun fact, was the number one uh, robot from the Beetle Weight Competition last year at Robot Ruckus. This is a very well-constructed robot. Wow! Oh, look at that. That is a the winner is Chris. Chicken Nugget Machine. Um, not correct. Yeah, the winner there was, in fact, Crisis. So uh, let's make sure that that uh, is correct in the brackets. I think what he meant to say was that the, the real wins are the chicken nugget machines that we make along the way. Tap That's out. No. A clear victory uh, for Crisis. Uh, just a really well-oiled machine right there. That thing looks incredible. Now, um, under, underneath that blue is some carbon fiber. So it's, you know, there's a lot of carbon fiber top plating there. A UHMW, that's kind of where you're seeing this massive size. It is a three-pounder. Yeah. And, uh, you know, like, uh, the, the builder of that, that robot works at Andy Mark, which makes a lot of um, robotic educational equipment for first robotics teams. Awesome. So they have a massive, like, on-site machine shop, and they're making incredible robots there. Amazing. Okay, great fight. All right, we got box uh, or cage two loading in. We got this our drivers our second, almost ready. This is our second UK bot here, Attitude Adjuster. All the way in from Scotland. That's correct. Scott Anderson from Edinburgh here in pink. Did Edinburgh. I say Edinburgh. 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 Versus Edinburgh. Edinburgh. Attitude Edinburgh. Adjuster. All right. Eight, seven, six. Facing off against five, Hound. Four, three, two, one. Fight, robots fight. All right, attitude adjuster. Look at the size of this thing. Wow, it's an articulated uh, saw, kind of like saw loser. Incredible. Or Scorpios or <laughs> saw blades. Amazing. Yeah, interesting build design. Um, it's got that vertical and that articulating arm that it wants to pin its opponent and then time out those hits. Versus Hound, which is just, it looks like uh, kind of dual verts. Ooh, good. Fast, uh, fast self right there from Attitude Adjuster. Found itself on its head momentarily. Really what Attitude Adjuster wants to do here is push its opponent into the corner. 
fire up that weapon and come down across the top. Oh no, and it oh, looks no. like perhaps Attitude Adjuster's wedge is stuck under the rail. Here comes Brett, nope, didn't need a save. Gonna keep that save in the back pocket for a little bit later. That's one. Here we parts. go, oh. spinning up that weapon. Attitude Adjuster showing that its hammer is very active. Some aggressive tapping there. Here we go, getting Hound on its head, there we go. Look at the zippiness oh, here. Oh, oh, I see a belt. Is that from the weapon on Attitude Adjuster? Or was that pulled out of Hound? No, Hound's weapon is still working. Yeah, I think that came off of Attitude Adjuster. It looks like the, uh, the arm is still working. Perhaps the weapon on the end of the arm is not. Wow, oh, ripping off one of those forks from the front of Attitude Adjuster. 70 seconds left in this match. Oh! Oh man, we almost caught a fork to the face. <laughs> wow. These are two builders who got on airplanes to get here today. Hound driven by Noah Agnew from Greenville, Texas. An attitude adjuster flying here all the way from Scotland. You gotta love that. 45 seconds left here in this fight. I'm seeing parts of attitude adjuster being sprayed around inside of this box. They're coming off. And this has been just an absolutely destructive match here from Hound. 30 seconds left in the match. Oh, it looks like there's a note written on the bottom of Hound. I couldn't quite make it out. Yeah, let's see if Attitude Adjuster can tip them over one more time so we can read that note, Chris. Sorry. Sorry on something. <laughs> Here we go. 10 seconds left. They've escaped the count out. This one will go to the judges, technically. I don't know. <laughs> And this is going to be much of a surprise here. I think this is very clearly a win for Hound. Ooh. And just one last uh, message to send to the judge. Hound removes one of Attitude Adjuster's wheels. And that's All your right. match. Round of applause for these two builders. They traveled a very long distance to get here. Now we're going to throw this over to the judges. But uh, it looks like Attitude Adjuster may be going down into the elimination bracket early. Right, let's take a quick look here at this replay. Attitude oh, there goes Adjuster that fork. is an absolutely beautiful robot, Chris. Like, oh, you see that fork? Oh, that fork. Look at that. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, absolutely gorgeous robot. I mm. love the styling on that. I love how complicated and custom it is. Right. Facing off against just a, uh, just a two-ton sledgehammer. Yeah, you know what I mean? brick. Yeah. Yeah, tough. Um, you can see... Bits and pieces inside of the box. Yeah, they're just sweeping up parts of, of Attitude Adjuster. I think that's a fork right there. And uh, yeah, I think this one is a, a technically, technically Oof. it's gonna go to the judges. All right, let's check in here with your wife, Lindsay. Hello, Lindsay. Hi, Luke. Uh, the winner by unanimous decision is Hound. All right, no surprise there. Yep. No? Yeah. All right, good job. Good job, Hound. A little round of applause there. Very, uh, very destructive match. Gotta love that. There you go. It's been an action-packed morning already. Yeah. All right, oh, we're gonna go to another big fight here in cage one. Is this another 12-pound oh, fight? All right. Now, let's see. What is that, Chris? We have Chris, what this appears is an abomination. A, a gyro bristle walker. Next Gyro in cage one, 12 pound weight class, Killajul. undefeated bracket, round one. Kilojoule here, uh, built Eight, by David seven, Dreyer from Willoughby, six, Ohio. Five, Facing off four, against Flightless, three, Flightless two, Squared here. One. Fight, robot Another fight. Another team Honeycrack robot. <laughs> wow. <laughs> OMG, Chris. Oh, wow. Wow, okay. Oh my goodness. Oh Let's my go, goodness. Let's go, David. Killajewel has traditionally lost its undercutter in its fights. David hasn't lost it yet. You gotta love that. Facing off against this very weird curse creation here, Flightly Squared. Not exactly a bot that you can get behind. No, that's true. 
from any angle, you're making <laughs> contact with those very tiny little horizontal spinners. But I'll tell you what, if those spinners stop spinning, I think, what, do you think the vibration stops as well, or what? Yeah, I don't think that you can really gyro when you, oh my gosh, when you got David nothing. Oh my gosh, David want to fight. I can't believe it. I think this is his third time to, to Norwalk, kill a jewel here, uh, winning a fight. I think that is a tap out. Congratulations, David. The weapon stayed on this time. Amazing. Wow, okay. Tap out. The, the winner is the robot in the red square. All right, the robot in the red square. Knockout. There. Yeah, the winner the is jewel. the robot in the red square. Voice of God kind of like needs to kind of, you know, he works through it. Kind of he early hasn't in the had his morning cup of <laughs> plutonium yet. Yeah, needs to, needs to get one of those quiches from the Sono Bakery. You know? Oh, yeah. That's how I like to start my day here yeah. in beautiful South Norwalk. There you go. All right. I see that we've loaded into cage three. All right. This is Cinder facing off against Mini Panini. Oh, I love that name. Chris, I love that name. I mean, the name itself, it's really pressing. <laughs> yes. Good, good. Cinder versus Mini Panini. <laughs> it's just funny wow. to hear him say that. Yeah, yeah. The voice of God, like, he, he really enjoyed that. That's good. All right. All right. Mini Panini like his, here. Mi his mini bot's getting a little assist already. Here in the pink corner, uh, built by David Snipes from Winston Salem, North Carolina, facing off against singer Eight, Timothy seven, Steven. Six, five, four, three. Two, one. Fight, robots fight. Here we go. All right. Looks like Mini Panini's got a kind of a slow start. Oh. Ah, wait a second. I think we may need to. Are we? Are we resetting this match? Very charitably, I think both of these builders have agreed to reset this match. It looks like. Okay. Yeah, it looks like we're going to do a reset. So just like a like a heads up, you know, we have a lot of built-in, uh, you know, safety precautions when it comes to like activating your bot. You know, we want to make sure that live weapons don't just start firing up on their way. And so it is a little tricky sometimes to oh get my. these bots up and running. Oh, did somebody did somebody tell Mini Panini that uh, they're resetting? Here we go. Someone tell Mini Panini that this is a wrap. <laughs> Good, Chris. Good. How many, more, uh, how many more sandwich puns do you have back there? Oh, I, okay. I, 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 I'm, I'm not going to go down this road this early. The uh -huh. people don't deserve it. <laughs> All right. We've got Cinder here pushed into the corner, concerningly kind of facing the rail. I don't know about this, Cinder. Facing off here against Mini Panini. Now, I believe the mini bot driver here of Mini, mini Panini is uh, wearing Eight, a, a milk seven, tank shirt. Six, Again, more five, cow four, solidarity, three, Chris. Two, cow solidarity. One. Fight, robots, fight. All right, here we here go. Here we go. The mini, the mini bot from Mini Panini. <gasps> oh, boy. Oh, go. something's going on inside of Cinder. Cinder, what is happening, Cinder? It looks like that right side of its wheel might be locked up. Chris, what is the weapon on Cinder? Oh, it's violently shaking. Wow. Oh! 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 Yes! <laughs> I love it! It's a surprise flamethrower, Chris! <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that was intentional. I love it! Okay, flame broiled paninis on the menu. I love it. Can they move at all, Chris? What? Okay, this violent like <laughs> shaking is very concerning to me, Chris. Okay. Cinder appears to be hindered. <laughs> all right, yeah, let's just uh, let's let it flame out. I don't know. This is a very generous referee here. Tap out. Wow. Okay. The winner is Mini Panini. Chris, I love a flamethrower. I love a flamethrower. It brings me so much joy, okay? It, it, it is great. <laughs> it really right. is great. 
Mini Panini has uh, pressed on ah. to uh, round two. Mm -hmm. It's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Amazing. All right, good job. Okay, uh, let's head over to Cage 2. I see Power Surge 2, built by Chris Caps, facing off against Strider. S Strider, wow. Okay. Folks call him Strider. <laughs> yes, okay. Chris Caps here in black and green, and, uh, you know, with a pretty conventional egg beater spinner. And uh, over there in the blue corner, oh, that looks interesting, Strider. Okay. Strider here, built by Coleman Christie from Long Beach, California, flying out here to this competition, all the way from Southern California. Facing Eight, off against Chris. Seven, six, Local kid. Five, four, Recent three, high school grad. Two, one. Fight, robots oh. fight. Whoa, okay. Wow, oh. big hit. Oh, and there's a belt and glitter. And look at this, Strider looks like it is uh, kind of like um, droopy at home, would you say, Chris? <laughs> oh my goodness. Dual horizontal wow. kind of kinetic spinner here. That is wild. Wow, what is that sound in there? That doesn't sound good. And look at this, Chris Caps is dragging his battery behind him. <laughs> No, it is now a Chris. battery club. Chris, you are literally one hit away from total disaster. He keeps whipping that battery around. I'm very, very like worried about this. Oh no, that's that's just the deflated balloon. Oh, that's just the deflated balloon. Chris. That was the uh, glitter yes, deli right. delivery mechanism. Okay, all right. Chris Caps, I'm sorry that I've maligned you. Your robot looks great. Drag that balloon around, bro. Here we go. Oh I'm gonna, <laughs> I heard someone just yell no fear from cage side, all right? This is so interesting. Like Strider was, I mean, it's it's actually pretty agile for a bot that's just driven by, uh, you know, gyroscopic forces. One of the wheels from Chris's is, bot is gone. That wedge is, go is peeled up. That doesn't look right. Chris is on his head. All right, I see uh, there the Long Beach team. Izzy Tsao is helping out. BattleBots pit crew member. Oh. Prolific. Whoa, here we go. I saw a little bit of blue goes spinning off into the corner. What was that? Was that part of the wedge? Yeah, it looks like it's part of that front wedge. I'm going to give it to Strider. I cannot believe they're keeping their horizontal weapons running this entire time. That is Oh, no, incredible. now that other wheel appears to be loose. That might be it for Look at Power this. Surge, too. Chris Caps is dying here. Beat by a couple of Southern Californians. Chris, no. Here we go. Very little movement here in the box from Power Surge 2. 30 seconds left in the match, but there's the, we got the countdown started. Knockout. That is a knockout. The winner Chris is, Caps is getting Revolver. Kicked down into the elimination bracket early. Strider here. Incredible performance. It's wow. a cool looking bot. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, like when you see a droopy esque robot, you got to love it, right? Um, I wonder if they got a, a weight bonus for non conventional uh, movement. You know, it's possible. And. Um, yeah, got a uh, got a pretty good um, pretty good driver there with Izzy Tsao. Amazing. This is definitely a robot to watch. Yeah. Also, he's a Dunedain, which means that he's blessed with long life. A gift from the elves. <laughs> <laughs> all right, good. Um, all right, we're gonna go to cage three. I see loaded in Polar Vortex versus Helicopter Chapter. Say that again. Helicopter Copter. Helicopter Chapter. Helicopter Copter. Who would win in a fight? Helicopter Chopter versus uh, Dragacornosaurus. Oh, no, you're right. There is a CH. Helicopter Chopter. Right. All right, let's see how the voice of God says it. 
Polar Vortex. Here we go. Versus. Let's go. Helicom Bump to Chopter. Wow, okay. All right. Eight, That's pretty good. Seven. That's pretty six, good. Six, five, <laughs> four, three, two, one. Fight. Robots All right. fight. Whoa. Helicom Bump to Chopter here in green. It's this overhead spinner. And uh, Polar Vortex is two miniature egg beaters. Gotta love that. Just like the size difference on these two, it really looks like it's a two on one fight here. All right, Helicopter Chapter up on its head. There we go. Back onto its feet, just burned up its one save. Get to the Helicopter Chapter! <laughs> Let's go! And really at this point, I mean, I think Polar Vortex, they can just kind of sit back and just have one go in at a time. Helicobop the chapter here. Built by Bennett Towers from Belmont, Massachusetts. This uh, this little green robot here. Pretty good little self-riding pole. Let's go, yeah. Bennett. Nice. Interesting, uh, you know, horizontal spinner design. I haven't really quite seen anything like it. I think it's designed to be kind of like... Um, like aggressive armor, right? You know, because it's kind of like a skirt that goes around and spins, and really just trying. I guess, I guess Bennett's trying to keep the uh, the circular body on his robot intact. You would expect to perhaps see maybe a, um, a tooth or something welded yeah. onto the side of that that weapon. But yeah, here we go. Bennett's again on his head. Let's see if he can self right one more time. Let's go, Bennett. 70 seconds left in this match. And look at this polar vortex, like two hungry polar bears just waiting. Hungry polar bears don't wait. That's true. So I got two hungry koalas. Two hungry koalas looking at a tasty piece of eucalyptus, Chris. <laughs> 45 seconds left here in this fight. I'm gonna say that this spin up on Helicobopta Chopter is actually pretty amazing. Like, I think if it had a more aggressive weapon, I think that this might be a, a contender here. Oh my goodness, and now it's a top. Let's see if we can do it. Let's go, let's go, Bennett. 20 seconds left here in this fight. I love the giant googly eye. Kind of looks a little bit like a Cyclops, Chris. 10 seconds left in this fight. Bennett has survived. This one will go to the judges. That is the match. This one goes to the judges, technically. I'm going to say this is a match that showed incredible restraint from Polar Vortex. Yeah. Um, Helicopter Chopter. Interesting design. I'm, I'm curious to see where they can go with it in the future. And, you know, of course, they always have the elimination bracket to uh, to do some fine tuning. Polar. Assuming assuming that the judges uh, go that way. Polar Vortex here, uh, built by Spencer Macri from Stores, Connecticut, uh, from Fr uh, Team Frost Robotics. You see a lot of shirts that say Yukon on them. Uh, Spencer works at the University of Connecticut. Pretty cool. Neat. Um, I heard that UConn is getting deeper and deeper into combat robotics. They're really interested, trying to join some of the other East Coast engineering uh, schools where combat robotics is a very big sport. Yeah, and if you're in a uh, college where you think that maybe uh, you guys could stand to benefit from having a robotics program, you can check out more information on NHRL.io yep. and, uh, you know, get involved. We've got resources. Yeah, yeah totally. Absolutely. Um, we have a lot of college students who also come here and, uh, and work events. They want to kind of see how the, how the event works. Uh, let's uh, check in here with Lindsay. All right, we have another unanimous judge's decision for Polar Vortex. Okay, good job, Polar Vortex. Yeah, great, great restraint in that fight. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think like when you are so ahead on the points, you know, you just kind of, you, you know, like I don't, I, I don't have to go in there full send. Let me save part of my robot for round two. All right, uh, let's check in here with Cage 2. Counterattack versus Meta. 
Counterattack versus Meta. Counterattack uh, is the seven, second robot here being six, run by Dakota Main. Four, and Meta three, here in wow. It was one, formerly known fight. as Space Robots Fight. That was a little corporate joke there, Chris. I right. got you. Okay, all right. <laughs> Counterattack, no. I think its little arm is gone. Wow. It looks like that might have been uh, affixed with some packaging tape. I can't tell. Yeah. There's definitely. Meta oh, here. it's actually part of that top oh. armor. Oh. Oh. Meta. Wow. Damn. Not only really ripping off your wheels, but collecting all your data as well, Meta. Chris. Incredible. All right. Meta here, super powerful robot. You gotta love that. And uh, this is built by Andrew Kazmer. Uh, the Kazmers, they've built so many robots here. This is probably their sixth or seventh uh, robot that they've, they've brought here to Norwalk. And Kokoto, you know, um, he's now lost two in a row, going down early into the elimination bracket. Uh, Kokoto, a totally prolific combat robotics builder and fights in Florida a lot. And um, they're down um, in like some of our southern states, um, uh, or some, some of our southern states competitions. And uh, yeah, going, going down early into the, uh, the elimination bracket. This replay here just showed the power of meta. That was pretty incredible. All right, awesome. Oh my gosh. All right, uh, very quickly, I have William Marchese up here at the desk. He says he has a gift for me. William, here, what do we have? No? Let me see if I can get you. Here we go. I'm just gonna hold on to the magic ninja dust. There we go, does that? Oh, you did bring it, good. Oh my gosh, William, you have hey. audio. I love this, okay. Nice. What, what is this, William? I got you a gift, Luke. What? I was at another convention. What? I got you your own, very own jacket. What? William! Come on! I Are want we you to be have matching? It. Well, yeah, we're we're similar designs. We got the what? we got the got the flowers on the side, just like. Oh my God! Look at this! All right. Yes. I am gonna wear this later today. Dude. Yeah. Per this perfect. is incredible. Yeah. Wait, when are you fighting? Um, very soon. I'm I'm actually in the box right now. Let me take off this cow onesie. It's all about <laughs> windbreakers now, William. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, man, dude. That's awesome. No problem. I appreciate it. Wow. Okay. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna wear this. This is great. Thanks, William. <laughs> All right. Chris, do you ever feel bad that people don't bring you gifts? No. No? Never? <laughs> That's too bad. All right. All, All right. right. Uh, let's head over to cage one. I see over here Drew Davis hitting the ready button. Top 10 things I think I would expect to hear from you, Luke. Let me take off this cow onesie to put on this anime jacket. Blackjack <laughs> versus Minor Threat 5. All right, Eight, Drew Davis is running seven, Blackjack here six, in the blue corner. Five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robots, fight. Facing off against Minor Threat from Luke Grell. Duluth, Minnesota here. Whoa! Wow! Oh, Jack, uh, Blackjack being, uh, just as expected, uh, driving, like, oppressively already, uh, showing some pretty dominant control over Meyer Threat. Here we oh, go. Oh, I see a belt. I think that may be a belt from off of Minor Threat 5. And what is that? Is that a wheel? I think that might be a wheel. No. Weapon from Minor Threat 5, it just sounds like a jet engine in there. Incredible. That is a pretty chunky weapon indeed. And it looks like Blackjack has pushed Minor Threat into the corner here, successfully pinning here. Getting a little bit of help from Alex Peza driving the minibot of Bug. I think they may have high centered Minor Threat on a little bit of trash inside of the box. Its own wheel. Its own wheel, that is metal. Oh, I love it. 
There are parts of Miner Thread being just ripped off here. See a little bit of that top armor. Blackjack coming in here to kill. Wow. Wow. Oh, oh good. Launching that mini bug. Pod. The weapon on Minor Threat is still very dangerous. Now, Minor Threat finds itself up against the rail. Its weapon is just spun down. Has Drew Davis done it here? Here comes Fluffy to come in and save. Blackjack is ready, and it looks like Minor Threat 5 is dead. Drew Davis there, taking a look. Weapon is down, the drive is a little bit impaired on Minor Threat 5. You're gambling a lot with, uh, with low mobility and no working weapon. Even with just a few seconds left, you might end up giving yourself a lot more work to do up in the pits. Yeah, that's true. This one will go to the judges. Okay, this one went the full three minutes. Round of applause. Pretty destructive. Lots of robot parts inside of the box. Let's see how the judges see this one. This was not as uh, decisive as some of our earlier judges' decisions. Um, you know, Minor Threat landed some pretty good hits, like on the mini box. Blackjack, though, successfully ripping off that weapon. I'm sorry, wh ripping off that, that wheel. Yeah. Shoving it under its opponent, landing a really good pin. That is showing great damage and killing the weapon. Amazing. Okay. As the judges deliberate, very exciting. See, we've loaded into cage two and cage three. Oh, wow. William's already in cage three. I think it's time for me to put on this anime windbreaker. Chris, Chris. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's go to Lindsay. Hello, Lindsay. Hello, hello. We have another unanimous decision. The judges are really, you know, on the same page today for Blackjack. All right. Drew Davis and Blackjack advance. Very good. Thank you, Lindsay. Yeah. All right. Are we going to go to cage two or cage three? Cage three means that I have to put on the windbreaker, Neil. Here Over your fleece onesie. I have so many layers of clothing on right now. Underneath this, I have a Hawaiian shirt, and underneath that, I have a milk tank shirt. And under that, there's a leotard, and under that... <laughs> right, yeah. A bikini for, like, the after party. Cage three is next. Okay, I'm going to put on this anime windbreaker. Here we go. All right, let's go. Sea Dragons Roar versus Newbert. It oh. actually really matches the cow onesie. Oh, yeah, here we go. I can see you're going to be taking the trash out in this exact outfit in only a couple <laughs> of months. All right, Sea Dragons were from William Marchese here in the blue corner. And Newbert, this is uh, our young driver here, Cole Wilson from Simsbury, Connecticut. Eight, seven, uh, Cole here, six, 13 years five, old, facing off four, against William Marchese. Three, two, one. Fight, robots fight. Oh boy. You hear these two weapons fire up for sure. Oh, and look at that. Cole immediately flipping Sea Dragon's Roar on his head. Now, one of the really cool things about Sea Dragon's Roar is that oh. it has this hinge on the front, so it doesn't matter even if it's on his head, its weapon is still running. That's so cool. You can see that hinge slightly in, in action here. And really just the wideness of Cole's egg beater is really helping him get engagement. Oh! Again, popping William in the air. This is a true back and forth. But what's this? Newbert looks like it stopped. It stopped, Chris. The weapon is spinning down on Newbert. William Marchese there is the picture of focus, pushing Newbert into the corner, showing great control. Is the power off on Newbert? 
I can hear Cole getting counted out. Newbert is dying here, Chris. All right. Wow. Cole Wilson there. Good little, uh, you know, nod to the audience. You gotta love that. Oh, and a little raccoon. Yeah, okay. All right. And uh, Chris, at the end of the day, Anime Windbreakers took it. Knockout. The winner is Sea Dragons Roar. William Marchese and Sea Dragons Roar, uh, one of my favorite builders here in the competition. Um, fun fact, he is a podcaster mm -hmm. and a, uh, a an analyst for um, like um, American Ninja Warrior, like kind of these um, these kind of athletic. Yeah, it's that, that thing I won last year. It's not a big yeah, deal. Right. Yeah, exactly. All right, let's take a quick look at this replay here. Newbert really just shoving around Sea Dragon's Roar and outlasting it. Yeah. You know, the, the forks, while, um, you know, can be a great strategic play, sometimes they're also a real inhibitor on the wood floors that we have here at Norwalk. Right. Um, the whole thing just looked like a, <laughs> like a face grabber from Aliens. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, you know, it really comes down to reliability. William was able to hang in there and, uh, and outlast his opponent. Very yeah. good. Good match. Okay. I can feel the temperature just rising. Funfetti. <laughs> I feel... Versus <laughs> Fallout. There's, there is a, a, a warm front moving in from <laughs> my west. <laughs> All right. Moving on Eight, over to cage two. Seven, six, five, four, three... Two, Fun Fetty one. there in the blue corner. Fight. Fallout Robots in the fight. Uh, looks like, yeah. Are we fighting? I think that the the uh, the timer's going. Nick, what happened? Okay, it looks like we're gonna reset this match. Fallout here is this very cool like four bar lifter, and Fun Fetty is a very tiny compact. Sufferbot, I would say. Dro it's like a drum, you know? But uh, it's, it's famous for being tossed up in the air quite a bit in mm. some of its earlier matches. Um, and they, uh, they compete uh, in the Midwest with Fun like, uh, Fetty. Okay, here we versus go. Versus Fallout. Chris, you're going to love the logo on Fun Eight, Fetty. When you seven, see it from the back, it is six, delightful. Five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robots fight. Okay. All right, I think what's happening is that they're not hearing the countdown. Nick, can you count them down uh, manually? All right, we're gonna, we're gonna reset this one more time. Kyle, Kyle Kroos, tell Nick he has to count them down manually. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I guess I could count too. Oh yeah. Okay. Good. All you right, mean audience, the person I with need the mic? your help. We're gonna count together. Okay. Eight. Seven. seven six, six. Five. Four. Three. three two, two. One. Fight, fight robots! Fight. Robots oh, fight. Let's go, Fallout! Wow! An incredibly fast box rush there. Fallout is this massive lifter here in green, pushing Funfetti up against uh, the uh, the rail. Here we go. Fallout as a control bot is really hoping to land a good lift here, perhaps a flip. Pushing uh, Funfetti there into the corner, and it sounds very quiet now in the box. Has Funfetti's weapon gone down? Wow, look at this. One pin and then uh, into a second pin. My guess is that, uh, you know, they're, they're playing their uh, their hand. They know when they're pinned, don't fire up the weapon when you're in the wall, you're in the house spot. And there we go. We hear it firing back up again. There we go. Fallout landing yet another good pin built by Matthew Lantry here from Phil Hillsdale, New Jersey. And uh, Matthew, just this is the exact there we kind go. of uh, fight that he wants to face off, you know? Yeah. Very small opponent getting caught completely in those forks. A lot of Matthew's uh, robot is 3D printed. That's why you can see kind of this massive size difference.
Those good pins the first half of the match. Let's see if it's enough here. But he has to stay very, very careful. I mean, Funfetti's uh, weapon is still running here, 90 seconds into this match. It doesn't look like Fallout is able to lower those forks now all the way. It's actually now a... It's like a keep-away stick. Yeah, it's a keep-away stick, which yeah. might prove to be helpful in this in this rock, paper, scissors. Gan, 60 seconds left. Gan is has fallen very quiet inside the box. I think that uh, the weapon... Oh, here we go. That's a good little tip. Let's go, Matthew. 50 seconds left. There's another pin. All right. Okay. Chris, do you see the Funfetti uh, logo on the back? It's uh, from like an actual Funfetti uh, like um, like cupcake box. Oh, really? Yeah, I love that. I thought it was like seconds. Dippin' Dots inspired. Yeah, Dippin' the, Dots, also a great name for a uh, multibot, if someone oh, ever wants that to. that is a good name for a multibot. Write that down, the Internet. Bring a multibot named Dippin' Dots, and maybe uh, try and avoid the Dippin' Dots lawyers. <laughs> Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. That's the match. Round of applause. Drive to the door. Let's go. Matthew is amped. I think he knows that he's probably won this one. This one will go to the judges. Now, uh, one of the cool things about control bots is you have to go the full three minutes. Really? Yeah. You're really not scoring a ton of damage. So, uh, you know, durability is really important. And uh, let's see if Matthew has what it takes to advance to round two. Okay. Weapon reliability, incredibly important if you're facing off against a, uh, you know, just a chonky, massive, uh, you know, control bot. Okay. Uh, Nick, can you hear me? Izzy, can you tell Nick? He, they, the judges want to know if uh, Funfetti's weapon is still working, like at the end of the match. I don't think that it was, judges, but we're going we're gonna to double check. It, it was? was still working. Or no, the weapon wasn't working. Nick said yes. Really? Okay. Nick says that the was the weapon still working on Funfetti from. Okay, Incredible. that's confirmation from the ref. Okay, Nick Buckholtz, our our ref here, um, says that yes, the weapon on Funfetti was still working at the end of that match. Judges, you gotta wonder why it uh, did fire up though. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. All right, let's go into a replay here. Fast box rush right out of the box. Yeah, that there. was wild. All out. Very good. Good little lift there. You know, Funfetti did, uh, it appeared to kind of peel up that, that lifting arm, impairing it uh, slightly. I guess we're gonna have to see how the judges judge this. I feel a little nervous when they start to ask those qualifying questions. Oh yeah, every time. I mean, like, uh, Fallout showed great control. All right, we're gonna go to Lindsay. She's got the results. Lindsay, who won that match? All right, yet another unanimous decision for Fallout. All right, there we go. Matthew Lantry advancing here and uh, with Fallout. Incredible, great work. Oh, okay. We're heading over to another big cage fight here, cage one. This is a 12 pound fight with Zoe Lambert and Bugsby, the hamburger themed shell spinner. Now Bugsby has fought multiple times this, uh, this year, but has not yet qualified for the championships in December. We called out Bugsby in the very start of the broadcast as one of those robots to watch. Facing off against a very scary looking egg beater spinner from Jonathan Juarez from War EZ on BattleBots. War Hard XL versus Bugsby. Now, one of the things I'm gonna watch for in Bugsby is the spin up time. Zoe's taking the spin up time from 12 seconds down to four seconds. I Let's was there in the, yeah, next to the uh, Eight, test box last seven, night, and it's, it was so six, smooth. Five, I couldn't believe it. Four, three. Wow, this is gonna two, be a good fight. One. Fight, robots, fight. Oh. 
Okay. All right, and here we go. All right, here we go. Good spin up now. Both of these competitors wow. have allowed their, their opponent to spin up completely. Let's see a big hit here. Oh, no! Bugs me there, just uh, careening around this. Uh, it looks like someone dropped a hamburger on the ground. It's a, there's a five second rule, Luke. There's a five second rule. Zoe survives wow. spinning back up. Jonathan Juarez running into the uh, into the rail. You can hear Zoe has fans in the audience yelling encouragement here for this burger-themed robot. Jonathan Juarez doesn't look as zippy as I would expect. I think that he is kind of trying to pick his moments here, knowing that every single time he makes a contact with that burger, he is getting He's taking on damage. Yeah, absolutely. A minute 40 here in this fight. Zoe Lambert here in yellow looking on. Oh! Oh, big oh! oh no! It's just, it's an ablative bun. That sesame bun is now off of Bugsby. It's an ablative bun. I think that that was just sacrificial. They call this an open face <laughs> spinner. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. All right, here we go. Wow, look at this. Jonathan Juarez has either turned off his weapon or his weapons died here. Turning his robot into just a giant wedge, seeing if he can mount some oh. kind of defense here against Bugsby. Some big exchanges in this fight. I'm going to be watching here for uh, for the performance here of Warhard. I don't know if the weapon on Warhard is coming back. Perhaps Zoe has killed the weapon on Warhard. Oh. 20 seconds left here in this fight. Bugsby's hung in there. This one could be going to the judges. 30 more seconds. Wow. Incredible. The incredibly punishing egg beater from Warhard has gone down. Bugsby's hung in there. The only damage that Zoe's taken is losing that ablative sacrificial bun. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. That's wow. it. That's the end of the match. They've taken it the full three minutes. Zoe Lambert hanging in there with Bugsby. Round of applause. That was awesome. Amazing. Okay. Let's take a quick look here at this replay. By this point, Bugsby had already lost its, uh, its little sacrificial bun. But the weapon on Warheart appears to have gone down in the middle of this match, scoring damage points for Zoe and Bugsby. Wow. I think the judges want clarification if they're using a, uh, a special sauce or just <laughs> uh, ketchup and mustard. I think it's just Thousand Island, Chris. <laughs> All right. A lot of things to consider here with the judges. Amazing. Okay. Do you think that Bugsby might have a shot here today in the 12s? I hope so. It's a really stacked field for the 12s. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, this might see. be... Is this the most 12s that we've had? Yeah, we have 20 12-pounders in the field wow. today. That's the largest field of 12-pounders ever. Uh, a lot of these 12-pounders are from Team Defective. Mm -hmm. So Zach Knight and Promheta up there in the pits. He has built this huge kind of friend group, and they are all building 12-pounders together. You got to love that. Uh, the winner of that fight was Fallout. Fallout, yeah. Um, okay, oh, wow, good, good uh, shot here of the audience. Wow, I love the signs. Here we go, go robots, go and smash. <laughs> oh, I love it. One of the things that I absolutely love was when we look out into the audience, we see so many kids. These are combat robotics fans, future combat robotics builders and drivers. And this is really just so cool, just really inspiring the, the, next, uh, the next generation. Of, uh, of fans. Yeah. All right, uh, Chris, let's check in here with your wife, Lindsay. 
Hi, all right, so we have our very first split decision Whoa. of the day. And I have to tell you, the point distribution was extremely close, but with two votes, Bugsby is your winner. Wow, okay. Wow. Zoe Lambert and Bugsby staying alive to round two. And uh, wow, War Hard, an incredibly good custom egg beater going down into the elimination bracket early. Yeah, it Incredible. all came down to that, you know, one of those first exchanges where that weapon went out and then it's really hard to bounce back from. All right, I see that we're loaded into cage two. Hive Lighter versus Ravioli. I think that Ravioli, this is, this is Pazzo Ragazzo's second robot of the day. We saw Cannoli a little bit earlier. These names are making me so hungry, Chris. Now, it's one of the cool things to look for in Ravioli is that this is a Brazilian-inspired design. If you've been following Norwalk Havoc, you've seen the Brazilian bots here earlier this year. They make their robots very... Um, they have an interesting design philosophy It's, their, it's in just Brazil. like, yeah, their own thing. Yeah. And it's awesome. So you're going to see this. It's like a metal uh, core body surrounded by this huge skirt of UHM. Ravioli wow. versus Hive Lighter. All right, Eight, seven, seven, six, six five, five, four, four three, three, two, two one. one. Fight, fight, robots, fight. Robots, fight. All right, Hive Lighter here has these dual horizontal weapons, and Ravioli is going into kill. Wow, ripping off some of the wheels off of this mini bot. Wow, incredible mobility from Ravioli. Almost uncontrollable speed from Pazzo Ragazzo and Ravioli. Here we go, Hive Lighter again attacking that mini bot. Ravioli here uh, popping Hive Lighter on its head. And it sounds like perhaps horizontal weapons on Hive Lighter are down. Incredible. Yeah, look at that. That is some damage. There's parts coming off of these robots. Hive Lighter's weapons, that's not even in the housing anymore, Chris. Hive Lighter's looking very impaired. Ravioli is looking bulletproof here. Yeah, Ravioli has this one in the can. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Minute 40 left. You can see one of those weapons from Hive Lighter just sitting wow. there on the floor. Ripping off now wheels from Hive Lighter. No, the wheels from Hive Lighter are still on. I uh, think those oh, may have been from you the might, mini it's, Yeah, that. Here we <laughs> no, go. Yeah, that's. There's just debris yeah, that's stuck inside of the body of Hive Lighter. Amazing. It looks like an episode of Hoarders inside of this uh, inside of this cage right now. I can hear the count out here. Nick Buckholtz, referee Nick, is uh, counting them out. Two, one, that's a knockout. Let's wow. go. Knockout. Ravioli convincing win for its uh, Norwalk Ravioli. Havoc debut. All right, Chris, All right, I think I'm we're stepping go away. To a, a VIP tour. We have uh, a very special uh, announcer stepping in, and oh I will hand goodness. it off. Wow. Okay. All right, Pazzo Ragazzo here with Ravioli with a convincing win, earning that knockout in just two minutes. Absolutely amazing performance. And look at this. It is Mammoth Captain Ricky Willems. Round of applause, oh, Ricky. Thank you. Let's go. How are you doing today? Dude, I'm doing really well. Good, good. Now, uh, you know, all these lucky people here in the audience, they can go out into the Bot Museum and they can see your marvelous creation out there. Oh, thank you. Mammoth. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's uh, out in the Bot Museum. It's there. I wouldn't recommend, uh, you know, touching it necessarily, but you right. can get real close. You can take like a mammoth selfie. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Ricky, I am so happy that you're here. And uh, how how is the titanium stage going so far? Oh, the titanium stage is an experience. Yeah, it is. Uh, 
They have had a lot of good fights so far. Only a few fights, but all of them have been interesting. We, we saw Guillotine. Uh, Guillotine. Yeah, Guillotine is a really interesting it's amazing. robot. Yeah. Uh, especially, I believe, it's first time robot, right? That's correct. Yeah. yeah. Brand new robot Fantastic. from West Virginia. Yeah. Oh, West Virginia. Um, now, wait, did, did Guillotine win its first fight? Guillotine did not. It uh, went up against, uh, was it Hyperlinks or yeah. Multilinks? It's like the Hyper multi bot. Yes, yes. Right. And, and that's, a, that's a tough first draw. Yeah. It right. seemed like maybe. Oh, you know oh what? Gosh. Let's let's take a look. We can see it. Okay, all right. The this magic is gonna of television. Be a replay from the Titanium uh, Arena, Titanium Stage. Okay, here we go. All right, Guillotine versus Hyperlink. This is uh, not Guillotine versus Hyperlink. No, this is a different um, fight. Still, still entertaining and still Cage Six. I believe that's a fight going on right now. All right. Searching, they're searching the archives. The archives. It. It's it's funny because you throw it immediately into the archives, yeah. and it's not sorted yet, so right, it's not where true. you'd expect. It's it's like a shoebox where you put your receipts. Guillotine is an incredibly cool robot. I was talking to the builder. Mm -hmm. It weighs 4.95 pounds. I was wondering about that. It is a massive yeah. machine, considering. And it's got this super tall egg beater, and like these very tiny like shuffling legs. Mm -hmm. um, I, I had questions about the performance of their forks. Their forks looked problematic. Do you think that that was perhaps a factor in that fight? I think the biggest factor was their little shuffling feet mm. weren't shuffling quite as much. Okay. They really had a hard time taking the fight to their opponents. Right. And that uh, uh, Hyperlinks was able to just kind of get all around them, uh, push from the sides. And I think if they could just get that tweaked a little bit such that they could, uh, you know, come harder and come... Uh, uh, come faster on their opponents, yeah. that uh, they'd really have a formidable machine. So we'll see if they can resolve that in the pits. Now look at this. Oh, it's Chris Moran. Hello, Chris. Chris, that's the kind of positivity that we love to see. You can see, <laughs> look at this incredible setup. Yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing. We it's have just an incredible AV setup here. Our production room could legitimately live stream any sports competition you can think of. Across the planet, very low latency. It's amazing. Uh, frankly, I think you could you could operate the Pentagon out of our <laughs> yeah. out of our stream room. It's it's stunning, and even even just the stream room uh, for the Titanium stage is. Oh, fantastic. here we go. Oh, this is yes. Time. This is Guillotine versus Hyperlinks. This is the fight that I wanted to see. Oh, I'm sorry to deprive you, Luke, but I got to watch it first, and uh, just the weapon on Guillotine is really impressive. Wow. Good hit there from Guillotine. Did they kill that first minibot? Was that minibot just dead for the rest of this match? And, and this is, I'm sorry, say again, Luke? Did, did, that, did that first minibot, is it just dead? No, no, this is actually really incredible teamwork that happens later. Calvin okay. Evo, one of the drivers, now I don't know which hyperlinks he was driving, uh, but I'm guessing it's the one here that does this amazing maneuver and rescues its friend. Oh, uh, that's good. Um, now, it takes a couple of tries. It wasn't an immediate success, but still, to be able to go in, self-write your buddy, go in and, and be firing on all cylinders again, really nice. a, uh, a nice you gotta, you gotta yeah. love it when Calvin, you know, you can kind of ask him, if, would you like to drive my other robot? I mean, just like the size difference between these these robots is just so delightful. You got a five pound robot versus like little two and a half pound robots. Yeah. Oh, I see hyperlinks because they're miniature lynxes. Exactly. Oh, I listen. I'm slow, but eventually I get there, Ricky. Listen, right. it's early somewhere. <laughs> Hyperlinks built by Peter Garnash, builder of Ablation. Uh, you know, literally wrote a book on combat robotics. And uh, wow, this is, it's a pretty tough draw for your first rookie fight to go up against Calvin Eba and Peter Garnash. It is. Not only was it a tough draw, but it went to the judges. I mean, that was. I, listen, when you were no describing shame. like this kind of impaired mobility from guillotine, I was thinking I was just going to be totally dead. That's no, actually pretty good. It's not bad. Yeah, no, it's it, great. It's just when you go up with something as mobile and uh, as, uh, well, mobile is the right word. When you go up with something as mobile as uh, hyperlinks, you can't be okay at moving. You've also got a complete rookie, true rookie, facing mm -hmm. off against people who have easily a decade of experience it's, in the box. It's a good point. And remember... All right, oh, let's check out this. Cage 3 here. We've got loaded in. Oh my gosh, it's Milk Tank Eds versus Emotional Damage. Exciting. Wow. Okay, the, the cow onesie is finally, finally paid off, all right? 
Now we're up to Emotional three onesies, damage. Ashley. I want to see like four, five, milk tank six. Cat. Here we go. All right. Eight, seven, seven, six, six five, five, four, three, three two, two, one. Fight, fight robots, robots, fight. fight. And away they go. All right, milk tank Ed, uh It's got this giant cow themed, uh, you know, color scheme here. Ricky? Does yes. the audience know what Milk Tank Set's surprise is? Someone's going to be surprised and delighted here in just a second. Let's go, Milk Tank Set. Mm. Emotional damage looks very sad there, Ricky. Yeah, emotional damage might be having a bad day. <laughs> or they might just be carrying through bad days of days past. Yeah, yeah. Here we go. There it yeah! is. Milkshake gets the flamethrower. Just flame broiled emotional damage here. Look at that go. You have got to hope that emotional damage, uh, you know, has some protected uh, armor. Uh, it's, it's calloused, Luke. Emotional damage <laughs> over the years has built up a level of callous that will protect it in situations like this. Incredible. I can't believe it. Milk tank out there, running a, uh, a butane tank here. Yeah, that balloon full of butane. Actually, I don't know. I'm making that up. But I hope it's full of butane, and I hope that its own flamethrower ignites itself. We see uh, some pretty impaired drive here from emotional damage. Well, you know, with enough emotional damage, there can be drinking and driving. There can be all <laughs> sorts of downsides. And I think we might just, be seeing repercussions. I feel like I feel like I just have a message, you know, like emotional damage, it gets better. Yeah. You know, like stick with it. Just find help, really. Yeah, right. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you know, like uh Whoa! Oh, there's the glitter bomb! The glitter bomb is gone now. Look Bits at the glitter in there. Sparkle sparkle. Wow, the glitter bomb serving as a, a kind of oil slick. It for is, Milk Tank at. It is glorious. Wow. You gotta look, love that. Did you see that tire just flicking away the mini bot like it wasn't even there? All right, Milk Tank at landing a great pin here against emotional damage. Yeah, utter control. It is. <laughs> thank you. Richard, thank you. I love it. 35 seconds left. All right. And I can't believe it. I think Milk Tank at might be winning this fight. It so happens. far. Every single time I've put on the team uh, jersey, it's, you know, it's, it's worked out. You know, Luke, you mentioned that you were wearing a onesie. I hadn't noticed. I thought you were just naked. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. With some sort of interesting skin disorder. All right, it looks like they have escaped the countout. This one will go to the judges, technically. That's the match. I think this is very clearly a win for Milk Tank X. I think you're right, Luke. But the judge's decision is an important part of the process, and we're not going to skip over it. We're going to wait for their official ruling. And look at this. We've got Ashley here wearing the Milk Tank outfit. We've got Evan Arias wearing the Milk Tank outfit. You've got me it, wearing the Milk Tank it outfit. It spreads like a pox. You I'm, gotta get you a milk tank. I, no, I'm worried I'm gonna wake up tomorrow morning and involuntarily. All right. So be... clearly everyone has onesies. I know you have an animal onesie. What what animal is it, Ricky? There, is it a mammoth? It's not. You know, I thought about it. <laughs> the the idea has struck me. Uh, no, there's. I can't say that I own a onesie per se, but I do have a uh, lion towel with a hood. Oh. Yeah, it like wraps around you like it's a really? robe. Yeah. I, I thought they only made those for children, Richie. Uh, Rich listen, <laughs> Richie, how, how? Okay, wow. Because you think was, I'm a child, yeah. I've been demoted to <laughs> Richie. Been, you've been demoted to Richie. <laughs> I see, okay. Yeah. Were you ever a Richie? I was never a Richie. Okay, well, we could start. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's not. <laughs> let's avoid that. We're going to go to a All replay right, here and see replay. this beautiful oh. flame. Delightful. Yeah, and then a beautiful cloud of glitter. Minibot going flying. I think the Minibot's really into amateur uh, flight, actually. We're going to go to Lindsay for the judge's decision. Lindsay, what? Oh, there's wow. more cows. Look at this. Hello. This wow. I Head to toe, literally. Yeah. 
Yeah, do no, have, I've. Do you uh, have milk tank socks on? Shoes? <laughs> I got, I got flip flops. I got everything. Good. Literally head to toe. Yeah, and I am delighted to say that Milk Tankette is the unanimous winner Let's of that go. match. Uh, well deserved. <laughs> I Let's think that's go. well deserved. All right, awesome. Incredible. All right, Milk mm -hmm. Tankette, you gotta love that. We're gonna go ahead and go cage four Whoa, right another now. Another big That's... box fight. Yeah. What? Yeah, we've got uh, another uh, couple robots to see. Oh, this is Kimonote versus Psycho. Okay, Kimonote here uh, traveled all the way from Mexico. Psycho wow. is built by Sawblaze Captain Jameson Go. Psycho has Kimonote <laughs> versus Kimonote. Psycho. Now, Psycho is already qualified seven, for the December six, Championship. Five, Kemenote is searching four, for its invitation. Three, two, one. Fight. Robots fight. Here we go. Good speed right out of the box from Psycho. Ooh, Popping Kemenote in the air. Tap out. All right. And look at this. This is a tap out from Kemenote. Sawblaze Captain Jameson Go is your winner here with Psycho. That was a pretty quick tap out, Luke. No uh, Brett interference. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's a very polite tap out. Yeah, I think it's a very tactical tap out, yeah. frankly. We, yeah. It's early in the day. Right. That robot's going to want to go deep. They understand that Psycho hits hard. Right. If, if they had kept going with that fight after a rough start, they yeah. might have destroyed their robot before they had a chance to get a couple of wins under their belt Look later at this. in the day. Oh, Ripping my. off the back plate, there's just wires sticking out of the back of Kemenote. You know, that might have been less tactical and just more fear. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, listen, Jameson Go has built this absolutely gorgeous four-wheel drive vertical spinner. He took it all the way to the end um, when he made his Norak Havoc debut. Mm -hmm. uh, fought off, uh, you know, fought against Marco Antonio Maggiolaro in his miniature version of Minotaur. Yeah, what a fight that was, too. It was too. incredible. It was incredible. Um, so, yeah, absolutely go back and watch that fight if you haven't seen it. Yeah, folks, it's, it's available on YouTube. It's definitely worth the watch. Really, the whole the whole event was a pretty great event. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. So, all right, uh, we're gonna head over to Cage Two. I see loaded in. We've got Eruption, our top ranked robot here today in the field in the Are Beatles. They now? Uh, Brian Boxel has already qualified for December. This is just getting driving practice in here for fun, hoping to win a thousand dollars in another golden dumpster. Facing off against Mirror Finish which is a brand new kit bot. This is uh, literally, uh, if you look on the back of this kit bot, it is uh, version three and ver like uh, number three and number four ever produced. Wow. Um, this is a brand new kit bot uh, from Husky Robotics based in Utah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So uh, if by some miracle mirror finish wins, go and Google Husky Robotics on Etsy. Yeah, I mean, this could be the moment mirror that makes finish. Mirror finish versus <laughs> right. the new meta. All right. Eight, seven, six. Let's go, Brian. Five, Some four, excitement box three, side. Two, two, one. Fight, fight robots, robots fight. fight. Oh, good speed right on the box of both of these robots. Wow, oh, no! look at that. Eruption. Roofing mirror finish. Yeah, but mirror finish in that first exchange did well itself. But look at this. I think the weapon on eruption might be down. Ricky, magic impossible has happened. Magic mirror is finish. happening in front of us. What is happening? Literally, Tap what is out. happening, Ricky? Bravo. The winner what? is mirror finish. Okay, immediately in go and Google Husky Robotics on Etsy. Husky Robotics has already sold out. <laughs> Wow. In the 12 seconds since that tap out happened, all right, they're full up on on bids for the next 12 years. Brand new robot, mirror finish, hitting eruption. I wonder if that maybe eruption, maybe that was like a self inflicted. I don't, I don't think so. I mean, really? it's nice of you to give them that credit, but that looks like a chunk out of the bottom of eruption, and you do not self inflict a chunk That's true. out of the bottom of your own robot. Incredible. Mike Mullinex I, here I, with Mirror Finish. I'm stunned. Wow. Mike, I am just as surprised as you are. Incredible. Mike. 
Wow. So Mike needs a paper bag to breathe in and out of right now. I, I think. was talking to Mike last night and he mm -hmm. was saying, yeah, I'm facing eruption. Can you imagine? Like it's the top ranked robot at Norwalk. Yeah. It's amazing. It's Which got is this custom hub motor. the top ranked period. Right. At this right. point. Yeah, it went absolutely undefeated in its most recent outing. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, wow. Losing to a kit bot from Utah. Right. I just, you're losing to anyone from Utah just seems extra hard <laughs> to, to cope with. Yeah, I apologize to anyone watching from Utah. I, no, I just yeah, have I low don't expectations well, just, for your state. <laughs> <that's> All right. <terrible. laughs> okay, wow, look at that. Just amazing kinetic energy transfer here. Yeah. I really wonder what happened here. I Let's see. Oh, there you go. Yeah, okay, wow. They made a weapon on weapon engagement, and Mirror Finish survived. It paused. That replay paused a half a second. Just they were this far away <laughs> yeah. before the like coup de grace, blah, blah, blah. Amazing. Blah. It's, Amazing. I, I, every, oh, man, what a fight that was. Okay, wow. Uh, is Mirror Finish a robot to watch? Uh, <laughs> All right. Okay. Man, All right, this is Sucker boots. Punch versus Crush. Sucker Punch is the brand new robot from Calvin Eba from Southern California. He drives Mad Catter on BattleBots. This is uh, the red robot there facing off against Crush, which is a relatively new egg beater spinner, fairly conventional, uh, driven by a local mail carrier here from Norwalk. Mixtape is a very interesting robot because it has this huge fan in the middle that sucks the robot down uh, onto the uh, the plywood. Right, an incredible amount of downforce, and, and that allows it to win more exchanges than it otherwise would. It doesn't go flying as often, at least if that fan is working. Yeah, Calvin Eba said that he's built, um, uh, built Sucker Punch to defeat Lynx, his championship robot. Lynx is arguably the best Beetleweight in North America, probably the best Beetleweight on the planet. Mixtape, looks like it still needs a, a little bit of uh, work to kind of work out some of these gremlins. I mean, it, it can get there, it can get there. But also, I don't know if I'm slow on the draw or if everyone else has got this as well, but Sucker Punch, Literally sucking itself oh, wow. down to the floor. Ricky, I am I am an and, idiot. And, I had no idea. And then it punches you. Yeah, there you go. That's it's a one-two combo. Here we go. We've got uh, Crush here pushing Sucker Punch up against the rail. One of the interesting things about this kind of downforce, like sucking motion, is that it it means that you have now kind of like two planes of physics, you know, because like right. to go straight, you are, but you're also being sucked down to the floor. It's kind of interesting. Luke, what I really want to see is one of these robots get popped up into the floor and then just faster than gravity, whomp, <laughs> its way right back down to the floor. Right, yeah. That's, yeah. I want to see these weird physics behaviors once it's in the air. Right. I think the kind of interesting thing is like Lynx is known for just being a very tough kind of chaotic robot. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, surprising nobody. Crush. Ah, uh, yeah. No, Crush I was think, the winner there. Listen, when you try to do something new, you try to do something experimental, there's some growing pains sometimes. And I think Sucker Punch is someone to watch out for, or yeah. a robot to watch out for, I should say. Uh, yeah. But it's clear it's not quite there yet, or it wasn't in this match. So. All right, let's, uh, let's go on over to Cage 3. You see Angel the doll, he's got a little raccoon on his transmitter. Oh. Now, uh, do you know why he likes raccoons, Ricky? I, I don't. Because raccoons I... love dumpsters, Ricky. Killer oh. Angel versus Hurt Caboose. What? All right, we've got Eight, Hurt Caboose here seven, in the pink corner. Six, Killer Angel here five, in the blue. Four, three, two, one. Fight, robots fight. Oh, good speed from Hurt Caboose crossing the box, bringing it to Killer Angel. Hurt Caboose is running an egg beater spinner, facing off against a vertical in Killer Angel. You can see this is gonna be a lot about those wedges and, and who can bully each other so they can get the weapon engagement that they need. Right. So far, that's Hurt Caboose. Really just able to put Killer Angel where it wants in the arena. Oh, that is a bad spot this. for Killer Angel. Killer Angel's on its head. Hurt Caboose coming in, 
forcing Killer Angel to burn up its one save from the house bot. Yep. But saved it is, and another shot it has. Looks like the weapon on Killer Angel is down. Hurt Caboose is still very mobile. Angel, you've now uh, pushed your opponent up onto its head once again with no way to self-right. Angel is now just voluntarily keeping this, this fight going. Wow. Oh, yeah. I will say, while Hurt Caboose is doing a lovely job moving Killer Angel around, I don't see a lot of chunks or, uh, or missing pieces yet on Killer Angel. Right. Oh, look at this. Killer Angel's weapons come back. That's surprising. Sometimes something gets sh shaken loose, huh? Well, Luke, the other thing that can happen is you go weapon to weapon and it just starts spinning on its own. Right, yeah. And, uh, we'll have to wait a little longer to see whether or not that weapon is actually working or if it's just uh, spinning in the breeze. I think that's a good call out. I think that was just, just a dead weapon spinning. Yep, the weapon on Killer Angel is down. Here we've got a little picture in picture here of Angel Vidal. Look at his excitement. His excitement is always just incredible at every event. Yes. It looks like these two robots have uh, entangled one another. We're going to send over the house bot, see if we can separate them. They're cuddling, Luke, and it's rude to interrupt them. <laughs> Hurt Kaboo, still very mobile. Looks basically unscathed. Angel, just go upstairs, you know, charge up those batteries one more time. Pet your trash panda. Pet your little trash, your trash panda, <laughs> exactly. 30 seconds left here in this fight. Now yeah, we've got Drive on Killer Angel. And uh, really just Killer Angel's one and only hope is that uh, they can outlast Hurt Caboose here. Yeah, I don't think it's going to happen for him as we close in oh, on wow. the final Oh, wow, look at this. They're seconds. stuck together. Nope. Yeah, wow. OK. This one's going to go to the judges, technically. Yeah, I Two, think... one. That's the match. Drive to the door if you can. This one goes to the judges. I will say Killer Angel did not stop moving. Um, and rather, it's drive did not stop working. Yeah. They uh, kept aggressive. Yep. They did the best with the, the cards they were dealt. Yeah. I don't think there's anything to be ashamed of there. It's just. Well, I don't think anyone should feel ashamed I mean, about a combat robot. It's, it's possible. I haven't seen it yet. there's shame that's involved with combat robotics, Ricky? Shouldn't be. <laughs> but listen, the minute that we say no one should be ashamed, <laughs> someone's going to show up yeah. and uh, do something yeah. that they shouldn't. So let's not tempt fate. Let's just say that we're pleased that there is nothing yet to be ashamed of here, <laughs> and that we hope that that trend continues. All right. Uh, I you can know? see uh, that this one will go to the judges, technically. You're just slipping those we, technically in there like it's a... Uh, I mean, listen, these are foregone conclusions. Mm -hmm. I, I am incapable of feigning surprise because this is going to be a 16-hour live stream. Yeah, you know? it's true. you got to reserve your surprise feigning All right, for when Lindsay, Lindsay has the results. Luke, you're going to be shocked. OK, I'm ready. Here's my shocked face. <laughs> we have a unanimous no, no, decision. No, this is Luke. Kyle is elsewhere. <laughs> uh, her caboose wins. Wow. Oh, oh. Three and oh. Wow, OK. Unanimous judge's decision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unanimous. I will tell you, um, I am very excited about this next fight. Cage 2 loaded in. We have Calvin Eba and Mixtape facing off against Jamie Shalcross and Argon Lights. Mixtape. Uh, made the highlight real. I right. think that we we cut the highlight before the event was out because this robot is that incredible. You are going to love this fight. We're we're in for for something really special here. Fingers crossed. Now I'm not uh, I'm not familiar with its competitor, Luke. Can you tell me a little bit about it? Jamie Shalcross from Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. And uh, Jamie made her Norwalk Havoc debut in May as part of the New Bots um, series. Right, right. And, uh, she was it with the same us. robot? Yes. Same robot. Yep, All Argon right. Lights. I must have And it did well. Argon like, it, it, it won um, several fights, and it, it kind of ended its day in the middle of the bracket. OK, a very respectable start. And I mean, like, she has an active weapon. So in theory, unless she gets burnt into a just uh, one single piece of plastic or something Wormhole-esque. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Jamie has a pretty good shot here against Calvin. 
Argon Lights well, we're gonna find versus Mixtape. Oh, Mixtape. Let's go. Eight, seven, Let's six, go, Calvin. Five, four, three, three two, two, one. one. Fight. Fight, robots, robots fight. fight. Yeah! They go. What an amazing flame. This is an incredible fame flame. This is one of the biggest flames we've ever seen at Norwalk in any of our boxes. This just so happens to be a Beetleweight flamethrower. Incredible. Jamie Shawcross not afraid at all to go weapon on weapon, face first. Look at it. It looks like Jamie might be on fire, Ricky. It's such, uh, you may be a little prescient earlier in saying that uh, a pile of molten plastic? What is happening? Just look at I that see thing. fire coming out of Argon lights, Ricky. Yeah, the tires have caught fire, Luke. The wow. The tires, as soon as they start to melt, they become a flammable. And I think that's look what we've at seen this. here. Let's go, Calvin. I can't, I, my eyes don't know where to go. Do they go to the <laughs> robot? Do they go to the screen? Do they go to the drivers? I mean, listen, we are standing cage side. Like, this is perfect for a cage side match. Like, you can feel the heat uh, you coming truly off of this can. box. I put suntan lotion on earlier, and I'm glad for it. Argon Lights is on fire. I am delighted, Ricky. <sighs> Wow! You know, the amazing thing, Luke, is that if your tires start melting, the traction benefit is immense! Wow! <laughs> I can't believe it! The tires are on fire! They are spinning out! You can see fire coming off of the tires! Amazing! Luke, are we wafting yet? <laughs> I don't think... We should all just in here just try and hold our breaths, okay? Like, just a little while. <laughs> In seriousness, I am very grateful for the uh, smoke evacuation systems that are hooked to these ro robot enclosures right now. Because Look at this. That is Archon intense. Lights is fully on fire. Amazing. Look, it's... <laughs> Mixtape is out of gas, I think, Ricky, and uh, Argon Lice is just on fire. It spent it well, I'll tell, I'll give him that. Incredible. Argon Lice, uh, driving, but that's a lot of fire, Luke. And look at this. Look, I that, think that Jamie may have outlasted Calvin Eba and Mixtape. Yeah, I think, I think they may have done it, but at what cost, Luke? <laughs> <laughs> Throw that robot in the trash, Jamie. Wow! That and those evil red eyes just kind of glowing in the background. Wow! Do you think Jamie Shawcross! Look Bravo. at that! Calvin oh, is and off it's of, back! And look at this, there's a little reserve of fuel in mixtape. Four, three, two, one. That That's is it. This one goes to the judges. Calvin Eba, Jamie Shawcross, an incredible fight. Wow, and you can see Jamie, she is just floored. Incredible. Just. All right, listen, Ricky. I like fire a lot. I, I don't know how public knowledge that is, but <laughs> I, I try to be, sit here and be a, a, a commentator. Yeah. But then there's pretty fire over there, and I just kind of look over, and I, my brain stops a little. All right, uh, Ricky, I'm going to switch out here because I'm going to go on a VIP PID tour. Oh. Well, congratulations right. to whoever is being led by uh, Mr. Stangle. But uh, let's, let's do it. Well, you can see a uh, small avalanche of carbon dioxide fire extinguisher. Uh, wow, look at the melting. The uh, pulleys on the side of that robot just melted into oblivion. And you can see where that started. Right off the bat, Mixtape coming in with a uh, an incredible amount of flame. And it is so hard to have a robot that effectively uses a flamethrower as a weapon. And you couldn't ask for a better example of how that can be done right than Mixtape. That is a lot of fire. It stays on. And the key to a good fire, right, is to have non-stop flame on your opponent so it has the time to build those temperatures, to melt those parts, 
And oh, well, hello. Welcome I know. to the stage. What a surprise, not in a cow suit. No, a little I, bit more hair. I, Here I am. I think that's probably, I think we've reached peak cow suit. Yes. We might want to, I don't know if we need to dial it back, but I don't want to go any further. I've never seen so many, and I've been to a lot of farms. I used to live in Binghamton, uh, so, you do know. Do people dip cow suits to make the cows more comfortable, to blend oh, in? No. I meant actual cows. Oh, okay. Like, the cows, cow I guess, patterns, are wearing, yes. cows, cows are wearing cow suits in a sense. Yes, yes. I'm wearing a human suit. Right, I know. I, we, we, we match, though. I, right. like, I think we have the same vibe going on. I wanted to wait till they put the fire out to sit down. Um, but here we are, and it looks like Lindsay has our judges' yeah. results. Let's go over. Hey, Allie. Hey, good to see you back. By the way, if you need a hat, I got you covered. Oh, perfect. Uh, not a full suit, but <laughs> the unanimous decision for the last fight is for a mixtape. Really? Yeah. Right. It yeah. seemed touch and go at the end there, but Calvin pulled it out at the end. If I had to guess, I would assume that at the end of that match, mixtape Starting up again, giving it that last little hurrah. Yeah, I think so. Probably oh. makes an impression. Yeah, and that's what we love about these competitions is it comes down to those moments where we have no idea. No, not over till it's over. Nope. And, and every last moment counts. Yeah. All so. right. Who do we have coming up next? It's a good question. I uh, currently see some box three yep. or uh, cage three uh, loaded. And Malice. Yep, all right, cage three, looks like kickback and malice. Winner's bracket round two of the three pound division. Malice kickback oh. versus malice. Gotta be careful not to speak over the voice of God there, but Eight, malice a seven, egg beater spinner, six, I believe. Six, five, Ooh. four, three, two, one. Fight, robots fight. And kick back a vertical spinner. Malice immediately taking it to his opponent. Chunks coming out of that robot. Spark flying. Both robots still operational, but uh, that is an impressive start by Malice, wouldn't you say? Ooh! Popped up in the air. Those are some big weapon-to-weapon -weapon hits, and it seems to have taken a uh, toll on Kickback. Kickback now having some trouble moving. Looks like that weapon is down. Wow, oh. big hits. Uh-oh. Oh, and don't take it to, don't take it to Brett. Listen, most robots, when they try and take it to Brett, don't have a good day. Tap out. Oh, a tap out the there. The winner is Malice. What did you see go wrong there? I don't think so much went wrong as much as Malice just came hard and immediately did what they were meant to do. Uh, that's, that's one of those times where you see a, um, an interaction between two types of robots, and when mm -hmm. you have that drum spinner that can get under its opponent uh, and just consistently beat the weapon exchange, uh, as soon as that happens, it's a bad time for your opponent. And what do we think about the damage? Do we think they're going to be able to repair, rebuild there? Well, I, I can see from here, we've got a big bend to the front of kickback. Its, it's mm. front wedge is just no longer a wedge. It's, it's a bow tie. And uh, that's something that can probably be hammered out. OK. Like, that, that's repairable. Mm -hmm. But there's also, uh, I think the weapon axle is just removed from where it's supposed to be. We'll see in the replay if we can see that happen. Um, just a couple of big hits. You can see the, I think that's where it loses its wedge ability. Um, yeah, just every exchange that Malice has, it's able to get under its opponent and, and win that exchange. That last hit there that you saw is where- Yeah, right behind where that wedge was damaged. Mm -hmm. and, and they might just have to cut that wedge off before the next match. Sometimes you need to, it's the only way to do it. All right, this is good to know. I'm a robot novice, few competitions right. in, That's but I need right. to learn more every time. That's what you're for here. All right, it looks like we're going to cage one. Mm -hmm. Oh. Semtex versus Huge. I'm a big fan of Huge. Just, uh, yeah, it's sizable for sure. All right, Yuge is trying to qualify for December. Yuge uh, obviously built in the style of the of, of Huge itself. Yes. But uh, you know we don't need to explain that. But if I remember right, Yuge and Huge 
had uh, had some connection as well. There was some builder Net. connection between Jonathan, mm -hmm. the huge builder, and Huge's, I don't know the name of Huge's builder, unfortunately, mm -hmm. but I believe there was some coaching back and forth. And uh, I'm interested to see how well that pays off. Samtex versus Huge. <laughs> you the voice of God seems so almost uh, surprised. Eight, yeah. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robots, fight. And away we go. That's a powerful, uh, powerful drum there on Semtex. But it's going to be hard. Ooh, look at those exchanges. It's going to be hard for Semtex to hit things of value. It's going to turn into a lot of weapon-to-weapon -weapon hits, which means that this match is going to be a lot about how durable the weapon systems are in these robots. It's going to be it's such two different, completely styled robots here. Yeah. It almost looks like Simtex just slides right under. Yeah. Slides right under. It really is a uh, uh, two superlative robots, a, a compact mm -hmm. robot versus yep. a immense robot. And when we talk about the meta here, you know, the things that are the most popular, uh, this is where we like to see those, those kind of decisions be made. Mm -hmm. The weapon's slowing down on huge, but only temporarily. You know, even for a huge style robot, those are some thin tires on huge. Yeah, if you feel them, and they almost don't feel as durable as you would think, right, for a 12-pound robot, but that's what makes it so fixable up there. And, and pliable, too. You know, yeah. it can, oh, something moves easily. Uh, if something is, is easy to flex, then uh, it can get out of its own way when, uh, when an impact happens from an opponent. Oh, I think uh, Semtex uh -oh. is having some trouble now. This is a perfect opportunity for you to get in there. The oh. winner is huge. 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 So, uh, what were they? At the, what happened there? I, I don't know. We're going to have to find out. Maybe they can go cage side for us. Maybe not. But clearly some sort of drive system issue. Yeah. I, I don't know what. Ugh. Selfishly, hate mm -hmm. to see that. Love to see when they catch on fire or some type of major damage because I'm not the one repairing them. Right. But right. when they just kind of die out in the corner like that. Well, ugh. you know, it happens. A lot of times that happens anyway. Mm -hmm. And there's just a hit so quickly afterwards that you don't realize it. That's true. You know, there's a, there's a lot of background damage happening that it's hard for us as spectators to see. And it's only when they go up to the pits and inspect yes. and tear apart that they're really going to know for sure what went wrong. And I'm going to spend some time up there today, which is a little bit different than last time. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited to see what goes into these repairs in 20 minutes' time. I could not imagine. If you if you want to dive in there and find out specifically, I, will. I would love to know. All right. We're well, going we go to go cage two now, yes. right? Who do we have in cage two here? It looks like Project Liftoff mm -hmm. and Cross. Cross. Am I looking at the... I, that's, uh, My vision, does. not great. No, it, well, it's the polycarbonate. It, it Am could I be, missing a, a vowel there? Maybe. Crisis. <laughs> it crisis. is crisis. Yeah. Versus Project Liftoff. It's okay. I swear we can read, folks. Eight, seven, it's just there's a six, lot in between. Five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robots fight. And away they go. Project Liftoff, a melty brain spinner, I believe. It is 100% weapon, and it is horrifying. I mean, that's what you want your Roomba to actually look like and move like across your house. Not if Minus you the blades. Oh. Uh oh. <laughs> or, I take that back? Uh, yeah. All right, Project Liftoff doing its best to try and free itself from the wall without using its unstick, but I don't know how feasible that's going to be. I oh. don't think that's the way it ended up. Crisis, a really uh, sleek design. I know. Uh. There's a pin. The pins, of course, are only allowed to... to uh, to be held for a limited amount of time. Oh, Ooh, I see a piece of... I believe that's a piece of Crisis. Crisis. Yeah. Crisis uh, 
brought to us by uh, is a, a cat-themed team. I'm trying to recall the, the team name. But uh, that is not a good piece for Crisis to be missing. Oh, Project Liftoff stuck under a Brett. This is an interesting dilemma. Does it count as an unstick if you're Brett, stuck? If you're stuck Brett. on the yeah. Nope. And I believe it does. But oh. uh, man, the power in that Melty Brain spinner. For those that don't know, Melty Brains have uh, wheels that spin the entire body of the robot. Not a shell, not a ring, not a weapon blade, oh. but the entire body. Which means three full pounds of impact will occur. And you can see the damage that is done to Crisis. Crisis is falling apart. I know. What a change of events here. Oh, wow. Oh, is that a piece of. Crisis oh, is no longer Crisis. planar. Oh, no. Tap oh. out. The winner is Project Liftoff. What, what a hit after hit there. Yeah, unexpected turn of events a little bit there when we thought Project Liftoff might be kind of stuck yeah, in the corner and now just dominating that. It was a dicey apart. moment. It was. Crisis, but, yeah. But the thing is, Project Liftoff, it just hits so hard. Well, oh, can you imagine that thing coming at you? I mean, I can feel it from here. We're, uh -huh. what, 20, 30 feet away, and I can feel the impacts from a three-pound robot. Here in the replay, we can see some of those impacts as they as they go through. Now, these first few, um, Crisis, you know, coming out okay. Uh, but as time goes on and that, that chassis gets warped. Ooh, yeah, and look at that hit. Yeah, it's, it's back like a... up, running. It's like a Frisbee. It's like someone balancing With plates blades. at a carnival. Mm -hmm. Don't throw that at anyone. No, please don't. No. I... Yeah, I, it's nerve, <laughs> it's nerve wracking. Honestly, it's one thing when they stay close to the bottom, the floor of the arena, but when they're popping up and then they're flying at you and hitting the glass. Yes, uh, luckily we know we've got like four sheets of that protective yeah, it's, metal it's or glass in there. Yeah, feet of protective yeah, so material. We, no, it's it's it is two ninety five percent sure we'll be okay. Right. Uh, other than our nerves, there might be a heart attack. Backlash wave versus. Pensive prosciutto. Oh, I like that name. Yeah. Eight. Very seven. Name. Very six, Italian. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Fight. Robots fight. All right, we are over here in H3. Away they go. Not a lot of moves from our ring spinner here. I was saying, did we just see a similar robot? Tap oh. out. The winner is Backlash Wave. Well, that was a quick one. Hmm. When the robots, they fly, and the combatants die, that's prosciutto. No, a, uh, <laughs> that's a big thumbs up and a big smile for someone who didn't have something <laughs> go their way. But uh, oh. you can see here, uh, this is another ring spinning robot, and it's just so much rotating mass. It's hard to keep, stay balanced. Yeah. If something goes wrong early, uh, there's not a lot you can do other than tape, tap out, take it up to the pits, try and fix it. And, and come back uh, stronger come next back time. Stronger. Mm. There is definitely something strange that happened there that's going to have to be remedied, and let's just hope he can get it done in the pits. Yeah, I think they can. I, I think yeah. that was a strategic tap-out move so that they could do exactly that. All right, looks like we're going on over to cage number one. What do we got in cage number one? Prometa I heard Meta versus Kronos. Yeah, Prom had a, a uh, always an intimidating robot. Kronos, I'm interested to see the, the way this matchup goes, right? Because when you've got Promheta bringing that amount of kinetic energy mm -hmm. over and over again, one of the things that, that matters is how quickly you can get back on your feet after exchanges and bring it to your opponent again. Like, basically, how, how quickly can you settle yourself, right yourself, get, get situated, and get back into the fight, and I think that might be a big factor. Kronos in this exchange. Well, versus Promheta. Eight, 
seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robots fight. And away they go. We've got a spooky uh, cage right now. Very dark. <laughs> For an added challenge, you yeah, have to right. fight your robot in complete darkness. <laughs> Are they going to pause it? Well, well, we're back. All right. Interesting. It's it's Kronos, not Kronos. I know. I definitely pronounced that wrong. All right. Whoa. We are going to start and re stop and re. These these robots stop are being and restart told. the match. That's what it sounds like we're going to do. Probably the most fair thing to do when. All right, they're gonna go back to their corners. Most fair thing to do when the lights aren't working to start it off. Yeah, although valuable you, ten seconds. You hate to see those couple exchanges happen first when there's ambiguity in in the status of the match. So um, hopefully both robots are still functioning at 100%, and it's it's a good feeling for both of them going into the match. Uh, I think we caught it in time, frankly, but yeah. Uh, but technical di difficulties do happen, and, and thankfully we're all pretty flexible. And, and looks like uh, they're checking it out now, just to make sure no major. Yeah, it, it would be uh, fair play, in my opinion, for both competitors to be able to at least glance at their robot, make yeah. sure that it's it's okay, yeah. and has the ability to keep going. So. Yeah, they both appear to be moving fine, from what we can see from the side yep. and uh, here. Yeah, the. You don't hear it as much at home. All right, they are going to get that countdown going. Mm -hmm. I was about to say, you don't hear it as much at home, but there is just a, a veritable symphony of beeping <laughs> that occurs all over the event. I thought I was just hearing things. Well, the, right. that Eight, too. The voices seven, aren't, the, aren't voices? the robots. Six, <laughs> okay. five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robots fight. And away we right, go. Here we go. The real deal. Now again, this is going to be interesting because you've got Promheta, which is a powerful vertical spinner, and Kronos, which is a powerful vertical spinner. But Promheta is a little more stable in that it's a four-wheel drive robot, or it was oh. before it immediately the lost is one of its belts. Kronos. Oh. That's not uh. the way Promheta wanted to start that exchange. Uh, Second exchange too. Yeah, yeah. Just you can Already see there. Already a handshake though, and a. The belt's hmm. just laying on the floor. That's immediately losing one drive side, and it looks like an entire wheel. Is that a wheel missing? Two I don't wheels see the missing. See the wheel. Uh, it might be. I believe Promheta has the option to run more, um, okay, two or four wheels. I just I can't tell from this vantage point if it chose to run two or if two rapidly became disassembled or if they're running two smaller wheels it's so inside you're saying this huge machine huge <laughs> yeah. in a in a relative fashion right right there are more wheels that we cannot see uh, it, it's possible i know they have that option so it, it'd be interesting uh, oh okay. there you are yes there yep. you go. they're running Thank the you. two smaller front wheels uh, right. but you can see that belt that was yes. lost it still means that only three of those wheels maximum were functional. Okay, that's good to know. We're gonna go to the replay, and it's really just that one exchange. Yep, there goes that belt. Uh, you could see a moment ago when Promheta was on its on its belly. Mm -hmm. Those belts are relatively exposed, and when you have a big weapon disc with a lot of reach, the way that Kronos has, uh, it can get up there, it can snipe that belt, it can clip it. Like exactly just, what it did. It's exactly what it did. So. That's, uh, on the one hand, disappointing for Promheta, but on the other hand, that's an easy fix. Okay. So they're going to be able to come back real strong, real fast, charge their batteries, mm -hmm. jump in, and, and just hope that they can outdrive their opponent next time around. All right, we are going to head on over to Cage 3. Who do we have here? Uh, Tothic, Tothic and Hound. Tothic, uh, honestly, has impressed me more and more each, each event. Hound. Versus Tothic. Um, Eight. Hound seven, I'm relatively unfamiliar six, with, but I'm interested five, to see how it goes up four, against its, uh, opponent. Three, again. two, one. Fight, robots, fight. Now, Tothic is uh, what we call a hammer saw robot. They can come over the top with a uh, with an arm that has a disc mounted on it, and in doing that. 
They have the ability to spin up their disc and keep it out of the way until the time is right. Basically, they, they function as a wedge robot up until that, uh, uh, up until they choose for that hammer saw to come oh, into play. Oh, okay. Gives them a lot more options on how to approach a match like this. So, if they get them pinned in the corner, right, that's when they unleash the hammer saw and just start hammering away? Usually that's that's when they would choose Okay. To do. So it's these three claws, I like to call them, in front that do the most of the work until... Until ooh, now. Until now. Now would be exactly the moment that uh -oh. most robot would robotiers would choose. It. However, there is a, if the strategy goes deeper, they could be choosing to not use that weapon until they have it pinned in such a way that their opponent's weapon has gone down. Um, then they can hit with basically invulnerability, right? There's nothing dangerous happening on the other side. Um, frankly, though, I think Tothic may be having weapon trouble. And that's why they didn't use their spinner. Yeah, it's, it's just so tempting to use yeah. the spinner every time you've got a pin like that. You kind of want to have a very good reason not to, uh, to take those opportunities. Especially early in a match when you can do damage that changes the course of the yeah, entire battle. against two robots in the last. That's a good point. We've got a multi-bot in the arena right now. Uh, I can't tell. It doesn't look like the, oh, the mini-bot getting uh, hit by its brother or uh, <laughs> older sibling. Sibling rivalry at its finest. All right, let's see. Yeah, I want a little more attention, Daddy. Please, please. <laughs> All right, we are getting to those final moments of the match. The last 45 seconds, I wonder if we will see that weapon. Well, now... The other thing we should point out here is that the weapon, even in its hammer form, is technically a functional weapon. Mm -hmm. uh, even if the blade is not spinning, just having that come down Pound and whack down your opponent, yeah. that, that does count uh, with the, in the many judges' minds and making a decision of, of how things are going to play out if it goes to the judges. Uh, which, coming down under 20 seconds now, it probably will. Uh, both of these robots very tough-built machines. And yeah, here we go. Last 10 oh. seconds. This is going to go to the judges. We'll see if someone can make a, an impression in the last few moments. But uh, there's your match. Oh, and look, at the last oh, moment. We saw it, so we know it worked. We know it works. At least for a second. It wasn't disabled, but they chose not to use it. Curi a curious approach. It's a bold move. Uh, in words eternal, we're going to see how that pays off for him. Now, did you see it being used in earlier matches? I haven't. Okay. Um, I haven't seen Tothic's earlier matches okay. today. I'm not, uh, I, I don't think this is their first match. No, I think this is, this is winner two. bracket round two. So. Just wondering if it uh, came out the first time, but. It's a good question. We'll ask the man in the cow suit when he gets back. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, if he does. Uh, it's he might be on the move. Oh, that's that's just yep. horrible. Been hanging around you guys way too much these days. Okay. All right, are we going on over to cage two? Oh, well, we have to wait for the judge's decision. Yeah, no, we have to. We Some don't want more move cow along. jokes. Yep, mm, there we go. Yeah, They're more contagious. cow jokes. They're yeah, very I, contagious. Like like a pox. <laughs> <laughs> like a cow pox. Cow pox. Mm -hmm. Do you have any guesses here? Oh, Lindsay has a decision. All right, another unanimous decision. Surprise, surprise. This one goes to Hound. There you go. Hound. Yeah, well, when Hound controlled that much of the match and was able to effectively use a weapon in a more extreme mm -hmm. and damaging way, it's not that surprising that they would get the, uh, the judge's decision. All but. right. All right, we are going to cage two now. We've got Jack Move versus, you read that one. The 2020 <laughs> vision is no oh, longer here. That is uh, Stag Beetlebot? Yes, I think you are right. Which is, is that a obtuse uh, reference to Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy? You lost me there. I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, it's a reach if it is. It's, it's a reach for my references, and if it is the reference, it's a reach for their reference. So. Stag Beetle Bots versus Jack Move. Eight, seven, six, five, four, 
three, two, one. Fight, robots, fight. And away we go. We have a uh, impressive multibot here. Jack move has been able to use those multibots in the past really to, to great effect. And uh, against a robot like Stag Beetlebot that uh, is a little more bog standard, you might say. I'm really interested to see, really interested to see what the strategy is gonna be. From an aesthetic standpoint, loving Stag Beetlebot that you can see the insides of it when it's uh, upright. Yeah, the clear top panel is really a, um, yeah. it's a nice touch. Polycarbonate is what that top panel is made out of. It used to be a very popular building material for robots before uh, so much 3D printed material entered the scene. Uh, still a, a great choice, still what we use for the walls of the arena. That's what I was gonna ask, same material, right? Same so you know material. it's pretty, oh, oh, I see pieces. Yep, the- of what? Uh, I'm not sure, but I see pieces I here. believe that's some of Stag Beetlebot, uh, but no, well, it's hard to say. Well, they're still moving just fine. Yep, the, the wheels on Stag Beetlebot, um, D2 wheels, they're from D2 robotic kits. And one of the nice things about them is that chunks of robot, uh, chunks of wheels get torn out. Okay, and they uh, just keep moving. They just keep going. Um, they're not invulnerable, they're not even particularly durable, <laughs> but there's so much of that wheel that you can just tear chunks out all day and, and, and keep chugging along. It does very much look like the monster trucks of uh, wheels for these robots Ooh, here. A good hit there from uh, Jack Move. Jack Move is a uh, family affair robot. I know, I was wondering where the kids were. I don't know, they, they uh, looks like they've drafted, um, I can't quite tell from this angle, can't see, but they've drafted another robot driver to handle the mini bot. It's usually the, uh, the junior Jack Movers yes. of responsibility. Oh, I see, it's uh, a Shake and Bake team member. Yes. The uh, captain of, I guess, Shaft, am I correct in that? I believe so. Oh, I see more wheels. Now I understand what you're saying about these wheels here. Yeah, bits and bobs. Oh, and then there's the weapon Tap is out. just dangling Tap off out. of the The winner robot. is Jack Move. You can see at the end the little drumlet, that mm -hmm. tiny drum weapon on the front of uh, Stag Beetlebot completely removed from the front of the robot. Yeah. Just dangling by a thread. All we're right, we're go. going back to the replay. I did hear uh, Stag Beetlebot speaking about ro wires tangled up, maybe not wanting to then get tangled up if they continued to fight. Right, right. And when you have wires like that, uh, that could be shorted out. Uh, you don't want to cause an inadvertent battery fire, electronics fire, Ugh. when your match is already basically over. Yeah. So, I mean, not for you, but for us. Yeah. I'd love I, to see I should a good say fire. They don't want to. No. I would love it no. if they just We love the throttle. optics here, and go. we're well prepared with our extinguisher. Lindsay, do you have some opinions that you might share with us after that fight? Um, I don't have so much of an opinion as I do an update. Oh, okay. okay. So this is from uh, someone in the YouTube live chat, uh, Living Murphy's Law, and okay. they are confirming that Stag Beetlebot is a reference to Stag Beetlebrox, who is Zaphod's brother from the Hitchhiker's Guide series. So that, you were right. That was a well deep done. cut that I'm not necessarily proud of. But yeah, my references go to Mean Girls and, you know, <laughs> Housewives, so I would not have gotten that one, but I'm glad you did. Yeah. Ricky, you, uh, you remembered your towel today, so. I, <laughs> <laughs> I All mean, right. on, the fetch, uh, on, the, on the flip side, we could try to make fetch happen later. We might. <laughs> okay. I believe we got some comments we're going to read. Is that what we're doing? Yes. Yes. Oh. Oh. Curtis. We've got some super chats. Curtis Honeycutt from Bloodsport, Team Bots and stuff. I love you guys. We love you back, Curtis. Thanks for always being with us. Yeah, I, I heart optimus you too. <laughs> I like this one. Now this is from Ian. Uh, voice of God is hungover. You know the what? The winner is <laughs> Jack Moo. I think the winner is goes. the voice of God and whatever beverage he had earlier. Yeah, yeah, you know, he has a mind of his own sometimes. It's okay. Thanks for that, Lane. 
And this is from Lila Sharp. Dimitri says, you can do it, Uncle Zach. Crunk says, good luck. We are cheering oh. for you. Wholesome. Love it. Lila is always in there supporting her teammates. Well, that is very sweet. It's that kind of uh, shout out that gets people through some of the longer events. I know, I know. And I was looking at the chat too, um, and just the ones about the uh, good sportsmanship when we had the uh, quick, I'm blanking on the names already, but they're shaking hands right after two minutes or two seconds of fighting after the tap out. And that's what it's all about. We are going to go over to cage number four, it looks like. Yeah, cage four, we've got some. Uh, 30-pound action over there or 12-pound? Oh, it's 12-pound action. All right, more Carmen. Carmen. Uh, Carmen has been a uh, formidable robot uh, event after event here. Mm -hmm. Full Remember court. that name. Yeah, no, it's, it, it is it is certainly a robot to continue to fear and keep an eye on. Uh, full oh, court, though. Goodness. I'm not sure what that robot's... Um, Full court I'm not versus Carmen. Oh, terrifying though. Eight, Look at that thing. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, oh, I one. See. Fight, robots full court fight. In the spirit I, of Smee. I mean, I'm seeing why they call it full court, right? Covers the full court with its length. Well, it's a full court press. Yes, see. for sure. Oh, there's a bat. Oh. Look at the basketball hoop. That's adorable. Oh, and I believe that that basketball hoop is articulated. I think that basketball hoop can rain down on its opponent with a fury. Oh, like the that chopping axe movement. Yeah, yeah. It's, so here at Norwalk, uh, we want to see robots that have active weapons. And uh, we have a very flexible definition of what an active I was going to say, I is. think that's a straw and some paper. It's an active straw <laughs> and active paper. Oh. Wow, look at that. Carmen um, doing its best, and Ooh. every time it connects, it's a big hit, but... Where do you hit that robot? No, that's, I guess, straight in the center. Do you go for the sides? And, and listen, that front wedge, I'm sure that's AR-500 uh, steel which is a very hard, very strong skill. And look at the way it just kind of bounces. That's how much energy is, is going on in these oh, fights. Up in the oh. air. But that straw, still hanging on. Like a Mexican jumping bean. <laughs> uh, a Mexican jumping string bean. Uh oh. Oh, and there, that's a here. bad place for full court to be stuck. I think we're going to have a, uh, a fluffy uh, on fi maneuver. Fix here. Uh, Unstick. Unstick. I will get there. I, I believe in you. <laughs> oh, and even after that unstick, uh -oh. I'm not seeing a lot of movement. You know, looking a little closer at full court, I think some of the armor on the back of this robot might be gaffer's tape. I mean, it, I don't know one thing that gaffer's tape can't do. That's it, yeah. I'm that's wondering, fair. so it doesn't hear any of the weapons are stuck in the wall. It just appears to be a movement issue now. Yeah, the robot is upside down. The robot has a lot of, um, the technical term is dangly dingly bits. Okay, dangly, the, say that again? The dangly dingly bits. Dangly dingly bits. Oh. Out. Not diddly bits. Did that, no. Uh, dangly <laughs> um, dingly bits. And those, unfortunately, became lodged uh, in the floor. They became deformed. Okay. And... Uh, all right, well, we'll that was see it happen call. right here. That's the only, not the only problem, but one of the problems with a large robot like that is so many things can go wrong. Right, right. And full court press doing its best to achieve oh. its design goal of pushing its uh, opponent around just was not able to do it consistently enough and wasn't able to uh, avoid those big hits. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and frankly, with a robot like Carmen, with enough big hits, it doesn't matter what your design is, you're gonna have a bad time. Yeah, when you're long and lanky like that, yeah. it's a little bit tougher. All right, mm -hmm. we're going on over to cage one. Over there. Let's see who we have. Yab Ganal and Killajul. Yab Ganal, for those um, not, uh, not familiar with the origin story, it's an unusual name. Yes. Uh, it just happens to be long boy backwards. That is right. I did Kill know that. Kill a jewel mm -hmm. versus 
Yum Gano. Yum Gano sounds cooler though. Eight, yeah, I mean sometimes seven, I think they just try six, to make us say five, hard to say. Four, things. three, two, one. Fight, robots, fight. Kill a jewel coming in. Killajoule, uh, slow and steady in its uptake, but that is a powerful undercutter spinner oh, on Killajoule. Is... Oh, and there it's pulling. <laughs> I hear the engine revving up there. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Oh, an immediate stop. That is a very short amount of time to take something from 200 miles an hour to, to zero stop, miles an hour. Yeah. Tap oh, out. Oh, no. It started the off winner so strong. Is Yom Gano. Yeah, interesting that they pronounce the G, too. If I was coming at this, I think I would just say Yabnol. I mean, I can barely pronounce my last name right sometimes, yeah, so fair. I'm just happy when I People have get a hard time with it. mine, too. I, I get the struggle. Uh, but Yabnol, uh, a veteran competitor here, mm -hmm. a very intense hitter. I'm not surprised that that uh, fight was relatively short, and there's... As I keep saying, no shame in any of the outcomes, but especially when you're going up against someone with uh, that kind of pedigree, uh, the best you can do is uh, grit your teeth, take your hit, and go back to the pits and yep, see if you can fix up. it. Especially if you're in the winner's bracket and you got that second chance. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That said, I, I'm interested to see that robot uh, in the future, although in the, I'm going to see it very quickly here in yes. an instant replay. Yeah, it was really just the one exchange before that weapon went down, and that was practically all she wrote. Yep. Uh, if you can't okay. come in a robot uh, like Yab Ganol with a, a plan, mm -hmm. if your weapon is down, it's not long before you're going to tap out. Yep, and you don't want any more damage than you have to sustain. It's true. It's true. It looks like we are getting ready. There's a bit getting of a fracas ready. around cage three. Yes, which, uh, I see a very young competitor. Yeah, this one needs a needs stack a of phone assistance. Books. Yeah. But what's the modern day equivalent for a stack of phone books? Do you just put your kid on a pile of iPads? You will never know what a phone book is. No. That's what the crazy <laughs> thing is. It's all well. The future. Stack of iPhones. Time keeps on on uh, spinning. Ooh. All right, we got Shred It Bro versus Zach. Shred It Bro still trying to qualify for December. Stunning, considering Shred, Shred It Bro's pedigree. Here. And Zach, again, using the stool for support here. Yeah, a lot of people need moral support. Uh, some just need height support. Some just need a stool. I am really excited for this yeah. match, though. I love seeing the youngest competitors battle it out, especially against our veterans. Mm-hmm. I... Yeah, I... I'm so envious of the kids that are able to come to an event like this uh, at an age like, I, I'm terrible at guessing children's ages, but I'm going to guess that he's no older than 17. Seven, definitely not older than 17. <laughs> but I'm trying Don't to hedge my bet here. Don't think he's got his license yet. Yeah. Zach um, versus no, I believe he's five bro. years old, which is... Uh, Eight, stuff. Seven, I was not playing with six, robots at five years old. Five, I was, four, but I didn't have this three, amazing two, uh, place oh, no. to do it. One, in. fight, robots, fight. And away they go. Shredit Pro, really an intimidating look on the front of this robot now, the way it's constructed. I mean, Shredit Pro is just an intimidating team. That's true. It's a lot of talent and a lot of passion. Wow, hit after hit. Um, wow, look at that. I'm impressed. There's a lot of dust flying, a lot of little bits of robot being taken off. But look at how these hands even get around that controller. I mean, I think the controller might weigh more than he does, and he's doing a phenomenal job of navigating it. I mean, just watching those his hands. Yeah. And I don't see his dad saying too much to him. So, I mean, it's really, he's the mastermind of driving this right now. Yeah, I, I think there's some encouragement and some, uh, that's probably about it. Wow, hit after hit. Um, oh, right, I see something up. Yeah, there is a lack of movement there. This 
could actually end up going to the out. out. And it does. The winner is Shred It Bro. Mm. All right, well, Shred It Bro continues to uh, try to qualify for December and obviously still the winner's bracket, so Zach will be back. Yeah. But I could watch him control that controller all day. Yeah, it's five. Just, yeah, five years old. It's absolutely stunning. Um, Brilliant. And, and that was not a bad match. I mean, that no, was well driven. That's a formidable machine uh, going up against a really formidable opponent. Oh, I love that little fist bump between the two. I know, it's adorable. And I feel like Shredded Bro could be a good mentor through some of this well, as well. Well, there's, there's certainly some, some uh, Cohesion. Yes, cohesion speaking is up a, is there a in the pits. I will for. love to go and speak with them in the. I would love. I will do it. Speak with them in the pits later because. Yeah, don't I think it'd be up. a great interview. That's a good point. I, you can. I think he can articulate things better than I can at my age. Ask his favorite <laughs> color and see if he knows what corn is and <laughs> um, whatever else you ask young children. All right, we are going on over to cage two. I see. Izzy. Vacuum versus. Fully defined. Ooh. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robots, fight. And away they go. Oh, vacuum having a hard time right off the bat. Those are some yep. giant hits being delivered by fully defined. You know, I keep saying that these robots are impressive and formidable, but it's getting harder and harder to find robots that aren't here at Norwalk Havoc. Oh, oh. I see. That is the oh. end of the match. That was quick. Tap, oh. out. Tap out. The winner is fully defined. Fully defined, uh, a, I, I have to imagine a reference. When you're designing these robots in the computer, and you're done designing something, and all of your measurements are entered in, mm -hmm. you get a nice message that makes you feel better at the bottom of the screen that says fully defined. I would never have known that. Yeah. Do Until, you think Zach does? I think he does. <sighs> I think he does, which is stunning, because I didn't know what CAD was at five. <laughs> yeah, um, I or was, a computer. But yeah, that's CAD, just dating myself for, at this for point. For yeah. me, yeah. CAD was cardboard-aided design at that <laughs> age, primarily. And, whew. All right, we're, we're going go to, to the that replay. replay. Yeah, immediately having a wheel missing is not a great way to start. Uh, and then one and a half wheels missing to two wheels missing. Um, those were a lot of big hits. Oh, you don't look the same at all. Yeah, it's me. <laughs> I know, but, but really, I looked away and, and she was gone. And, and here's Chris. Hello, Ricky, my brother in hot sauce arms. Oh, dear. Uh, I'm still having flashbacks. Night terrors. Hot flashes. Hot flashes, yeah. yeah. You know, uh, I was wondering if, if Luke was going to be um, coming back. I was wondering what the odds are, but I, I wanted to couch my bets. Oh, I get it. Yeah, it's a bad joke. Yeah. Um, I saw him moving around back there. Oh, no, you see you missed the boat on that one. Mm. Don't milk it. Uh, we got another fight <laughs> coming up here. We're uh, we're all loaded in cage three over here in the steel arena. Yep. Um, sorry, I'm Wolf still caught Pop up on that. <laughs> versus <laughs> Caldera. I believe it's actually pronounced Caldera. Eight, Dera. seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robots, fight. I like to say Caldera in the same way that someone says oh. how dare you. Oh, oh, immediate. Oh, you don't want to lose a wheel 10, 10 seconds into the fight. No, not, especially not against Caldera. Oh, it even, oh, it even put that, yeah, that weapon, that whole the weapon system is seemed to get kind Caldera. of knocked Yeah, they, I think they lost a bearing almost immediately. Um, when that happens and you're a wheel down, uh, a tap out really can be your best, best approach, especially when you're still in the winner's bracket. I mean, if you're in the loser's bracket, send it. But uh, winner's bracket, you want to preserve that chassis. Yeah. Uh, again, maybe, maybe for folks that haven't 
uh, experienced a Norwalk Havoc event in the past, we are a double elimination event. That means that everyone needs to be uh, knocked out at least twice yep. before they're sent home. Uh, so we have a winner's bracket for robots that have not yet lost. And we have the elimination bracket. We're careful not to say the loser's bracket because everyone's a winner here at heart. Yes. Uh, but, uh, and everyone has a, the, the option to come from the elimination bracket and win the entire thing. Yeah, we've seen it happen. It, it's happened a lot. It's yeah. not even uncommon. Well, maybe we can see Wolf Pup uh, return with the pack coming up from the elimination bracket. Uh, yeah, I think so. Let's take a look at this replay. Ah, wow, there we go. It was about eight, nine seconds into the match. Caldera scored that huge hit, removing one of Wolf Pup's wheels. We'll see later if uh, Wolf Pup has canine lives. <laughs> Somehow you got a wolf joke and a cat joke in there. Double trouble. Yeah. Lindsay, uh, can you take us away from the puns for a second? Uh, yeah, I don't know whoever let y Ricky and Chris together because it's like the puns and, and the jokes, it's too much. Okay, but I'm gonna save you with some super chats. So the first one is from Christine from the Outside of the Box YouTube podcast. If anyone is the winner, it is all of us watching this stream. Such an amazing robot action today. Christine, Thank Christine, you. You have something in your eyes there. <laughs> yeah, a little st stars going on. All right, another YouTube podcaster, my girlfriend doesn't like robots, said, uh, watching with my girlfriend for her first NHRL, I'm hoping that she likes this one. I was going to say, it's just mean. He's going to have to change his whole YouTube channel. <laughs> it's either inaccurate or it's mean, and I'm, I'm worried. But both of those podcasts are great. You should check them out on YouTube. Uh, and then we have one more from Jacob Cranmer. No better way to unwind after a tough work week I hear you, Jacob, then by watching robots destroy each other. Thank you to everyone who puts this together. Love y'all. Oh my God, look at all that wholesome sweetness. I'll just eat it up. I don't think we've ever seen so many hearts on the live stream as we have this time. It's the first green heart that I've ever seen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a, that's a record. Every now and then I get a brown heart <laughs> for Mammoth, mm. and it just, it, you know, Really wholesome. Your heart grew five times the size. Yeah, it grew to the largest heart that has ever competed in BattleBots. It's like uh, the Grinch. Yeah, I'm, I have to go to the hospital weekly now to check up <laughs> and make sure I don't die because the pumping efficiency yeah, drops dramatically. Yeah, it drops right off like a cliff. Yeah. Looks like we're prepping cage one over there. And who we got loading in? Yeah, okay. Caminote from Mexico, uh, I believe I heard. Uh, it's a long journey to make. Uh, up against, was it Honey Shock? Yeah, looks like it. I th oh, yes, it is. You can see honey the patented yellow shirt there. Yeah, Honey Shock, a, uh, a honey cracked robot. Uh, honey cracked really turning into an uh, immense family of roboteers here. Yeah, it's um, a swarm, yeah. I guess you could say. Oh, yeah, it's an entire hive. Yeah. Of course, uh, uh, and then you have Zoe, uh, the, uh, the queen bee. Right, right. Fun, uh, fun fact, Zoe has recently been recruited for oh. Team Mammoth. Oh, really? I've heard of them. Yeah, no, I have too. I, I wish I um, could talk to them more often. Well, uh, you know, uh, get your tickets for the upcoming season. Upcoming season of what? The, that, that show. Oh, okay, all right, the, yeah. The battle, the, 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 robot, the, robot, the battle the, robots. The, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, it's a good idea. Yeah, you might um, even be able to see Ricky, uh, who I think is their team captain. He's, no, he's the one that rides that big uh, robot into combat. Yeah, don't, don't bother. It's, there's, there's lots of entertainment value there, but that guy's weird. <laughs> so we're, we're seeing what's going on outside of uh, Cage 1, getting ready for this fight. Uh, seems like there might be a little bit of technical difficulty on the Honeycrack machine. Uh, or maybe maybe they just neglected to turn it on. That will happen. No, it, it does. It's it's funny. It seems like it would be obvious, but when you're in a rush, when you're excited, when you're about to go into a match, your nerves are on. Uh, a lot of these robots have multiple switches that need to be actuated in order to make the robot functional. Uh, a lot of times you just forget to turn one on. Yeah, and they're not really just a simple off and on switch. No, it's not like a big. It's not a light switch right. on the side of the robot. Um, I think on my next bot, I'm just going to do a big Frankenstein-style lever so I know it's on. Yeah, it was complete with big sparks going through. 
Um, <laughs> right. I, I want my robot to be hit by a bolt of lightning at the beginning of the match and be empowered by 1.21 gigawatts. Right. Um, go back in time. As long as you can go 88, you're good. Mm -hmm. I think Cage won. I think they're ready to go. Honey Shock versus Kamenote. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robots, fight. There we go. We got some uh, Honey Shock mobility issues. Right off the bat. Oh, the wedge immediately off of Honey Shock. That oh is a bad spot to be. Oh, that is a uh, naked front to that robot. Children, avert your eyes. Uh, we had an attempted, um, an attempted unstick there uh, from. Yeah, un uh, reorientation. Yeah, I, personally, I wouldn't count that as a full unstick, but I think the judges are, the referees are, I should say. Hear that countdown. Well, there knockout. you are. 45 seconds into that match, we have a knockout for Keminote. Keminote, my, I, I can speak a little Spanish, but I'm, I'm unaware of this word. Do you know the origin, Chris? Um, I think it means fresh cream. Oh, how delightful, how refreshing. Yeah, I have no idea what it means. You know, if anyone... Uh, well, here we go to the replay first before I make another pun. Uh, there you can see <laughs> getting torn right off. Oh. I, wow. I'm being told, Chris, that Keminote is a famous Mexican wrestler. Perhaps a luchador. Perhaps. Yeah. Coming, coming off the top rail there to deliver an impressive blow. Uh, I would not want to be on the receiving end of that. No, no, that's a pretty uh, gnarly horizontal spinner bar. It really is. Yeah. And and the way it just it just happened to clip that front uh, that front wedge, uh, really <laughs> almost the ideal wrong situation to be on the receiving end. Yeah. Of. Really uh, interesting shape to it. It's kind of like um, I don't know, uh, kind of like an organic uh, kind of swoopy looking, um, almost a boomerang. Mm hmm. Um, really need to look up close. Oh, boy. Let's yeah. see here. I think we're going to go into... Oh, boy. Yeah, we're going to go back to Milk Tank. Uh, it's time for more uh, cow on robot action. Uh, there we see uh, Johnny Sumpas. Uh, he wears his, his sunglasses at night and during the day inside. And he is celebrating a 16th birthday today. Oh, I see him ballooned. He'll be signing autographs after this match. Can't blame him, although uh, you, know, you don't want your ego to balloon as well. Milk Tank versus Disco. Eight, seven, six, five, oh boy. four, Fan Three, favorite here, Milk Tank two, versus Disco. One. Fight, robots, fight. Disco, uh, when we talk about veteran uh, robot designs, Disco goes back a long, long time, Chris. This is a robot that has made the rounds. Oh, oh. there's the glitter bomb. Very deadly. Uh, it can be. I mean, you jest, but glitter getting inside your robot is a bad, bad time. You think about all those tight tolerance parts and bearings and things. And glitter gets inside and they can just freeze up. That said, I don't think it's going to be a factor when Milk Tank is uh, very much struggling to move. They might have had a little bit of their own poison. It's possible, yeah. I mean, unless you really do a good job of it, there's no way to keep glitter out of anywhere. No? No? It's uh, the real poison of... Uh, of Norwalk Havoc is going home and a month later finding glitter under your eyelids. <laughs> it's a great exfoliant. Yeah. Knockout. Spartan, you can uh, see they're getting dislodged. Spartan being the mini bot, of course. There's a close up uh, shot of that really awesome uh, Spartan Hawaiian tea. Oh, I didn't realize. Hidden there in the pattern are many Spartan, uh, Spartan eye. Uh, 
ready to uh, descend and Sp cause some uh, some chaos. Spartinos. Sparti That's not the word. No. I think it, it might be. It should be. It could be. We have to ask the birthday boy. Let's make it happen. Um, but yeah, I had no idea. I thought it was just a cool Hawaiian shirt, and then wham, bam, um, thank you shirt. We're going to go into the replay here and take a look. There's that balloon oh. going. <laughs> I think, frankly, that match was uh, suffering, or Milk Tank was already suffering before that balloon popped. It was just, it was too tasty of an object to not hit. And then, then it was. I mean, it's an ample target. Yeah, well, it's true. It's uh, full of, it's just, let's, let's stop. <laughs> uh, we're gonna, I think, get ready to go over to cage three for, um, for some more uh, beetle weight action. We're going to have Attitude Adjuster. All the way here from Scotland. Is it really? Yeah. Edinburgh. 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 Oh. Scotland. And Tiefschlag in the, uh, in the pink corner. Yeah. I think this is a European showdown, right? I mean, not that Tiefschlag is, is actually German, but I'm going to pretend they are with a name like that. Um, How do you pronounce it? Teifschlag? I'm, I'm, I'm pronouncing it Teifschlag <coughs> because I assume it's German and I assume that I have an idea of what German um, uh, sounds like, but neither of those things are true, Chris. Yeah, and I'm from uh, upstate New York, so I just call it Teifschlag. Teifschlag. <laughs> your your Teifschlag doesn't sound so much New York as it does, like, Wisconsin. <laughs> The dairy fight's already over. Listen, okay, Ricky. <laughs> if, yeah, we'll leave it there. <laughs> it's, it's an interesting approach here. Uh, Attitude Adjuster is another uh, hammer saw robot, or, or actu at, least, at the very least, it's an actuated vertical spinner. Uh, they are having a lot of trouble right now with that vertical spinner aspect. So the, the spinning part doesn't work. But the, the smacky bit, the hammer aspect of their hammer saw is still functional, which means they do still have an active weapon, which yep. means that they can still fight, still fight, and they are not disqualified. Uh, but they are going to be at a potentially dramatic disadvantage here, Chris. But... We've seen, uh, you know, aggressive tapping go really far with the judges before. They yeah. are able to kind of rack up some pins and, and, and win that ground game. Uh, you can't rule them out. No, nope. and it's, it's something that's important for us and the Vokes at home and the, um, uh, the judges to know ahead of time that that spinner was down before the match started. Yeah. Remember, Attitude adjuster. That way it won't versus count as actual uh, damage Schlag. on the, uh, on the Eight, part of Chief Schlag. Seven, exactly. It's, it's not, six, doesn't count as damage five, if you went in. Damage. Four, three, two, one. All right, fight. here we go. Robots we fight. Go. All right, I did see at least one tap, so we know that the tapper is activated. Uh, personally, if I was in a situation like this, I would be tapping like crazy. Uh, however, Typeschlag not uh, not tapping so much itself, even if, it's, if it has a horizontal rapid tapper accessory, I don't see that horizontal spinner spinning up. Oh, there it goes. Man, as soon as I make a comment on the functionality <laughs> of a robot, they just prove me wrong. I need to be careful not to tip the scales of a, of a fight by saying that something doesn't work when it's about to work. And there's one part of Attitude Adjuster that is working really well that you would want to bring into a fight with a powerful horizontal spinner, and that is that front plow, that wedge. Uh, that's exactly what you're going to want to bring uh, up against a horizontal such as that. You're going to... You can, you know, uh, knock them off balance. You can get their weapon, uh, you know, uh, uh, vertical, and then they'll grind away at the floor, they'll hit the sides, and then you hopefully can break that weapon. But we're not seeing a lot of life in Heefschlag, so Attitude Adjuster is just kind of muscling around this bot, racking up some pins and some aggressive taps. 
Yeah, sometimes it does come to a pushing match, and those wins, although they're uh, they're usually pretty hard fought, they're no less valuable. Seventy and seconds left in this match, and I think this is one of those things where a horizontal spinner like Type Flag really didn't want to go up against a giant plow like that. Yeah. Uh, Attitude Adjuster's plow is, is almost perfect for facing down, <laughs> excuse me, for facing down a, um, a horizontal spinner, especially an undercutter like that. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's that aggressive tapping. It's angry tapping, Chris. <laughs> I think that tapping might need an attitude adjustment. Oh, I see that. Yeah. I see you, Ricky. It's going to be a long day, and I take no responsibility for the level of uh, banter that I'm able to produce on a moment's <laughs> notice. Coming up on 15 seconds left in this match, and there we see some more aggressive, uh, aggressive yeah. tapping. This is what you aggressive. want to see. Aggressive. Very aggressive. aggressive. What, what part of upstate New York did you say you for? Uh, the, uh, the, the, yeah. The, the West Virginia part? The <laughs> Got grass attack now and here. I say that as, as someone with a lot of loving family in West Virginia. Uh, that is your match. Wow. It's going to the judges, even though um, I think it may be a foregone conclusion. We've got a mostly immobile robot in the corner um, that went down against a very aggressively tapping robot for an entire match. Uh, we have not put too much stress on the judges as of yet today, or at least, um, you know, I, I did step away to do a, a tour here at the facility, and I didn't get to catch all the matches, but uh, a, lot of the, a lot of decisions have been straightforward. We had one really close, uh, you know, split decision today, but that looked like it. Well, but we're going to go to that replay and, and see. Uh, you can see the weapon's still spinning, but, but even the drive on Teichschlag was spotty early in the match. Yeah. Um, and the fact that these taps just came in one after another, that gives you wow. any advantage that you can say you had in terms of aggression or control um, and even damage on a very small scale. Uh, very, it's, very it's small. Very, very small scale. Uh, we're going to go to Lindsay with the results, but uh, I don't think you're going to color me surprised. I, uh, I don't think you'll be surprised that it was a unanimous decision for mm -hmm. Attitude Adjuster. Well, all right. There you go. Congratulations to Attitude Adjuster. After Keep up the good attitude. Yeah. We didn't get dressed up for nothing. I don't know what your accents are supposed to be. That was, that was from Braveheart. Mm. We didn't get all dressed up for nothing. Yeah, but did it sound like Braveheart? I think it, it was literally a carbon copy. Yeah, it's funny. Folks at home, he said nothing. They just played on your stream <laughs> the sound from Braveheart. <laughs> uh, no, I don't know. It's, we're going to go to Cage 2 and save uh, me from myself. Uh, cage 2, we've got Argon Lights coming back. Uh, this is the loser's bracket, or I should say the elimination bracket, uh, going up against Impact Crater. Uh, Argon Lights I saw a little earlier. Impact Crater, Chris, did you watch this fight? Uh, yeah, I was, I, I was actually cage side. How, how was it? What can we expect going into a fight with a robot like Argon Lights? It's, it's actually really cool. We got like kind of two Jack Rabbity inspired bots mm -hmm. uh, with the, you know, the, the, the tall uh, ears to protect that vertical weapon when they're inverted. Right. Um, it's really going to be a ground game. Who gets under who okay. and uh, gets at all those, uh, those juicy bits. Impact Crater versus Argon Lights. Eight, seven, the countdown. Six, I'm hoping for a roof shot, five, Chris. Four, have we seen one today? Three, we have. Ah. Two. One. Fight. Robots fight. Here we go. Go. Argon lights looking remarkably less on fire than the last time that we saw them. <laughs> oh, I do see a belt. Oh, already a belt see, coming off. Maybe. It looks yes. Yes, that yes. is a weapon belt from, uh, from oh. Impact Crater. Oh, no. Oh, and the two are um, coupled to one another now. Oh. I, oh boy. We'll see if we can get a uh, Brett unstick, but this might be a crowbar situation. Oh, no, I think. 
Oh, no! Oh, and a tire. So sad. That will happen during an unstick. Um, you it, are susceptible to this incredibly heavy house bot. It is part of the risk you run. Uh, our, our house bots, uh, while very strong, do not have a lot of dexterity. That's true. The match is now paused. It looks like we're going to get an actual unstick here from the ref. Chris, did you know that I um, built the only robot that has ever flipped one of the house bots? Was that baby shoes? That was baby shoes. Baby shoes capable of uh, tossing yeeting. a bread, a yeeting, a veritable yeeting was of a bread. Was this the uh, the early uh, like Cro Magnon bread that was made out of cinder block? I I don't know if it was still cinder block, but it still looked cinder block ish a little more than the the current iterations. That's impressive. Did uh, you get a handshake from Austin? Um, I think I got a fist bump and a little bit of disappointment. Okay. Uh, I didn't know it was okay. Mm -hmm. The match, you know, it was, it was a countdown. I was like, am I allowed to hit your arena? He's like, you're allowed to hit whatever you want. It's like the Great British Bake Off here. If, uh, if you are incredibly fortunate, you get a handshake from Austin. Right, right. And a match and we're is back. resumed after that brief countdown. All right, we have a three-wheeled Argon Lights versus a no-weapon uh, Impact Crater. Frankly, Chris, I think I would prefer to be Argon Lights at this point. Uh, you can kind of limp around and deliver a big hit, yep. but uh, no matter how hard you drive, if you can't do damage, uh, you're going to struggle. There it is. Tap out. tap out. The winner is Argon Lights. Argon Lights taking that home. It's a, uh, a bit of a whimper uh, with which Impact Crater goes out today. But, uh, but we'll hope to see Argon Lights a little bigger, stronger, better, uh, more four-wheeled. More four-wheeled. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Ambi-wheeled. Quadra-wheeled. So already, uh, you know, we're going to start to see some of the bots uh, uh, making their way uh, home for the day. Uh, after you lose in the elimination bracket, that uh, kind of spells the end of the story for you for the day. There's still November. There's one last tournament after this one to qualify for the December finals. It's true. Yep. yep. Go home. Think about your choices. See if you can do better next time. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, well, it's also possible. I don't know for sure, but uh, the builder of Impact Crater, do you know that they have a 12 or a 30-pound robot, perhaps? I don't. Do they? I don't know. Uh, but it's possible we'll see them again in another... Uh, Another fight, uh, we'll have to find out. Uh, so uh, what I'm trying to say here is that even after one fight is over, there's usually no shortage of things to get done. Yeah. Um, especially this early in the day uh, at a Norwalk event. Worst case scenario, you go out, you sample one of our delicious food trucks, you peek under the hood of some incredible heavyweight robots. Yeah. Uh, you get a really neat merch selection we have now. I love it. The store is incredible. It's, uh, it's, it's, like, it's like going to, you know, uh, a, an actual museum out there now. It, it really is. I, I am stunned. There's old robots, new robots, big robots, small robots. There are interactive exhibits yes. here now, Chris. Look at, this, uh, look at this shot here of the pits. Now you see the entire army of Honeycracked. That is, uh, when you talk about interactive exhibits, it doesn't get more interactive than competing itself and, oh, look at them waving at the Honeycrack table. Uh, they're so important around here, especially, you know, pollinators. Uh, they're, you know, they're very important to the environment right. here I, at Norwalk. I have seen um, uh, hands, you know, staff here just drilling holes in wood to give homes for the, uh, the Honeycrack team to burrow into and, <laughs> and make nests. look nest. at this crew. Look at that. These are the people uh, that make everything happen. Give us a wave. Give us a wave, control room. Oh, there's the wave. I think they're trying to put a, a, a woman on the moon right now. Based That's on actually that. in the, the, the right-hand screens. Uh, they're controlling the International Space Station. And then look at this crowd already here showing up early, pre-prime time. Look at them. Getting all the best seats in the house. All right. I am hearing that we've got uh, Sepio, Sepio 1, uh, getting ready for a fight in cage three. This is another surprising turn of events to me, Chris, that you've got 
Uh, a robot as uh, distinguished as Sepio One, still st not struggling, but still working its way to qualifying for the finals this year. Yeah, they're definitely one to watch today. Um, you know, already uh, here we are in winner's bracket round two. They're making the right steps. It's still a long way to go, but I'd say that they got a good shot to qualify today. Yeah, we have a long night. What is it? Is it top four that we're doing today? Move on. Mm -hmm. Top four move on to that uh, invitation only event at the end of the year. And uh, Strider versus Sepio. We'll see if Sepio can Eight, fight its way seven, through Strider. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robots fight. Strider, a fantastic design, at least in appearance and in concept. Um, it is a dual uh, spinning robot. It works on uh, on a shuffle bot and gyroscopic principle. Whoa, so two immense spinners. And no wheels, Chris. Yeah. So they, um, they're they given a, uh, a weight advantage, uh, which, you know, in a horizontal on horizontal fight like this, I'm sure really comes into play. It means everything. Think about going into a, uh, a robot fight and your opponent has twice as much firepower as you do. That's literally what we're seeing here. And uh, oh. woo. big hit. This is definitely something that you got to come and you got to check out live because hearing these two uh, horizontal blades clink together, I feel it in my teeth. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, amazing. The, the oh! oh, my goodness. I think we do have a little bit of uh, drive struggle on Sepiel right now. Um, but that still kind of puts it ahead of Strider, which <laughs> is a uh, movement-challenged robot. Yes, that's it, its default. Strider can move um, in in only the loosest sense. Um, it can it can pivot very well. To to be fair to it. Yeah. Uh, now they they had to switch to a drift drive uh, uh, tactic. You know, with only that one wheel. Now they have to kind of you know, spin uh, themselves around and hopefully kind of come in with a flacking motion. Mm -hmm. Which and they're doing a great job of. It's true, it's true. It's just with both of these robots, a flacking motion is tough. Whoa! When your opponent has such a big blade, a lot of times you're trying to swack, you're trying to thwack the back of a robot, but when you thwack and it just comes back and hits another part of the blade. Yeah. You know, a back thwack attack is, um, it's really hard to lay a smack yeah, with it's, the back it's thwack attack. It can get kind of whack. 40 seconds left in this match. Let's see if these two can find each other again. Sepiel doing everything it can to kind of Tokyo drift into, into Strider. Yeah, the effort is there. The spirit is willing, but the bot may be weak. Uh, it's not so much weak as it, as it is injured and a little sad, right? Oh, there's a big oh. hit right now. Last seconds. This is going to be an interesting judge's decision, Chris. I think... Uh, the mobility makes it uh, a little interesting to judge, right? Because you want to say, well, how, how well did Strider control the match? How well did it uh, translate around the, the arena? And we can see there's big hits. Like, there's no shortage of big hits in this Now, fight. I'm curious, do you think it was that, that initial big hit that actually um, kind of hobbled or, or, you know, hamstrung Sepio? Or I wonder if they were starting the match with some of those issues. I think they started the match in a little bit of a uh, handicapped state. And as soon as there was a big hit or two, it went from handicapped to, to really hop. Mm. And what we want to find out uh, is whether or not the judges looked at that damage and said, well, you know, this was all done by Strider. This, its mobility issues were entirely a Strider uh, effect, or was this something that it started off rough and it only got a little bit rougher, uh, so they don't get as much credit for it? Yeah, I um, think it's really going to come down to, I don't know, the control and aggression points. It's, um, 
I wouldn't want to be a judge on this one. Well, the nice thing is that you and I don't have to be. We can yeah. go to Lindsay. Lindsay can tell us uh, how, how are those poor, uh, miserable uh, folks in the judging table doing with their uh, unenviable task? Yeah, so out of the 17 possible total points that you can score, each three judges gave uh, Strider 10 of those points. So it was 10-7 from each judge. So that means unanimously Strider takes that win. Wow. Wow. But it was close. It was not a... It was not a, uh, you know, far apart match. Yeah, it certainly wasn't a match where there was a, uh, a landslide victory, but I think this speaks a lot to how, how good our judges and judging rubrics have gotten the consistency, a 10 to 7 every... Ever across the board. Across the board. Yeah. Uh, for a robot match as, as tough to judge as that one, um, good job, judges. Bravo. And that also means then one of the, the, the best ranked bots here is going to have to try to, you know, earn their way to the December finals through the elimination bracket. Yeah. It's, it writes its own stories, really. It does. I'm eager to see it fight its way back and uh, earn its spot. Uh, but for now, we're going to go to cage two, and we're going to see if Polar Vortex can take on Jackrabbit Flex. Polar Vortex versus Jackrabbit Flex. There we got the Yukon team. Said that for us. Eight, seven, Polar Vortex. six, five, four, three, two, one. Well, tag team fight. Match. Robots fight. Oh, oh, a big exchange. Both robots pop backwards a lot, but. Polar Vortex interesting as a multi-bot. Uh, two oh. egg beater spinners. Jackrabbit Flex dealing out a big hit. Jackrabbit Flex not its, its um, usual frenetic self. Right. It's uh, usually that is a robot that we see bouncing around the arena at high speed. Um, today it's much more measured. It's more like uh, Jackrabbit Stiff. Yeah, it's, you know, sometimes, Chris, it just takes a moment for me to appreciate what you have to say <laughs> and um, whether my brain wants to or not. Uh, all right, we've got Polar Vortex uh, A struggling to move a little bit. Polar Vortex B in better shape, but still not the most mobile. I think, yeah, I see Jackrabbit Flex trying to uh, uh, self write its own uh, multi bot. Oh, wow, a big, big hit, there. hit there. I, I think, Chris, that Jackrabbit Flex has some sharpened points on its wedges that are a little bit uh, sharper than usual. I think it's getting caught up on the floor a little bit, and it's being careful not to drive too fast so that it doesn't get stuck. As the day goes on here at NHRL, uh, forks become trickier and trickier as that floor slowly descends into um, a uh, just an absolutely chaotic state. Yeah, it, it becomes more and more of a mess, and it doesn't get replaced until the next event. So, um, I mean, although it will occasionally get uh, minor service if it gets ridiculous. Um, I don't believe uh, Jackrabbit has had an unstick yet. We'll see if Brett no. makes his way over there. Those those sharp prongs that we mentioned have uh, done the the, uh, the duty of getting the robot stuck into the wall. So there is the one unstick that the robot hits during the match. Wow, two and a half minutes of this match already gone by. 30 seconds left on the clock. I'm entranced. There's. A lot of pirouettes. There's a lot of uh, organized dancing. We'll see if either of these teams are able to uh, send a message to the judges with the last 17 seconds left on the clock. Jackrabbit Flex being pinned right now. Oh, they're um, back in the wall. That is definitely going to send a message. However, that robot is fully functional. Oh! oh, a huge hit as the final seconds tick down. That is your match going to the judges. Wow. The match has ended. I don't see a lot of confidence on those faces, Chris. Or on those, for that matter. Neither robot is coming out of that exchange um, thinking of this as a done deal. Yeah. Uh, 
we're going to have to see. Although, on the other hand, not a lot of missing wheels, not a lot of missing weapons. Right. Uh, these are both robots that, thankfully for them, as Renner's bracket folks, are going to be able to get repaired for the next fight either way. Let's take a look we're at this replay, some of the more noteworthy exchanges. We see a couple of hits that was uh, that were doled out by Polar Volchex, but followed by a, uh, a couple of really uh, uh, punishing uh, hits delivered from Jackrabbit Flex. Huh? Yeah. No. Every fight, uh, every fight, and every uh, exchange that Jackrabbit Flex is able to really deliver on its weapon, its opponent goes flying. Yeah. That match was really all about uh, who is going to get the better of each exchange, because the control by the multibot Polar Flex uh, just kind of kept. Jackrabbit on its heels enough that those exchanges weren't always as executed, well, well executed as they hoped. We're going to see what the judges have to say. Lindsay, can you uh, enlighten us? Yeah, so another very, very close match in terms of the point distribution, but we do have a unanimous decision right. for Jackrabbit Flex. All right. There you go. Can uh, Lindsay, do you have the, the numbers handy? I'm curious. Yeah, I sure do. All right, so let's uh, let's get into it a little bit. So uh, if you don't know, we have three judges who are uh, assigned to this stream. We have Dominic Yankaskis, who you've seen with a million and a half bots here at Norwalk Havoc. We have Brad Hanstead from Triton on BattleBots. Uh, we have uh, Jack Tweedy, who you've also seen at BattleBots. Um, and so Dominic, his point breakdown uh, was 11, 11 to Jack Rabbit. I actually don't have his Polar Vortex numbers, um, but he gave the, uh, them four in aggression, four in control, three in damage. Um, and then for Brad, uh, 10 for Jack Rabbit Flex, seven for Polar Vortex. So three aggression, three control, four damage. Um, and for Jack Tweedy, it was actually nine to eight. So uh, Jackrabbit only squeaked by, uh, by one point there. So as you can see, very, very close. Um, but Jackrabbit Flex did have the advantage by about one point uh, in each category. All right. There you have it. Bravo. Uh, well, thank you for that update. We're going to go to cage three and immediately get back into it. We've got uh, yet another veteran robot here in the form of Voxel. This is the V1 of the robot going up against Milk Tanket. Milk Tankette versus Voxel V1. All right, the cows have left the pasture. They are out of the barn. Eight, Case three is loaded seven, in. Let's do this. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robots fight. Away we go, Voxel, very compact. Um, very compact robot. Compact robots usually fare a little better against flamethrowers because everything is packed in so tightly. Right. Uh, there's usually fewer open spaces, but you that, never know. That is one tough balloon. It, yeah. Listen, I, if you put your hand in there, it wouldn't come out looking nearly as good as that balloon is looking. Oh! There you go. Glitter everywhere. <laughs> Milk Tank is having a, a little uh, ignition issue. I see the gas. Listen, imagine being no picket, going home and having that tail as a tail. Concealed there under that uh, top plate armor on Milk Tankette is an entire can of butane. Yeah, armor being a, a big quotation marks word right now. There is a lot of tape on that robot. <laughs> no. <laughs> so. I'm not actually sure there's a robot under there. It might be one of those things where you just remove all the layers and there's nothing. In there. Tap oh, out. Boy. The winner is Voxel V1. And there's your tap out. Voxel V1 taking it home. Uh, Milk Tankette going to be able to continue, though, in, in the um, elimination bracket, bracket yeah. yeah, the elimination bracket. I tell you, the Voxels are just, they're, they're awesome bots. They really are. They are well-engineered. They are time-tested, battle-hardened. Uh, they are formidable machines, and I am, um, I'm just continually impressed by them. But. 
All right, we have a, uh, a tag out here. Everyone's favorite announcer, Wick Ricky Willems, is going to take a little break. And uh, everyone's least favorite announcer is coming in. <laughs> Do you want to swap, Luke, so that you have access to your, uh, all of your insights? Nah, I'm all right. OK. He's going to fly blind, Chris. I, I normally do that. That's my default flying state. <laughs> I never get to sit in this chair. Wow, this, I feel like this is perhaps a better view. All right, now I want that seat. This is great. And you have you have my footrest. I don't I don't like this very much. All right, let's take a little replay here. Milk Tankette versus Voxel. Chris, what happened in this fight? Where was the fire, Chris? Yeah, a little failure to ignite. Um, you know, they got... Uh, an ignition system on the front of that butane tank, but just didn't seem to be online. This feels weird, me being on this side. I don't know if I like it. This is not my good side of my face, Chris. No, I'm, and I'm happy to switch with you. All right, maybe we'll do that. Hey, look at this. Oh, we've got a shot of the audience and a bunch of kids with signs. Hello. I see fight robots fight. Wow, amazing. Great job. Love really these cool signs. here over in the uh, you know, uh, visitors area. There's a whole sign making station with just about everything that you can imagine. Incredibly popular. Now, I will say, mostly kids are using those. Adults can also build signs if they want to, Chris. That's a challenge. All right. Oh, All wow. Right. This is elimination bracket round one. The loser of this fight is going home early. This is Guillotine, the nearly five pound walker bot, facing off against Sucker Punch, the experimental lynx killer from Mad Catter driver, Calvin Eba. Guillotine versus Sucker Punch. Eight, seven, Six, five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robots, oh. fight. What is that sound, that Chris? That is a weird sound. <laughs> All right, guillotine the walker. It's a little bit slow. And here comes Calvin Eba with his uh, just a fan that's sucking this red robot down oh. to the ground. And there he goes, going weapon on weapon with guillotine. That high squealing sound is gone now, Chris. Wow. Oh, wow. Punting this five pound robot in the air. You can see those little yellow walking, shuffling legs on guillotine. That is a gorgeous robot. Yeah, we, I had a close look at it last night. Um, it's like the entire bot is uh, TPU, so they were able to put like over a pound in that big spinning bar. Oh, here we go. It's a tap, tap out. out. It's a tap out. The from winner is Guillotine. Wow. Calvin Eba saving Sucker Punch for yet another day. Guillotine stays alive. Guillotine, you've just slayed one of the best beetleweight builders and drivers in the country in your second fight ever. That's so cool. Amazing. Amazing. Oh. All right, let's take a quick look here at this replay. One of the big challenges with this red robot of Sucker Punch is that uh, it wants to stay sucked down to the floor with that big fan. And that's probably that noise that you hear. But that means that it can't drive as quickly as Calvin expects from his other robots like Mixtape or Lynx. And uh, yeah, that, that, is, that is a challenge and I wonder like, what, what the design trade-off is there? Staying planted to the floor, but sacrificing your mobility. Yeah. Interesting. All right, we're gonna check in here with Ally and Guillotine. Well, I have to say, country roads take me home because I see the West Virginia. I love the outfits, um, but let's get to the match. That's what's important. What went right for you? Oh, me. Um, what went right, I think we learned that we needed to be a little bit less aggressive. Um, we went out into the middle of the box and we had the two bots. Um, so for this one, we wanted to stay more towards the corner so that he had to face us head on because that's where our power is at with 1.5 weapon. And you just heard the announcer say that you face one of the toughest builders and drivers in the country. That's got to leave you feeling pretty good. 
Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, Calvin Eba is definitely one of the inspirations for this robot, um, especially with like Lynx and how well it's performed. Um, I'm not sure if you know, but I've never competed before. I've never built a robot before. So this is brand new. Um, yeah, it looks like it took a beating, but... Uh, yeah, it's pretty pretty cool. <laughs> it feels really good after losing our first match. So <laughs> to be an extreme competitor, the next. Well, congratulations. We'll catch up with you guys later. We'll, I'm sure you want to get back to the pits. Yeah, thank yeah. Thanks for time. Thank you. Well, rookie builders here from West Virginia, uh, building guillotine. Now, I heard the origin story of guillotine. Uh, now, this builder here was college friends with Zach Knight and Promheda. And uh, Zach's just been building combat robots ever since he was in high school. Built them all the way through college, recruiting people left and right. And uh, the builder of Guillotine said, I'm not going to start building combat robots until after I graduate from college. You know, just trying to stay focused, you know, on, uh, on college goals. And uh, yeah, having, having really great performance here so far today. It's a very ambitious build to build a five pound custom walking robot. A walking robot for your, for first, your first robot. Bot. Yeah. Ever. Crazy. Wow. All right, we're gonna go to another big fight here with Cage Four. And look at this. This is Jonathan Juarez from BattleBots. War EZ on BattleBots. War Hard XL versus Semtex. Oh, and Semtex's first fight Eight, of the day seven, just smacked six, Blue Cheese five, in the face. Four, three, two, one. Fight, robots, fight. Elimination bracket round two. Wow. Semtex once again. Uh, here, just amazing reliability. Oh, oh, there goes a belt. Here we go, Jonathan Juarez and Warhard Extra Large coming in here to kill this UK bot of Semtex. It's like the Batmobile here in all black, just absolutely menacing from Jonathan Juarez. Semtex there with that orange drum. Now here comes the house bot to save. Looks like the power could be out in Semtex. I'm seeing no motion from Semtex, Chris. I think we might start seeing a countdown. All right, and look at this, Warhard returning to its starting square. I think that this is a count out. This may be a count out for Semtex. Oh, little bit of motion. Was it an, is it enough to stop the count out? All right, I can hear yep. them counting. Jonathan Warhard coming over preemptively to see if he uh, has to <laughs> Hit his opponent once again, and that is a knockout. War hard advances. Semtex here appears to be eliminated. Amazing fight. You can see that custom machining from Jonathan Juarez's is robots. War hard, extra large, war hard in Beatles, and war EZ out here in the Bot Museum. Absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. Um, his, his skill as a builder is, is amazing. Uh, let's see this. Very good box rush here from Warhard uh, Extra Large. Finding himself on the wrong end of that first exchange. But then this second big hit just turned the lights out on Semtex. Semtex found itself in the corner and was unable to uh, drive out. Okay. Wow. Big fight there. Cage right, three is all loaded up. I see a couple of familiar bots oh in there, a couple gosh. familiar builders standing oh around it. Gosh, elimination bracket round one. Wakey Wakey, Alex Peza, and Angel Vidal from Team Shred It. Facing off against William Marchese and Sea Dragon's Roar. Chris, I need to get my anime windbreaker. You do. <laughs> it's time, time once go. again for uh, Luke to apply a layer. All right, here wakey, we go. Wakey Wakey. Versus Sea Dragon's Roar. 
right. eight, Putting seven, on the windbreaker six, or sea dragon's five, roar. Four, Here we go. Three, two, one. Fight, robots, fight. Oh, good speed right out of the box from Wakey Wakey. And Alex Pezza with uh, the egg beater drum Ooh. spinner here on Wakey Wakey, getting under Sea Dragon's Roar. William Marchese now backing into uh, that robot, getting popped back onto his feet. Oh boy, I see a loose belt there on the floor. It looks like that is a belt from the weapon of Sea Dragon's Roar. Doesn't look like that. Uh, that vertical spinner is spinning much. Yeah, not much roar anymore. You can hear that totally symmetrical, smooth grinding sound from the egg beater from Alex Pezza. Oh! On wake, Wakey Wakey. And Alex and Angel are working together really well here. Yeah, some good teamwork. Using the, uh, the plow here on one half of their multibot to pin their opponent while the weapon comes in and uh, racks up aggression and damage points. Wow. This is a driving clinic for multi-bot drivers everywhere. Incredible. Right there, you can get a close-up of uh, Sea Dragon's Roar's um, kind of articulating weapon assembly able to, uh, to work in either orientation. If so, if it's inverted, uh, it's still a very dangerous bot, uh, but right now that weapon belt is off, and so it is just a, uh, a fork bot. Yeah, little, um, yeah, pretty clever little uh, design there. I wouldn't call it clever, I'd call it brilliant. Brilliant design there, Chris. And um, yeah, I'm hearing the count out. It seems like it's a little quick on the count out there, but. Oh, it's not the count out. It's a, um, it's a 10 second pin yes. countdown. One minute left in the match. All right, Sea Dragon's Roar pushed up against the rail. Wakey Wakey knows that they're ahead on the points. With two fully mobile robots, this looks like it could be a foregone conclusion. This one could very well be going to the judges. Without a weapon, it's pretty hard for Sea Dragon's Roar to uh, disable these two multi-bots. And William is just getting shoved around in the box. Less than 30 seconds here in this fight. A little bit of friendly fire there from Wakey Wakey. Another pin. All right, 10 seconds left here in this match. Eight, seven, six, wow. five, four, three, two, one. That's the match. Turn off your weapons, drive to the door. This one goes to the judges. Got a good little uh, round of applause there from Team Shreddit Captain Evan Arias here on his, uh, his two teammates here. Chris, I have to say that this, um, this, uh, this windbreaker here, it is very toasty in here. Really? I cannot <laughs> stop sweating, Chris. <laughs> this is... Very hot. All right, all right, let's take a look at the replay. All right. I'm taking off this windbreaker, William. All right. This was uh, just dominant performance from Wakey Wakey, really working together, eventually ripping off that belt from Sea Dragon's Roar, and just, just staying on top of their opponents, like really landing these great pins one after another. This one goes to the judges, technically. I think that this is very clearly, though, a wakey wakey win. All right. What'd you think about that fight, Chris? Uh, wakey wakey, uh, great combo. We saw a lot better teamwork uh, this time around. And, you know, they got, again, it's a, it's a long way up through the elimination bracket. Yeah. Uh, but I'm sure that we'll see them at least for uh, a few more rounds. They're, you know, great bots and a great team. All right, Chris, let's check in with your wife, Lindsay. Hello, Lindsay. Hello, Luke. All right, uh, can confirm unanimous decision from the judges for Wakey Wakey. All right, Wakey Wakey, staying alive here. Fantastic work. All right, I can see that we're all locked and loaded here into cage two. Is that where we're gonna go next? All right, 
I see uh, Voxel there over in the pink corner. And, uh, and Meta over Facing in the blue. Off against Meta, yes. This is a bot that was commissioned by Mark Zuckerberg himself. <laughs> it, it Andrew is, Kasper it is hates the, these jokes. I is, can see it all <laughs> over his face. I am so sorry. Meta right. versus <laughs> Voxel. Eight. Meta, seven, the most dangerous bot six, in the entire it's metaverse. It's like naming your four, bot Google, three, Chris. All right. Two, you get sponsorship, maybe. Fight, robots, fight. Oh, here we go. In uh, in classic voxel fashion, straight in weapon. 100% full torque. Wow, and look at that. One of the forks from Meta has stabbed itself into Voxel. Voxel driving it around. Meta can do nothing here. These two robots are stuck together. You can see it on the Casmer's face. They are just as delighted as we are, Chris. <laughs> wow. All right, if this goes on for much longer, the uh, cage manager may pause this match and go in and save poor Meta there. What an unlucky bounce, Chris. Wow, that's so wild. Yeah. And that does, it, they look like a, like a UHMW fork, so it's like it might be really kind of gummed up in there. It's like Voxel has uh, got a little flag there, you know, that's just waving around. <laughs> All right, All it looks right, like we're, we're going to pause. pause this match so that the ref can get in there. Now, I will say that this is one of the most mm, mm, scary kind of moments because these are both live weapons. So they, we're, we're going to see how they unstick these robots. They may push them here to the door. Maybe they'll turn off their robots first. It could be that they use a crowbar or something like that to just kind of knock Meta out uh, from the top. Gonna have to see here. Oh, are we bringing in the broom? Yes. Chris, we're bringing in the broom. All right, okay. Here we go. All right, Matt. Where's the crowbar? Okay. Oh, no, no they're gonna. gonna get a okay, huge, yes, they're gonna. They're gonna safety the weapon first. Instead. All right, locking that that big huge screwdriver in there to make sure that that weapon on Voxel doesn't end up spinning up yeah. as they try to oh, unstick Matt, these bots. Matt, no. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Yeah. Meta is putting in its weapon lock. Thank right. nice. goodness. Yep. <laughs> Don't want to get that thing stuck in there. Okay. Oh, I see. We used the big screwdriver to put it through Voxel's weapon. Mm -hmm. Both of these drivers have put down their transmitters. There we go. Okay. Wow. What a round of applause from the audience. Let's, all, let's hear it for the broom. <laughs> for the broom, let's go. You know, whenever we have a mess here, it's always here to, to clean things up. Mm. It's nice. Four, three, two, one. This match is back on. Oh. Wow, Meta's weapon came right back and just kicked Voxel right into the wall. Here we go, Voxel. Oh. Wow, big hit there. And it, it looks like the weapon on Voxel isn't spinning. Look at that, just dragging along the floor. Oh, the I cracked. see. Part of that weapon is, in fact, snapped off. Wow, they snapped part of the egg beater on Voxel. This is not the first time that this has happened with this weapon here at Norwalk. And yeah, so you know, Voxel is a weapon that has a weapon that is it is dialed in. And oh, the no. fact that it They're is now asymmetrical. Chris. They're smoking, Chris. Oh, boy. Voxel, oh, boy. just keep spinning it. Maybe you'll put yourself out. Wow. OK. I think that that would probably that. be a, uh, a speed controller that is no more. OK. Yeah, I guess if it's a lipo, it's a little bit thicker, would you say, Chris? Is that right? And generally accompanied by uh, some serious flames. But I don't know, that's a lot of smoke. It's a lot of smoke for an ESC. Here you comes Meta. They're still tangling. Wow. All right, I'm going to give it to oh. Michael Shore. He doesn't know when to quit. Your robot is on fire. Your, your robot's weapon is cracked, Michael. 30 seconds left. Getting counted out here. Amazing. Oh, that was a great fight. Oh. Wow. 
Chris, I Knock love out. a dirty fight. You know the what I mean? The winner is like just, <laughs> meta. Just a, a fight where you were speared into your opponent. We had a, a unstick. We had a little bit of fire, perhaps, perhaps some smoke, you know, from an ESC, a cracked weapon. What else can you ask for in a fight? That was fantastic. Meta has uh, banned uh, Voxel from the <laughs> winner's bracket. So Voxel's gonna have to move on to the elimination bracket if they want to make their way into the finals this evening. Wow, yeah. Man. Wow, here we go. That's, that's the moment where uh, Meta got speared in the top of Voxel. And right here, that's where they cracked the weapon. Incredible. Seeing that thick smoke. They haven't put in the uh, the fire extinguisher yet. I think they're waiting to see if uh, Voxel's going to catch fire first. Trying to figure out if it's safe to open up this cage. Here we go. They are opening up the cage. Looks like Voxel did not catch fire after all. All right, all right. looks like cage one, some... Uh, some bigger bots have loaded in. We're gonna take you over there. We see Andrew Kasmer there with Meta. Fantastic work with uh, this very powerful robot indeed. Staying alive, advancing to undefeated bracket round three. Okay. I see that uh, box one is all locked. Looks like the builders are ready to go here. Is this gonna be another 12 pound fight? Next in cage one, 12 pound oh, weight class, Chris. elimination bracket, oh, round Chris. one. Chris? Eight. It's that weird seven, bristle bot again, six, Chris. Five. <laughs> Four, I love three, it. I think this two, is our 50th one, match of the day already. Right? Is that what's going on? Flightless fight. squared here against wow. Minor Threat 5. Flightless is this strange wheelless robot in bright green versus Minor Threat. Here we oh! go! I saw something. Oh, there's some of the bristles off of uh, Flightless. Yeah, but Minor Threat 5 finds itself on its head. Minor Threat had a very damaging fight against Blackjack earlier today. But look at this, just finding itself on its head. It cannot self-right. Will Fluffy come in here and try and save? And look at this, Cody from uh, Team Honeycracks. It's just menacingly uh, <laughs> crawling to, uh, to make contact here with Minor Threat 5. Hold still, I'm coming. I'm coming. I feel so uncomfortable by looking at this <laughs> robot, Chris. It looks like only two of those horizontals are currently spun up. And I see a little puff of smoke coming out of Flateless. Well, that's not good. What happened with Minor Threat 5? One of the big things that you're looking for with these uh, for these vertical spinners that try and self-right just by using bunny ears is that you have to have like the, the ball bearings or wheels on the tops of those bunny ears so that you can drive yourself over to the side of the box and violently self-right. And uh, it looks like perhaps they forgot about those ball bearings and those wheels. Or, or you, just, you just need enough mass in that weapon to help gyro spin you up uh, like a top. Oh, what awful luck. Fluffy came in, hit Flightless right in the face, and put it right back onto its head. That is their one save there. Oh, I hear a Flightless double count squared? out. Is it still running? Is this a double count out? What is going on here? Knockout. Okay. The winner is the robot in the blue square. Okay. We'll, we'll double check that. Yeah, the robot in the blue square was flightless squared. I'm gonna give you a little golf clap because there wasn't really a lot of motion there at the end. But maybe just enough to stay alive, okay. We'll get a little clarification on that. Amazing. Uh, so I think that that means that uh, this is the last fight of the day for Minor Threat 5. They uh, went 0-2 today. 
and going home early. Really hope to see Minor Threat 5 here, though, again. Very promising robot, but just had a couple of gremlins to work out. OK. I see that we have loaded into cage three here. Ty versus Corruptor. And look at this. We have two young builders here, young drivers of Corruptor, facing off against Ty. Ty over there in the pink corner. Corruptor nestled here over in the blue corner. The box is all locked up. We're just about ready to go. Ty uh, built and driven by Dylan Juarez here. This is Jonathan Juarez's son. Uh, they both appeared on BattleBots with War EZ. If you'd like, go out and check out their heavyweight here at the Bot Museum. It is absolutely gorgeous. Corruptor. Fantastic. Versus Ty. Eight, All right, this is elimination seven, bracket round six, one. Five, four, three, one of these bots will be two, going home in three one, minutes or less. Fight, robots fight. All right, in orange Ooh. we see Corruptor. This angled overhead spinner. Facing off against Ty. This titanium, uh, you know, laced horizontal spinner here. Oh boy, oh, oh. no! Oh, Picking that was essential as, a, as part of the self-writing mechanism. And going to work, eating away at the foam tires of Corruptor. Corruptor's weapon is up. Chris, I think that Corruptor's body might be made out of wood. Does that look like wood to you, Chris? Uh, I don't, I don't think so. It might be PVC. Inter no, dude, look, it's wood. There's wood. Wow. All right, this is an incredibly, oh no, oh no. Incredibly damaging fight here. Oh God. <laughs> uh, Bert does not want to let Ty have all the fun here. All right, Corruptor there back on its feet, but lost quite a bit of mobility from those foam tires. Ty just coming in here to kill. This uh, cage three is quickly devolving oh, into a there's scrap the yard. Wow. from Corruptor. Wow. The winner is Ty. All right, a decisive victory for Dylan Juarez and Ty. And we see here uh, one of the adults on Team Corruptor taking a photo of the damage. Incredible. Great match here. Fantastic. I love to see kids in the sport, Chris. Totally. Like, this is fantastic. Um, I think that, that most of these kids are either in elementary school or possibly middle school. And it's really cool that you have this, this, this hobby that you can do with your parents, you know? Like, uh, your parents have to take an interest in, obviously, help you out, purchase all of the things, and then, like, it typically, like, help you also build, you know, at least your first or second robots. And, um, yeah, I don't know. I see stuff like this, and I just wish I had a more conventional childhood, you know? And <laughs> maybe uh, I could have done cool stuff like this when I was a kid, you know? Uh, combat robot parents care. Yeah. They do. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, it, you're investing in a kid's future just by getting him into right. STEM this early, and that's awesome. Yeah. I mean, unlike my, uh, unlike my parents, where they would just cut open, like, a bag of hot dogs and just throw them into uh, the house and lock us in again. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well. Yeah. That'll happen. <laughs> what kind of hot dogs were they? They were the cheapest ones possible, Chris. <laughs> All right? Uh... All right, uh, went a little dark, I'm sorry. All right, uh, I can see that we've loaded into cage two. Uh, Zach here against Cinder. Oh, okay, all right. Very cool. Opening up the cage once again. Yep, Let's activating the bots, getting them wow, ready to fight. this is another Juarez family bot. We can see Jonathan Juarez, though, making the, the robot safe. And uh, his little son here. 
who drove Zach earlier. Oh, wow. Oh, and here comes the stool. The stool. The child is climbing the stool, folks. Here we go. Cinder versus Zach. All right. Oh, that is just adorable. Eight, <laughs> yes. Seven. Oh, six, this is going to be a great five, fight. Cinder four, had a fantastic three, first match two, earlier today. One. Fight. Robots fight. Wow. Fast box rush immediately from Zach. Zach showing off the, the mobility and drive of that robot. Cinder. Oh! Here we go, Cinder. I love it. Oh, it's a flamethrower and it's a good one, Chris. Wow. Oh, it's just so much fun to watch. <laughs> wow, I love it. <laughs> We've seen wow. some incredible flamethrowers here today, and this is, Cinder is like, no joke. They are here to work. Oh, oh, giving Brett a little of the heat. All right, we saw. Oh, no. And look at this. Wait, I see some smoke. What is that from, Chris? <laughs> Where there's smoke, there's fire, Luke. Do you think? <laughs> Here we go. Does Cinder have any more gas left? It does. Let's go. Oh, oh. Cinder's really going to want to try to get that pin in there before it really uh, starts trying to cook. It sounds like the weapon on Zack could be down. So these are two push bots now. Uh, uh, Cinder. Ah! Cinder getting those flames under the body of Zack. Incredible. Oh, oh boy. Zach does not want to be there. Now we saw a little bit of, uh, of this kind of, I'd say chaotic drive style from Zach. You know, I think he's, he's pretty young. I'll give it to him though. He's a better driver than I am, Chris. Uh, you, you've seen my, my insurance premiums. You know, they're not great. <laughs> pretty high, but uh, yeah, really great mobility from Zach. And uh, Cinder here is really just trying to mount a, a cogent offense here. I think that the uh, the flames are out. Cinder's like not even that mobile either. Here we go. Ah, oh, there you go. There's the shot. There we go. Wow, I love it. Father son team. Forty the seconds Warren's left in this family. match. Let's go. Cinder has been inverted for, I think, this entire fight. Yeah. Do you think that the flames still go when it's upside down, Chris? What do you think? Oh, here's a good pin. Let's go, Zach. That's a good pin here. Pushing Cinder up against the rail. There's the Cinder hat. And look at this. Cinder has just uh, returned that pin. They have both escaped wow. the count out. This one will go to the judges. Three, two, one. That's the match. Drive to the door if you can. This one goes to the judges. All right, let's take a quick look at this replay. I want to see this flamethrower again. Incredible. Oh, I love that. That's a really good fire. Like, uh, I mean, like, Chris, you, you've tried to build a flamethrower in the past. You know, do you have any notes for the builder oh, I think Cinder? You're, I think you're thinking about Clyde Magnuson. Oh, sorry. Your we look alike. Clyde. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. All right. Uh, this one does go to the judges. Let's see, we, uh, we saw the weapon on Zach go down fairly early. Uh, we saw some kind of impaired driving, though, from Cinder. A couple of back and forth pins. You gotta wonder how they're going to judge this. Very curious indeed. As the judges deliberate, it looks like uh, cage three is loaded up. We'll see what the... Uh... Oh, oh, let's wow. meet our judges. Oh my gosh, let's meet our judges. Let's go from the top. We have Jack Tweedy, who's dialing in from the UK. Jack, where have we seen you before? Uh-oh. Can Jack hear me? It's a six-hour delay. <laughs> uh, yeah, Jack, can you, can you hear me at all? Brad, can you hear me? Do you want to give me a little thumbs up? 
All right, I don't think they can hear us. Dominic, can you hear us? Oh, all right, oh. it's very low. Is this working? We're getting right. extreme visual, we're, so. <laughs> we're gonna come back to the judges in just a second. Um, okay, all right. Uh, let's figure out what we're gonna do with the judges. Maybe they can send in their scores. It was very exciting to see them up there, though. Yeah. Dominic Yankas Yankaskis, Brad Hanstead, and uh, Jack Tweedy. Jack Tweedy, a longtime judge here. I still think he needs to come out and compete. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. As many teams that we could pull in from the UK as possible would be great. Let's right, head let's over to Lizzie. In, uh, yeah. Let's check in with your wife, Lindsay. I'm back. I know we just saw the judges, but I'm back. Um, and so first I'm going to tell you what the audience poll said. Okay. And uh, with some number of votes, I actually haven't ended the poll yet, so I don't know. But 56% of voters oh. said Zach won. Okay. That's All right. very close. That is close. Very close. One of the more uh, nail-biter uh, type matches that we've seen. However... However... I'm going to give you the judges' reports. Okay. And all three judges... Assigned it a 10 7 point split. Wow, okay. In favor of Cinder. Wow. Wow. Okay. So Cinder is your unanimous wonder, winner. All right, Cinder advances in the elimination bracket. Well done. I Good wonder what that, what that attributed to. I wonder, was it because the weapon went down on the other bot yeah. because it hit the plow? Yeah, the, the weapon going down really does count a lot toward your damage score. Um, and uh, Cinder's weapon continued to run. You know, it's not like uh, Zach was able to, uh, to defeat the, um, the, uh, the, main, the main weapon. All right, Chris, I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to swap out here again for yet another VIP tour. The people can't get enough. They want another one. Chris. Yeah, I mean, you come on down to, to South Norwalk here and uh, uh, take a seat over at the, uh, the VIP lounge. You're right next to the titanium, uh, the titanium uh, 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 cages, and you can go on a VIP tour. You get the whole uh, layout of the facility. You get a tour of the pits. It's really awesome. Hive Lighter versus Eruption. All right, we are set in cage Eight, three. Seven. Our six, match is starting here. Five. Eruption four, in the pink corner. Hive three, Lighter in the blue corner. Two. One. Fight. Robots fight. Away we go. Oh, chunks of robots all over the place already. Bibbity bobbity boom. Oh. Oh boy. Oh, that is a, that is a sad day over there. What an interesting design, though. It really is different. But different good, Chris? Well, not that. It's different now than when it started the match, also. Let's see. I think both weapons are down, though. Yeah, I see one of them on the floor, mm -hmm. actually. I'm assuming that it's down now that it's separated from the robot. Ablative weapons are, are rarely a thing in combat robotics. All right. We do have a, a pin. pin there from Hive Lighter. Yeah. Uh, there is no shortage of effort being expended by either of these drivers. Wow, Eruption is zippy. It's a zippy bot. Um, a sonic attack there. <laughs> Both of these robots doing their best to control the match, and it's interesting the top and bottom panels of Hive Lighter are actually serving as, as makeshift wedges that incredibly are out wedging the front of Eruption. One minute left on the clock. Eruption, when it can when it can out wedge Hive Lighter, has the superior pushing power. But once you get under an opponent, that's kind of it, and that's really working for Hive Lighter in, in maybe three quarters of these interactions. I mean, if if Eruption's weapon is down, 
A lot of this is going to have to come down to uh, that those control and oh, aggression points. Oh, look at points. that. And, wow. And what, a, what a display of dominance that is. Wow, look at that. Oh, and it's... Oh, what a... I don't know if that was a sportsman move or uh, unintentional, but... But yeah, I can see Eruption, it looks like, has either faulty wiring or a faulty motor controller because the, the weapon is attempting to spin on occasion. It just can't seem to, um, to make it happen. And that usually means two of the three wires that control that motor are okay, but the last one is not. So that's your match. It's going to go to the judges. Uh, for considering it came down to a pushing match, I'm actually really interested to see. That was, that was fun to watch. You Let's can see some replay. Yeah. Big hits early. Um, you know, bit of bit of bit comes off the weapon of Hive Lighter. And then I think there's a, oh, we're not gonna see it in the replay. There's a weapon exchange there towards the end where it gets jammed up. Oh, by the way, I'm back on stream. Thank you, everyone. Uh, this chair. Wait, someone lowered my chair. No, that's just how tall you are. You're standing, aren't you? Oh, hi, Ricky. <laughs> oh. We're going to go to the judges and find out. Uh, we've got Jack Tweedy, we've got Bradley Hanstan, and we've got Dominic Iankoskis. Jack, can you tell me what you thought about that fight? Judges, give me a thumbs up if you can hear us. All right. They are all muted. They are all quiet. Can we read it on their faces? <laughs> See, I'm Jack, reading can something. Can you divine it from... I'm reading something. Yeah, uh, I am interested to know what they have to say, but we have to be able to hear them first. Yeah, we'll probably have to go back to Lindsay and because uh, she's got a direct feed with them, and uh, maybe she can give us a breakdown of uh, what their thoughts were about that. What what ended up being a uh, a control match. Mm -hmm. Lindsay, is that uh, something we can you get you to report on to us? All right, so while we wait for the judges, I have another fan poll oh. that might surprise you. Okay, surprise me. So last time we checked in with the, with the fan poll, it was 56%, which was really close. Mm -hmm. Now we're at 53%, mm -hmm. even closer, for High Flighter. Oh. So we're going to see here what's going on with the judges. Uh, it looks like we have, we have two... Results already in, and they're for the same bot. So either it's going to be unanimous or a split decision. A very, very, very close match in favor of Eruption. Really? And it is, in fact, unanimous now with, with all three judges coming in. Uh, two 9-8 splits, so you can't get any closer than that. No, absolutely not. Yeah, and then one 10-7. So Interesting. Very close. I am, I'm frankly stunned. Not that I... Uh... Yeah, not that I can argue with the results, just yeah. that you've got one a unanimous result, and, and one of those unanimous results is, is a multi-point jump. Yeah, wow, that's really impressive. Chris, you grew. I did. <laughs> I got a little taller, mm -hmm. um, a little bit brighter. What mm -hmm. are you going to do? Oh, more cows. I didn't even notice that <laughs> earlier. <laughs> uh, yes, this might be or might not be a gift from the Milk Tank team. Um, they are upping their merch game. They now have fully cow-themed Hawaiian shirts. It's incredibly moving. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Uh, I'll put a lot of steak in it. Um, all right, so we're going to go over it's to Cage great a One shirt. next. <laughs> um, yeah, perhaps, uh, perhaps we'll even... Um... Kamenote oh, okay. versus Kilojoule. There we go. Kamenote versus Kilojoule. seven... Six, five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robots, fight. All right. These are two horizontal spinner style robots. Yeah. Kilojoule uh, off to a slow but weaponful start. And uh, Kemenote having some trouble with its weapon. Yeah, Kilojoule has always had mobility issues. That's been its biggest challenge since getting in here. They talked to the driver earlier today. He is very proud of the fact that he's now able to drive upside down, and he's really improved on mobility issues. Oh, chunks off of Kemenote there. But That's, that uh, weapon has never been an issue. That thing hits hard. Well, it did the job. One wheel's gone. I'm seeing weapons smoked from Kemenote. Yeah, that's not what you want to see this early in the match, for sure. The weapons never actually worked, and now we've got smoke coming from it. 
Oh, I see just a little bit of limping. I don't think it's long for this world, Kyle. Uh, I don't think so either. If it could make it the full three minutes, it would be a miracle at this point. When you see a team come all the way from Mexico City, you really want them to be able to go deep, deep, deep into the tournament. But at this point, I, yeah, I can't see it happening. I but can't I, see it happening. Miracles can happen. And I'm sure that um, there's some tap out. There it is. Wishing, but the there it winner is, is Killa Jewel. Killa Jewel. Tap out. The winner is. Kill a jewel. If you didn't hear it the first time, we have it there for you the second. Absolutely loving that. Kill a jewel, design wise, it's an interesting bot. I mean, you know, take Valkyrie, make it orange. Mm -hmm. um, but the mobility issues they're having, that's something they're really going to have to work out. They've had a great day as of today, in spite of that. Right. Uh, but it's definitely something that they're going to have to work on on their bot going forward. And the driver knows it, he's well aware. Well, it's an interesting question to me of is it functionality or is it design? Is it supposed to be that slow? No, you know, I'm not saying that in a judgmental way, but Correct, yeah. sometimes you put together a robot and you think enough, you know, a certain amount of speed is going to be enough. Yeah, absolutely. And you get it in the ring and you just, it just turns out not to be. Yeah. The other thing that can happen is you put a robot in the arena and you think it's going to have enough power, even if it's designed to go faster. Yep. And you just don't. So <laughs> it's, I'm, I'm interested to know is, which way did it turn out differently than they expected? Yeah, absolutely. And I, we'll find out, I guess, at the next event. Absolutely. And one thing we do know is it's certainly working and, uh, and motivating a lot better at this event than it did at its last one. Incremental improvements are what we're looking for pretty much with all of these bots as time goes on. Um, and sometimes giant leaps in evolution, but yeah. that's uh, not as common, unfortunately. You know, I think it's time for us to get back to the meat of of what we're discussing here, yeah, Kyle, absolutely. You know, um, nice shot of our crowd, by the way. Hello, audience. Nice to see all of you. Oh, look at them all. Look at these guys. Excited to be here. Throwing Waving, up their signs. Smiling. They just all went out and had a lovely lunch at the food trucks. They're back to have a nice time watching some robots destroy each other. We just, you know, it's wholesome family fun around here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's really nothing you can say other than uh, welcome to the carnage. <laughs> So we are going to go have a, a great a good time. Mm -hmm. uh, we might even enjoy grilling up some sirloins afterwards. We've got a dairy-themed fight for all of you. This is going to be the blue cheese taking on the milk tank. Blue cheese versus milk tank. Mm, some beefy robots. Kyle. Delicious. Eight, seven. Six, if you are lactose five, intolerant, I four, highly recommend three, switching over to the titanium two, stream right now where there will not fight, be so much robots cheese and fight. There so comes Blue Cheese is going to want to try and flank Milk Tank. Absolutely. They've got to take out that glitter balloon early and often. Milk Tank's weapon seems to be up to full speed and their drive is working quite well. Blue Cheese got that bot back together after being completely split in half earlier today. You know, with Blue Cheese's weapon not up, now is the time for Milk Tank to uh, T-bone its opponent. <laughs> <laughs> it's really unfortunate Milk Tank is not running its flamethrower. We could have a nice reverse sear. Yeah. Yeah, no popping that weapon without the uh, weapon working on, or popping that balloon without the weapon working on Blue Cheese. Blue Cheese has been through some rough battles today. It is not surprising they're having weapon issues at this point. Do Milk Tank, a little Go stuck ahead. in the corner. Yep, Blue Cheese able to maintain quite a bit of control in this match, despite the fact his weapon is down. Kyle, do we know what area Blue Cheese is coming from to, to compete here? <laughs> Uh, I want to say Wisconsin, obviously, uh -huh. but that's clearly not the case. Uh, Thought it might be from like the, the eastern strip of New York. <laughs> no, they're from Derry, Pennsylvania. Clearly, that's Matt Luther driving blue cheese. It's team defective. Uh, Matt is an HVAC technician. Mm -hmm. He owns six cows and a dozen chickens. 
I don't even know if you're telling me the truth anymore, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> this is all this is all factual information gathered by our intrepid reporter Luke Stangle. So I fully trust the source. You're you're not giving me any more confidence right now. <laughs> <laughs> My confidence is plummeting. Just like uh, the outcome of this match. <laughs> uh, actually, it, it's amazing. Blue Cheese, incredibly mobile. Milk Tank, no longer spinning, but still drivable. Still drivable, yeah. Um, I noticed that we are balloonless now. We didn't comment on the moment that it popped, or at least I didn't. But I think this might be one of those situations where they were hoisted by their own petard. I like, think you might be right about that, that yes. That glitter getting deep into the innards of milk tank is, I think, might, might be what's slowing it down. It's one of those weapons that could definitely harm the user, you know? If you, if you get the glitter inside of your opponent, it's going to wreak havoc on their internal systems. But unfortunately, if the wind's blowing the wrong way, you could get all that glitter inside yourself. It's like being in a firefight in a closet and throwing a grenade. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. You know, there's... Or spraying your mace inside of a car. Just don't do it. It's yeah. not a great idea. And here we come to the end of this match. This one will go to the judges, oh. as it were. This what a is... nice pin, though, at the last <laughs> minute. Milk Tank really showing that they had last-minute control. <laughs> I'm going to put you down. <laughs> That's how you give a last impression to the judges. That's the way to do it right there. I love it. <sighs> what, what, a, what a ridiculous match. You know, I'm interested for, for Lindsay to uh, skim the internet for comments. Yeah, absolutely. After that. Absolutely. I'm guessing there's a whole lot. I bet people have feelings. I bet maybe, people have some big feelings. Yeah, maybe 2% maybe of those comments are going to be good, <laughs> but... You don't think the whole of the comments is going to be good? I, the thing is, is that when they're so well homogenized, <laughs> it's hard to pull the... Oh, the, the, the cream. The cream. Yeah, which rises to the top. Right. Obviously. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's, All right, let's, let's check in with Lindsay. Yeah. Lindsay, what do you have for us? Oh, hi. Hey, nice hat. Uh, the whole of your comments are really starting to just uh, take, a, take a toll on me. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> that uh, was really cheesy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, while we wait for the judges, mm -hmm. I have, a, I have a, a viewer poll. Again, we're getting closer and closer and closer. This time, 51% in favor of blue cheese. Mm. So I don't know what that's going to mean for when the judges' decisions are coming in. Oh, we have one so far. Okay. I guess I'll, I'll read them to you as they come in. We can kind of be on the, on the edge of our, our seats as they come in. Uh, all right, so the first judge's decision is from Dominic mm -hmm. with a 10-point uh, assignment to blue cheese. I'm on the edge of my milking stool here for the next one. <laughs> milking stool. I don't like the sound of that. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you went there. <laughs> um, all right, and now we have a unanimous decision oh. in favor of blue cheese. So well. I love you, Milk Tank, but this one wasn't your one. No, no, no. But yeah, they did bribe you with that bucket hat, so. Hey, I got this all on my own, so <laughs> <laughs> I don't take bribes. <laughs> all right, we're going to head over to cage two. Oh, there we go. Crisis versus Beetlejuice. Nice. Hanging out with some elimination bracket round action. Eight, seven. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Fight. Hey, Robots go. fight. Beetlejuice, extremely powerful wow, horizontal spinner, but I there. have to say, Crisis has been really impressive today. It's just such a well-built bot. The fact that it's got such a beautiful and cohesive design about it, it helps. It's nice, but that weapon hits hard and it drives beautifully. This is going to be a long road to tow for Beetlejuice. And if for anyone keeping track, I have had said that name twice. 
already in this fight, so yes. it's up to you to say it the next two times, just so we never go over the limit. I was going to say, here's the thing, is as long as we split up the order. Exactly. And I'm the next one to say Beetlejuice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, we wasted it. Oh, that was not a happy position for the mini bot to get thrown into. They are completely out of commission on this match now, it looks like. Look at the tiny little tire that's supposed to be on that mini bot, I think. Wow, nice hit there from Crisis. And now they're just stacking the Beetlejuice team on top of each other in the corner. They still get one unstick. And this will be the only unstick they get in this match. And we are back, back to the races as it were. But it does look like half of the drive on Beetlejuice is no longer functioning. Weapon does work though, there we go. And we get a pin there from Crisis up against the wall. They're allowed to hold that pin for 10 seconds before they have to let go. You can I see the wheels spinning. They're trying to escape. Beetlejuice is trying to escape, but <laughs> unfortunately, it's just one of those wheels spinning. Yeah, yeah, really hard when you only have two wheels and even harder when only one of those two wheels is working. Mm -hmm. And now we're heading into the last minute of this fight. Oh, that sounded um, like the kind of impact that might embed you into a wall. Yeah, yeah, a little kerthunky. I'm wondering, even after Crisis removes itself, oh, no, all right, it was able to move. Beetlejuice was able to move after that. Coming into the final 45 seconds, uh, so far this has been mostly Crisis control and Crisis damage. The only difference here is that uh, Crisis also has a very damaged weapon. Yeah, it is not functioning, and it looks very off-kilter inside of that bracket. It is definitely not touching the parts that it needs to be touching in order to work. But he's doing a good job of managing that crisis, if you will. Uh, yeah. yeah. It, he has been counseled through this and <laughs> seems to be surviving well. Doing just fine. Yeah, you can see the belt is completely off of that weapon as well. Just kind of hanging there. Weapon still seems to be fully functional on Beetlejuice. He's just not got much of an opportunity to utilize it. And here's the end of the match. It's going to go to the judges. Um, while I can see a little, uh, certainly strong moments for both opponents, this seems to me like it would be a clear crisis um, uh, victory. Yeah, I have to agree with you on that one. Beetlejuice I, did well, but once that drive went down on that one side, they just weren't able to come back from I that. really doubt this is going to be crisis averted. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Look at the, the little wheel just spinning along there in the replay. I know, yeah, just rolling itself through. It's lovely. It's mm -hmm. lovely. Yeah, the, the weapon on crisis went down, but obviously a very well-built bot. Uh, mm -hmm. The drive system on there worked flawlessly. We've seen them put in some phenomenal work today. This is their first time at Norwalk Havoc, and uh, you just can't ask for a better outing here. I no, mean, absolutely no, it's phenomenal. Really, an impressive thing to be able to come out, and uh, we've seen a few competitors today that have come out for their first time and put in pretty impressive work, and um, yeah, it's just a prime example of that. Absolutely, it is. Uh, it goes to show you a lot of these folks have been fans of Norwalk Havoc. They've been watching the live streams. They've been checking out all the YouTube videos. They've been learning everything they can about their competitors before they come here. And they've, you know, we see more and more people coming in just so prepared that when you find out this is their first spot, it is such a shock. All right. Fallout. We're going to head over. Versus War Hard. This is the much better named Eight, War Hard. Seven, six, five, what is it good four. for, Kyle? Three, uh, smashing two, things oh. one. violently. Fight, robots fight. Oh, there we go. Away we go. Oh, immediately up on the rails. Yeah, not a great place to be if you're war hard. Fallout is a lifter and control style bot. They were able to execute their strategy early on very Look well by lifting Warhard. Look at Warhard. those gymnastics as Warhard bounces around the arena. Yeah, we'll lift Warhard onto the wall, but after Warhard got free, this is all them. Look at the bends on those forks. On the one hand. Wow, Boom. big hit there. Yeah, absolutely massive. 
The durability on Fallout, very impressive. They're taking these hits and they seem to be fully functional afterwards. Yeah, their drive is working just fine. They've got a lot of um, <laughs> bending at the front, but that's, yeah. those are bendable parts. They're, you choose flexible materials to, to be compliant like that. Fallout's only chance here is to uh, survive long enough and uh, try to get some control back from Warhard when it slips up, but Warhard is absolutely not making that easy. Absolutely not. Yeah, and it, now with those forks as bent up as they are, there is no ground game possibility for Fallout anymore in this match. Tap out. And there it is. That is the tap is. out. Warhard. The war was not easy for Fallout. Warhard wins that match. They will be moving on in this round. Really impressive driving match for both of these bots, but it was all Warhard for the last, I'd say, two thirds of that fight. Yeah, it. Uh, that first exchange was kind of a moment uh, to champion, and that's one of those times when I think I would have tried to take. Uh, take advantage of it and, and put some control into the situation rather than having an unstick or just tapping or something along those lines. That's exactly right. Uh, you kind of got to jump on those. Yeah, yeah, with a weapon as powerful as Warhards, if you see an opportunity like that where they're stuck up against the wall, you've got to get in there, you've got to control them more, you've got to lift them up more. Yes, you're going to risk dislodging them yourself, but, but showing when you the have judges. An unstick, yep. you know, it's going to get dislodged anyway. Yep, absolutely. Uh, so. It's okay, we'll see. Uh, you know, it's worthwhile, Kyle, while we're waiting for the next fight to talk about uh, our previous fight. We never did get to the judges, did we? Oh, we did not get to the judges' decision on that. That is accurate. Should we go to Lindsay real quick? Check maybe, in on that. Maybe let's go to Lindsay. Lindsay. Hi. Hi. All right, so we've had a lot of close matches go to mm -hmm. the judges, uh, you know, today. This one, not so close. No. No, this was a unanimous decision for Crisis. Reasonable. I yeah. think, I think that's thought. understandable. It's kind of what we expected, but uh, no, less of, uh, no less of a great effort uh, from, their, from their opponent. Absolutely. And Crisis moving on. Uh, they weren't damage free after that. They're going to have some repairs to do. They are the going to have fight. some repairs to do. I was at their pit table last night talking to them as they came in. They seem very well prepared. They have a lot of spares. Mm -hmm. um, they're a very cohesive team. They're, they're wearing like cool outfits that match their bots. Everything right. kind of fits into a color pattern. I, they seem organized. I think they'll be fine. We're going to head over to cage one. Cage Sunflower one? of Peace versus... Yahoo! I watched the spin-up test for Sunflower of Peace this morning. Did you? This is a disturbingly scary bot. I, I'm just Eight, uncomfortable with flowers. Seven, six, uh, I'm uncomfortable five, with flowers that four, are intentionally three, unbalanced two, full body shell spinners. One. Fight, I'm robots fight. <laughs> Let's see how uncomfortable we can get together, Kyle. Yahoo, of course, a classic East Coast competitor here. We've seen them at many, many competitions. That Sunflower not spinning up very fast. Yes. No, and their own minibot kind of getting under them and impeding that spin up as well. Whoa! I think I just saw the uh, Sunflower separate from the base robot. Yeah, that is no longer attached to the robot. It is now a hat. <laughs> it's a large Sunflower-themed hat. Yahoo did a wonderful job separating the Sunflower from the, uh, the bot. It's, it's like, you know, picking daisies. <laughs> She loves me. She loves me now. She loves me. She loves me now. Yahoo, of course, driven by Chad New oh, from Team look, Copperhead. Is... And look at that. That is what is left of the Sunflower of Peace. That is such sadness in, in one frame. How is it not a tap out? Someone didn't want to go home with a bouquet. Absolutely. 
And then, what, just get the mini bot for good measure? This is... I, I, I mean, what else are you going to do? There, it would just be mean to go after the rest of Sunflower of Peace. Alex Kershaw obviously is not going to tap out. He is here for the mayhem. He is here for the torment, even if it means breaking his own bot, Sunflower of Peace. And Chad's a nice guy. He's not going to keep going after the main bat. Of course not. If it's completely demolished. At a certain point, after being completely demolished. You just say, can you make it smaller so I can more easily throw it away? <laughs> and I think that's kind of where that is in my mind. Uh, the shell itself was still mostly intact in that match, but the uh, the bot actually driving Knock that shell. Out. Not the hatch. The winner the hatch, is yes. Spine Crawler. No, no, it wasn't Spinecrawler. Spinecrawler was not in that match. Um, if they were, they would have lost. They are only a five-pound robot. Yeah. Um, but they weren't there. Oh, here we go. This is Cannoli, Cannoli versus, versus Spinecrawler. Spinecrawler. Spinecrawler is an eldritch terror Eight, that haunts seven, my nightmares. Six, I love Spinecrawler. Five, I do, too. It four, is a three, rare walking two, robot in the three-pound division, which fight, means it does get a little bit of a weight fight. bonus. It has a, uh, a hammer. Uh, the hammer is not a hard hammer. It is an aggressively tapping hammer. And it does have these uh, Teo Jansen golden ratio cam walking mechanisms. It looks like one of them is down, but they still have plenty of mobility. Yeah, it does seem that it is having some drive issue on the back left. Um, doesn't, yeah, absolutely. They're still able to drive. They're still able to point themselves at the opponent. And there's the weapon on Cannoli. It's finally back up and running. One of the amazing things on Spinecrawler is that it is continuously operating. So yes. it, just, it just smacks and smacks and smacks. And right now, Cannoli, being on its head, is a prime target for some of that smacking if you want to get a little closer. Absolutely, and that does count as control, aggression, and damage when they are coming in and smacking them with this hammer. Yep. I like it. I do, too. I do, too. It's a really cool robot. It is a really, really cool robot. I, is it bird-like? Is it crab-like? Is it scorpion-like? Is it just entirely alien? I don't know. Yeah, the spine crawler makes me think alien, right? Right, right. Now, I'm noticing cannoli has been upside down a lot. Yes, a significant amount of this fight, and uh, the wheels are still working, and when they're right side up, it seems like their weapon is still working. For a robot that doesn't have... Um, an opponent right now that does a lot of flipping. No, they are really upside down. They are really that. upside down. Now, what in the physics of that robot do you think would cause them to be upside down so often? Well, Cannoli was... Well, let's wait for this countdown first. Yeah. That there is a knockout. knockout. The first ever the career is knockout Cannoli. for Spinecrawler, by the way. Impressive. The winner is Spinecrawler. Very well done, Spine Crawler. You defeated a, an Italian dessert. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I defeated uh, several of them yesterday. <laughs> I was going to say, Kyle, what, the, what happens is when you have a robot that is as large as Spine Crawler is, it means that when you, a spinning robot attacks it, it's hitting it in a different um, vertical point than it's used to. Ah, like more in the center range more as opposed in the to down range. low. And when you have a large weapon diameter, the way that Cannoli, relatively speaking, does, right. a relatively large weapon diameter, uh, the, the force will kind of throw you backwards. Mm. And, and what you need to do as a driver, if, you, if you're quick enough, is not have your thumb on the throttle of that weapon when it hits, because otherwise what will happen is you'll spring backwards, your weapon will try to accelerate, and your robot will turn in midair, and it will oh. kind of land on its face. So the right way, a way, to minimize the chances, but not prevent the chances of that happening, are to spin up your weapon, turn it off the moment before you interact, Yep. hit it, let the, let the inertia of that weapon do the damage, then repeat the process. Right, because you're more likely to just fall backwards or fly backwards from that than to land on your face. Correct. Yeah, that Correct. makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. This is why you put robot builders behind the announce desk. It really does help. Now, <laughs> there's no guarantee. In, in anything, but in especially anything. in robot combat. Yeah. <laughs> All right, it looks like we are going to be loading into a cage... It looks like we we are going to be loading into cage three next.
pretty excited about that. What is going on here? There's a giant tank of some sort. A lot of protection around that tank. And that's a lot of wood. That is a lot of wood for a combat robot. I believe those are lag screws holding that wood in, as a matter of fact, as a... Uh... Kyle, how do you quantify a lot of wood? Uh, you know how much wood should be on most combat robots? S some. I'm a firm and adamant believer. Some wood? Some wood. I think uh, this is non -zero a... Non-zero amount of wood. This is a wood used as armor. This is the rare armor wood package. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm not so sure how I feel about that. So Plyohazard has lost its last four fights. Okay, so I'm pretty familiar with Plyohazard. This is a Kazma robot. Um, it looks different every single time we see it. Completely different every single time we see it. Uh, this is, so it is not surprising that there is so much wood in this robot. In fact, that's part of the concept. Um, and it looks like Plyohazard, which at one point was a melty brain spinner, mm -hmm. at another point was a vertical spinner. Okay. Now might very well be a flamethrower. But it's made of wood. Yes, yes. Helios versus Plyohazard. All right. Eight, Helios versus Plyohazard seven, coming right six, at you. Five. Four, Andrew Kazmer three, behind the sticks two, of Plyohazard. One. Fight. Robots fight. Yep, Way that goes. That's what that is. It's a lot of fire, and Plyohazard needs to stay on top of its opponent and keep that weapon from spinning up. Wow, look at that. A 10-second pin with that much fire could actually cause a significant amount of damage. Look at that. And I'm not talking oh. about to the externals. I'm talking about to the wiring, tap the harnesses, out. the... Oh, wow. Immediate tap out from a flamethrower. Impressive. That is impressive. So the four-fight losing streak from Plyohazard ends very quickly, and it turns out... Wood armor works great if you immediately go in for the pin. Yeah, if um, you never have to use it, wood armor <laughs> is one of the best armors that you can select. Yeah, that, uh, next time I play a, uh, an RPG, I'm going to select wood armor mm -hmm. for all of my combatants. Look at that. Hey, if it, if it works for Link and Zelda. <laughs> uh... Yeah, perfect. I mean, look at that. Just slamming them up against the, the rail getting their 10 second pin, just dousing them with flames the entire time. The angle of that flame going perfectly downward into the top of that bot. Now, this appears to be a butane flame, Kyle. And what that means is it's actually spraying out a liquid that then evaporates and burns. And what's cool is as it backs away, look at this. See how it's still on fire? It leaves a nice trail too, that was beautiful. It's all because there's still liquid fuel that's evaporating and burning after the fact. That sounds like a really great idea to put liquid fuel on your wooden armor. Yeah. And set it on fire. Listen, fire makes the best armor. Fire. <laughs> Ground control. We're gonna swing Versus on over. Milk tech. Eight. Six, that would be three, Milk Tank X if you couldn't five, tell by the cow four, themed competitors. Three, two, one. Fight. Robots fight. Ground Control is a uh, lifty bot. Yep, absolutely. Nice little lifty bot there. And it looks like, correct me if I'm wrong here. Yes, it does appear to be running. At least on one side, Omni Wheels. I don't understand. Why uh, only one set of the wheels would uh, be Omni and the others would be... Well, it's an interesting approach. If you've got... And I don't know if their wheels are uh, joined uh, mechanically or just electrically. It appears that they are joined electrically. Mm -hmm. uh, but if your front wheels are spinning and then you want to slide your, your rear end back and forth. Oh, just to get a different angle on your opponent. Mm -hmm. That could be their design approach. Doesn't seem to be working out in that way, but. But it's a possibility. It could also be that this robot was made from things that were found laying around the shop. And those happen to be the wheels that were in the shop. Yeah, yeah. You don't think of uh, that kind of wheel as just something that could be just hanging around. But uh, it's quite a possibility. Uh, quite Kyle, a possibility. you haven't been in my basement, have you? 
No, I have not. Yeah, you never know what a, a uh, robot builder has just lying around their yeah. house, I guess. The pin is happening right now. We're getting the 10 count. Does look like one of the nuts holding on one of the wheels on Milk Tankette is a little askew. Not sure if that's affecting their mobility at all. Kind of hard to tell with Milk Tankette. They drive a little uh, weeble wobbly, a little crazy anyway. Perhaps that's part of their strategy. It's uh, hard to tell if they're having mobility issues if you never know if they're driving appropriately anyway. You can see that nut just hanging off the end of the bolt there. I can hear some motor controller noises for their unhappy during that lift. When I spoke to uh, the team behind Milk Tankette yesterday, they said that they've put a much more powerful drivetrain in Milk Tankette for this particular competition. They're capable of reaching 40 miles per hour inside of the box at top speeds. It's a, essentially, uh, as Austin McCord called it, like putting a Ferrari engine on a bicycle. Hmm. It's a little horrifying, huh? <laughs> yeah, they... Um, the design philosophy and engineering philosophy behind the team with Milk Tank and Milk Tankette is YOLO. I, uh, I can appreciate that deeply. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Looks like we're down to the last seven seconds of this match. There was an attempted unstick there from Brett. But uh, to no avail, these competitors will end this match stuck together yeah, if you, in a warm, loving embrace. If you screen capped that and send it to me, I would just say there was one robot in the... Yeah, in the it now. really did look like there was only... They were, like, perfectly aligned in mm -hmm. the front. It's nice. And, and I think the design um, approach for both robots matches enough. Stag Beetle Box you could, versus you know, Counter-Attack. I think you're probably right about it. Uh, all right, we're going to go to Stag a Beetle Bot. Eight, seven... Six, They're going to be facing off against counter attack. Four, three, red square. Two, one. Fight, robots, fight. Look at the claw. Look at the claw on that, Kyle. Very interesting. Whoa, oh, wow. That's... It is wappy. It is slappy. Yeah, very strange. It is incredibly happy. It's counter attack. Uh, Stag Beetlebot is a uh, D2 kit with oh. a weapon on it and Wolverine claws. Right, right. Uh, looks like it's one of the one-pound uh, hub motor spinners that you could buy from Fingertech. Mm -hmm. That is correct. Um, for this type of a competition, what we would like to refer that to uh, refer to that as is like a wino, a weapon in name only. It's not really going to be doing a lot of damage. It's there to uh, appease the rule set, if you will. Oh, the what? <laughs> the Match is paused. They're going to get detangled. And in the meantime, I think we're going to go to Lindsay. Oh, are we going to find out who won that last match where the bots ended in a loving embrace? I think we're <laughs> going to find out who won that last match where the bots ended in a loving embrace. I'm very interested to see. Lindsay. Lindsay, can you tell us who won that last match where the bots you know, ended up in a loving embrace? So I have the results for the last match where the bots ended in a loving embrace. <laughs> Beautiful. And the result is unanimous for ground control. Oh, yeah, that's that's good. Good there for ground go. control. Congratulations to them. Who I believe are rookie builders. Oh. Wow, rookie builders that somehow have Omni wheels hanging out in their basement. Yeah, that's. I mean, here's the other thing: is you hang, you come to an event like this, you talk to a few builders, yeah. and I mean, if you happen to talk to me, I'll probably say I've got so much junk hanging out. <laughs> In every nook and cranny of every place that I spend any moment of my day, <laughs> if you would please take some spare robot parts away from me. Just, just please make them not in my presence anymore. <laughs> They're causing uh, issues in my relationships uh, yeah. with other people in my life. Can you please just... The government has called me. <laughs> not just my government. Just all multiple governments, multiple governments have been like, Mr. Williams, can you please, please just stop with all the robot tone, parts? Tone it back. And on the flip side, there's also a tremendous amount of parts here yeah, at Norwalk Havoc. Yeah. We're going to go back into the fight before we get too carried away. All right, looks like we're back at it. The uh, Frosted Flakes are now uh, really getting involved with the D2 kit. It's uh, chompa, chompa, chompa.
two Buck Kit bots going at it. This is uh, kind of an advertisement for Buck Kit. Buck Kits will. Oh, wow, that is uh, some wiring out uh, on top of the robot now that used to be on the inside of the robot. I believe all of that was controlling the uh, the waggle claw stick thing. Yeah, the um, the waggle finger. Yeah, 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 the the uh, the waggle finger. Yeah, that waggle finger uh, inspired by your second grade 93-year-old teacher who told you not to chew on the end of pencils. Yeah, and please don't wear your hat in the classroom. Right, or um, well, that's all I got. Make sure you feed the <laughs> class hamster or something. I got, I got nothing. But the clear inspiration. That's going to be a great Santa Claus beard one day. I don't know if you caught that on Yeah, on he's screen. not quite there yet, No, but he but will get there. I believe in him. Perhaps by December. We'll see. Mm -hmm. uh, so we do have some movement on counterattack. Actually, both bots with counterattack. And it looks like Stag Beetlebot also moving. And the weapon's still functioning on Stag Beetlebot. Is that tape on the front? It is tape on the front of their wedge. Yes. What an interesting maneuver to have tape as part of your wedge. Oh, that's the weapon. It's gone. It is just hanging out on the floor. It looks like the motor is uh, still on the bottom. Yep, just dangling off the front. Coming up in those last 10 seconds. Here we are. Five, four, three, two, one, that's your match. This is going to the judges again, Kyle, just making them work for their money. Yeah, absolutely. The D2 is a, um, it's a pretty common robot you see in the three pound division in a lot of other competitions because they don't come with an active weapon in their base model and they already weigh pretty close to three pounds. Right. You don't often see them here. You have to very heavily modify them to make them work here mm -hmm. um, and not always in the most effective manner. That was one of the most effective ways of modifying a D2 kit I think I've ever seen to make it work here. Um, it was, it, it did have a weapon. The weapon spun. The weapon did cause a bit of damage. Minor threat off. five. Might be something versus to build Versus yeah. Prom Hedda. There's potential. All right, Work. so you're now going into cage five, according to the announcer, but cage one, according to what I'm seeing on my screen. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. In the fight. blue square, corner, you have fight. minor threat. And in the pink, you have Prom Hedda. And right now, nobody's moving. No, it's uh, completely stationary. Yep, uh, yep. It's a bold strategy. Hey, there we go. 15 seconds into this fight, both bots came alive and started attacking each other. I'm not exactly sure what caused such a delay. Tap out. Oh, hey! The winner is Minor Threat 5. Yeah, so Prom had a caught on fire and uh, in some way or fashion, or at least started smoking significantly. And uh, Minor Threat 5 is your winner. That's unhealthy. You don't want that happening in your bot. No. Looks like that's a motor failure, Kyle. That's think, not good. I think that is a motor that got locked up, had too much power put into it, and it just burned. Yeah. We're yeah. going to go to Lindsay, though, while that's handled, and we're going to find out, Lindsay, what, what happened? Uh, well, we have yet another unanimous decision for Stag Beetlebot. Listen, we got to work those judges often, but not work them hard. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's make things a little closer for them. Really give them a hard time, you know? Mm-hmm. I'm going <laughs> to... I got nothing. <laughs> tap I think, out. Oh, it's a tap the out. Wi the winner is Ty. Uh, I don't know about that. I know you're not supposed to question the voice of God, but I feel like it's what we do here every day. We do. We question it frequently. Yeah. yeah. And that's okay. It's okay. It's good to question your elders. It's good to, you know, not take everything at face value. We know that Ty is a great competitor. We just don't think they won any fight in that moment because they weren't in any box. Right, right. Really, it's, uh, Ty's a great fighter. Yeah. Ty is a great fighter. Yeah. Absolutely. There's many variations on the way that Ty fights. Right. There's, there's, there's Muay Thai. Yes. Um, there's the standard TIE fighter. There's the right. TIE interceptor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Every now and then, um, TIE dies, but... Yeah, yeah. You have the TIE bomber. 
Yeah. You have uh, whatever that weird variation that Darth Vader was flying around in. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. You've um, uh, almost every builder here is familiar with titanium. Literally every single builder here is yeah. familiar with titanium. Yeah. Either we're from, gonna from we're gonna head over to stage three and just stop this versus madness. kickback. Oh, okay. This uh, makes a lot more sense uh, now. Oh, oh, oh. All of those. I thought Eight, we were going to escape seven, referring six, to robots as Ty, five, but here we are. Four, three, two, one. Fight, robots, fight. Away we go. Ty, a uh, nasty horizontal spinner, but very pretty. Very pretty. A little, uh, a little it, it likes to flex. It's, uh, it's called Ty because it is made out of titanium. Kickback is the fifth iteration of uh, the very first Beetle design by Brandon Sidoti um, from Dallas, Texas. He's all the way up here from Texas. Really cool bot. We've seen a lot of improvement on their design throughout the, uh, their time here at Norwalk Havoc. And it looks like nobody's got a weapon right now. No, I... Uh I think this is a pushing match again. Kickback has been having this problem where, uh, true to their name, there's just an incredible amount of blowback whenever there is a uh, an interaction with that weapon, and it seems to it seems to put them down uh, for the count after just one or two interactions. Fascinating. I think, yep, there it is. That's that's a motor difficulty. Uh, the electronics are still trying their best. The uh, Battery is still clearly functioning. It's just spinning slowly. It can't get up to sp it can't get up to speed. That drive's working just fine though, and they're able to use that big plow to get a lot of control and even some damage points by slamming them and slamming tie into the wall. Absolutely, that. Kyle. The if you're in this exchange and both weapons go down, kickback is absolutely the architecture of robot that you want to be able to win the control uh, and aggression aspects of the judging criteria. Absolutely. Also, the uh, architecture of robot you want if you need to clear your driveway. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, if you have a lot of snow, even even in the summertime, or it's just the end of the summer, and the fall, leaves start to fall, uh, that plow can be useful. Yeah, absolutely. Kickback, can I ask why you keep trying to anger Bert the Brick? It makes no sense. You have no weapon, and even if you did, you couldn't hurt that thing. So 30 seconds left in this match. Both of these bots are quite worse for the wear. They're just kind of stumbling around, trying to figure out where they are, trying to figure out what to do. There we go. We got an attempted push there from Ty. Looks like the right side of the drive on kickback is not functioning as it should at this moment. No reason or no idea why could be bound up. All right, so these competitors will go to the door, and this match will go to the judges. I don't know if the folks at home can overhear that, but uh, it's a sentiment that we often hear. Uh, yeah. Don't know what happened. It works great at home. It doesn't seem to work while we're here. That, that happens to the best of them, and it's one of those things where you truly can't fully prepare for what's going to happen in a match until you put it in the ring and you test it against uh, another vicious competitor. Absolutely. Even more frustrating is the it worked 10 minutes ago in the test box. Yeah. What happened when I put it into the arena? Right. And sometimes it's something simple. Sometimes it's completely situational, and there's nothing you can do to predict it. Yep. There's only, you can only try to do better next time. Uh, and then every now and then, it's, it's just something like, I forgot to switch this on, or I dropped a bolt in there. Or, uh, but that's also something that you learn to avoid eventually after you know enough, enough fights. Absolutely. Let's go to our friend Lindsay. Uh, Lindsay. 
Lindsay, how's it going over there? Hello. Uh, before I announce the results, I have to say, everybody in the live chat has been making the best puns, rifling yours. Ooh. So uh, go check out the chat. A lot of Thai, a lot of Thai puns. Um, but the winner is not Thai. The winner is kickback by mm. unanimous judge's decision. Makes sense. Makes yeah. perfect sense. So there you go. Well, thanks for tying a bow on that one. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, uh, kickback, they'll be moving on. Mm -hmm. I believe that means Ty is going home now. I think so. I think that was, in fact, an elimination fight. Yep. Uh, yep. Well, I just saw them on the, the uh, elimination bracket earlier when I was back in the Well, then room, it's so. absolutely an elimination bracket fight. Yeah. Yeah. But that's okay. They're a uh, shiny, pretty robot. They are. They'll be back. They'll be back. Yep. You don't just throw away that, uh, that beautiful work you've done. You come back, you build better, stronger, faster, harder, whatever it is, and... You could recycle it. I, you know, is, is titanium well recycled? I don't know. I mean, not. In, I don't think it's like single, uh, single source or single, single stream. You can't just throw recycling. it in with the aluminum cans. I'm pretty sure you can't. Yeah, maybe with your number ones and number two plastics. Certainly not number five plastics. Got it. But uh, understood. Yeah. You could probably scrap it. I. Yeah. <laughs> no reason to. That bot's gonna be fine. No, it's beautiful. Uh, I'm sure that that's something that they can. Uh, fix, then use the test, rebuild, bring it back. Yeah, and uh, they, they and I'm got, to see it. They've got another bot here in the competition today, so they're probably not even going to fix it when they get back to Texas. So No. no. So we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Have a good one. I'm Jake with Senka Sen, and today we're talking about tab and slots. I'm really excited about this. I use tab and slots in my designs all the time. But maybe you're not familiar with tab and slots, so let's talk about what it is first. So originally, you take your design, and you have a female slot, so a hole in your part, that'll actually locate into a male tab that goes into that slot and that holds it together. So this little box here that I have, we have four tabs and slots in each corner. So as I put it together, it holds itself together really nicely, right? And that's the beauty of that design. So if we're needing to weld something together or even hold it in a certain location when we bolt it together, it's a great fixturing mechanism that you can incorporate into your design. So as you're designing this, it's important to remember a couple things with regard to the slot design. Anytime you put a hole in a part, you're introducing a new area in which the part's weak. If it's prone to high vibration or a lot of stress, you might see cracking in the corners of a slot, especially a square type of shape. And so if you have a square slot like this, you will eventually see some cracking that'll be in the corners. There's an easy way to reduce this stress and cracking in the corners and by simply just throwing a little tiny radius in the corner. Just by putting in a small radius like this one, you reduce the stress in the corners substantially and you won't see as much cracking. One important thing to note though, is if you do put a radius in the corners, you do have to increase the size of that slot by the radius in order to make sure that the tab still fits into that slot. You can also chamfer the edge of your tab if you wanna do it that way, but you are gonna be prone to having a little bit of a sloppier fit this design. The next best thing that you can do, and this is what um, I prefer to do if I have the option, is to put a full radius in the corner. So make a full half circle in each corner. That half circle reduces the stress exponentially on this part. And you won't see as much cracking or stressing, if not at all, especially in a high vibrational type situation. But this one, you also have to increase that diameter of the slot or the width of that slot to your tab um, to that full radius of those corners to ensure that it slides in and fits. A lot of people don't like this because then you end up having a little bit more slop in your design. And that slop in that design sometimes makes it harder for things to be put in the right place. The next best thing is to do a dog bone design. And that's simply putting a corner, a hole in each corner, and then softening those edges, radiusing those edges into those corners. What this does is it allows you to have essentially a square hole that has a softened up radius. So you're able to make the slot the same exact dimensional size as the tab. These things that we're doing to the slots, we can also do to the tab. We can soften those radiuses and stuff on the corners of those tabs to create a less stress in those corner joints. Lastly, 
It's important to know the dimensional thickness of your material. It's great, you can go onto our website. When you select the material, you'll see the dimensional thickness in both imperial and metric to fit your guys' needs. When you're designing that slot, we recommend you being at least 10 thousandths of an inch larger in diameter and width than your tab. Your thickness of your material is gonna be the, the width of your slot. Make sure you're at least 10 thousandths of an inch larger than that and you'll have a nice slip fit. Thanks for watching, stay tuned for more. Welcome back from the break. Here's a nice shot of our pits. Everybody's still working feverishly trying to get ready for this latter half of the competition. Be sure to check us out on all of our social media channels. We are at Norwalk Havoc. Uh, we do all kinds of fun stuff on there. You'll see lots of, uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, so you can like, share, and subscribe us on YouTube, add us on Instagram, at Norwalk Havoc. Follow us on TikTok, at Norwalk Havoc. You can check out lots of highlights videos, lots of cool packages we put together. We're making all kinds of new content. We've got like a whole camera crew back there following Calvin Ebo around today. We're gonna be doing some specials about him after this event. So check us out. There's gonna be all kinds of cool stuff coming. We're gonna go to cage one next. We've got some more robot carnage coming your way. Thank I'm you excited. so much for sticking with us. Oh, I was looking. Captain I was looking Caveman forward to this fight, guys. This versus is phenomenon. Phenomenon. Versus Captain Eight, Caveman. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robots fight. All right, away we go. Phenomenon, a uh, pretty nasty vertical spinner, and Captain Caveman spinning around with uh, impressive uh, weighted shell spinner. Uh, however, that weighted shell spinner uh, seemed to have a little trouble getting up to speed. Yeah, there's not a whole lot of uh, movement going on. There's a lot of shell, not a lot of spinner. And yeah. it looked like a little whiff of smoke. Yeah, there, there it is. A little bit of smoke coming out of there. You want to keep that smoke inside the robot if you can. Yeah, if it leaks, then things start working a little less worky. <laughs> Suboptimal. Yeah. Those look like axes on the side of Captain Cave. I think they might actually be axes from Harbor Freight that have been welded to a big piece of steel on top of the ship. And then spray painted uh, Home Depot rattle can gold. No, that's real gold leaf. Really? Mm -hmm. Impressive. Yeah. Wow. You know, so they didn't put a whole lot of money, obviously, into uh, the, the, the spinny spin of no, the weapon. No, they couldn't because they spent it all on gold leaf. On gold leaf. That makes perfect sense. You know, priorities are different for every builder here. Right. Well, I will say that shell is taking an absolute, um, it's just shrugging off those hits Yeah, I mean, Phenomenon. Phenomenon is no joke. And I know that Brandon uh, did a lot of work on the bot, uh, well, at least one of the two bots. He's had two completed Phenomenons that he brought. One of them, he completely upped the battery power going to it. He wanted to, he said that he wanted to roof some robots in this competition. That's, that's Brandon for you. Yeah, absolutely. I, now, that, that kind of wibble wobble, um, movement that we're seeing from Captain Caveman. Do you think there's a walking mechanism under there? Or is this just a very um, egg-shaped set of wheels? I, uh, I'm i not entirely sure. I think that there might be just so much bend in whatever the connection is between the robot and the um, the actual drive that, that the, the wheels are just intermittently hitting the ground at okay. this point. Okay. That is my suspicion. Because it did, for a second, I believe, actually drive. It's one of those things where I kind of wish the bottom of the, the arena was also polycarbonate, and we could just look up underneath the robots and see what was going on. Oh, like those glass-bottom boat tours. Right, yeah, right, I in kind reverse. Of like that. This yeah, is but in a glass-topped robot tour. You know, I uh, would absolutely love that camera angle, like, all the time. Something tells me nobody wants to design a combat robot to drive on polycarbonate, though. No, it would be horrifying. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and imagine, too, that what we would see. Let's, let's go down, though. We've got five seconds left in this match. <laughs> um, this can be just... We can all be put out of our misery. 
Um, well, mostly Captain Caveman. Mostly Maybe. Captain Caveman, yes, it's, absolutely. It's, it's all right. It was a valiant effort. Like I said, very impressive how it shrugged off those hits. Uh, but I didn't see hardly anything that could be considered aggression or control uh, or damage. No, it from is. Captain it, here's a bit of a replay. Yeah, there's the wobble. There's the mini bot. And that was the replay. Yeah. Okay. I there do find it interesting that Captain Caveman has a, a sentimental value to people who were watching cartoons in the late 70s and early 80s. Mm -hmm. And yet it appears as though the two drivers on that team were born in the uh, like mid 2010s. <laughs> the, the drivers on that team are approximately 12 years old? Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. Or what well, was it? Mid 2010s. Seven yeah, years I old. was. They, they looked younger than they're, that. They looked like they were like seven or eight. They're three years old. Maybe. Maybe. All right. So we're gonna go to our judges. We have uh, not Jack. Tw okay. So we got Jack Tweedy in the Dominic spot. We've got uh, Dominic in the Jack Tweedy spot. And then Leanne is exactly where she's supposed to be. How's it going? Nice to see you. Um, so guys, what did you think about that fight? We'll start with you, Dominic. What'd you think? Uh, I think I think he's microphoned. He's uh, notoriously soft-spoken, Kyle. Yeah. No, uh, I think we've got another uh, a mute, case of the mutes. A mutation situation. Mm-hmm. Unfortunate. Mm -hmm. Unfortunate. I always like to hear from our judge friends, but sometimes the microphones okay. do not agree. Can you hear oh, me? Now, <laughs> oh, now. Oh, there we go. Hey, Dom. The new voice of God apparently is Dominic, so um, <laughs> I'm a little worried. Well, it was a little one-sided, you know, phenomenon. Pushed him around. But you guys said there was no damage, yet both weapons went down. So the determining factor was actually the mini bot on that for me. Mm, but wow. it was phenomenon all the way. All right, all right. Fair enough. All right, uh, let's go ahead to you, Leanne. Leanne, what did you think? Uh, yeah, similarly, I think that phenomenon was uh, the winner for that. Um, oh. I really like Caveman's design, though. Yeah, it's um, cool. And the mini bot did really hustle. Appreciate that. Thank you, thank you. Mr. Tweedy. Uh, I'm just a little bit thankful the fight is over. Uh, <laughs> it got a bit painful towards the end, but yeah, it's phenomenal for me every time. They uh, were the aggressor in every single All game. right. I agree with Jack. It was horrible to watch that uh, gold leaf get as damaged as it did as that fight yeah, went Yeah, there's, there's $3,000 of gold flake left in the bottom of the arena right now. So, such a waste. Such a waste. All right, judges, thank you so thank much. You very we much. appreciate you guys. So it looks like we'll be heading over into cage three. Um, and right. So that means that we'll have some three-pound robot action for you over there. And I, just judging by who I see in the box, I do believe we are going to have your reigning, defending champion. Eruption. Eruption and Brian Boxel fighting in this fight. I'm super excited. Going up against Half Smashing. Hive smashing, very punishing horizontal spinner bot, doing some great work today. And I gotta love the paint job on Hive smashing right now. Yeah, it's um, it's on theme, it's on point, it looks phenomenal. It's on theme, on point, on brand. You can see more and more of the Honeycracked team coming out to support their fellow teammates as they get eliminated throughout the tournament. They are so there's a huge support network. Yes, absolutely. You gotta love that. Eruption. I just see them doing like Versus trust falls all day. Hive <laughs> smashing. Eight, seven. All right. Six, Big enthusiasm five, coming from the four, Honeycracked team. Three, two, one. Fight, robots fight. All right, away it goes. Nice hit there wow. from Eruption. Nice volley again from Eruption. Hive smashing, taking a uh, short flight after short flight. Wow. Man, it's a good thing Eruption's not made out of material that can be stabbed because that minibot's been putting in some great work. That oh, belt is some... no longer attached. No, that weapon went off kilter, and as soon as it did, that belt wasn't long for the world. Yeah, I mean, look at the frame. The frame reel looks a little bit bent there, too, on Hive Smashing. The countout has begun. 
Look at that top plate, how it's, uh, how it's sticking up. It looks like it's high center, the only functioning wheel on Honeycracked. Yep, it is uh, an unfortunate combination. And I think, actually, I think, Kyle, the belt also served a high function. Oh, there. my goodness, you're right. Yeah, probably lifted them entirely off on that side. Mm-hmm. Wow, just the right combination Knockout. of damage from Eruption the to end is that fight early. Eruption. Very, very quick, very decisive, uh, but entertaining. Brian's just here to win another giant dumpster and go home. He doesn't want to mess around with these long three-minute fights, you know? No, he's got places to be. Yeah. yeah Things just, to do. He just wants to, you know, get us through the day a little bit quicker. I appreciate that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that is the, uh, that is an Eruption win. But it's okay because Team Honeycrack still has stuff to do. They're heading directly over into the 30 pound box, box number four. Yeah, there's absolutely no shortage of Honeycrack robots still, still here. We've got a, uh, whew, we've got quite a fight going on in the, uh, the large arena, arena number four. Looks like we've got Bugsby versus you. And call him down there. You might, uh, you know, pull a muscle. Probably not. Yeah. But, but yes. So this is the 12 pound Bugsby version of Huge versus, versus the 12 pound huge. version of Bugsby. Well, yeah, absolutely. Eight, there really only seven, is a 12 pound Bugsby. Six, yeah. They don't five, play another. Any this other is four, this is though the 12 pound version of Bugsby. It's two, true. It's true. One fight. And away we go. Fight. Interesting matchups uh, when you see a full body uh, or a shell spinner going up against a huge type robot. Uh, shell spinners like this don't like to get hit in the middle of their top. It's not a good day for them when that happens. Yeah. And of course, huge style robots uh, are the best robots to do that. Yeah, you can reverse the spin on huge, and you're able to basically be a top attack style robot. You come down and do big damage on the top of these bots. Um, it's a strategy they use pretty often. Now, I will say that burger bun on Bugsby is not meant to be armor. It is decorative. No, it's just meant to be delicious, Kyle. It's yes, sesame seed bun deliciousness. But that said, even tap even, out. Oh, there's your tap out. There it is. Bugsby taps out. Your winner. Huge! Unfortunate. Well, unfortunate for Bugsby. Great for Huge. Yeah, great for Huge. Huge moves on in the 12-pound division. The 12-pound division is absolutely stacked today. Bugsby is no pushover. No, no, absolutely not. Um, so that was a good win for Huge. That really helps them moving forward in this competition. Mm-hmm. Oh, there's a small earthquake going on right now. Yeah, sorry about that. There was a little camera adjusting happening when the camera came on. I apologize. Everybody. It happens. Um, but yes, so Huge will be moving on in that bracket. Bugsby, I believe, was that an elimination round? Does that mean Bugsby goes home? Uh, have to look. No, I, th I think that was a winner's bracket fight. So gotcha. we're so going to see more Bugsby bracket. Bracket. So we will right see around the Bugsby. corner. That's excellent. We're eventually going to go to cage one, but um, we're going to go to a quick factoid first. Yab Noll, which is, I believe, going into cage one right now, yep. uh, they won in 2022, in May, uh, they, this May's tournament, uh, they were the absolute winner of the 12-pound tournament. They almost went undefeated. That's uh, exactly right. Seven to one, with five of those being KOs. That's a pretty impressive record. And not only is it impressive in terms of results, it's frightening if you're an opponent. Absolutely frightening. And l this is just the most stacked of a 12-pound division that we have ever had. The winner of this fight, Yob Null versus Psycho, will go on to face Huge in the next round. Um, really nice that we get to kind of match those two things up right next to each other. That's Jameson Go. He is the builder and driver for Psycho. You might recognize him. He does uh, some captaining on a bot called Sawblaze on the uh, television show BattleBots. Sounds weird. It's a little Psycho. weird. Psycho. It's a little weird, yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll give it, I'll check it out. They're, uh, they're a uh, hammer saw bot, Eight, and there are three of them. Seven. Oh. Six, yeah. five, on the show. four, three, two, one. Fight. Away Robots we go. Fight. Psycho has that really long drum on it. Or, wow. I'm sorry. Big Yabnol impact. has the really long drum on it. 
Yavnal, of course, is Long Boy Backwards. In case you were wondering the origin of the name. Psycho, super powerful vertical spinner. You can see yep. the gyroscopic progression just having to be incorporated into the drive style. Very compact robot, uh, Psycho is. Yacht Noel having more trouble driving upside down than we usually see it have. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with that, but you're absolutely right. Perhaps it looks like... Oh. There he is. All right, self-righted. One of those wheels looks a little higher. Oh, than the other big back. exchange. Not sure what's going on with Psycho right now, but it looks like the left side of their drive, or the right side of their drive, is not spinning. That's correct. There's still left side and a good amount of gyro torque. It can stay in the match. But it's going to have a hard time bringing that aggression to Yab Noll with that level of functionality. Yeah, not helpful, not helpful at all. Yab Noll trying to get themselves back on their feet, as it were. They've spent more of this match upside down than they have right side up. And now they're stuck in the side. This is going to be an unstick situation. We're going to bring in our house bot to facilitate that. I believe that is Fluffy. Fluffy the house bot. Oh, so Fluffy. You're so Fluffy. You're so Fluffy. Uh, Fluffy is allowed to unstick each opponent only one time during the match. Oh, is that right? No, that is right. Um, no, it's and it's a uh, not always a guarantee, right? Fluffy's going to do its best to unstick an opponent, but yeah. it doesn't always work. No, Fluffy is a blunt instrument. It doesn't have grabbers. It doesn't have pinchers. It has nothing it can manipulate you with. It can either smash you hard enough that you come off the wall, or it can gently nudge you off of the wall. Yeah, those really two. Uh, got two gears. Yeah, that's it. Nudge that's and it. smash. And then once they do one unstick, they are not allowed to do it again for that particular competitor. Correct. Correct. And yeah, the count out oh. is starting because Fluffy unable to really help. Psycho could go in and try to knock them off the wall themselves if they want to, but Jameson, he's not going to do that. He, uh, listen, maybe if this was earlier in the day, uh, maybe if this was uh, a little more fun uh, level event for him. Jameson does, to his credit, he, he shows up with fun robots all the time. Absolutely. But Psycho is absolutely a machine Knockout. that's here to win. Yeah, it's a the vicious, is vicious competitor. Psycho. So I'm not saying Jameson can't have a good time and be a good sport, but this is not the moment for him for that. No, I think Jameson has been dominating in the three pound division and dominating in the 30 pound division since this tournament started. Mm -hmm. And he said, you know what I haven't done yet? I Dominate haven't taken over the 12s. In the 12s. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that's... That's exactly why he's here. And that said, he did not dominate in this fight. No, not at all. Well, there it's were... hard to dominate long boy. Yeah, it, it truly is. The fact that he did so well is something to be proud of, but this was not a dominant fight. These were a lot of fair interactions back and forth yeah. with uh, really no clear uh, advantage until uh, until Yabnol got stuck up on the on uh, on the rails. Absolutely. Psycho really survived that fight more than anything else. Correct. We're correct. heading over into cage two now. Two. Uh, it's the well, loneliest number. Mixtape versus. Fully defined. Oh, these are two top-notch three-pound competitors. Eight, seven. Fully six, defined versus five, mixtape. And you know what four, I heard about that mixtape? Three. Mm, it's two, fire. Yeah. One. Fight. Robots fight. You know what's amazing is we are in a competition with this level of, of competitor. We're three fights deep, and a flamethrower robot is still in the winner's bracket. Absolutely. I mean, we've seen flamethrower bots do phenomenal work today in all of the weight classes. You can see the aluminum foil wrapped around fully defined. That is a way of kind of abating some of that heat getting inside of the robot. Probably a good move. It's obviously a lot of heat that Mixtape is oh, putting out. Fully defined already having drive issues Tap on the left out. side. The That's all winner it is Mixtape. That was a tap out win for Mixtape. That's right, they put so much fire inside of their opponent that they had to tap out. Big smiles on Calvin Eba's face right now. Super happy about that performance.
One of the things that I love about Calvin is how much joy he gets from... Oh, it's, it's euphoria yeah, oxide. Absolutely. It's just the joy, the smiles. Uh, his dentist must be so proud. Of the work, yeah, yeah. I agree. I There's agree. no better showcase. I would buy billboard space across <laughs> Calvin Eba's robots <laughs> to advertise my dental practice. So, uh, Calvin, if you do end up using that sponsorship opportunity, just remember that there's a finder's fee that needs to right. go to Mr. Ricky Williams. 10% ten, ten cut, thank you. Thank you. We're gonna go to the replay, and uh, there you go. It's a pretty simple match, folks. A lot of fire. Eventually, all of that fire melted one of the drive sides. Yep. And we all won. Except, yeah. well, except fully defined. Using plastic gears for your drive is a really great idea. It's uh, super effective in a lot of ways. Um, you can do all kinds of things with that design. Yeah. But if you set it on fire, it stops working. Yeah, eventually. It's a one downside. Uh, we're going to go into cage three next. We're going to see Scrambled versus Red Hawk. Scrambled is a really pretty bot. I like Scrambled a yep. lot. Red Hawk is a classic Norwalk competitor. They started here. They've kind of come up through the ranks here. Um, they have put in some amazing matches over time. They started out as a vector kit robot, and it has evolved so far beyond that at this point. I, I, we still need to come up with a name for it, but they're like vector adjacent at this point. Yeah, they're vector descendant. Perhaps? Vector Descendant, yes. I yeah. think that would be a much more accurate way of describing it, yeah. Scramble versus Red Hawk. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robots, fight. Two young competitors with two uh, very different designs. Scrambled has that classic two-wheel drive, egg beater, spinner look that you see so often here at Norwalk Havoc. And the reason you see it so often is because it works. Yeah, it is a formidable archetype, and it's also easy to get started in. Uh, so it, it makes for a great place to start, which is why so many folks um, find some comfort there when they approach the sport. Yeah, makes sense, makes sense. I mean, if you're gonna show up, why Why wouldn't you wanna show up and have a good chance of winning? Yep. The egg beater spinners do exactly that. Nice pop there from Scrambled, yet another one again, getting the better of those exchanges against Red Hawk. Red Hawk trying to drive away, get a little bit of room so they can readjust their strategy and spin up their weapon. Two young competitors, both putting in some really great work out there as drivers. Red Hawk really implementing that strategy of getting to the side and trying to rip out or rip at the bottom wheels of a scramble. Now they are stuck up on the wall. Scrambled was gonna go in for the attack, but then they backed off. It looks like Red Hawk was able to vibrate themselves off with their weapon. Now it looks like Scrambled's weapon is scraping on the floor and a bolt seems to be coming out on one side. I'm not sure if that's just because it's too long of a bolt shaft or what's going on there. But what used to be a very, uh, shall we say, sturdy and stable weapon seems to be a little bit off kilter at this point and they are not spinning it which means this has turned into a control match for Scrambled. Oh, and now both weapons are down. We'll see if they're able to start back up again, but I think this has become a push match for both robots now. Well, we got two minutes and 20 seconds of just knockdown, drag out fighting, so if it ends in a push match, that's fine. Yeah, they're entitled to 30 seconds. Oh, that is the weapon firing back up on Red Hawk for the last 22 seconds of this match. That is not great news for Scrambled. No, some things may have gone wrong for Red Hawk, but uh, I think they're in a position where, you know, if you want to make an omelet, you got to break a few eggs. Beautiful. Yes, absolutely. Nobody really likes their eggs over easy. Mm. I don't think anyone would watch this fight and say it was overly easy, but it's <laughs> over. 
And I guess that's easy for me to say. <laughs> Here we go. In our instant replay, you can see early on, scrambled, uh, making some excellent uh, jabs at Red Hawk. Red Hawk gyro dancing all over the place. Yeah, lots of those early exchanges definitely went to Scrambled. Uh, Red Hawk was able to take advantage when Scrambled's weapon went down for the second half of that fight. So right. this one will go to the judges. Hello, what? judges. Dominic, say something to me. Well, hey, there. sorry, my shortcuts aren't working. No, it happens. <laughs> I just, I just want to make sure that we've got a direct pipeline into the brain of the young Cascus. <laughs> it was honestly a pretty tight fight. Yeah. Uh, you had control going to scramble, and um, aggression was more towards Red Hawk. But what saved Red Hawk at the end was uh, the their weapon coming back online. So I gave it to Red Hawk by one. Oh, all right. All right. Who do we go to next, Kyle? Let's go to Leanne. All right, Leanne. So I'm actually sitting slightly the other way. Scrambled showed a ton of aggression at the beginning. Mm. Um, control, I feel like, started to even out near the end. Um, damage, you kind of saw some little bits flying off of both. So that was also close. Yeah. But I am a point to Scrambled. Wow, so there we go. The judges finally having to put in some work today, it looks like. Yep, a split decision has occurred. The Ooh. only question is, which way are we going? Jack Tweedy, now's your moment. Uh, I also gave it to Scramble. Ho -ho! Point because they were the aggressor through the majority of the fight and displayed control even when their weapon was down and Red Hawks was up. All right, congratulations to Scrambled. Yeah, bravo, Scrambled. That was excellent. Thank you so much to our judges. Wow, all right, so we'll be going into cage four next. Ricky, how'd you feel about that fight? You know, that was a fun fight. It was I, a fun fight. And I, uh, to your point, I think two and a half minutes of knockdown drag out and, and 30 seconds for us to watch who can, who can basically outmaneuver the opponent yeah. and ponder how that match is gonna end. And then we have a great split decision at the end. Yeah, all in all, highly entertaining. Yeah, that's exactly the kind of thing I like to see. Yeah, yeah, I think the split decision was totally justified too. That really could have gone either way. Although frankly, everything that happens here is exactly the kind of one, thing I wanna see. Yeah, that's pretty true, yeah. yeah. No, Especially the that. fire parts. Especially the fire parts, yes, absolutely. <laughs> all right, so we're gonna be heading over to cage four next. Let's see what we've got going on over there. So it looks like we've got Blue Cheese. Welcome back, Blue Cheese versus Full Court. Blue Cheese. Blue Cheese has versus been full court. On, uh, holding on by a thread Eight, into this bracket. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robots, fight. Weapon is up to speed on Blue Cheese. It's lovely to see. Full Court is the widest boy in the 12-pound division. Looks like one half of the uh, drive system on Full Court is not as, as happy as the other half. The right side seems a little bit stuck. Full Court trying to shake that right side loose by slamming the left side into the wall. Blue Cheese kindly giving them space to do it, but now attacking the back of their wedge. Kyle, Phil, full court is kind of Smee-esque, would you say? Absolutely Smee-esque. It, it's the, uh, the West Coast version of Smee, I guess you could say. And how does one defeat a Smee, Kyle? The best way to defeat a Smee is to get behind it and destroy the drive pods. These drive pods are very heavily armored, as you can see. They're very well wrapped there. Um, but in this point, right now, it looks like Blue Cheese is just hanging out on top of the wedge. That's a very unorthodox way to try to defeat a Smee-style design. Yeah, like uh, just get stuck in uh, the front of a Smee-style design. Yeah, weird idea. So Coleman Christie, he came here all the way from California. He actually flew out with Calvin Eva. They are good friends. We've seen a lot of his fights on some of the more West Coasty competitions. Uh, this is the first time he has competed at Norwalk Havoc. 
He was very curious to see how this bot did. It is the longest bot I think we have ever had in the 12-pound division here. True. True. And its weapon is, uh, in fact, hammers. Really? Teeny tiny little basketball hoop-shaped hammers. What? On either side of the drive pods. Like these are commercially available? Like he bought them at a teeny tiny basketball store? No, he made them by hand. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. If you're going to make a, make a wino, a weapon in name only, yeah. I really appreciate handcrafting it. 50 seconds left in this fight. <laughs> Looks like Blue Cheese has been stuck on top of full court for a while. Looks like we're going to pause this match so they can be unstuck. This is a little bit too complicated of an operation for our dear friend Bubbles, the house bot, to do himself. So we are going to send in some human bots. The clock will stop here. Yep, there we go. Look at that. Wow. That belt. Like a, there's some wires off the back of Blue Cheese. Yeah, wires off the back of Blue Cheese. A belt is dangling off of the what looks like the uh, left side drive. Wow. The, the safety broom is in there now to separate these bots. Let's see if the safety broom is enough. Safety broom. Give it up for safety broom. You got to love the safety broom. Keeping the uh, the hands and fingers of our crew safe throughout the day. We really appreciate the safety broom. Now, there are weapon belts and there are drive belts. Do you think that's a drive belt or a weapon belt, Kyle? Looks to me like it's a drive belt off of that left side. It looks. I could mm. see what looked like a pulley where it was supposed to be attached, and it was not. So I'm guessing when this starts back up, there is not going to be a drive on the left side of the blue cheese. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, Matt Luther has had uh, some challenges with blue cheese. Just, I don't know, just some kind of wild luck, you know? Four, three, two, one. This match is back on. Let's see if, oh, there it goes. Yeah, blue the weapon's working weapon. just fine. Here we go. I mean, the blue cheese did get split in half in their first fight today, so. Yeah, yeah. That does make the rest of your day slightly more challenging. Looks like one half of the drive on full court is also out. Yeah, that hasn't been working pretty much this entire match. Both of these bots, though, will escape the count out here. Six, five, four, three, two, one. That's the match. We will send this one to the judges. Kyle, we're making the judges work quite a lot this afternoon. It's true, that last match was even a split judges decision. All right, let's take a quick look at this replay. Blue Cheese, uh, you know, kind of coming in here, ripping off parts of Beautiful full court. hit there. Wow, nice launch. Big launching hit You there. can see there's, the, there's the, the weapon, see? Oh, they're little basketball courts. Yeah, little basketball hoops. How adorable. Isn't it? It's so cute. All if right. you're going to make a wino, that's the way you do it. Kyle, uh, we're going to go to the judges. Hi, judges. What do you think about this fight? I We're think not judges. I know, but, but uh, I think it's really unfortunate that the half of the drive scores. wasn't working on We've got time. scores, yeah, Kyle. Yeah, look at that. Look Jack at that. Jack Tweedy's put in scores for aggression damage, but he refuses to put in a score for control. Yeah, he doesn't want anyone to have control. Jack Tweedy, that guy's a rebel. You yeah. took away my decimal points. I can't abide by this. <laughs> 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 I love it. I love it. Leanne Cushing and Dominic Yankaskis. So great to see both of you. Yeah. Um, Let's see, have you also put in your scores? Are you still deliberating? Oh, Leanne said I yes. submitted mine. Okay. They just haven't showed up on the screen. We'll go ahead and ask you. Leanne, how'd you vote on this particular match? Yeah. It was tough, um, yeah. especially near the end. Uh, I think just because of those early hits and aggression, I switched slightly towards blue cheese. But if they had been stuck a little bit earlier, that might have changed. Okay, we've got one vote for blue cheese from the woman with blue hair. I don't know, like, is that perhaps some unfair, uh, you know, advantage for blue cheese? I don't think anybody's trying to eat blue hair, but everybody right. likes blue cheese. We're going to go to our second I, judge. Yeah. With... I'll take the color over the <laughs> smell uh, reference. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's, let's go to our second judge with uh, blue hair, Dominic Yankaskis. I can see the blue highlights. Love it. Are you also going to go with blue cheese? Uh, yes, I am. Yes. <laughs> Okay, two votes for blue cheese. Jack Tweedy, cast your vote. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's some blue in some of the tattoos somewhere, <laughs> so I feel like I also have to go blue cheese. All right, unanimous judges' decision for blue cheese, which advances. They Thank have you been so much. hanging on all day, blue cheese. It's really yeah. impressive work by them. Yeah, yeah, just uh, extending their shelf life, you know. 
Like just really just maturing slowly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, we're going to go over to another big fight. In cage one, I can see Michael Shore over there. Oh, I like him. This is uh, Disco versus Carmen. All right. So this is more 12-pound action. All right, uh, Disco is run by Don Dorfler, huge team member Don Dorfler. Carmen is run by Michael Shore. Carmen uh, went incredibly deep in a competition earlier this year. That's in right. Norwalk. I believe Carmen has Disco already qualified. Disco is still searching Carmen. for its invitation to Eight, the finals. Seven, six, five. We can see four, the Dorfler brothers there three, in maroon. Two, Michael Shore one, here five, in his uh, t shirt. Oh, good speed right out of the box from Disco. Wow. You can see Carmen has that gold beater bar, and Disco is just a chonky little horizontal disc here. Vertical. Oh, sorry, vertical. It's a vertical disc, Kyle. Correct. These well, are two actually. incredibly destructive robots with similar geometries. They're both four-wheel drive. Robots, so they have great uh, mobility inside of the box. Yeah, really athletic, really fun to watch. Whoa! Huge hit on, from Carmen on Disco. Kyle, I think I'm getting all sorts of facts wrong. I think Disco's actually two-wheel drive. Uh, yeah, I think you're yeah, right. I think okay. it is a two-wheel drive. It is now currently stuck up against the wall. They do get a one, a single unstick. Yeah. Uh, they don't seem to have a top plate anymore. That is problematic. Uh, maybe that's just an acrylic piece over the top plate, so you get to see inside of it like the uh, the original Game Boy Clear. Good, uh, good, good callback there, Kyle. Love it. Listen, I never got a Game Boy Clear. I, I just thought they were so cool. Amazing. Carmen landing another huge hit on Disco. Looks like With Carmen Dorfler's is having here. some uh, drive issues on its left side. They're currently crab walking their way to victory. But the uh, Disco, fully functional all the way around, including that vicious, vicious weapon. Yeah, the weapon on Carmen looks like it could have gone down here. I don't see the weapon on Carmen running at all. Disco coming in here, really trying to pick its angle. Nice shot there Good for Disco. Good hit right there. The Dorflers, they show up here to uh, judge. Sometimes they show up here to compete with Disco and Huge. And uh, they almost never show up here to eat food. So if you see the Dorflers, please feed them. Yes, they like donuts. They do like donuts. They just, they always forget to eat. So feed them. I will tell you the nice thing that I like about the Dorflers. You know, like they, uh, they volunteer here for most of the year and then they pick one competition and they come and they qualify a ton of robots all at once. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, they really call their shot. Disco is really one of these robots that we called out earlier in the day as a robot to watch in the 12 pounders. And we are seeing why great reliability and uh, really just trying to land a couple more big hits to show the judges that uh, they have aggression, damage, and control. And I can just hear them counting. I think, is this the end of the match? It yeah, is this is the end two, of the match. One, that's it. That's the end of the match. Turn off your weapon, disco, and drive to the door. This one, again, goes to the judges, Kyle. And what a fantastic last impression Disco left for the judges. Michael Shore obviously disappointed in that performance. But uh, Don Dorfler is ecstatic. You can see it all over his face. All right, so let's take a quick replay here. Ooh, Carmen launching Disco across the arena, halfway across the arena. Incredible shot. Land <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. Wow, they got airtime there. Even in slow-mo, that was going really fast. But uh, yeah, Carmen lost its weapon here. And uh, we're going to send this one to the judges. Whew. All right. Who do you want to start with this time on the judges? Jack Tweedy. I would love to hear from you, Jack. Your thoughts on this fight? Uh, I gave it to Disco. They were pretty much controlling the entire fight. The only one capable of being aggressive past the first couple of hits. and. 
did more damage taking out the weapon and one drive side on Carmen. Okay, we've got one vote for Disco. Dominic, your thoughts? Uh, similar to Tweedy, you know, it, there was some exchanges early on, but Disco just outlasted him. All right, two votes for Disco. It's a merely academic vote, but cast it anyway. Leanne, your thoughts? Yeah, uh, I have to go with Disco as well. At the beginning, it was pretty close, and then obviously the weapon being disabled and uh, how the rest of the match went. All right. And it's why towards Disco. The Dorflers remain alive, and uh, Disco will advance. Carmen going down into the elimination bracket. Yep, absolutely. Right. Great fight there. You love to see two heavy hitters in the box. Um, you know, like two meta designs, and uh, you see it's a two-wheel drive spinner because we've put a little bit more weight into the weapon. Yep. Four-wheel drive spinner for mobility, a little less weight. And uh, yeah, just let's see uh, how, the, how the hits kind of shake out. All right, so we're heading over to cage two next. We're gonna see Frostbite go up against Malice. Frostbite versus Malice. Mm, Eight, yeah. Seven, six, Five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robots fight. So Malice, you can see, is this wide drum spinner. Spinner Frostbite is an overhead bar spinner. Yeah, this is uh, undefeated bracket round three. Malice roofing Frostbite. One of the best showings for Frostbite in any Here of these we competitions. Go. Absolutely beautiful showing today, but is this going to be their ticket back down into the elimination bracket? Going Malice, up against Malice. Malice made an error there, but its weapon is still running. Its drive is still running. And look at that. I think they may have ripped off the weapon from Frostbite. No, weapon's still there. Weapon's still functioning. I think that was an armor piece on the left-hand side of Frostbite that is now gone. Wow, look at this. Landing six or seven shots in a row. Oh, yeah, you're right, Kyle. I can see the weapon running. Frostbite. Oh, it was the back plate. The, it was uh, the back plate on Frostbite that got ripped off. You can see that. Uh, all that exposed area there. Yeah, it looks like they've got little red eyes there. Kyle. Yeah, that's, that's not all supposed to be visible. That's supposed to be well protected from this vicious, <laughs> vicious weapon on Malice. Wow, this is a trouncing here. Look at that frame completely bent out of sorts. It looks like two of the wheels are high centered there. Tap and out. yes, as to be expected, wow. that was a tap out. Malice. Frostbite right. having a wonderful showing today is going down into the elimination bracket. Malice is an incredibly well-built robot. Absolutely. They have performed very well here in the past, ending at the, uh, the like, really far, very deep into the bracket. And, um, yeah, you can see that, that performance here in this fight. Just an absolute dominating, uh, you know, performance from Malice. All right, so now we are going into a very interesting fight. We've got, uh, we've got a veteran, ZZ Bot, we see them at Norwalk literally all the time. They're going up against Mirror Finish. Now, there's, there's an interesting uh, bot there, Mirror Finish. Mirror Finish, yeah, defeating Eruption in a surprise kind of freak win in its first fight. Yeah. ZZ Bot. Let's see if they can take out another veteran here from Mirror ZZ Finish. Eight. Seven. ZZ Bot six, run by Steve five, Campbell, who's four, fought here at basically three, every single Norwalk two, for yep. the last one. year. Fight, robots fight. Mirror finish here, driven by Mike Mike Molinax. He uh, he works at Roomba. Or I guess the Roomba parent company, iRobot. And uh, running this new kit bot, Mirror Finish here. Built by Husky Robotics. And look at that. CC Bot has uh, torn off part of the wheel guards on Mirror Finish. Mirror Those Finish oh. is built in, in Utah, is that right? Utah, yep, that's correct. Looks like the weapon on CC Bot is down. Yep. And the side armor package on Mirror Finish is completely ripped off. These are two kit bots. We've got a vector kit in ZZ Bot, and Mirror Finish is a Husky Robotics kit. I'm going to give it to Mirror Finish. Their fights have been surprisingly good today. Absolutely, yeah. It's kind of weird. Like, you would expect that from such a small egg beater, especially one that doesn't have a huge amount of engagement in the front of the robot. It's been running great. Yeah, and they're getting just really good pops with all of these hits. 
I will say that I think a lot of this reliability is 100% due to the build um, skills of Mike Mullinax. The, the kit that you buy from Husky Robotics doesn't have the components. He had to design the components himself. And really, that's where the reliability is coming from in this robot. This is an unlikely hero. I, I cannot believe that Mirror Finish is doing as well as it is today. Which I suppose is kind of a mean thing to say, Kyle, but I mean, look at this thing. It doesn't look competitive, but it's winning fights. Yeah, it's winning beautifully. I also am slightly bothered by the fact that it does not, in fact, have a mirror finish. Okay, well, and when you get close to it, you can almost see yourself in those side rails. <laughs> They're very shiny. <laughs> ZZ Bot's not really moving over there in the corner. They, they, we did see a bit of a wheel twitch from them, but it looks like we're getting a judge's count out right now. Knockout. Knockout. The that winner means... is Mirror Finish. Wow. wow. Excellent work for Mike Mullinax. They'll be moving on to the next round. Hey, cool technical T-Rex shirt. Technical T-Rex, technical T-Rex. The T in T-Rex stands for technical. All right. <laughs> All right, uh, <laughs> mirror finish here, just doing great in this fight against ZZ Bot. ZZ Bot uh, builder and driver, uh, Steve Campbell here, I was talking to him over lunch. He said that this may be his last competition at Norwalk ever. Wow. He may be retiring from combat robotics due to some health issues. Oh my goodness, wow. So uh, I'm gonna wish Steve really good luck. We're gonna see him at least one more time in the elimination bracket. Absolutely. But um, Steve, I hope that, uh, that you come back to Norwalk at least as a fan. You are a friend to the league and uh, I, I really do wish you the best with everything. Meantime, we're gonna go over to Cage True. We're gonna see Voxel version one. They will be going up against Angel Vidal. Hey, buddy, how you doing? And I believe Voxel this is the V1 Hurt versus Hurt Caboose. All right, this is Eight, Egg Beater on Egg seven, Beater action. Six, five, Undefeated bracket four, round three. Three, two, one. Fight, robots, fight. Oh, good speed right out of the box from the blue robot of Hurt Caboose. But Angel Vidal immediately popped up against the rail right in front of him. He's looking at his robot. He's asking for the save. Here comes Brett. Wow, he's Ooh. burned up his first save in the first 15 seconds. That's yeah, not great, not good, Kyle. not good. Now he's trying to gyro himself back onto his wheels. He's finally made it onto his wheels. Her caboose, of course, one of the team shredded bots. It does look like the drive on the left side of her caboose is not functioning the way that uh, Angel probably wants it to be functioning. Voxel V1 getting under her caboose. You saw that little shower of sparks. Voxel's looking incredibly mobile, just driving circles around its prey. Looks like perhaps the left side of Hurt Caboose is locked up. It's just kind of spinning there. Helplessly, Kyle. Excellent use of gyro to self right from Voxel V1. Big hit. And big look hits. at these hits. Just beautiful angle as they're coming in, hitting the side, uh, side frame rails of that weapon on Hurt Caboose. Hurt Caboose seems stuck up against the wall. Voxel V1 looking vicious. I mean, that bot is driving so well. That weapon is hitting so hard. They have just been tearing through this competition over the past few months. In the absence of the current Voxel, Voxel V1 really holding it up for the team there. Big hit there, too. Getting Angel Vidal off of the rail. Really, Voxel being very strategic with these hits. 60 seconds left in this fight. This has been Voxel's fight from the start. Angel Vidal, no! On the corner, it is just doing the thing. It has burned up its one, uh, its one shake loose from Brett the Brick. It's no longer allowed to be released from that position. Whoa! Oh, good sportsmanship, sportsmanship from Voxel. That is amazing. 40 seconds left. Voxel said, I want to keep hitting you in the face, and I can't do that if you're stuck on your side, Angel. Here we go. 20 seconds left. This has been a driving clinic from Voxel. 
They're doing fantastic here. Wow, nice pop there hits. from Voxel. We're down to the last 12 seconds left of this fight. It has been pretty dominant showing from Voxel V1 this entire time. Four, three, two, one. And that is the end of this match. Power down those weapons, drive to the door. This one goes to the judges, but they are not gonna have to work that hard on this one, I don't think. I think we might be able to do a round of hands, Kyle. What I do you like think? it when that happens, yeah. Yeah, I guess, uh, let's take a look here at this replay. Voxel repeatedly getting under Hurt Caboose, I mean, popping it hits. up against the, uh, the rail. Hurt Caboose burned up its one save in the first 15 seconds of this fight, found itself a lot uh, up against the rail or stuck on the rail. At one point, Voxel came in and just very charitably helped its opponent down uh, when it got stuck on its side. This was a trouncing, Kyle, a Absolute trouncing. Absolute trouncing. Yeah, there he goes, stuck up doing the thing again. If it wasn't saved by Voxel themselves, they would not have won that. Let's go ahead and do a pinkies up from our pinkies. judges. All right, yeah, let's do pinkies in the audience, too. All right, audience slash judges, pinkies up for Hurt Caboose. Anybody? Anybody got the pinkies for the Hurt Caboose? No? 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 All right. How about pinkies up for Voxel? Oh, yes. yes. There it is. There it is. All right. It's like 90 pinkies up for Voxel. I mean, they were pretty decisive in their win there. All right. Unanimous judges' decision for Voxel, which advances. Thank you so much. Judges and audience, great job. you got to be classy. Pinkies up, you know? <laughs> we're going to head over to Cage 3 next, where we're going to see the very classy Meanie Panini go up against Hound. Yes. <laughs> Mini Panini. Mini Panini is a uh, bot with a face. That Mini means it's Panini got, uh, versus like, Hound. Uh, Eight, mini Panini seven, uh, bots with a face six, get, have like a 20% better chance of four, getting selected for three, tournaments than uh, two, bots without faces. One. That's fight. true. Fight. Robots fight. Mini Panini there uh, has a face, but looks like it doesn't have spin, Kyle. Yeah, no, no spin, spin. Mini Panini needs spin, Kyle. Yeah, they desperately need the spin. Lots of movement here from Hound. Hound doing an excellent job getting in there, jamming up that weapon, not letting anything get going. And they've just pinned them up against the wall right off the bat. Nice work. All right, I've got a question. If you're Mini Panini and you're running a, a multi-box, do you call the multi-bot Mini Panini? Uh, maybe, yeah. Is it Mini Panini? Oh, they can't hear me. They're dialed in. Yeah, they're too busy trying to not lose this match. The eyes have been ripped off of Mini Panini. The weapon hasn't run since the very beginning of this match. Heartbreaking here. Hound's coming in and just very casually dispatching Mini Panini. Really doing a phenomenal job while doing so, yes. Looks like the power is out in Mini Panini. The mini bot's still alive. Mini Panini is still alive. I think I can hear the count out here, Kyle. Tap out. Uh, oh, tap, tap, out. tap out. Hound. Nice work from Hound. Uh, Bert didn't even have to get involved in that match at all. That was just pretty much a full on knockout tap out situation. Mini Panini, not so mean, and got eaten like a sandwich. <laughs> there you go, exactly. All right, very exciting. I see loaded into cage two. We've got Johnny Sumpas. Today is his 16th birthday. Wow. Flew in from the Bahamas to celebrate his birthday here with all of us, driving Spartan in the pink corner. And uh, he's got the custom Spartan Hawaiian shirt. I, I know. am loving it. So cool. This Absolutely is like the amazing. robot drip. I love it. Uh, facing off against Apex here, Robert Walsh. And um, Apex and Spartan have been fighting here multiple times. These are two incredibly good robots, two incredibly good drivers. Yeah. And uh, yeah, two high schoolers here. And uh, we're uh, going to see a pretty good fight here in just a Apex second. Apex versus Spartan. You know, some people go Eight, to the Bahamas seven, for their birthday. Six. Yeah. Five, Other people Johnny. go Four, from the Bahamas three, to suburban two, Connecticut for one, their birthday. That's fight. exactly Robots right. Robots fight. Because suburban Connecticut has the robot carnage. Here we go. Spartan here is this big black horizontal. And look at this. 
ripping off something. Oh no, was that a minibot? That was the minibot. Apex had a little bit of weight issues. They solved it with <laughs> minibot. Wow. Uh, but now that anti-horizontal wedge on Apex is all kinds of bent up. Yeah, Spartan Gear with its blood spattered paint. Uh, Oh no, look at this. It looks like the weapon on Spartan may have gone down. That's exactly right. So Spartan still has those forks in the back that it's able to use control. But now it appears as though Spartan is not running at all. What's going on? Undefeated bracket round three. It looks like the power is out in Spartan. You can do it, Spartan. Wake up, wake up. All right, here comes Brett to come in and save. And it looks like Johnny's robot is dead. We're getting countered out. Here we go. He's, He's asking saying, his opponent to hit, hit him. Hit me, hit me. I want to get high centered. Hit me. Not going to happen. Knockout. That As the Apex no predator in this division, Apex. Apex does not want to knock Spartan off the wall. They want to save their bot for future rounds. Spartan will go down into the elimination bracket. Whew. Kyle, do you think that we could make Johnny feel better if we sang happy birthday to him? I fully support this idea. Do you think Shall we, we should? Do you think the audience could help us out? Yeah, before... To sing happy birthday to Johnny Soompas? Before the 16-year-old the runs away, we do want to do that. Oh, here's the replay right here. All right, uh, yeah, in this replay, we saw incredible reliability from Apex. That anti-horizontal uh, wedge on the front ended up uh, killing the weapon on Spartan. And it looks like just the lights went out inside of that robot. Wow. All right. Prepping cage three. Neil, can, can I sing happy birthday to Johnny? Is that OK? All right, so we are going to go back over. Wait, no, we're going to sing first, yeah, Kyle. Well, that's what I'm saying. Do you we're going to sing. Everyone's going to sing. We're going to sing for Johnny. 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 Come on up here, man. Come here, come here, come here, come here. All come right, here. here we go. All right. Everybody, All right. please help us. All right. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Johnny. Happy birthday to you. And many knockouts more. Yeah, bro. Let's May the elimination bracket be in your favor today, my friend. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Johnny Soompas. Johnny Soompas. Oh, he's such a great competitor. We love having him here. And I love the fact that he chose to spend his birthday with us. That's, That's pretty cool. The best. That's really cool. Okay. okay. Now over to cage three. I see we're that prepping. We're loading in Backlash Wave versus Jack Move. We do now, really like both of these robots. I see William Marchese there. Does that mean that I have to put on my anime windbreaker, William? I think you should. I mean, man, this thing is super sweet. This is the coolest thing I own. William, I appreciate it. I'm putting it on. Here we go. Oh, that's so nice. You got to support William. It is incredibly hot in this windbreaker, William. William's like, yeah, I know. I'm out here under these lights look all the this. time, stressing oh, out in these fights. Look at this. You look great. Shoo, shoo, shoo. Love it. OK, all right. We're matching. Yeah, you're matching. You've got the uh, the classy weeb energy. I love it. Backlash, Backlash wave, wave in red and versus white. Jack Move. Very nice. Eight, Facing off against seven, Drew Davis and Jack six, Move. Five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robots, fight. Ooh, an aggressive start for Bug. The mini bot on Jack Move. Look at that. Jack Move just tossing aside its mini bot. Bug being driven by fellow Team Shredit member Alex Peza today. And it looks like the weapon on Backlash Wave could be down very early in this fight. Yeah, uh, that means they're going to have to use those big forks to try to hold Jack Move at bay and keep that weapon from hitting their main body. That's going to be a tall task. Drew Davis is a phenomenal driver. Now, I see a belt. Do you think that that's the belt from Backlash Wave? I think that very well maybe. It seems to be the right length, you know what I mean? And I don't see a belt on the pulley next to the weapon on Backlash Wave. Right. Woo, that's not good. That's not good. There's a, there is a pulley there where there's supposed to be a belt, though. Drew Davis and Alex Pezza working together here. A true multi-bot action. We saw this. Oh, I hear we are stuck. 
Totally stuck. So we here are we totally go. totally stuck, yes. Brett is going to do its best to separate these two bots or perhaps move them over the door so they can be separated. But yes, you can see that piece of armor is inside of Backlash Wave. So we are going to pause this so humans can use tools to try to separate these bots. Do you think they're going to use the safety broom, Kyle? Safety broom might be the first thing they use, and then they might move on to the safety pliers okay. and channel locks. Right. Oh, nope, going straight for the safety pliers. There oh, it is. Oh, there we go. Good job. Right tool for the job. Nice work to our cage crew. <laughs> that was so anticlimactic. I love it. Yeah, you got to use the, uh, the safety pliers. You don't want human fingers touching these bots before their weapons are All turned right. off. Four, three, two, one. This match is back on. We can see the drive is still running for all of these robots, but the weapon is not running on Backlash Wave. Oh, good hit from Jack Move. And look at this, Backlash Wave on its head. Doing the thing. Bert coming in to and save. And now doing oh, the thing no, again. Bert! Oh, no. All right, there we go. On its wheels. Backlash Wave. Jack Move says, no problem. I got plenty of life left in this weapon. I'll come right after you. Minute uh, 15 left here in this fight. We're seeing really good coordination here uh, from Bug, the mini bots, from Jack Move, uh, effectively pinning Backlash Wave up against the rail. You're seeing some really great drive skills from Alex Peza, the, uh, the driver of the mini bot here today. Absolutely. Yeah, Alex Peza, really talented driver all the way around and really showcasing that with only just these forks. And you can tell that Jack Move knows that it's ahead on the points. It doesn't need to be completely chaotic. In fact, at this point, they just need to prevent themselves from being high-centered. Like it appears that Backlash Wave has found itself. Is it high-centered? There's one half of its drive locked up. It doesn't matter. I think it's being counted out. Yeah, and it is a little bit off kilter. That uh, wheel that is spinning is barely touching the ground. And it, when it does, it just causes a little bit of forward motion. Not much, not enough to really keep this fight going. Three, two, one. Is that a knockout? Oh, it looks like we are reaching for the knockout button. Knockout. There it is. That the is your knockout. Is Jack Move. Nice okay. work, Jack Move and Drew Davis. Round of applause. William Marchese, I wish that uh, my anime windbreaker had helped, but. Uh, Looks like that was a loss there for what back, for Backlash Wave. It did help the overall style of this desk, though, I'll say that. So All check right. out this replay here. You can see this dominant performance right there at the beginning from Jack Move. Jack Move coming in and trying to attack at the giant wheels as targets. And there you go. They see uh, Backlash Wave doing the thing, doing the thing again. Let's go ahead and talk to our friend Lindsay. Lindsay, how's things going in the internet? <laughs> That's not Lindsay. Yes, it is. That is not Lindsay. That's Lindsay. Hi, boys. Oh, that's wait, no, that's Clyde that's Magnuson. Clyde. That's Clyde. Yeah. Oh, man, I'm watching this YouTubes. <laughs> oh, wow. Clyde, I thought that they kicked you out of the parking lot. Well, they could try, but I got squatter's rights. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what, what did you do to Lindsay? Like, uh, where, why, why, why is she not here at her desk? I, I don't know. I saw an open place to sleep, so I came in. <laughs> now, uh, Clyde, were you paying attention to that last fight? Oh, I'm watching the YouTubes right along. There's a cat that's wearing a hat. <laughs> okay. It's the craziest thing I've ever seen. Yeah, all right. Do you know who, uh, who won this last fight? Did you watch it at all? I, 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 the one... I, that alternate one. side. Oh, alternate okay. side won oh, the match. All right. Good. Yeah, good for alternate side. <laughs> nice. Yeah. That's an impressive record. This is the got. only way that alternate side is going to win any of the fights here at Norway. I heard that. Ooh. <laughs> I heard that. Uh, all right, Clyde. Good job, man. Um, I guess just don't touch any of the buttons back there. You know, I mean, it's pretty, already, I already it's did pretty complicated. Looking at cat videos, we, uh, we're, we're past that. that. That ship has sailed. Yeah, okay. Well, let's hope that Lindsay's okay. Uh, let's hope that Lindsay gets back I in. I will tell you that uh, when that. Clyde Magnuson is in charge, the spam bots just run rampant on the YouTube live It's chat. very true. The trolls, the spam bots, it's yeah. not good. Yeah. It's not good. Yeah. I'm surprised he even knows how to use YouTube. Uh, yeah, no, he, he, he shouldn't. Know right. how to use YouTube. There's some people that don't deserve that right. I see that we've loaded into Cage 2. 
Okay. We see Project Liftoff. Oh my gosh, it's a melty brain. It's one of my favorites. Uh, yeah, one of the hardest hitting bots in this tournament. Absolutely vicious machine. Puts out amazing, amazing shows every single time we see it in the box. They've been working a lot on their movement and on their translation um, with this bot. They've had a lot of success as far as their testing goes. The, they... Uh, Prishak Liftoff went 7-0 and with four KOs to win our September 2021 event. They also did some massive damage to this particular box while they were doing yeah. it. So I'm excited to see that. Yeah, like um, uh, just dug a huge kind of like burl out of the, uh, the inner panel of this box. Incredible. Ablation versus Project Liftoff. Ablation here run by Peter Garnash, Eight, one of the tallest seven, combat robot six, builders of all time. Five, four, and also one of the most talented. Three, yeah, really two, nice guy, really one, powerful robot. Fight, we love watching robots work. fight. Oh, look at this. The spin up for Project Liftoff is good. That was so fast. You can see it. It is spun up completely. Ow! Oh, sending Ablation into the corner. Ablation is not looking happy after those hits. That is some massive damage from Project Liftoff. Everything looks off kilter inside of Ablation. The unstick is coming so early in this match for Ablation. That is not a good sign. It looks like maybe one of the bunny ears on Ablation is gone. You yeah. can kind of see it like canted to the side. It's stuck there on the floor. Good hit there from Project Liftoff. And look at that. I think, yes, the left side bunny ear is Yeah, you're is totally gone. right. It is gone. So if they get flipped over again, that is not going to be good for them. They are out of unsticks. Now, one thing that I did talk to the Kazmers about with Project Liftoff, they have been talking to the Greatest Challenge team about the way that they have uh, programmed their bot for translation, and they have put a lot of those same techniques into their programming for Project wow. Liftoff. So we not only have the massive amounts of damage that Project Liftoff is well known for, we have a lot more control for that robot in this tournament, and you can really see it in this fight. These are huge hits from Ablation. That weapon is very, very dangerous. And here we go, Ablation back on its head. Definitely more mobile on its head here in this, uh, this part of the fight. Huge hits here. Incredible. Project Liftoff getting up to full speed. Oh, I love Project Liftoff when it's at full power. I want to see another huge hit here. Oh! Yes! <laughs> Project Liftoff stuck up on the side rail yet again. You can see those brand new spiky wheels vibrating themselves off of the side rail. Very well done. Getting back up to speed again. Ablation not able to take advantage. They were too busy trying to figure out what's going on with their right side drivetrain. 35 seconds left in this very destructive fight. The ping-ponging that we're used to seeing with Project Liftoff just hasn't been here. They have so much more control. And look at this. I think the power on Ablation is off and stuck up against the rail. I think Project Liftoff may be doing this. 15 seconds left in this match. This one is likely to go Ow! to the judges. But look at that, Project Liftoff still fully functional after that massive exchange. Ablation, a little bit worse for the wear, but still working. And one Woo! more big hit before we send it to the judges. You gotta love that. Oh, this, these two competitors put on an amazing show. Look at the smiles on everybody's faces at the cage. Excellent work all the way across the board. This one goes to the judges, and it will be a delight for them to call, I'm sure. Uh, amazing. That was one of the best Project Liftoff performances I think we have ever seen, even during that entire time period last September when they ran the entire competition. Yeah. Just Kyle, seeing so much more control with that bot is amazing. Kyle, I'm going to call it. I think that Norwalk Havoc is the home of the most dominant Melty Brains we've ever seen in the Beatles. Absolutely. The greatest challenge, Project Liftoff, just some of the most devastating machines that we've seen in the entire world. Absolutely. It is incredible that you can just, uh, you know, take this much power and... Uh, <laughs> 
you know, go ping-ponging around inside of the box and continue to spin for the full three minutes. Oh, wow. I just want to watch this whole replay, like, in real time. I want to watch three minutes of a replay, honestly. This was incredible. I mean, now that you're seeing so much more control coming from these Melty Brains as well, it, it's just a game changer. They are going to become one of the most apex designs here. You can, you can see it coming already. Yeah. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Here. Now, when we talk about damage, uh, looks like Ablation may have lost one of its bunny ears. Yep. Its drive wasn't as zippy as, uh, you it, know. It looked like the right side of the drive was having a lot of trouble at the end. I don't know if it was down, but it certainly had a lot of trouble. This one, I think, is going to be tough to call. Kyle, who should we start with? Let's start with Leanne. I think we started with Jack last time, so let's start with Leanne. Leanne, what did you think about that fight? It was fun. I agree. I want to watch the three-minute uh, replay. Yeah, it was a blast. <laughs> so who so won? Yeah, uh, I think, for me, Project Liftoff. The enthusiasm, the aggression, control, definitely. Um, I, I think that Ablation just wasn't... Every time they're flipped over, they weren't rushing in and going, so... Yeah, go All Project right. Liftoff. Fair One enough. vote for Project Liftoff. Dominic, your thoughts? I mean, I feel like the fight was a little bit closer than that. Um, Ablation definitely took control uh, at times and showed aggression. But in the end, Project Liftoff has become a monster, and he won. Yes. Amen to that. All right, let's take it home. Jack Tweedy, what do you think about that particular fight we just watched? Yeah, it was all Project Liftoff for me. They were the more aggressive, they did more damage, and they just realistically had control of the fight for the majority of it. All right, congratulations to the Kazmers and Project Liftoff moving on in this tournament. Unanimous judges' decision for the Kazmers. That incredible. bot is one to watch in this tournament. Wow. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. All right, it looks like we are loaded in over in cage four. Oh, cage three, sorry. Oh, wow, it's Strider again. Oh, I love Strider. Wow, okay. I wasn't here earlier for Strider. Tell me about Strider. Strider is like, um, like what, what, like Dollar Tree Droopy. Ah, All right. Striker. Yeah. Oh, wait, oh, Str Strider, yes, Strider. yeah. got it. Yeah, do you see, like, uh, it's got the dual horizontals over there. Yep, yep, absolutely. It just needs a sad little face, Kyle, and that robot will be perfect. Yeah, those blades look vicious. They're going to be going up against Crush. I mean, listen, I, it's mean for me to say this is the discount version of Droopy. It's just that Droopy's incredible. But Strider is, is really, really quite good. In his earlier fights, it just went the full three minutes. It was yep. amazing. This is undefeated bracket round three. Both Crush of these drivers haven't lost yet versus so far today. Strider. I just Eight, love the locomotion seven, on Strider. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robots, fight. Here we go. Strider's dual horizontals are spinning up, but it hasn't left the blue square. Let's go. Hitting Strider, Crush hitting Strider, pushing it uh, across the box. Strider is captained by Coleman Christie. He also had that really beautiful long boy robot we saw in the 12 pound division earlier. He rode into town with Calvin Eva, which means that this bot competes in California regularly where Tommy Wong and uh, Droopy reside. Yeah. So at some point we could get a Droopy Strider match. That I would love to cool. see that. That would yeah. be weird. Crush here, built and driven by Chris Munro. He's a letter carrier with the U.S. Postal Service from Norwalk, Connecticut. You know, we support our mailmen around here. Just a couple of competitions ago, Chris was in the audience, and he said, I really want to build what a robot, and uh, came here and built this very dominant beetle uh, egg feeder here. Yeah, beautiful hits there. It's obviously taking this massive amount of damage from Strider. Those hits from Strider. There's just nowhere safe to attack Strider. Everywhere you hit, you're gonna take massive damage from the massive impact. Oh, and look at this. What's happened to Crush? Crush is still in this fight. 
Kyle, what kind of uh, offense could you even mount against something like Strider? Do you just pick one side and keep going for it? Yeah, I think you just have to deal with the fact that your robot's going to get hurt every single time it attacks and hope you last longer. That's really your only chance. Oh, and look at this. What is this? The left side of Strider's gone down. Mm, no, it hasn't. Nope, it's spinning nope. up the other way. Oh, no, it's slow. It's yeah. slow, Kyle. It's trying to spin. It looks like it's not getting the engagement on the gears, perhaps, that it's supposed to. I'm not sure. I think that Chris has successfully pushed Strider up against the rail. One half of Strider is down. The it's spin trying. Is slow. It's trying. You can see a little bit of spin there, but it's not, it's not enough. Yeah, look at this. Chris Munro with Crush crushing his opponents. You gotta love that. Absolutely. Look at all those chunks outside of the side rail that are getting taken out by Strider's weapon there. Vicious machine. 30 seconds left here in this fight. When you have one of these gyroscopic uh, robots in Strider, you need to keep your weapons going or else your gyro just doesn't work anymore. Yeah, it's a full-on bristle walker design. Without the vibrations on those bristles, you got nothing. You got nothing. We've entered the last 10 seconds of this fight. Both of these robots have escaped the countout. This one will go to the judges, and this will be the last uh, impression that the judges get. A half-dead Strider stuck up against the rail. Incredible fight. Yeah, absolutely. What a wonderful showing from Crush. Even when their weapon was not working, they were showing just so much dominance. This one goes to the judges, but we're not making them work too hard. One of the cool things that I really like about Crush is its reliability. Yeah. It went up against a very tough robot here in Strider. Every single time that they made a connection, huge amount of kinetic energy is just getting dumped into Crush. And Chris was able to hang on and, uh, and stay alive. Judges, I think this one should be pretty easy. Maybe we do hands. Do you want to do hands? Hands sounds good. OK. Uh, round of hands for Strider. Any hands? No hands, all right. Any hands here for Crush? Nine hands for Crush, okay. Unanimous judges decision in favor of Crush. Thank you so much, judges. <laughs> okay. All right, let's go to our friend Allie, who's outside. Outside. Allie, what are you doing out there? I know, tell We're me I don't outside. have the best job in the world right now. I'm. And you know that lunchtime, dinner time lull, we're here and it's a little less crazy. So we thought it was the perfect time to show you what you can do outside here in the food court. And like a true New England event, we do have that lobster truck or lobster rolls, I should say. Look, they're nice. giving you a wave. You cannot come to Norwalk, Connecticut and got a good, get a good Connecticut style yeah. lobster roll. Yeah. Um, and among the food trucks we have here, Ringside Grill, we've got Daniel's, and then I'm making Mike run. I, I feel bad because I'm talking fast. That's what happens in from Tri-State area. But the cocktails car. The names what? of these cocktails. What? You have got to check it out. Mocktail, cocktail, whatever you're feeling. I'm feeling pretty sure uh, first drink of the day that robot driver <laughs> yes. might have already visited this, but we got the vertical spinner, the bleacher creature, the knockout, the melty brain. Oh, so yeah. something to certainly check out. Very creative. We really appreciate that they came up with those cocktails for us. That And I mean, look at that setup. It's gorgeous. Oh my gosh, what a cool place to have out there for all of our competitors as well as all of our participants today. Go check it out, especially around dinner time. Now, one really cool thing out here too is they have a, a, the Brett experience. So you can go out there and you can drive your very own Brett yep. inside of that box that's in the center. So if you've ever wanted to see what it's like to drive a combat robot, you know, Brett has no weapon on it, but it right. is certainly a very powerful, pushy robot. That would yep. be the best place to do it. All right, it looks like we've gone over to cage four here. And this is not going to be Crush versus Strider. That graphic is uh, old. We'll get a new one up there for you shortly. It does look like this is Bugsby, Zoe Lambert here in the pink corner. Oh, we've got some Zoe fans. You gotta love that. Who doesn't love Zoe? She's the best. She brought an entire posse with her today. Yeah, that's true. There's Zoe Lambert Zoe in yellow. Lambert. Hello, Zoe. 
with the sea of yellow shirts supporting her up in the pits and down here at the box. Hey, Zoe, good to see you. Sharing the robot combat love with her students and team members from her first robotics team. She's the best. She's a first mentor who likes to uh, share the combat robotics love, kind of like a farm league, if you will. She wants them all to get involved in this when they're not doing the first stuff, and I think that's great. Yeah. Keep those engineering brains working all year long. Okay. Minor Threat 5. All right, Minor Threat 5 here in the blue Eight, corner. Seven, Bugs being six, six, five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robots fight. This is elimination bracket round three. The loser of this fight will be going home early today. Oh, big hit on Bugsby. Wow. Bugsby now finds itself on its head, but so does Minor Threat 5. Yeah, nobody came out of that exchange clean. That was vicious. Bugsby, I believe that's a clear top that's now flopping off of the bot where there's supposed to be a burger bun. Minor Threat 5 is looking pretty off kilter, trying to self right over there. All right, and uh, has Fluffy gone in to save Minor Threat 5 yet? Uh, no, M uh, Fluffy went in to save Bugsby first, and now it looks like they're attempting to save Minor Threat 5. Yeah, that was one uh -oh. way to do it. Just smack right into the weapon there, Fluff. Minor Threat 5 does not like uh, spending any time on its head. No, it really has no ability to move here. Fluffy just attempting to fix it by smacking into the weapon. Now Bugsby coming in to help. Zoe. Nasty! Big hit there, and look at that, Minor Threat 5. Wow! Zoe has now face. lost her self-writing arm, but the weapon is still fully functional. She is still in a good place. Let's see if she can drive. Yes, she can. That there is some translational movement. She is heading in for another attack on Minor Threat 5. Minor Threat 5 is still just struggling in the corner. 80 seconds left in this fight. Is Minor Threat 5 on its head? Oh, Kyle, it is. Yeah, that's what's been oh, happening this that entire poor fight. Oh, robot, Kyle. Whoa, that was a ricochet shot off the side of the arena into Minor Threat 5. Now Bugsby is stuck no, up on the wall. Minor Zoe. Threat 5 is stuck upside down. Neither of these bots are fully functional, and I believe everyone is out of unsticks. Zoe has done so well for this entire fight, but finds herself up against the rail. No saves left. Will the countout happen? It's a double, it's a double knockout. knockout, ladies and gentlemen. Whoa. The very rare double knockout. That means this decision does go to the judges. Wow. That is a knockdown drag out. Donnie broke of a fight if it has to be a double knockout going to the judges. Neither of these bots looking particularly happy. Incredible. Whew. Absolutely. Let's incredible. find out who's going home after this match. All right. Let's take a look here at this replay. We saw some massive hits here. Bam! Bugsby spending time in the air. Minor Threat 5 spending time on its head. There were two minutes in this fight. I think Minor Threat spent about a minute and a half on its head. Yeah, Just at least. absolutely stuck. And uh, Bugsby coming over to, uh, to hit, you know, and uh, finding itself up against the rail. Impossible for it to self right without that self riding arm. An incredibly damaging fight, tough fight, double knockout fight. Wow. All right, this so it's gonna be close. We're going to our friends, the judges. We're gonna start with you, Jack Tweedy. Jack, what did you think about that fight? Double knockout. Who won that? Yeah, that was a very difficult one to judge. Uh, I gave it to Bugsby, though, by one point. Wow. Because they point. were able to actually show aggression once Minor Threat was upside down, and as a result, we're the only one of the two able to move. Oh my goodness. All right, so that is one for Bugsby. That's very sound reasoning. Let's go ahead and talk to Dominic. Dom, what did you think about that fight? I also thought it was extremely close. Yeah. Um, it's kind of hard to judge, but for me, what pushed it one point over was actually the damage that Minor Threat did to Bugsby. So by the smallest of margins. Wow. Minor threat. 
second split decision within the past uh, what like hour hour and a half okay we're making Leanne the judges Cushing work for it here now has all of the power Leanne who is the winner and who will be going home oh, tough call Leanne yeah mine was also within one point wow um and focusing on aggression and control even when there's the risk of getting yourself blown up. Bugsy rushed in there, so I give it to Bugsy. All right, wow. Bugsy advances. Zoe Lambert stays alive here in the competition. That was so close. judge's decision. Wow, yeah. so close. Minor Threat 5 putting in phenomenal work in that right. match, but they will be going home. Minor Threat 5 built by Luke Grell from Duluth, Minnesota. And uh, Luke, I hope that you come back and we see you at a future Norwalk again. Absolutely. Let's go to our friend, Allie. Allie, what you got for us? Well, this is our biggest competition yet. So we've had to add more cages. So I'm standing in front of the titanium stages. Cage five is loaded up. So I'm gonna walk out of the way. You're gonna just see a lot of backs probably right now because they are watching this match. Again, we've had to add these and another YouTube stream because we've had so many competitors and as much as you guys love watching this 24 hours a day, there are only two days in a weekend that we have to fit this in. So we've had to add these, which is exciting, gets you up a little bit closer to the action on the titanium stage and we're fighting a couple a couple more than a couple a lot of fights right here on these two and then it's really just a short walk to that cocktail cart <laughs> which i might just meander my way on over to but besides these cages again you can see behind me we've got our vip lounge we've got the food court we've got face painting for the little ones that come the future nice. robot builders um it even looks like we have like the claw arcade game yeah what is that called yeah the claw game you know the what claw i mean game. The claw you game. said it you said it the claw game Yep, right near the workshop. So a lot to do out here and even more matches to watch. Now, Ali, I have a quick question for you. I, I mm -hmm. understand that you got to announce on the Titanium stream by yourself earlier today. <laughs> yeah, this is your first solo <laughs> announcing for a, for a robot fight. And it could be my last. <laughs> I, I, I do think that that's a probability. Um, I'm really proud of the 50 people who stuck with me through some tough tough times during that hour and a half. <laughs> if you were there for the serial killer match, you know what I'm talking about. We went through about every kind of cereal you could eat while we were waiting for the other robot to load in. So yes, I did it. I can say I did it. And I'm praying to God you guys ask me back for the next competition. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, we love you, good, Allie. We will work. absolutely ask for you back. Thank good you work. so much. <laughs> good work. All right, we're going to go into cage one. We've got another big fight here loaded in. Let's see, what is this? Blackjack versus Cronus. Man, Blackjack doing so well in the competition today. Been really enjoying their matches. It's cool to see Mr. Davis expanding his horizons here. Yes. Uh, let's see, we got a good factoid here from Gil. Cronus debuted at another tournament and went four and two, despite being three pounds lighter than its competitors. Interesting. Very interesting, very interesting. All right, so we'll be starting this match. 12 pound action. This 12 pound bracket for this competition is the most stacked it has ever been with just incredibly talented builders and really powerful bots. Next in cage one, Blackjack versus Cronus. All right, Blackjack. Eight, uh, Blackjack seven, driven six, here by Drew Davis five, from Team Shredder. Our 10th grade English two, teacher from Schenectady. One. Fight, robots fight. Normally he has his sons operating the minibot or even operating the main bot for him. Today he's got fellow Team Shredder team member Alex Peza stepping into the role, doing a phenomenal job holding down the fort for them. I absolutely loved Cronus' earlier fight. This robot looks absolutely impeccable. Look at gold. it. It is gorgeous, Kyle. Yes, yeah, such a beautiful design, so well put together. You can just tell when people have put so much time in on the CAD machine before they actually build their bot. Look at that wedge. It's absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, that big, wide wedge, that ground scraping wedge. Hoping to get under his opponents. Let's see who's getting the low low ground here. I think it might be Cronus. 
The geometry is not in Kronos' favor. You've got the wider forks on Blackjack that are able to get underneath the kind of lifted parts of the wedge on Kronos. The, the little forks on Kronos are actually more centered, so they're going to be effective when he gets to the side of Blackjack, but with it's a front-on collision, I think Blackjack's going to get the advantage Jab every out. time. Wow! Oh! And as I said that, there was Kronos. enough side attacks, and Kronos wins. Look at that beautiful gyro attack. I love it. Incredible. Kronos here. Built by Julian Mott from Burlingame, California, our high school sophomore, building this absolutely gorgeous golden robot in Kronos, flying out here all the way from Silicon Valley, Kyle. And defeating an English teacher who works with his grade level. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's really sophomore funny. Sophomore English teacher facing off against a sophomore high school student. Yeah, absolutely. That's really wow. funny. That's really, really cool. Yeah. Do you think he's going to assign him homework for beating him in that match? <laughs> yeah, listen, I would assign detention. You know? <laughs> so this is very disrespectful. You've, you've humiliated me like uh, in cage one. This is not good. You know? <laughs> You have to talk about your behavior. Well, we got to write on the board at least 100 times, I will not beat <laughs> you in a robot be, fight. Yes, I will not exactly. beat you in a robot fight. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. All right, we're, uh, we're all locked up and ready to go here in Cage 3. We've got Caldera versus mm. Voltage. I got to say, all right, we got a factoid here. Caldera's record before September 2021 was 4 and 8. September 2021 uh, and since wow. has been 23 and 12. Wow. This bot has been getting progressively better and better. This is Glenn Voxel's baby. And uh, it's one of my favorite bots to watch fight, watch improve. He's trying some new types of wheels for this tournament. I will also say that Glenn is trying out a brand new mini bot for Caldera. That's right. This is a mini bot that he designed and built himself, which is very cool. His Next in Cage Boxel, 3, Eruption. Voltage Both Caldera and Eruption Caldera. have already qualified for the finals. This is a very Eight, talented team seven, of builders. Yes, it six, is. Father and son five, team, and they are just four, destroying the competition three, here. It's wonderful two, to see. One. Fight. Robots fight. Minibot doing exactly what it's supposed to do. High centering voltage, giving... Oh! oh! Never mind. Voltage getting out of the pinning predicament and smacking Caldera in the face. That is the horizontal anti-wedge that just came off of voltage, though. That's not good. They are now fully exposed to Caldera's weapon. And it looks like voltage's weapon just spun down. That's not good. What is that on the floor? That's I want to say belt. it's a belt, but I... Wow. Who's belt? a belt? I can't tell. Looks like maybe a piece of wire. Yeah, or plastic. It's very difficult to tell. But oh, either way, the weapon on voltage not spinning. The weapon on Caldera just fine. That's a shredded belt, Kyle. Yeah, you're right. And it looks like it is a shredded belt from voltage. Yep, there's the rest of it. Just right. came off when Caldera smacked them. That's exactly what it is. Wow. So we have half of the drive on voltage not working. The weapon completely down on voltage. It looks like half the drive on Caldera is not quite working right. But that weapon is flowing just fine, and that minibot is a tank. Brian Boxel is driving the minibot on behalf of his dad. And uh, yeah, you can see that anti-horizontal wedge gone. That belt gone. Half of the drive gone. And uh, really at this point, just as a question of can Caldera stay alive? take this to the judges or score a knockout. Yeah, absolutely. Looks like there was a little bit of friendly fire there on the minibot, but so now the minibot's down a drive. So no bot in this competition currently has a full drive. Yeah, it does look like Caldera's kind of stuck there a little bit, wouldn't you say? A little bit, a little bit. Interesting. Okay, that's concerning. Caldera looks like it's very stuck. Oh, I heard like the little song from the ESC. Was that the song from Caldera? I think that might have been the song from Caldera. Maybe they're restarting it. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. The drive is down on Caldera. That bot is immobile. So they're getting their one unstick from Bert. I'm hearing the count out from, on Glenn Boxel. Somehow Voltage has survived with half of a drive and not much else. Knockout. Wow. The winner is. What an upset Voltage. for Voltage. Beautiful work from that team. 
Voltage, built and driven by James Geffner from Team Stamina. Good job, James. Just hanging in there, not tapping out. You never know what's going to happen in a fight. Absolutely. Yeah, it really did not look good for them early on in that fight. They were able to pull out the win for, via survival. Well done for that team. Very, very well done. You've got Caldera, one of the top ranked robots here. They've already qualified for December. Like yep. They've gone very deep into the, uh, the brackets before. And, uh, you know, like being outlasted by, by James. Pretty good. Very, very cool. All right. All right. We're going to check in here with Cage 2. We've got Camino versus War Hard. War Hard <laughs> versus Camino. Eight, seven, six, five. Four, three, two, one. F two egg right. beater drum spinners. Camino has got those hinged pontoon style wedgelets on either side. But they are not going to win the ground game if they are on their head. Oh, big don't hit worry. Big from Warhard, this big black robot here. Taking it to Camino, this purple robot. Wow, dismantling the mini bot from Camino. That weapon on Warhard is so vicious. But look at that, Camino stayed planted to the floor and kicked Warhard across the box. Let's go. Taking advantage of Warhard trying to get their bearings, they were able to get three solid hits in a row there. Oh, there goes one of the wedgelets off of Camino. They are now down one wedgelet. The other one's just flopping in the wind. Warhard upside down, but they were able to self right off of the minibot. Well done. Look at this. Warhard is back on its feet. Both robots are back on their feet. Incredible. Both robots down a drive side, or at least uh, not, don't have fully functioning drive on one side, but their weapons are fully kicking. Wow, Warhard's found itself high centered on this dead mini bot. Wow, what a hit from Camino. This is a true back and forth. I, I can't tell who's getting the better of these exchanges. I mean, it's one and then the other, Kyle. Even Incredible. the damage on the robots is similar. They're each Let's missing go. a side armor package. They're each missing a side drive. Both of them still have working weapons. It's so even. All right, now it looks like the weapon on Camino may have gone down. Looks like, yeah. Oh, weapon on Warhard is trying to spin up Camino. I don't even see those wheels spinning with this camera shot here. Are they just completely dead in the corner? Look at that. A charitable uh, hit there from Warhard. Yes. The driver of Camino was asking for it. Nice hit there from Camino. And yes, it does look Camino like Camino's weapon is still functioning. Half of their drive is still functioning. Wow. These bots are even at this point wow. in the match. Wow. And has the weapon on Camino gone down once again? Nope, still fully functional. They're just on their head. The countout is still happening. That is a knockout. knockout. The winner is referee Nick War calling it uh, calling it a knockout. All right, and uh, here we've got a little bit of shouting here at the side of the cage. All right, Aaron, 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 Aaron. Okay, all right. Wow. All right, the driver of Camino is upset about this. Yeah, Aaron Taggart very upset about the outcome of that match. He feels as though his bot was still functioning at the end. That is referee's discretion. This uh, replay here. This is a true back and forth here between Warhard and Camino. Extremely hard fought match between both of these competitors. Very, very even throughout most of this event. Trading those back and forth, but ultimately it was Camino being counted out. All right, so let's check out the 30 pound bracket. As you can see, the upcoming fights that we have is going to be Yahoo versus Plyo Hazard, Other Disco versus Phenomenon, 
Down in the elimination round, you're going to have Sunflower of Peace. They'll be going up against the loser of whoever uh, loses in eight. And then you're going to have Captain Caveman. They'll be facing the loser of seven. And now we have Other Disco. They will be facing off against Phenomenon. Do, 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 do. Engage <laughs> four. Engage four. We're going to go see that fight right now, Kyle. I'm so excited. We're going to see a 30 pound fight. I got to love those 30 pound fights. This is a really great 30 pound bracket we have at this tournament. It's the smallest of the brackets. Wow. Uh, if Other Disco wins this fight, it qualifies for the December Championship. Incredible. Absolutely. Right. They are one fight away from qualification. That's what they're here to do, right? They're here to qualify all the bots? Yeah, exactly. Don Dorfler and uh, the Dorfler brothers running other disco. They ran, they ran disco as well. Uh-huh. And, this and is other the, disco. This is the other disco. Yeah. Next in Cage 4, Phenomenon versus Other Disco. Phenomenon, of Eight, course, ran by Brandon seven, Bennett Young of six, Team Mammoth on Battlebots. four, three, two, one. Fight, robots fight. Oh, good to be here from Other Disco. Kicking Phenomenon there up against the rail. Kind of testing each other here in this fight. I love the forks on Phenomenon. Let's see if uh, Brandon's able to get under Other Disco. He is. Other Disco digging into the plywood. Vicious hit attack there, there by from, Brandon. Yeah, vicious attacks there from Phenomenon. But at what cost? Brandon here is up against the rail. Their weapons are now touching one another in the air. It's, uh, it's kind of romantic action. All right, here comes the save. Is that a simultaneous save? It may have been. I would call that a simultaneous save. Does that mean that they don't get one and uh, uh, don't get another one? Phenomenon landing huge hits. Other Disco up against the uh, the box. Again, Other Disco on its head. Let's go. And look at this. Other Disco found itself up against the rail. Don Dorfler searching for the tap out button. The there it is. There Phenomenon. it goes. Phenomenon. That is your winner. That means Other Disco will be going down into the elimination bracket. They still have a chance for qualifying in December, but not from this fight. All right, let's take a look here at this replay. Phenomenon's forks were one of the uh, the key factors here, successfully Absolutely. getting under other disco more times than not. Here they got stuck and uh, had to be simultaneously saved. There's that was a great shot right there. Phenomenon getting under other disco and uh, other disco just dying here on its head. Fantastic work from Brandon Bennett Young and. Phenomenon. It really was. He's only done a little bit of work on the Phenomenon line before he came here. One of the things he did is he did upgrade the battery power. He wanted bigger hits. He wanted to roof a robot. That's actually his entire goal for this tournament is to knock one of his opponents into the roof. I hope he accomplishes it. That's what I want to see. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, if we keep seeing performance like that, it's very possible. Absolutely. All right. Other Disco uh, was supposed to win that one fight. They were hoping to so they could get an invitation to the finals. That didn't happen. They're going to have to earn their way through the elimination bracket. Yep, they to still earn got a chance. That, uh, that, that invitation. So now we see, once again, the bot that just won't die. Yes. Blue Cheese has been split apart. They have been ripped to pieces. Their weapon has been taken out, and yet they are still here in this tournament. They are still competing. It looks like Matt Luther may be facing off against a fellow team, uh, team defective robot on the other side of the box in the pink square. If those are green, uh, you know, is, is that perhaps Yobnal? The long boy himself? The long boy himself. A little bit of team defective versus team defective here, Kyle. I think it might be. I think it might be. Oh, look at this. Clyde Magnuson walking past the screen here. <laughs> 
Blue Cheese's win over Milk Tank earlier today was its first <laughs> oh. career NHRL oh. win. Oh, that is the that is so much shade in that little fact. Right yeah, there, facts don't care about your feelings, oh and that God. factoid certainly <laughs> doesn't care about blue cheeses. Oh, gosh. oh my gosh! Blue right. cheese versus Yamgano. The long boy himself. Eight, Here we go. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robots, fight. All right, very helpfully, Blue Cheese is in blue. Yavnal here is in green. Yavnal kicking Blue Cheese up against the uh, the rail, and it looks like Blue Cheese is dead. One hit KO. Look at that. I can't believe it. You can see Matt Luther there, just gathering his things, ready to Tap go. Out. The wow. winner is Yamgano. Wow, what did I miss? Uh, yeah, one hit KO, Chris. I would also say you missed uh, a little cameo by Clyde Magnuson. I hear that they chased him out of the building with one of those uh, safety brooms. I, really? Yeah. I, I knew he was here. I caught him trying to steal my catalytic converter <laughs> out in the parking lot. He needs the money to fund his robots, Chris. Oh, I thought it was his uh, Chef Boyardee addiction. All right, this is a replay, and uh, you saw the whole thing. I'm going to see it from multiple angles. Wow. One hit. That was it. Holy cow. Yeah, fast replay. Okay, good fight there. Yabnal uh, remains alive. Blue Cheese, uh, I'm not sure. Is this their first, uh, first loss? Are they going to... Uh, to remain alive, I guess, uh, in the uh, the elimination bracket. I'm not sure. I may have missed one of their uh, their earlier fights. Okay, we're gonna go to cage three. We've got left unsupervised from Madeline Hagen from Team Hijinx on BattleBots, facing off against Meta, the evil corporation built by Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> left unsupervised versus. Meta. Eight, I say this as a former seven, Facebook employee six, myself. So, five, yeah. Four, <laughs> three, and we know how that ends. Two, one. <laughs> fight, robots, fight. All right. We've got left unsupervised here in pink, meta here appropriately in blue and white. Now, both of these vertical spinners jogging for position. Meta getting under left unsupervised, popping it in the air. But look at this, unsupervised going after this very foamy wheel. Let's go, Madeline. Ooh. Oh! Wow! And I think that one half of the drive on Meta just isn't looking right. It's going to need a lot Hagen of there. likes to get himself right in. <laughs> yes, there you go. Once again, Madeline uh, hitting the Kazmers here onto their head here with Meta. More and more of that foam being ripped off of those big chunky wheels on Meta. There is so much foam in this box, Chris. I cannot believe it. Wow, stuck up against the rail. Able to get themselves down, but still Ooh. on their head. Coming in at the side of that uh, weapon system. And look oh. at that. Was that a wheel that... W it is. It's a wheel that's gone from Meta. Meta is down to one Tap wheel. Out. Right. Wow. The winner is Left Unsupervised. Wow. Look like maybe the bolt from the weapon assembly. I don't know. Yeah, Meta there at the end looked like my uh, Facebook stock holdings, you know, <laughs> after today. Yeah. Ah. Uh. It's half off, Chris. That's what I'm trying to say, okay? Think of the saving. <laughs> All right, it's very good uh, here from Madeline Hagen uh, on Team Hijinx, winning yet another fight. This is undefeated bracket round three. She will advance to undefeated bracket round four. Meta going down into the elimination bracket. 
Wow, do you see all the foam in that box? Incredible. More foam than a car wash. Wow. I think this is all foam from this fight itself. Yeah. We do usually a pretty good job of pulling out all of the debris from these boxes. Like, that tire just got disintegrated. Yeah, and I mean, it's, uh, it's part of the design of it. You want to be able to lose a small piece of it without losing an entire wheel, but eventually, you know, death by a thousand cuts. Right, yeah. Okay. Great job, Madeline. Wow, and they're going to have to just send in the, uh, the, the vacuum cleaner in there, pick up all of that, uh, that foam. You'd think we'd have a Roomba by now. All right, oh my gosh, look at this. Oh yes, it's Eruption versus the Wumpus. I love the Wumpus, all right? Eruption versus the Wumpus. All right, the Wumpus Eight, made the highlight seven, reel uh, several six, months ago when it five, faced off against four, Aaron Hill and three, Shifty. Two, Just getting one, decapitated fight, here. Robots the fight. Oh, good speed from the Wumpus, the Wumpus right out of the box here. Not content to allow the box rush from Brian Boxel in eruption. Oh. Let's go. Elimination bracket round three. This is a very important fight for both of these builders. Oh boy. The save coming in very early for Brett. It is like a tortoise on his back right now. Oh no, Brett. You've tipped Tap the Wumpus up against oh the corner. Boy. The winner is oh, Eruption. Boys. Okay, this will be the last fight of the day for Joey Gannon and the Wumpus from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Uh, now, very, uh, very fun fact here. The Wumpus's first design, it started as a cheesecake pan that was just inverted, and it's just gotten better and better and better. Great speed here in this fight. Let's check out this replay here. Good hit here from Brian Boxel and Eruption, pushing, uh, you know, like, basically hitting the Wumpus up into the corner and on its head. The save, though, was not very helpful, and uh, the Wumpus ended up tapping out. An early uh, exit here for Joey, but a very, very uh, talented builder. I really hope to see Joey again at another Norwalk very soon. Okay. All right, we're loading into cage three. I see Revolver facing off against Jack Rabbit Flex. We can see Drew Davis here in the far right wearing the Jack Move t-shirt. That's a really cool t-shirt, Drew. I, I would wear that t-shirt, Chris. That's pretty great. Are you asking for a t-shirt, Luke? Uh, Drew, if you have an extra t-shirt, I'd love one. Um, and then in green, driving the minibot is Alex Peza. And here uh, we've got the, uh, with, with Revolver, this is the, um, the, uh, the, the robot here uh, from Eric Shao from Bridgewater, New Jersey. And um, this is inspired by Rotator, Victor Soto and Rotator. Yeah, it looks like the, uh, the, the front half of Rotator. Yeah, I guess if they, we, we had some long forks on the back, mm. then Revolver would really be a... Uh, oh, I guess you've got a little... What is that on the back? There's something back there. There's a little something back there. Interesting. Okay. Jackrabbit Flex here is a brand new robot here from Drew Davis. And uh, I'm going to guess it's probably one of the experimental versions of Jackrabbit. Jackrabbit's just this absolute tried and true design. They're negotiating cage side. It looks like maybe something's wrong with Jackrabbit Flex. Eric Shaw looks ready. Okay. Maybe. They are talking cage side. All right, oh, we're locked in. locked up the box. Oh, I wonder what's going to happen here. Jackrabbit Flex doing a little bit of a twitch test. It looks like perhaps the weapon is good. I don't know. I wonder what, uh, what the delay was here. I guess we're going to have to see. Ooh, a little bit of feedback there. Okay. Pressing their ready buttons. There you go, Eric. This is uh, undefeated bracket round three. Both of these, uh, these builders are ready to go. Next in cage three, Revolver versus Jackrabbit Flex. 
And it looks like Revolver is starting Eight, in the backwards seven, position, going six, forward first. Oh, interesting. Five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robots, fight. Oh, it's oh. doing the whip around. You gotta love that. Ah, the old switcheroo. The rope a Here we go. And that undercutter on the revolver is running great. But Jackrabbit Flex using that massive anti-horizontal plow to get under revolver, popping it in the air. We've also got this wide scoop design on Bug, the minibot. Who is inverted right now. Yes, exactly. The undercutter's still alive. You can see that shower of sparks there. One of the things that you can really hear inside of the box is that both of these weapons are very finely tuned. You can barely hear them, but you know that they're both running. That really shows the, uh, the, uh, the skill of both of these drivers. As soon as I say this, you know, Revolver's up against the uh, side. I see if their weapon comes back. There we go. Yeah, there we go. Oh, good hit there from Jackrabbit Flex on Revolver. It's just, Revolver's just playing it smart. Don't fire up the weapon when you are in a, um, uh, not an opportune time to. Yeah, absolutely. Eric Shaw really showing um, some pretty smart tactical thinking here. Really just trying to outlast Jackrabbit Flex. We saw a little twitch on the weapon from Jackrabbit Flex. Does that mean that the weapon may have gone down? 75 seconds left here in this fight. It looks like the weapon on Jackrabbit Flex may be down. Eric, you have 60 seconds to win this fight. Start scoring damage points, Eric. It's very difficult to outdrive Drew Davis. He is an incredibly talented driver. And really, this is oh, the time. We got a pin. Oh, that's a good pin from that anti horizontal wedge. 45 seconds left. Drew Davis can hold this pin for up to 10 seconds before the referee tells him to back off. Here we go. And the weapon on Revolver keeps coming back, Chris. That's incredible. 30 seconds left in this fight. Even though Eric has a fully running weapon, I don't know if he's been able to capitalize on that weapon at all, just being outdriven by Drew Davis. Yeah, Drew has been doing a great job of uh, staying squared up with Revolver. And that really kind of takes that horizontal spinner out of the equation. All right, as we enter the last 10 seconds of this match, both of these drivers have escaped the countout. This one will go to the judges. Interesting, this is a very close match. All right, round of applause for a match that went the full three minutes. Very good. Now, in, in an earlier match, you know, uh, for Revolver, it was pretty violent, and they got their whole face ripped off, you know? Uh, we didn't see that same kind of destruction in this fight. Instead, uh, it was uh, a fight where the, uh, the weapon continued to run, and yeah. the, the bodies remained intact. It was incredible. All right, we're going to go to the judges. And uh, they're sitting on, on one of these boats out there. They're all on boats. Yeah, exactly. That's why the, uh, the connection's been a little spotty. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, you know, there's, there's actually a lot to deliberate there. You know, um, Revolver showed, I would argue, kind of a lack of control just because it wasn't able to capitalize when it had that weapon at the very end. And uh, Jackrabbit continuing to, to land pins even after its weapon had gone down. Yeah, well, that's going to be the deciding factor, though. Is that weapon, weapon is, going down a... Weapon's a damage. Big, yeah. You know? Or, I don't know. Revolver does get a lot of those damage points because Revolver basically wheeled itself out. It looked great, you know, mm. at the end. Interesting. Hmm. I think this one's going to be close. Okay. Let's start with Leanne. Leanne, your thoughts on this fight? Yeah, that's tough. I mean, Revolver did still have a weapon, but I wasn't seeing much damage uh, done by that weapon. Um, and yeah, Jackrabbit had a ton of um, hustle and was kept staying on him, even when he lost his weapon. Had some great hits before that. Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to have to give it to Jackrabbit. Okay, Jackrabbit well, Flex. One <laughs> vote for Jackrabbit Flex. Jack Tweedy, your thoughts? 
I also gave it to Jackrabbit Flex. Uh, it lost on damage purely because it losing its weapon, but it was the more aggressive and kept pace of the fight the entire time. Yeah. All right, two votes for Jackrabbit Flex. Dominic Yankaskis, your thoughts? Basically, I agree with the other two judges and everything they said. All right, we've got a unanimous judge's decision for Jackrabbit Flex, which advances. Thank you so much, judges. Okay, I can see us loaded into you, Cage 2. We're all locked, ready to go. We've got Lars, Elliot, and Jetlag facing off against Red Hawk X. Oh. The box is all loaded in and locked. Okay. I, uh, I'm, I'm hearing from Control that uh, we're going to take a quick tour of the facility. And, uh, you know, if you're joining us late, you know, we'll uh, kind of catch you up. Okay. All right. Hey, welcome, everybody. Uh, I'm so glad that you're here. This is uh, Norwalk Havoc. Uh, my name is Luke Stangle. Joining me here is uh, my best friend and brother-in-law, Chris Tosico. Hey, Luke. I am so happy that you're here. Wow. Oh, my gosh. Let's uh, take a look here at the Bot Museum. If you've ever wanted to see a BattleBot up close, this is the place to do it. Look at Mammoth, it's a Mammoth. That's a gigantic thing. Here we go, this is Tantrum. This is season six Tantrum, incredible. This is one of our latest additions to the Bot Museum. Bloodsport and Duck back there. Amazing. People have been taking selfies next to all of these robots all day long. We see Overhaul, we see Pain Train. Coming up next is Ribot, right there. That froggy robot all by itself, you gotta love that. Sharko and War EZ. Sharko, I believe, was the first ever bot acquired by the Bot Museum. All right. And look, this is where we are. This is the Steel Arena. That's where we are right now, and Luke. Look at us. Wow. Hello. Oh my gosh. We're live, Chris. You gotta love that. Hi. Hey, folks. <laughs> oh, that was fun. All right. If you if you've never been to Norwalk, you've got to come out. You can see some real robots, you know, uh, that have fought on BattleBots. You can see incredible. Three pounders, 12 pounders, and 30 pound fights. A ton of them. It's an action packed day. It's uh, really a lot of fun. There's a lot of like games to play here. Like you can drive your own robot. You there's can a uh, video game station. Yeah. There's a claw machine. There's uh, 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 food trucks. There's yeah. everything. Yeah. What, what more would you want on a Saturday? Um, well, I think we need face painting. I s there's there's literally face there's painting. There's face painting. Yeah, and, like, All right. Like okay. tattoos that you can get. What? Okay. I'm gonna get my face painted after this, Chris. Let's hope so. All right, incredible. Let's go into cage two here. I see uh, Lars Elliott here and Jetlag facing off against Red Hawk X. This is undefeated bracket round three. One of the big things I'm gonna be looking for is drive from Jetlag. Red Hawk X versus Jetlag. Lars Elliott is one of our Eight, finest drivers seven, here at Norwalk six, Havoc. And five, he has just been winning four, competitions three, up and down the East two, Coast for the one, entire fight, summer. Robots fight. This is an absolutely incredible 14-year-old here. Driving this red and white jet lag, facing off against the black horizontal spinner of Red Hawk X. Lars Elliott is running a Weta uh, kit bot here. Incredibly tough, very reliable. And he's an absolutely feared driver here at uh, such a young age here on the East Coast because a lot of builders have ended up losing matches to, uh, to his robot. Ooh. Red Hawk X landing some incredibly good hits. Red Hawk X is just absolutely bulletproof with that horizontal. Wow. wow, big weapon on weapon exchange there. We 
We can see the, uh, the, the look of from Lars. Right, look from, of determination on Lars. Just, just 100% focused. Absolutely focused. Yep. Ninety seconds left here in this fight. Both of these weapons are still going. Both of the drive is still going. And look at this. I think that Red Hawk X has successfully torn off part of the wheel guard on jet lag. That's what you want to do with the horizontal. You want to try and attack the wheels first. Oh, oh and I see a wheel. wheel gun. I think that may be a wheel from... Red Hawk. From Red Hawk X. Tap oh, wow. The wow. Is jet lag. Wow, Lars Elliott and Jetlag hung in there, showing off the toughness and reliability and drive quality of that robot. Good job, Lars. Very impressive. Okay. All right, Red Hawk X. This is the experimental platform for the Red Hawk team. And uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is great. Red Hawk has competed here at competitions for the last year and a half plus. Lars Elliott, still relatively new to this competition. I think this may be his third outing to Norwalk. But as I said, he's been just racking up first place finishes everywhere else he goes, all, uh, all, all up and down the East Coast at, at other competitions. Incredible. OK. Heading over to cage three. This is going to be an explosive fight. Malice facing off against Scrambled. Malice versus Scrambled. Eight, seven. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robots, fight. Big opening hit from Malice coming out of the blue corner against Scrambled from the Magenta. Scrambled here is this baby blue uh, with a gold egg beater. And its drive looks like it may be high centered on one of those oh, forks. I yeah, think maybe the fork. fork is inverted, stuck under the body. Malice here just waiting for Brett to uh, burn up that one save here. Scrambled is looking to get flipped. Oh, there you go. Looking to get flipped. Well done, Chris. Thank you. I'll be here all night and for part of tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, we're going to be here lit so late, we'll just go straight to breakfast, Chris. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right, Malice here uh, coming in, making an engagement. But still, Scramble defines itself high-centered on those forks. Not a lot of translational movement. You can see their wheels spinning. And Malice very wisely hanging back, trying to pick his angle. Getting Scrambled onto his feet. All right, this is the first time in about 60 seconds that we've seen mobility from Scrambled. Malice just looks like it's playing with its breakfast. Chris. <laughs> All right. Uh, you're such a great yoker. <laughs> wow. A little under a minute and 30 left in this match. We're seeing great mobility here from Malice. Scrambled. Oh, tipped on its head. Uh, tipped on its side. Oh, no. Grant Frazier and Scrambled getting a oh. second save. Wow. Wow, that How is a generous, rare How generous, How generous. Whoa! Whoa! Big hit from Malice on Scrambles. Malice just showing incredible restraint here. You've really got to be careful if you're Malice because uh, you're so ahead on the points. It's just something silly can happen in the last 30 seconds. Absolutely. You don't want to get stuck. When you have two high energy weapons like this, anything can happen. I will tell you, the thing about Scrambled is I don't think I've ever seen its weapon go down. Grant Frazier has built an incredibly reliable robot. That weapon is running great. 15 seconds here. I think that Grant may be escaping the count out. This one will go to the judges technically. They have escaped the count outs. This one will go to the judges. Three, two, one. That's the match. Turn off your weapons. Drive to the door. 
This one went the full three minutes. Round of applause. Good job, Gramps. It'll be up to the judges to see if Malice indeed whipped, scrambled into stiff peaks. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's good. Whipped, scrambled into stiff peaks. So like, like a meringue. Or like something. a meringue. Yes, yeah, a meringue. Nice. Okay, good. All right, as we load out these robots, the judges are deliberating. This was a very one-sided match, I would say. Pretty early, you know, those, those um, hinged forks got under yeah, scrambled under. and uh, really, was, uh, really made it difficult for that robot to make connection with the floor. Ooh. Okay, we're gonna go to cage four first. Wow, this is Plyohazard versus Yahoo. Yahoo is one of the robots that we are watching today. This is uh, a robot built by Chad New from Team Copperhead on BattleBots. Plyohazard is yet another Casmer creation. This is a wooden robot that has a flamethrower on it, Chris. What could go wrong? I mean, I suppose you could make your flamethrowing robot out of paper mache, perhaps. That would maybe be worse. But this is a close second, Chris. <laughs> Next it. Chris, if uh, Plyohazard goes up, I'm just going to feel such extreme joy. Do you know what I'm saying? Like I if they that. burn themselves, Chris. Plyohazard versus Yahoo. Okay, Eight, no. Seven, it's gotta be six, Yahoo. Five, four, right, Chris? Three, Come on. You're dating two, yourself right now, Luke. One. <laughs> fight, robots fight. Yeah, let's go, Plyohazard. Oh boy. Here we go. It looks like it's almost uncontained fire. The fire's coming out of every corner of this robot, Chris. This does not look good. Yahoo, the uh, absolutely chonky uh, drum here from Chad New. Getting under Plyohazard. You can see Plyohazard is changing colors, Chris, before our very eyes. Amazing. It's burning its own wood, Chris. It's what actually it's happening? it's actually an, uh, an yes! ancient Japanese technique of preserving wood. <laughs> wow! Huge hit there. Chad backing up now. Plyohazard finds itself on his face. Yes, let's go, Chad. Whoa. Oh! Wow! Chad, Chad's drum looks like it could be dragging on oh. the floor. Oh no, here we go. Bits of wood getting peeled off of Flyohazard. It looks like the gas may have been extinguished from Flyohazard. Do they have any fuel left here in this flamethrower? A minute 25 left in this fight, and it looks like Chad's robot here, Yahoo, is spinning in delight. Does this mean that Chad thinks he's won? Biohazard <laughs> up against the rail. No fire, no tap spin. Out. It's a tap out. Wow. The Kazmers there. Round of applause for the Kazmers, building a very ambitious robot. And there's Chad winning a fight here for Yahoo. <laughs> here we go. Good little uh, handshake there between these two competitors. Let's take a look here at this replay. Oh, I love a flamethrower. Absolutely. It's just so visually stunning. I love how the front of Plyohazard is just being scorched as we're watching it. That is amazing. At one point, just fire pouring out of every part of that robot. Oh, you gotta love that, Chris. And Yahoo, just, you know. Pretty, uh, pretty bulletproof reliability there. Chat, I, I no, think I have like 12 splinters right now. 
Yeah, well, I mean, the nice thing is they just have uh, sheet rock. Uh, they, they just got sheets, sheets of plywood up there, and they can just rebuild a brand new robot. Is it easily. cabinet grade plywood, though? That's the real question. The Casmers are classy people. It is cabinet grade. All right, we just got an update from the judges on the on the previous fight. It seems like Malice did in fact take that. Okay. All right. Surprising no one. Here's a live shot of our pits. We still have over a hundred robots that are still alive in the bracket and lots and lots of people still fixing their robots. I see uh, I see the builder of guillotine is currently heads down on that bot when not waving. Yeah. Heads down, but not heads off. That's good. All right, uh, and look, we've got a live shot of our production area. Hello, production. Got a good shot here of cage one. But uh, we're gonna go to cage two for the next fight. Oh, look at this. Oh, wow. Ooh, these are two top ranked bots. Sepio here is one of our top ranked bots that we are watching, hopefully, uh, in hopes of qualifying for December. Built by Lucas Buermeyer, a recent uh, WPI graduate, facing off against Caldera and Glenn Boxel. Two, two bots that you would expect to see in the late stages of the winner's bracket, but here yes. they are, one of them's going home. Yeah, this is the elimination bracket round three. One of these bots is gonna be going home. Caldera has already qualified for December. Sepiel is searching for its uh, invitation. But, uh, Next in cage very, two, against a very tough competitor versus Caldera. All right, we see Sepiel here in Eight, white, Caldera seven, here in orange. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robots fight. Oh, good spin up from both robots here. Horizontal on horizontal action. This is also known as a fencing match. Oh, good hit, Sepiel. Sending Caldera across the box and again. Whoa! Wow! Now, when it comes down to these, oh! oh! Every single time they make a connection, one of these robots is being flung across the box. This one's going to come down to reliability. Caldera just drove straight through the wheels of Sepiel. You can see that right side of the drive of Sepiel looks like it's locked up. And Caldera here. Is, is Caldera's weapon down, though, Luke? Caldera's weapon is not spinning, Chris. That oh, is boy. Bad. Oh, this is going to be a long two minutes. Oh, it looks like somebody's tapping. It is Tap Caldera out. tapping out. The this is the last is fight of the Sepio. day for Caldera. Lucas Buermeyer and Sepiel remain alive, really just kind of escaping by the skin of their teeth, Chris. Okay. Glenn Boxel says, look, it's 5.20. I want to drive home, you know? I want to have dinner at home. <laughs> I want to eat in my own dining room, Chris, all right? See some of these big hits here in this replay. Yep. Okay. All right, we're loading into cage three here. Attitude Adjuster from the UK, facing off against Hurt Caboose. Now, Attitude Adjuster, fun fact, is named after a spaceship from an Ian Banks novel. I think so it's Lane, Lane Banks. <laughs> Lane Banks, exactly. So wait, is Attitude Adjuster the name of the spaceship? Okay, all right, I'm gonna go that Next in cage three, Attitude Adjuster versus Hurt Caboose. Eight, seven, six, five, Four, three, two, one. Fight, robots fight. Here we go, loser's bracket or elimination bracket, round four. Yeah, we can see Herkbus here in uh, orange facing off against Attitude Adjuster in neon green. Attitude Adjuster is a Scorpio style, Sable style, articulated chop saw. Herkbus here, classic egg eater spinner with a heavy, heavy, 3D printed armor package around its wheels. And really what Attitude Adjuster wants to do is try and stop the blade of Hurt Caboose, landing a good hit right on the top of Hurt Caboose. Wow. 
incredible. These super long forks on Attitude Adjuster doing great in this fight. This is a do or die moment for both of these builders. The winner of this fight continues on in the elimination bracket. The loser's going home early. And I'm gonna tell you, it is a very long trip back to Scotland. You wanna stay alive as long as you can, Chris. We see Attitude Adjuster with a good little self right there from the, uh, the saw. Angel Vidal hanging in here in this fight, getting under Attitude Adjuster, pushing it up against the, uh, the pink square here. Oh, Another no! Big hit. Oh, and it looks like that is a belt off of oh, something. Oh, yeah, and that one wheel is uh, not out. looking too great. Whoa. The winner is Hurt Caboose. Okay. Attitude Adjuster tapping out early. Angel Vidal advancing here in the elimination bracket. Attitude Adjuster going home early to Scotland, Chris. But he can have some haggis. Yeah, absolutely. I will say that Attitude Adjuster was an absolutely gorgeous robot. When you look at it, you can see all of that custom work that went into it. I'm so happy that Attitude Adjuster was here, and I really hope to see the robot back at Norwalk again soon. Absolutely. And I mean, you're seeing like the dedication of builders, like flying uh, internationally to come and compete here in Connecticut is pretty incredible. Over 40,000 miles traveled. Yes. For competitors. Yeah, yeah, incredible, incredible. Flying with robots, too. That's tough. Not easy to get through baggage uh, yeah. check when yeah. you have... Spirit Airlines doesn't even let you like take a wallet on the airplane without <laughs> uh, you know charging you. Can you imagine trying to bring a full combat robot and all your tools? Amazing. Imagine trying to explain to the person at the gate, well, this is a vertical spinner <laughs> on, a, on an articulating yes. arm. And here's a very dangerous LiPo battery. Yeah, it's massive. <laughs> yeah, okay. I see that we're, uh, we're loading into cage one. We see Bugsby there. Here's a fun fact about Bugsby. Of Bugsby's 10 career fights, eight have ended in a knockout. Now, not all of those uh, were a knockout in favor of Zoe. I think a lot of them, Zoe was knocked out. But these are very uh, destructive matches. Right? Anytime that you get a, you know, a, a spinner uh, similar to this, uh, full body, ring, um, you know, it generally doesn't go the full, uh, the full match. Either you are uh, destroyed or you destroy someone else. Next in cage one, Bugsby versus Yabgnol. All right, we've got Yabgnol here facing off six, against the burger five, bot of Bugsby. Four, three, two, one. Fight, robots fight. Good spin up here from Bugsby. Yabnal trying uh -oh. to uh -oh. keep its distance. Ow! Oh, there no. we go. The ablated bun. off the, uh, the bun again on Bugsby. Yabnal, that was a massive hit. And it looks like the spin is slow on Bugsby. Yabnal successfully getting Bugsby up against the rail. Zoe Lambert getting herself down off of the rail. Able to, yeah, able yeah, to stabilize oh. and, and deal out a big hit. Huge shower of sparks there. Weapon on weapon hit. Wow, yet another hit. Yabnal just staying absolutely planted to the floor in this fight. Oh, there goes the self writer arm on Bugsby. Once again, this is our second fight so far today where Zoe Lambert has lost that self-riding arm. But this is still a very dangerous robot. Yabnal just hunting this burger in the air time and time again. Wow. Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, There's no! smoke pouring out of the burger! Bugsby is flame broiled right now. This is a well done burger. Look at that. Parts coming off of Bugsby on its head. As Zoe Lambert doesn't tap out, her fights go to knockouts, Chris. But look at this, that burger's dead. 
That burger's... No, it's... Is it? No, oh, it's slightly dead. It's dying, Chris. It's dying. This burger's dying. Let's go. Another big hit from Yabnal as we enter the last 60 seconds of this fight. Wow. Wow, this burger does not quit. Just the absolute reliability on the burger, but I think that the burger shell is coming off of its, uh, its drive. Tap out. Ah, that is a tap the out. The winner is Yabgnol. Yabnol, the long boy himself, stays alive here. I believe that, uh, that yes, Bugsby, this may be the last match of the day for Bugsby. All right, look at that, Bugsby. That first exchange immediately losing its bun. Finding itself a little bit on its head, but then uh, Yabnal came in, ripped off the self-writing arm off of Bugsby. But we saw incredibly destructive hits from both of these robots. Every single time, oh, we got a little bit of smoke there. I wonder if that smoke contributed to the, uh, the match ending early. Must have been either a speed controller or a motor burning out. Yeah. At the very end, it looked like perhaps the two pieces were separating from one another. One of the cool things is like the, uh, the drive on the bottom of Bugsby is independent from the shell that spins on top. Um, and uh, yeah, when those two pieces separate, it's, it's bad news. Mm. Yeah. All right, we've got a live shot here of our pits. We can see the milk tank table here. They are wearing their milk tank shirts. They've got a milk tank, uh, like a picnic. Tablecloth. Picnic tablecloth there. And uh, up until several hours ago, I was wearing the milk tank onesie. <laughs> and what happened with that, Luke? I was sweating profusely. <laughs> I was just sweating everywhere I went. Children were scared, Chris, All okay? Right. Let's check out this factoid over here in the 12 pound division. All right, uh, this is a factoid about Killajewel. Killajewel snapped a four-fight losing streak in its first fight and has had two knockouts so far today. This is their third time they've been here. They have lost, uh, you know, like they basically went 0-2 in both of their um, earlier outings here to Norwalk, but so far today, they've been doing great. Kill. Ah. Uh. Killer Jewel versus Carmen. Wow. Oh, this is going to be Killer Jewel's seven, toughest fight yet. Six, five, Carmen is incredibly four, tough. This is three, elimination bracket two, round three. One. Fight. Robots fight. Someone is going home. All right. Oh, it looks like the drive Ooh. on the. Oh! No! But look at that. Killer Jewel's weapon has stayed on. It's not running, but at least it's attached to the robot, Chris. Oh, wow. It looks like the, the weapon might even be slightly bent. I would be surprised if the weapon wasn't bent, Chris. That was wild. That was great. Oh, it looks like both weapons might be down. Okay. Two minutes and 20 seconds of the slowest pushing match you've ever seen in your entire life, if that's... Now, Killer Jewel is trying to rack up aggression points by shoving its opponent very slowly, <laughs> but it looks like Carmen's drive is just basically dying. It's so sluggish here. The weapon is down on Carmen. The weapon is down on Killer Jewel. Killer Jewel's on its head. This is a messy fight, Chris. Wow. A minute 50 left. Killer Jewel builder David Dreyer here, uh, desperate to show the judges that he's continuing to engage, showing also that Carmen has a lack of control. Carmen can't square up with his opponent. It's oh. being counted out. I can hear the count out. David Dreyer has survived. Is this yet another knockout? David, you're doing great. Amazing. One more knockout wow. for Killer Jewel, which remains alive. Carmen, an incredibly good robot from Team Defective, going home early at the hands of David Dreyer and Killajewel. Amazing.
I have a feeling that that 100 uh, ton press over in the shop is going to get a little workout right now trying to to fix that weapon on Killajoule. Knockout. All right, Chris. The I'm winner going is to, uh, Killajoule. Kyle. Oh, I know Kyle. Hello, Kyle. Cut. Professor Hex versus Meta. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robots, fight. Oh, Elimination damn. bracket round three. Professor Hex, uh, Professor Hex and Meta. I love both of these bots so much. Professor Hex, of course, Brandon Brennan Young. It is a bot that he has brought many times. This time he's worked really hard on the mobility of this bot. It is certainly showing in how it's working in this particular fight. And Meta, Meta is a very strange idea. I uh, talked to the Casmers about this earlier today. Meta was a, a joke. It's a joke on the Meta. It is a welded drum, and somehow they accidentally made a perfectly balanced welded drum, uh, and it is working phenomenally. They're, they're doing a great job today. He said he took all the shortcuts, and he wanted it to be a meta that failed miserably. Well, he's not really succeeding in failing. We see Professor Hex now uh, fully spun up. Those forks on uh, Meta doing their job. Absolutely. Yeah, Meta's just perfectly made for these plywood boxes like, uh, like we have here at Norwalk Havoc. Furniture grade plywood. Oh! Whoa, oh, no! That's not good. That's a pin. Looks like the drum is not spinning on Meta there. And then the release. The weapon dead kicks right back up on Professor Hex. Oh, wow. Somehow with one wheel, Professor Hex was able to get the drop on Meta. Yeah, Meta is not really moving over there in the corner. It looks like Bert's coming over to give the assist. The gentle nudge from Bert. Let's see if it's able to spring Meta back to life. Professor Hex only has one wheel and a weapon, but they're still able to get around the box. It just looks a little chaotic. Meta then getting another push. They're trying to get another pin up against the wall. They're allowed to hold those pins for 10 seconds. Looks like they just shoved them into the wall and now we're just letting them stay there. Oh boy. Are they stuck underneath the rail? They're gonna get one on stick the same way Meta has one. That means they're even if anybody else gets stuck in this match. It but might... there's only 14 or what, 12 seconds left in this fight. You can't see from this angle if Hex still is underneath that rail, but the countdown has started. Yeah. That's the match, saved by the bell, as it were. This one will go to the judges. It's not fun to go to the judges when your bot is stuck under the rail and not moving. Yeah, it doesn't really uh, leave you off on the best foot. No, definitely not, definitely not. Here you can see the Kazmer crew pretty happy with their performance in that match. There's Brandon Bennett Young, not building Mammoth. And let's go to the judges. All right, judges, how are you? Uh, I don't know who we started with last time. I think the last time we went to the judges, we started with Leanne. So do we want to start with Jack? Let's start Jack. with Jack Tweedy. Jack Tweedy, tell us what happened in that fight. Yeah, that's a relatively difficult one to call if uh, Professor Hex wasn't very dead by the end of it. Uh, so I give that to Meta, largely because they were the only one that were fully mobile by the end, and they were showing the majority of the aggression with Professor Hex's impaired mobility. 
All right, Jack Tweedy showing a bias towards mega corporations. Thank you very much. We're going to go over to Dominic Yankaskis next. Dom, what did you think about that fight? I thought uh, in the beginning, Professor Hex kind of had it, and then uh, the wheel fell off, and it just started <laughs> going downhill from there. So, yeah, no matter for me. The wheels literally fell off of that fight. All right, Leanne, what did you think? Same here. Uh, has to go to Meta. Same reason as what they said. All right. So once again, the little guy gets crushed by the mega corporation. Your winner for that match, Meta, and of course Mark Zuckerberg, right? Mm. <laughs> all right. All right. So we're gonna go over to Cage Two next. Looks like we are already standing by. Oh, we have got a good one in store for you. This is going to be Apex. Apex's record in 2021 was three to seven, but their record in 2022, a complete reversal, seven to four. This bot has been improving and improving as they've been in this competition. Super excited to see how they do today. Apex versus Left Unsupervised. Absolutely, and left unsupervised. Maddie and her team Eight, have done phenomenal seven, today. Six, five. Imagine how four, they would do with supervision. Three, two, one. <laughs> fight, robots, fight. Nice, nice, Kyle. <laughs> Ooh, nice weapon to weapon exchange there. Oh, that's a belt. I'm not sure where that belt came from, but that belt is supposed to be on a robot. And there is no weapon spinning up on Left Unsupervised. Apex taking full advantage of the downed weapon on Left Unsupervised. And yes, there is some dangly belt bits hanging off of the weapon. That's not good. You really need those belts to make the weapon go spin-spin. Man, Apex has been absolutely vicious today. Just super aggressive driving, really bulletproof weapon this entire tournament. One of the many bots that you were just surprised to see in the elimination bracket. Wow, nice, nice hit. hit. Apex trying to get at Ooh. one of the wheels. Oh boy. This is an experimental wheel design, a prototype that Left Unsupervised has been trying in this tournament. It's a great success today. I mean, a well-built bot, other than the, uh, the belt out. held in there. Yeah, The absolutely. winner is Apex. Excellent work for Apex in that match. Obviously very proud of their performance. Apex proving to be one of the Apex Predators of the Cybears team, doing excellent work, nice work. All right, make it safe, take him out of the box. All right, nice work with Robert, with Robert Walsh. Driving was just aggressive and on point as it has been all day. Took out the weapon very early on, continued to take advantage of that. Barely giving any room to breathe to left unsupervised. Mm. You know, this is a competitor that really came up in the Norwalk scene learned everything he has learned by going through these competitions and iterating on this design, and it is showing. He's doing a phenomenal job today. I can't wait to see how deep in the competition he goes. Yeah, we're in round four right now, so there's still a long way to go, there's but... There's still a long way to go. All right, so it looks like we're prepping in cage three right now. Let's go ahead and head over there and see who is loading in. Oh, there we go. That's Mike Molinax right there. Mirrored Finish. Mirrored Finish is making its debut today. Uh, KO'd rank number two eruption in its first fight. Totally and completely shocking everyone. What a way to start the day. Yeah, absolutely, yes. 
when you take out the reigning and defending champ in fight one, you know you're going to have an interesting day to say nothing else. And uh, they're going to be going up against Voxel. Voxel V1. Voxel V1 versus Mirror Finish. Eight, seven, six, five. Winners four, bracket round four three, Voxel V1 two, and Mirror Finish. One. Fight, robots, fight. Wow. So mirror finish is uh, the body of a kit. Ooh. Comes from Husky Robotics in Utah. It's available for purchase on Etsy if you enjoy its performance today and want to experiment with one of your own. You can go pick one up there. Voxel, however, is not a kit. You cannot purchase it on Etsy. Etsy, it is very specific to these two competitors. A couple of great weapon-to-weapon -weapon exchanges so far in this fight. Two minutes left. Absolutely. Looks like Voxel V1's weapon is still fully spinning. I don't see any weapon movement coming from Mirror Finish. There we go. There it is. Absolutely. Oh. That's what we like to see. Man, Mirror Finish is just a bulletproof design. It's taken so many hits today, it still looks brand new. Yeah, I guess you could say uh, Mirror Finish is just a really uh, well-polished bot. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, just uh, buff it out, send it right back into the box. We're heading into the last minute of this fight. There is a little bit of a wobble in Mirror Finish's movement. I don't know what's going on with that. Maybe a little unbalance in the weapon. It's been about 20 or 30 seconds since I've seen the weapon spin up on Voxel V1, though. Yeah, absolutely. It's got full drive, uh, and it's very mobile, but there has been no weapon spin up at all to speak of. It seems very likely these two very durable bots are going to go the full three minutes. The judges are going to have a lot to say about whose weapon was and wasn't working at the end of this. Yeah. Oof! Nice hit there for mirror finish. Oh, there's a pin from Voxel V1. That's exactly what Voxel needs to do without a weapon. They need to get some pins. They need to show some control. That's exactly how they want to end this fight. Pinning mirror finish up against the wall. That is the, definitely the last impression you want to leave for the judges. Mike Mullinax obviously happy with that performance, but we'll have to see what the judges say. I'm sure they have a lot to deliberate about. Yeah, for sure. We got one working weapon, we got one down weapon, but we also had some nice pins and some great control. Yeah, it's not an easy one. Michael Shore definitely made this a difficult choice for the judges. Yeah, let's see if we can queue up some of this footage for the, uh, the replay so we can take a closer look ourselves. Here we go. Some of those early weapon-to-weapon -weapon exchanges there. Definitely going the way of Voxel with those two engagements. Just such a powerful, big, wide drum on Voxel. But once it was down, they were left to their forks as pretty much their only offense. All right. So this one goes to the judges. Let's check in with our judge friends and see what they have to say. Well, hey, how are you guys doing? Leanne, I'd like to start with you this time. How did you think that fight went? What are your thoughts going on this one? 
it's hard. Yeah. Um, it's really close. I have to take into account that Mirror Finish actually had uh, their weapon still running at the end. But uh, I, it's it's really really close. Um, I think that there was still control and aggression shown from Voxel, so I think that's who I'm gonna have to go with by one point. Fair enough. All right, the end goes with Voxel. Fair enough. All right, let's go with you, Jack. Jack, who do you think won that fight? I also gave it to Voxel by one point because of the control and aggression that they showed even with their weapon being down. Wow. All right. What a close match, but we already know that Voxel is our winner. Let's go ahead and make it academic. Dom, what did you think? I thought Voxel as well, but I think if uh, Mirror Finish was able to capitalize when its weapon was down, it would have went his way all day. Wow. All right. So wow. close. Amazing work for Mike Mullinax and Mirror Finish. Voxel will be moving on. That was such a close match. I would not want to be a judge on that one at all. And we'll see what Mirror Finish is able to do in the elimination bracket. Um, you never know. You never know. You never know. Absolutely. All right. So we're heading over to cage four next. Sunflower of Peace versus Other Disco. All right. Sunflower Eight, of Peace versus seven, Other Disco. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robots, fight. Sunflower of Peace is this shell spinner. It is a welded, glorious piece of machinery. And it's trying desperately to get up to speed, but it seems to be having a lot of trouble doing so. Oh, but a pin! Yeah, they got a pin! They got a pin on Other Disco! Other Disco reversing out of the pin. Other Disco's weapon not spinning up! I haven't seen it spin up once in this fight. I'm not sure what's happening. No, no. It does seem like Sunflower Peace is trying to get a little bit of speed on that weapon. I'm not sure what's going on there, if they're just not getting enough engagement with the weapon or what's happening. But Other Disco doesn't seem to have a weapon at all, so they are effectively a control bot. Oh, oh that's no. The oh! Yeah. Flying off. Uh, she, she loves me. She loves me not. She <laughs> loves me. She loves me not. Oh my goodness, chipping away at the top plate of the uh, Sunflower of Peace. Soon to be the Sunflower in Pieces. Nice. <laughs> I learned from the best. I, I sit with you pretty regularly at this desk, you know? <laughs> Disco turns its weapon off again. Perhaps they're just saving it up for more of this tournament later on. They've got to make their way through this part of the bracket. Oh, well. You, you hear the builder uh, shouting, I'm still going, I'm still going. He wants some more, and I love that. That's the kind of attitude we want to have. The winner of this fight will have to go on to face the winner of Plyo Hazard and Captain Caveman. The loser goes home for the day. Just gets to hang out. Other, other Disco is just not happy with Fluffy. No, not happy with Fluffy Ow! at all. Oh! Vicious. Oh, there's another one of the pedals that's been bent completely out of shape by Other Disco. Looks like... Uh, Sunflower oh. Peace is still trying to spin up. Wow, five seconds left in this match. Sunflower of Peace held together. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. Captain America energy, I could do this all day. He More like Sunflower of that War. Thing. Yeah, he chose violence today, that is for sure. Hey, there's the Dorflers in a truck. 
All right, so let's go back and check out that replay. That's a nice pin by Sunflower Piece right there at the beginning, but then from that point on, it was pushed by Other Disco. Taking us to the Disco Tech, ripping off that pedal. Chunking the other pedal straight up. Oof. Pieces of metal flying off of the sunflower piece. It Those were seeds, vicious. Kyle. Those were seeds. Yeah, you're right. Those were absolutely roasted sunflower seeds at that point. That was awful. So, yeah, sunflower piece had a rough match there. We're going to go straight to the judges with this one. We'll start with you, Dom. How'd that fight go for you? You know, I'm going to keep this short and sweet. Uh, the sunflower of peace was not the winner mm. yeah fair enough fair enough i hear that all right leanne what did you think about that fight that was brutal <laughs> um i really like sunflower piece but i do have to give it to other disco yeah i mean it's uh, you know 50 points for creativity they just uh weren't able to bring the war in this one for sure all right uh, jack bring us home what'd you think about that fight yeah it wasn't really much of a fight <laughs> it's, you know, it's, it's, My there's goodness. not really any way you can give it to the sunflower as much as they would win in any other judging criteria based on style points alone. Yeah, absolutely. They would definitely win all the style points, but we do not have that as a category here at Norwalk Yet. Havoc. Yet. Yet. Absolutely. All right. Thank you so much, judges. So the winner of that match is Other Disco. That's yet another win for the Dwarflers. Yeah, they that, rack them up. They rack them up. That's what they do. They kind of choose one competition a year, and they come here, and they just clean house. They try to get as many dumpsters as they can, qualify for December, and come back and get more. Oh, my goodness. All right, so Tothic is named after a Star Wars RPG character that builder Christian Cooper plays. Interesting. Did not know that about Tothic. Um... Next in Cage 2, Tothic versus Red Hawk X. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robots, fight. This is a very challenging fight for both of these competitors. Tothic is big old wedgie boy versus a horizontal. That is a difficult thing to do. I think we might have had a false start it there. It might be a false start. So they're restarting the match. Stopping this and restarting it. All right, they're re-readying. Eight, seven, Tothic coming out of six, the blue corner, Red Hawk five, X coming out of four, the magenta corner. Three, two, one. Fight, robots, fight. Ooh. Oh, boy. Oh, oh no. no. Oh, oh, my goodness. So Kyle. much drama. It's so much drama. Kyle. That's DJ popping out of there. Red Hawk X not happy about this. Oh, Yet wow. Hit. How many can they get with this 10-second pin? That was two massive hits from Tothic. Oh, you can see the gouge right there on the top of Red Hawk X. Going in for another one. Here it comes. Here it comes. Look out. Oh, vicious. Absolutely vicious. Christian is a big proponent of the hammer saw design. Oh, wow. Oh, I heard wow. Him earlier in the pits talking to the team from Attitude Adjuster, explaining the differences between hammer saw strategy here in the United States versus over in Great Britain. And we see all that strategy on display right here in this fight. Christian Cooper, one of the members of Team Ribot. Oh. 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 We see him here almost every single competition, grinding away, getting big wins, big hits, putting on a phenomenal show. Tothic doing a great job of using that extended front wedge. Yeah, his bot's working exactly as designed right now. Pin and smash. I mean, absolutely perfect. 
You gotta love the drama from one of these kinds of bots yeah. too. If it's driven perfectly and you get those beautiful pins, you just you gotta wait the three seconds before the big hit. It's so it's crazy. it's you know what it is, Kyle. It's all about Antissa. <laughs> Look at the frame rails on Red Hawk X. Absolutely distorted, bent in. Not a happy place where you want you want the thing holding your weapon together to be. 45 seconds left. Oh no! It looks like we're having a little bit of a drive issue on the right side of Tothic at least. What's going on? Are they able to throw the weapon arm? Oh, we hear a count out. Oh my oh goodness. Oh my goodness, after this dominant performance. Oh, the look on everybody's face right now is so disappointed. Nobody Knock wants out. to win like this. The winner is Red Hawk. Oh, unbelievable. Unbelievable. Christian puts in a absolutely textbook performance on how to win with a hammer saw only to lose because of a drive malfunction. Ah, oh, that is the way the combat robotic cookie crumbles sometimes, unfortunately. Your winner by knockout, Red Hawk X. Oh my goodness, my heart hurts. <laughs> it might have been the two lobster rolls I had out in the food trucks, but awful. They were buttery and delicious. Um, <laughs> Yeah, absolutely dominant performance throughout. 90% of this fight from Tothic and Christian Cooper, just vicious hits. Quick self right there. Wow. Wow. Well, that was unfortunate. So, um, yeah, Christian Cooper not able to pull out the win in that match. Red Hawk X will move on. Whew. All they right. They only could have eked it out 20 more seconds. Yeah, it wouldn't have taken that much longer. But unfortunately, when your drive ends with that early, well, it is what it is. All right, Backlash Wave is based on builder William Marche Marchese's one pound bot, Windscar. Did not know that. Interesting. He is very worried about this fight. There is no safe place to hit Strider. He was talking to me about it in the pits a little bit earlier. He said, oh my goodness, I have to fight this thing. There's no safe spot. These weapons are vicious. Next in cage three, Strider versus Backlash Wave. Eight, He has seven, a strategy though. Let's six, see if he's able to pull it five, out. Four, Elimination bracket three, round four, here we go. Two. One. All fight. the marbles. Robots fight. Whoever wins goes home. Or whoever wins stays here. The winner loser has to go home. And look at this. Wow. Weapon is fully spun up on Backlash Wave. Weapons both fully spun up on Strider. Strider kind of stuck up against the wall trying to wiggle their way out. Oh! Nice! Beautiful oh, man. move there from, from William, just sneaking in at the right opportunity to hit the center mass on Strider. Oh, this bot looks a little twisted now, Kyle. Yeah, yeah, it's a little bit out of shape, absolutely. Both of those horizontal spinners, though, are working exactly like they should be. Yeah, so William's trying to find an angle where he can go back in and hit that center mass once again. Oh, not that way, not that way. Be careful, William. Now, this is actually slightly more dangerous for William because those blades are at a lower angle. William was really counting on that high Ow! angle of the blades. Giving him oh, those no. advantages in the weapon-to-weapon -weapon hits. He no longer has that. So now it is all about precision driving, making sure you don't hit. Oh, wow. That was vicious. Now keep in mind, Strider has no motors for its drive. It has no wheels. It has no drive motors. It has no drive controllers. It is all weapon. All weapon, all the time. That is how it gets around. Wow, look at that frame rail that's completely chunked up. I can't, on believe this, I can't believe this thing's still working. Yeah, that weapon's still spinning at full clip and it makes no sense at all. Oh. 
So this thing works as a brushed drive system or a bristle drive system. The vibration of those weapons actually vibrate the bristles underneath of it. Um, and as those bristles vibrate back and forth, they actually allow the bot to move forward and backward. You can speed up the left or the right side of the drive in order to change the direction that the bot is going. It is able to drive forwards. It is able to drive left. It is able to drive right. It is not really able to drive backwards. 30 seconds left in the match. That's not specific to Strider. That is just specific to this type of drive of bot. Another a similar example to this style of bot is also a West Coast bot called Droopy, which has won a golden dumpster. <gasps> oh, wow. In the last seconds of the match, Backlash Wave just lost one of its wheels. Two, one, this will go to the judges, and I do not envy them this decision. Both of these bots coming out of this fight looking like they lost. That is a ton of damage that we just saw in that box. Holy cow. Woof, those two competitors look concerned. They look like a little bit worried. They're not sure who won that. Only three people can decide, and I am so glad I don't have their job. Someone is going home, though, Kyle. Someone is going home. Let's see if we can queue up some footage here for the, uh, the replay. So you can see this is the hit right here. That was that great uh, opening hit from Backlash Wave. Yeah, perfect driving by William. He hit exactly where he needed to hit. But then, absolutely taking the fight back, Strider comes in, does massive damage to the side plate on Backlash Wave. And massive damage to the, uh, to the cage. Yes, well, that is uh, inevitable with a bot like this. Those weapons were absolutely bulletproof on Strider in that match. There goes the wheel at the end there. I mean, <laughs> if you didn't see the other I, bot, you I would see. think that the bot you're looking at lost. They both are just completely wrecked. Whew. All right, so we're going to start with you, Leanne. What did you think about that fight? Who won? Sure. That's who. No. Um, I, don't know. I'm really... <laughs> I normally make Jack start with the really rough one, so I'm being nice to him today. I apologize that it's fallen on you. Yeah, I think just from like damage and amount of robot that remains at the end <laughs> and how functional it was, I think I have to give it to Strider, but like barely because there wasn't much control or aggression. Yeah, no, absolutely. That is a tough call. I do not envy you on that. So one vote for Strider. Jack, let's go ahead and talk to you, buddy. What did you think? Yeah, I also gave it to Strider. All right. The damage. If they hadn't taken that wheel at the end, I think it would have gone the other way. But yeah, being able to take that wheel off just gave it to him in the end. Fair enough. All right, we already know the winner. But Dominic, go ahead and bring us home. I agree. It was a tight match, but I had to go with Strider in the end. I am almost surprised that was a unanimous decision. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. All right. So your winner is Strider. The kid from California gets to stay for just a little bit longer. We will see how that goes. He has a lot of repair work to do on that bot. Holy cow. And William is heading home. He just came by to say goodbye. Thank you so much, William. We really appreciate you. Whew. What a day for him. Three robots. This was his last one. I hope he comes back to Norwalk. Yeah. Oh, wait, that's right. He's always here. He's literally <laughs> always here. <laughs> All right, so we're going to head over to cage four. I believe we're loading another fight into the box. Oh, it looks like they're already loaded in. Yeah, they look locked in. Drivers look like they're ready to go. What is that? Is that war hard? Oh, this is blackjack. Sorry, wrong late class. Many of Blackjack's parts were machined in-house at NHRL. Very excited to see this fight. Next in Cage 4, War Hard XL versus Blackjack. Eight, All right. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robots, fight. 
This is a fight you could very easily see a repeat of in the three pound division. Blackjack, Warhard, XL. Oh! Oh! Wow! Massive hit there from Blackjack, ripping Warhard straight up into the air. This machine the Drew Davis has designed is absolutely vicious. I believe this is his first foray into this weight class. He has brought everything he learned in the three pound division and then some. Beautiful hit from Blackjack again. And I gotta say it, I do not see that weapon spinning on war hard. I wonder oh, if it's boy. down or if he's being strategic with it. There you go, the high centering mini bot once again doing its job. Two minutes left in uh, the elimination bracket round three of this match. Someone's going home. Someone's Beautiful going home. Kyle. Strategy pulled off there. Tap out. Minibot uh, holds wow. Warhard XL up in the air. Blackjack comes in for what turned out to be the kill shot. That is a team a team shredded strategy executed and done. Perfect moves there. I'm, I'm it might have been that superhero landing. Uh, came down a little bit too hard, knocked that weapon off. Absolutely. And let's just go ahead and throw out some praise to Alex Peza today. His minibot driving for uh, Drew Davis has been on point all day long. And in this particular case, he definitely Boom. was the difference maker. Wow. What a perfect landing. It's so perfect. <laughs> Such a well balanced bot in Warheart XL. Look at that. Boom. Beautiful. Horrible on the knees, though. Yeah. No bueno. And there it was. That was the kill shot. Kill shot engaged. Beautiful moves there. Really impressive work. Alex Pesa pulling it through for the team. Next in cage one, Psycho versus Huge. All right, Jameson sporting uh, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robots fight. Jameson Go and Psycho taking on huge. Psycho, probably the smallest robot in this division today. Huge, obviously, uh, well, they're among the biggest. <laughs> When Huge's first started showing up in these types of competitions, people did not know what to do about them. They did not have strategies effectively to beat them. Jameson Go is one of those drivers that has developed those strategies to beat a Huge, so there he is going to have to implement every single bit of that knowledge in this fight. Huge is working beautifully today. And then Huge just doing its thing, drifting, trying to bring that really powerful vertical down on top of its opponent. It's a thin blade on Huge. There's actually a lot of room for Psycho to drive underneath Huge and not get hit. Jameson goes first foray into the 12 pound division here at Norwalk with Psycho. Both of these drivers uh, putting on a little bit of a driving clinic for us. Absolutely, yes. Driving their style of bot in the best possible way. Dorfler really showing his skills at operating a huge. They are not easy robots to drive uh, by any means. I hear the style of bot is even harder when you use giant brushes for wheels. That sounds stupid. Who would do that? <laughs> <laughs> There's been a whole lot of dog fighting in this, but absolutely very little contact. Just a few sparks here and there. Both bots still fully functional. Oh my goodness. Oh, there nice. was a big hit. Yes. I'm not sure who hit who. Yeah, hard to judge that one.
Jameson Goes sporting a specialized t-shirt from Diana Tarlson. It says, we are the Hammersaw Club. There are three of us. <laughs> Has a picture of Scorpio Sawblaze and Blacksmith. With just 10 seconds left in this match, both of these uh, drivers need to show the judges just one last thing. And there we go. Turn off your weapons. You're done, fellas. What? Hey. The, hey. The hey. Fight's hey. Over. Stop. Stop. Hey. With the fighting. With the fighting. Hey, guys. This Hello? is this is now bloodthirst. This is it. You're done. Stop with the violence. All right, so there were several mutual late hits at the end of that fight. I don't know what was going on, but that was crazy. Barely any contact, more contact at the end of that fight after the bell than during the real fight in a lot of ways. This one will go to the judges. We are making them work Ooh, for that we, money who today. Who are we gonna throw this one at, Kyle? You wanna do Dom this time? Yeah, I feel like if we if we ask uh, Leanne, she's gonna kill us. She's going to straight up murder us. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> All right, so Dom, we're gonna go to you because I have been very mean to Leanne, and I apologize, Leanne. Uh, so Dom, who won that fight? This was seriously a tough one. Yeah. I mean, there's no damage to speak of. On one hand, Psycho spent a lot of time driving away. And I understand he might have been spinning up his weapon. But at the same time, Huge didn't have full control and wasn't able to actively pursue him. So it just kind of came to yeah. who actually initi she, I'm sorry, initiated the weapon exchange, which was Psycho yep. by one point. Oof. All right. So there you go. That's one for Psycho. Jack, we'll go to you, buddy. What do you think? I also gave it to Psycho, largely because they were the one dictating the pace of the fight, because you couldn't actually follow them, yep. and they were making the majority of the engagements. Yep, absolutely, and that has nothing to do with the strategy of Huge, just kind of inherent in the design. So Leanne, we'll go to you for the uh, the final call on this. What do you think? Yeah, I'm, I'm with Jack and Dom. All right. Take it, uh, Psycho takes it. Fair enough. So your winner is Psycho. Wow. Okay. So Psycho will be moving on in the uh, the uh, the bracket, and that is we still get to see Huge in the elimination round, though, right? Yeah, I think so. I don't yeah. I don't believe that that was an elimination bracket fight. No, not at all. No. Oh my goodness. All right. So we are heading down into cage two. Yes, absolutely. So Psycho moves on. They will be entering the quarterfinals round. Huge will face the winner between Killajewel and Blackjack. Cage two is getting locked in here over in the Steel Arena. It's less expensive, but more commonly used than the Titanium Arena. All right, Shredder Bro, top three finishes before March 2021. Five Shredder Bro, top three finishes since March 2021. Zero. Ooh. That's not a fun statistic Ooh. for Shredder Bro. These are two Team Shredder competitors right here. Shredder Bro, of course, the uh, patriarch of Team Shredder. Next in Cage 2, Jackrabbit Flex versus Shred It Bro. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robots fight. Oof, here we go, winner's bracket round four. Wow, absolutely violent hit from Jackrabbit Flex there. Oh, big hit there, coming out of Shred It Bro. Jackrabbit Flex, obviously a similar design to Jackrabbit Move, another robot designed and driven by Drew Davis. 
Shred it, bro, getting completely jammed up by the oh, oh! Oh! Shred it using Jackrabbit Flex's own mini bot against him. Wow, Jackrabbit really, really uh, dominating this fight and these weapon to weapon exchanges. It looks like Shredded Bro's weapon might be down. Oh no, we get a little bit of spin. And now he's uh, back self righted. Weapon working beautifully. There is no mini bot to help out Jack or to help out Shredded Bro. They are all on their own here. Wow, that weapon on Jackrabbit Flex is absolutely vicious. It has not stopped spinning this entire match. Oh! And these hits are brutal. Absolutely brutal. But we know Shredded Pro is built really well. It's a little brick. It's just hoping that even with a dead weapon, going weapon to weapon with Jackrabbit Flex might return the favor. There's a belt lying on the floor there. Hard to tell whose that is. It could be an extra belt from Jackrabbit Flex. Could be the belt from Shredder Bro. Hard to tell. Yep. Oh. There's a nice oh, close-up oh, no. shot of the top plate of Shredder Bro. <laughs> In case you were wondering what it looked like with the magnifying glass, there it is. Shredder Bro stuck in the corner oh, there. There they nice. go. They just got knocked off of the wall by little, Jackrabbit Flex. A little good sportsmanship there. I love it. Some wow. Of the sparks raining down from these weapon hits. Jackrabbit Flex absolutely vicious in this match. Minibot putting in the work. It's holding out for a miracle here. 15 seconds left in the match. Nice control points for Shredded there, shoving Jackrabbit up against the wall, but Jackrabbit able to escape. They were not actually pinned. Uh, beautiful weapon-to-weapon -weapon hit there from Jackrabbit Flex. Drew Davis just dominating the vast majority of this fight, and I gotta tell you, that's the end of this and fight. That's the end of the match. If you had told me last year that I'd be watching a fight where Jackrabbit was dominating in a performance over Shredder Bro, I would have called you crazy. The progression of Drew Davis over the past year has been phenomenal. The work he has put in with Team Shredded is so impressive. And he, today he has put on showcase after showcase of his driving skill and building skill. It's been so impressive. Let's take a quick look at this replay. Some of the more noteworthy hits. There we see uh, Jack Rabbit Flex's uh, mini bot doing a little, doing a little high centering on Shredded. Uh, yeah, and that's that what mini Shredded bot's put in so much work today. Delivered the mini bot into uh, Jack Rabbit Flex's weapon. Yeah, Alex Pezzo once again, mini bot operator for Jack Rabbit Flex, doing so much work in this fight. A little sportsmanship right there. Gotta love to see it. All right, so this one will go to our friends, the judges. What, we're walking through the pits there, all right. Um, so let's go ahead and see our judges. And uh, we'll go ahead and start with you, Jack. Jack, what did you think about that fight? Yeah, it was very well sorted. I gave it to Jackrabbit Flex. They were on top for the entirety of the fight and were the only bot that did any damage. Amen to that. All right, we'll go to you, Leanne. Leanne, what did you think? Uh, same here. Jackrabbit. Jackrabbit all the way. Dom, bring us home, bud. I went with Jackrabbit too, but you got to give it to Shred It, bro. He never gives up. No, absolutely not. A relentless driver all the way through. All right, so your winner of that match Jack Rabbit Flex. And uh, let's go ahead and give a little props to the mini bot. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, so much work put in. We're going to be moving over into cage four. The winner of this fight qualifies for the wow. December Championships. Ladies and gentlemen, it's getting serious over here. 
All right, so there is a huge chunk missing from that disc. Look at that. That doesn't look healthy. You got to wonder if that spins up evenly. Oh my goodness, and yet this machine looks so pristine and nice. Next in cage four, Disco versus... Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robots That's fight. Cronus versus Disco. Cronus beautifully designed vertical disc spinner with the hub motor. Oh, wow. These are two top-notch competitors, beautiful drivers, oh. really powerful machines. Wow, that's a side armor piece that came just off of Cronus there. Oh, Cronus is uh, digging another canal through the uh, K4 floor. Yeah, not good. Cronus is such a beautiful design. It really does look like something you could buy right off of the combat robotic shelves. Other Disco is, uh, or Disco is such a hard hitting robot. Whoa. As you, you can see right oh. there. Oh, wow, that's another piece of armor coming oh. flying off. Cronus stuck on the top rail. Smoke oh. is coming out of them. Their weapons are smoking. That is a full on tap out. The winner is wow. Disco. Woo, the Dorflers are on a mission. Oh, boy. Holy cow. I'm going right. to go ahead and call that one a lipo. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll be able to tell by the smell in a minute, but that's certainly what it looks like. Wow. All right, so that means Disco will go on to face Psycho in the next round. They will be the, for the winner of the undefeated bracket, which means Kronos has to go face the long boy himself, Yob Noll. Down in the elimination bracket. Wow, look at that. That's just not healthy. <laughs> uh, it is one of the coolest things I've ever seen, though. Yeah, it's really cool. It looks like a special effect. Right. We have an extremely effective air moving system within these boxes. It's able to suck all of that out. It's able to keep our crowd safe. Our safety team then goes in wearing these full on space suits to put the fires out. But you know, lipo uh, fires are a little tricky to put out. It's kind of like those trick birthday candles. Yeah, they take a minute. They take quite a minute. Yeah, you can put them out, they'll come right back on. That's why usually you have to dump these things into a trash can full of sand, drag them outside, and just let them burn out. Which I'm sure we're trying to make this safe enough to move in that direction. Look at how that smoke is just pooling out it's the bottom like that. It's mesmerizing. It's absolutely beautiful. Yeah, it looks like a screensaver. This could be a screensaver on my computer. Somebody send me this file after this, uh, this entire competition. I would love to have this as a background. <laughs> So you can see, yeah, they just blasted that. So we're going full on replay, disco, massive hits. You see them, Cronus uh, just uh, digging a trench across that floor. Yeah, that weapon is no joke on Cronus. I mean, look at the damage that it does to the side rail. That's hard oak. Digging its way through the, the side rail there. Then this hit, absolutely ripping the front. You can see it's bent out of wow. shape and then knocking them up into the air, landing them up on the side rail. That's where the real damage happened. Boom. Armored pieces it. flying off, hits them up against the side rail and then something happens right there. 
They're able to get yeah. themselves off, but then they are completely engulfed in their own smoke from that point on. And they are still, at this point, engulfed in their own smoke, but being drug outside for the safety of our spectators and other competitors. Where their bot will be allowed to burn out until the fire stops. Whoo! Vicious. Beautiful bot. Still has a chance in this competition, but wow. They are going to have quite a bit of work to do if they ever want to use that chassis again. And it's never going to smell the same. Now, nah, you really <laughs> can't get that out. No, that's there. Febreze just doesn't work. Febreze doesn't work. You can't put it in the, it, like in the dryer with some dryer sheets. Right. It won't help. <laughs> uh, I think you got to give it a bath in, uh, in tomato sauce. Or is that skunks? That's just skunks. Okay. I don't know if anybody's tried it for lipo, though. We should give it a shot. Okay. Throw in some, uh, you know, some linguine. I'm, I'm there. Could be, could be. We haven't smelled the traditional lipo smell yet. Or That's true. Have. Might have been um, some speed controllers. Here we go. Different type of fire extinguisher. He's got the welding gloves on. He's got Throw it in, in the trash can with the sand. And now run, He's run, got run, the run. lid on, and now they get it outside Supermarket as quickly sweep. as they can. Supermarket sweep. Follow them on outside. This is how you get it out here. You take it straight out the loading dock, straight outside, and let this thing burn all the way out. We have this down to a science at this point. It happens at least once a competition. And then they just roll it down this ramp straight into a residential neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. People like that one. All right. But yeah, so they're just going to hang out here at the end of the driveway, far away from any humans, and they're just going to let this guy burn out. Yeah. Nothing else you can do. Just let the fire burn. You got to let the light bulbs take their time. Yeah, they got their own things to do, you know? All right, so Killer Angel is designed specifically to fight drum spinners. That's unfortunate for the drum spinner that they're about to fight. Next in Cage 2, Eruption versus Killer Angel. Eight, seven, six, five, Four, three, two, one. Fight, robots, fight. Elimination oh. bracket, round four. Eruption coming out of the blue corner. Oh! Angel, the killer angel, the blue bot coming out of the red corner. Eruption built and driven by Brian Boxel. It is your reigning and defending champion from the last Norwalk Havoc down in the elimination bracket and got put there very early on in the day. But that's okay. Brian doesn't need the easy path. Oh, good job, Brett. Yeah, Brett. Doing some nice work, nice self-writing work there. Ah, Killer Angel has definitely got an issue on that left side of its drive, but Tap that's out. it. That's the end. The winner is... Eruption. Specifically designed to kill drums, but not that drum. Eruption is just too powerful. It hits just too hard. And you can see the material on the side of Killer Angel was starting to peel away from those hits. It's like my favorite Mike Tyson quote. Everyone's got a plan until you take a egg beater drum to the face. <laughs> I think you said that. That sounds like exactly the quote. Yeah, yeah. Eruption. Absolutely powerful weapon. It was beautiful to watch. So we're going to head over to cage three. We've got Jack Move. He'll be facing off against Crush. Jack Move versus Crush. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robots, fight. Oh! What a beautiful hit by Crush on the minibot. He's taking that minibot seriously, and you absolutely should. Oh, no. Crush stuck oh, up boy. against the wall, and Jack Move taking full advantage. Winner's bracket, round four. Does Drew Davis even go up to the pits? I feel like he's constantly out of box. Yeah, really, he just brought down three robots like a half an hour ago, and he's just been hanging out down here, it feels like. <laughs> 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 Jack, 
Jack Moot winning a few of these weapon-to-weapon -weapon exchanges, flipping Crush over on its back, and then trying to capitalize. Crush really at a disadvantage. The driving power of this minibot is very, very good. Able to get underneath Crush as long as he's not hitting directly on that weapon. Crush driven by Chris Monroe. He's a letter carrier here in Norwalk. Been to this competition before, wanted to try to compete. Comes out with this dominant egg beater spinner. Been doing a phenomenal job in the competition today. Great pin, racking up some of those damage points against Crush. But yeah, it is a tough match here up against Jack Moon. Drew Davis having an absolutely phenomenal performance across his weight classes that he's competing in here today. Nice pin. Minibot doing the work, trying to give Jack Move a chance to self right. Oh, nice. And it works. Beautiful teamwork by this team. Alex Peza and Drew Davis, absolutely phenomenal tag team in this match today. They have been just so cohesive as a unit. It's one of those... Oh. Uh, And that's the match. That is the match. That one will go to the judges. This is going to be a fun one to call. I kind of like the team of Alex and uh, and Drew, just because you have the teacher and the chef. You know, you get the like the the reality TV show pairing of the odd couple. I kind of love it. They they work so well <laughs> together. <laughs> All right, so we're going to go to the judges with that one, but I believe before we do, we might be looking at some replay footage. There were some beautiful hits in that match. Let's go back and look at some of those highlights. Here we see some of the most intense action of the fight where they were uh, readying the bots before load. <laughs> and there we go. So Crush. you can see Crush taking that minibot seriously, knocking it out of the way, and he should have. That minibot does so much work. Have we seen that minibot die today? Not once. That's incredible. And it's got so much pushing power. Those forks have been able to high center bots all day long. That strategy has just worked out for them over and over and over again. High center the bots, hold them in somewhere around four or five seconds into that pin. Drew Davis then comes in for the kill. He's ended several matches that way. All right, let's go to the judges. How you doing, judges? Let's go ahead and start with you, Dom. What did you think about that fight? Honestly, Jack Moo took one out of the Team Shredded Handbook and never gave up. It was his all the way. Agree a thousand percent. Jack, let's go ahead and go to you, bud. Yeah, it's definitely Jack Moo all the way. Fair enough, fair enough. Leanne, what are your thoughts? Same thing, great teamwork. Yeah, great teamwork wins the day. Absolutely, teamwork making the dream work. All right, so it looks like we'll be heading over into cage two, getting ready for our next three pound fight. Uh, I don't know what can stop Drew Davis today. Drew and Alex are on a tear. I'm absolutely loving watching this. But speaking of a bot on a tear, we're looking at possibly the most powerful melty brain spinner in the three pound division. Next in Cage 2, Hound versus Project Liftoff. Absolutely. One of the things Project Liftoff Eight, wanted to improve was seven, their control. Six, By five, everything we have seen four, today, they have three, mastered that. Two, one. Fight, robots, fight. 
Ooh. I mean, look at how fast oh. they're able to get up to speed. Hound living up to its name, though, staying on top, pinning them into the corner. Uh, yeah, Hound, uh, even when Project Liftoff was just fully spun up there, not afraid to just go right in and introduce the weapon. Yeah. There we go, we got a nice pin. Allowed to hold those pins for 10 seconds. When you've got a weapon as powerful as Project Liftoffs, you should take as much time as possible on those pins. I like the unicorn horn on the minibot there, by the way. Unicorns, of course, the, uh, the most deadly animals ever in existence. So that was the one unstick Project Liftoff gets in this match. They do not get any more. That is an unfortunate position for them to be in. They are a bot that doesn't have a self-riding mechanism. Their wheels are not very big. It is not hard for them to get stuck up on the so corners of the sides. Definitely oh. something to be cautious about. Another pin there from Hound. One of the things that Project Liftoff was working on also for this particular tournament is they have thinner, sharper wheels that they've been trying out. They say it gives them a lot more engagement with the floor. It gives them a much faster spin-up time. That seems pretty apparent right now. I mean, they are up to full speed quicker than you can count it. Project Liftoff is probably going to want to give itself some distance from the side rail. Hard to do in this particular case. Hound is really using an interesting strategy on them. Get that weapon to stop spinning and pin them. Hold the pin. Take away Project Liftoff's main weapon, which is just these chaotic, massive hits. Project Liftoff getting where they want to be into the middle of the arena, and Hound says, no, go back up against the wall. Oh! Project Liftoff doing its signature pinball. Hound is doing such a phenomenal job controlling the pace of this fight so far. Yeah. Oh! Wow, we have 10 seconds left. This will not be a knockout no matter what happens. But can Project Liftoff impress the judges enough in these last three seconds? And there we go. That is the end. That is the end. Power down those weapons. Make your way to the door. This one goes to the judges. Wow. Woo. That was a stressful fight all the way around. We're going to watch a little bit of a replay here. This is just a clinic from Hound, this entire fight. Strategy was perfectly implemented the entire time. Wow. I'm really interested to pick some of the judges' brains right now. Neither uh, team's bot's really showing a whole lot of damage on them, so it's really going to come down to, you know, who had control, who showed the aggression. I'm really interested to hear what they have to say. Wow. All right. They're readying their, they're, they're uh, now uh, making safe their bots and clearing out cage two. Let's see if our judges are ready here in a second. All right. Well, uh, who should I pick on? Does, does anybody not want to start? All right. Leanne, we'll go with you. Um, let's hear your thoughts on how this fight breaks down. I think uh, it was fun, again, watching Project Liftoff. But yeah, there was a lack of aggression and control. 
So, uh, and, and as far as damage goes, there's a couple good hits from Project Liftoff also to itself against the walls. Um, it was a really fun match to watch. Uh, I'm gonna give it to Hound. Awesome. Jack, what are your thoughts? I'm also going to give it to Hound. They were a lot more controlling and they were making a good majority of the engagements. All right. Uh, Dominic, are you, uh, are you in consensus with your two other judges? Yeah, I think this is a good example of choosing your battles wisely. You know, he pick and chose when he should engage and got him the win. Awesome. So it sounds like we have unanimous uh, judges' decision for Hound. Well deserved, indeed. All right, so our next match is going to involve Calvin Eba and Mixtape. We have a little bit of a package that we've put together of what Calvin has done so far today. Uh, so let's go ahead and review that now. So as you can see, Calvin putting together Mixtape. Look at how much fire that's, is that's going Calvin into that. That's Calvin in real time. Yeah, that's how fast he moves putting Mixtape together. It's Absolutely so impressive. Beautiful. Look at this fight here. Just so much flame coming out. Oh, my goodness. I mean, there is so much talk about how flamethrowers are not real weapons in this sport, and then you see that. Just utter destruction from Calvin Eba. If anybody can make a design like that work, it is him, and you see more and more bots coming out trying to replicate that every single tournament. So impressive. Let's go watch Calvin and Mixtape now. I believe they are loaded in over on Cage 3. So we're going to go to cage three where we'll see mixtape and Calvin Eva. Next in cage three, jet lag versus mixtape. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robots fight. Whoa, so much speed out of the box from Mixtape and Calvin Eva. Standing in Calvin Eva's way is uh, Lars Elliott and Jetlag, a really great bot. Yeah, very powerful jump spinner. Oh! Implementing a strategy of aluminum foil oh! around the bot to help protect it from all of this fire. Ah! Ah! Obviously, that strategy only works for so long. Oh, my goodness. Jet lag, uh, a little cooked, but still ready for more. Yeah, big credit to jet lag, able to handle all that fire in its face. Those uh, forks in the front of Mixtape doing an excellent job. Absolutely. Something so impressive about mixtape is the durability of those wagon wheel uh, designs. Now, does mixtape have any more gas? There is no way they have expended all of their gas, but they might have a problem with their igniter. I mean, they, that's a lot of fire. Oh, have we have a wheel off the side of jet lag. I love Mixtape's method of self-writing, which is basically just to flail about until it lands the correct way. Oh, boy. Beautiful work there from Mixtape, knocking, uh, knocking Jetlag right up into the corner. Jetlag's done a phenomenal job today. Very powerful bot, extremely well-driven.
Nice pin there from Mixtape right in the corner, right up against Bert the Brick. 45 seconds left in the match. Yet another pin. It does seem like the fire is no longer coming out of Mixtape at this point. And that aluminum foil did seem to do enough to protect jet lag from that flame. It's still fully functional, minus the missing wheel. Yeah, that, that got a little soft. It's kind of yeah. like a toasted marshmallow. Yeah, that, that got a little gooey. It fell off the, the marshmallow stick. Yeah. That's always you a tragedy. You never let them catch on fire. Yeah, no, it's true. It's always a tragedy when you're trying to make a s'more. Marshmallow falls off the stick. And that's your match. That is Power the down. End. Send your bots back to the door if you can. One of the more entertaining spectacles of the day. Absolutely, yeah, Lars Elliott put in some really good work there. But at the end of the day, Lars was missing a wheel. Mixtape was missing its fire. This one goes to the judges. Wow. Wow. The psychological factor, too, of just seeing your bot completely engulfed <laughs> right? in fire has to play a factor as well in the way you drive. Some panic has to set in there. But we'll see if it affects the judge's decision. Beautiful hit there. And there you can see the beginnings of the wobbly wheel system on jet lag. Those wagon wheels on mixtape, surprisingly durable for how thin of a metal that is. So let's go ahead and talk to our friends, the judges. We'll go ahead and start with you, Leanne, on this one. Leanne, what did you think about that fight? What did you think about uh, who won? Um, I think that if Mixtape had been able to keep up flame the whole time, it wouldn't be so difficult for me to choose between the two. Yeah. Um, I think that jet lag continuing to just drive straight at the fire and then kind of help with uh, getting some aggression and control points means that I have to give it to them just barely. Yeah, fair enough. I, uh, I think Lars did a phenomenal job in that match. I completely and totally hear you. All right, so let's go over to you, Jack. Jack, what did you think about that fight? Yeah, I'm in the same boat, jet lag, just keeping the aggression up the entire time and keep going straight into the fire and actually engaging was really what swayed it for me. Fair enough. All right. That is phenomenal. Let's go ahead and bring it home, Dom. I'm on the other side of the fence. I think that mixtape kind of maintain control just a, just enough to pull off the win for me. Yeah. So split decision. Split decision going towards jet lag. Congratulations to Lars Elliott and jet lag. They will be moving on in this division. Mixtape put in some phenomenal work in that fight, though. It's and not the end of the runway for them. They, they have the elimination bracket. Absolutely. It will be a fiery elimination bracket going forward. Let's go over to your wife. Lindsay, how you doing? Oh, hello. I'm doing okay. How are you? Doing great. Good to talk to you. What's going on over there? Well, believe it or not, we have some super chats. What? Yeah, and we got some good ones. We actually have three coming up for you. Uh, so the first one is from Belargus. Yes, you heard that right, Belargus. Watching this sometimes makes me want to get back into building, but then I remember how my first try went. I look at my finances and I cry a little. Hey, oh. you know, <laughs> you can come back. Keep investing in super chats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, take that super chat money, go buy a cutting board, attach some motors to it in a wheel. You're good to go. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, so uh, we have a second one here from Jevin Woodrow from the World of Woodrow podcast on YouTube. Hey, y'all, hope you're having the best day. Wish, uh, wish to give a big up to Scott with Attitude Adjuster. Say hello to the Behind the Bots team. Hey, that's us. Yeah. And uh, wish everyone a good event. 
Man, Scott has a beautiful robot in Attitude Adjuster. Absolutely amazing. Watching him and Christian talk earlier today about all things Sawbot awesomeness was so much fun in the pits. So yes, absolutely big ups to Scott. All right, and so we have one more from uh, NHRL builder Pearl Gray. Here for my fellow Bloodsport team member, Texan and queer roboteer, homies to go all the way. And hopefully we see Pearl back at NHRL too. Absolutely, we'd yeah. love to see Pearl back at NHRL. Data Collector was a cool bot. Yeah, very cool, very, very cool. All right, well thank you so much, Lindsay. We appreciate you bringing us all the news from the internets. Anytime, and uh, if you want to submit a super chat, you can do it through the YouTube live chat, and uh, we'll read it out loud for all the world to see. And like and subscribe. Yeah, do that, that too. <laughs> <laughs> like and subscribe to all of our social media channels, not just the YouTube. You can check us out on the TikToks, on the uh, Instagrams. We're all over the place. Yeah, all over the internets. All over the internets. All we right, have so a, we're going we over to MySpace page. Do we really? I don't know. We're heading over to Cage Four. We're gonna have Phenomenon. They're gonna be going up against Yahoo. Next in Cage 4, Phenomenon versus Yahoo. I love the way the voice of God says Yahoo. Eight, you can't see it. Seven, six, Phenomenon. five, four, three, Phenomenon. two, one. <laughs> fight, robot fight. All right, fight. serious business, Ooh. robot fighting action. These are two deadly robots. Absolutely. Weapon to weapon. Alrighty, we have a, a fork off of the front of Phenomenon. That's exactly what Yahoo needs to do. Rip those forks away. Get rid of that ground game advantage. It is hard oh. to say who's going to win most of these weapon to weapon con uh, contacts between these bots. They are both hard hitters. I love that Yahoo takes full advantage. Yeah, the, Yahoo doesn't really care, like, what, oh, wow! Yeah. Oh, you're stuck up against the side rail? Don't yeah. care, gonna hit you. Oh, you're stuck, stuck up against the house spot? Don't care, gonna hit you. Oh, my goodness. Oh, wow. Oh, wow, so that is a tap out, presumably, from Phenomenon, which means your winner is Yahoo. That is a bot that has been around for a minute and has hit hard the entire time. Really great work from that guy. That just beautiful, beautiful hits. Oh. All right, so we don't have to put the judges to work finally. Yeah. They get, get a break. Get a little break. Phenomenon's going to go down to the elimination bracket. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, they will probably do very, very well down there, but that's getting to be a scary bracket as well. We might even see a rematch of that match right there. That's a very good chance. That is a very, very good chance. Brandon Bennett Young doing a phenomenal job all day Phenom today. Phenomena. Absolutely. Not just with Phenomena, but with several bots that he's been running. All right, here we see them prepping cage two. We have Warhard loading into the blue corner and Voltage loading into the magenta corner. Oh man, so that fight, Yahoo is now the winner of the winner's bracket. They are just waiting to see who makes it through the elimination bracket. So no matter what, Yahoo will be in your championship in the 30 pound division. They have a chance of facing off against Phenomenon, possibly Other Disco, possibly Plyo Hazard, or maybe, just maybe, Captain Caveman. <laughs> I love that bot. I love everything about that bot. It's a great name. It really is. All right, we're doing some, looks like we're doing some last minute adjust, adjustment here to voltage. Yeah, it looks like the, is that, ar no, yeah, that's the wheel guard. Is he screwing it on? Is it too tight? Is it pinching the wheel? What's going on there? Come calling here, in, calling in, in some help. reinforcements. Need some help. Give that man a power tool. He's trying to do this all by hand. And of course, uh, that's, uh, that is a great person to bring in. Yeah, Johnny Sumpas coming in for the save. No tools, just Johnny. Johnny's all the tool you need.
Johnny Soompas, of course, enjoying his 16th birthday in his favorite way by destroying robots and having other robots destroy his robots. And wearing the coolest Hawaiian shirt here, quite frankly. It really is incredible. He looks great in it. It's got his bot all over it. Literally the best present ever. You got you to look for it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like mixed into the pattern. It looks really, really cool. But yeah, hopefully we're able to get this bot up and running for this particular fight. Don't know what's going on. Perhaps the wheel guard is pinching the wheel. Hard to say. Um, but if your wheel's not working, you certainly can't fight. And it is nice that the other competitor is giving him the opportunity to do that. We so. do offer a little bit of flexibility to some builders once they've come down, gone through the green room, they've loaded into the box. But eventually, you know, we will hit a, uh, a point where they have yeah. to either start the fight. Yeah, eventually they'll time out. All right, so remember to check us out on all of our social media cha channels. Like, share, and subscribe on YouTube. Just smash that subscribe button. Uh, add us on Instagram. You can do that at Norwalk Havoc on Instagram.com. You can also follow us on the TikToks at Norwalk Havoc. It's mostly videos of Luke dancing in a cow onesie. But Is that true? I'm too old for the TikToks. I haven't been on it. I know that uh, you're married to somebody who likes the TikToks, but I, I just I don't spend much time there. Yeah, no, it's 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 great. I am, um, you know, uh, Lindsay, my my wonderful and beautiful wife, mm -hmm. uh, loves watching crystal videos on uh, on TikTok for about three hours every night. Like the crystals growing? No, like people um, selling them, uh, and you know, uh, it's it's the weirdest uh, subculture I've ever seen in Is my entire life. Is it like crystal auctions? Like you're auctioning off crystals? Basically. Wow. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Weird. Check out this graphic. It's really cool, I heard. All right, so December 30-pound qualifiers, we got Yahoo, Biohazard, Other Disco, Sunflower of Peace, and Captain Caveman have all qualified from this competition for the December Get out. Qualifiers. Sunflower of Peace is going to December. This is why 30 pounds is crazy. You don't have to do much to qualify All in right, a lot of the Kyle. competitions. <laughs> Get more 30-pounders in here. This is what I'm saying. I'm that is right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I didn't even think about it that way. I'm yeah. so sorry, but yes, yeah. absolutely. All right, Work so continues here in cage two of the steel arena. You know, we're, we're used to people being like, oh, I need to turn my bot off and turn it back on, or oh, I forgot to make a connection. This looks like a practical rebuild on the right side of their bot. What's going on over here? I don't know, but I love watching it. You can, you can see a little bit of the desperation. When you have uh, <laughs> multiple hands screwing in multiple screws, do you think we could make him more nervous if we just started an arbitrary countdown right now? The, the Jeopardy song? Yeah, there you go. That's what I want to see. All right, that bot is now Oh, flat. wow. All right. That's a flat bot. That's what you want to see. I think that they're ready to just jump in and get this thing going. I'm going to turn the bot on. Probably want to get the clamp and screwdriver out of there, unless those are part of the mini bot system. <laughs> that is actually the weapon. The minibot scoops those up, drives them around, clamps into and screw drives into the other bots. So just a few final adjustments now, making sure everything is working, checking the controller. We'll see if we can get a quick uh, twitch test. I don't know, man. Whatever was wrong seemed like it was a lot of work. Let's peek in over at the titanium stage real quick, although it looks like we might be ready to go here. Oh, all right. So here we are in cage five. This is happening over on the other stream right now. Oof. That there would be, is that shredded, bro? And oh. there's wormhole. Yeah. Two very top-notch comp uh, competitors working their way up through the elimination bracket right now. Classic Shredded Pro right now, just ripping their way into Wormhole, taking them up into the air with every single one of these hits.
And this just in, Voltage has forfeited in cage two. They were not able to get their bot working again. They're not allowed to use the arena as a pit, so they have to take it back upstairs. Unfortunately, they have forfeited in cage two. But this is the winner's bracket, so they do have another shot to come up through that same uh, cage that we just saw there over in the Titanium uh, Arena uh, to... Oh, wow. All right, so, let's take a close look. Hold on one second. Do we have the... Uh, I think we got a headset for you. Yeah, here, you can walk us through what happened. Yeah, I'm ahead, very curious this about this. Go ahead and pop that on. Tell us what's going on. Hello. Okay, so... We just fought Caldero and we won, which they busted off our wheel and our chassis. Not Oof. chassis, our pulley. Yeah. So we replaced that, replaced the wheel. It was just working in the pits. So I just took it off. And for some reason, these wheels weren't turning. I, put, I, the, I thought it was the wheel guards. Took those off. I had to screw these back in in a rush. So the weapon works very tight. So I think something's wrong with the wheels, and I hope I can fight again. Wow, good luck, good Thank luck. You. Yeah, that's quite a thing to find out while you're in the box. Um, yeah, do you have another chance today? Good luck. Good luck. Whew. These things happen. Yeah, they certainly do. That's going to be a stressful one for him. <laughs> Sometimes the there's no such thing as a clean victory. And let me tell you, you go, you go up there and you start taking your bot you know, apart. You've just won your match, but then you find out you've actually just lost that match. Yeah, yeah, you lost the next match, that's for sure. All right, so it looks like we are now waiting to see what's going to be loading into cage two. Um, we do have a lot of 12 pound and 30 pound action left. We're almost to the end of those tournaments. And then three pounders, we got a bit of a road to go on that one. So we're going to take a little bit of a break. We're going to uh, just hang out for a couple of minutes, and then we'll have some more fights when we come back. Stay tuned. talk about internal geometry considerations. So let's start by talking about what an internal geometry is. So on a part, anything that's inside of the outer shape, it's like holes or slots in our design, and then also anything that's webbed in, like these, are gonna be internal geometries that we're gonna be talking about today. As a general rule, we like to stay 50% of the material thickness for internal geometries. So let's look at a quick example. We have a material thickness of 100,000. Our internal geometry, say a hole, can be no smaller than 50,000th of an inch in diameter. So different materials, thicknesses, and manufacturing methods change the size of internal geometry that you can use when designing. So let's look at two examples and compare them. So the two materials that we're gonna compare is a 5052 aluminum at an eighth inch thick cut on the fiber laser. And the second is an ABS at a quarter inch thick cut on the CNC router. So if we go to the material guidelines on the website and look at 5052 aluminum, we're gonna see a minimum hole size of 0.044 inches in diameter. While if we look at the ABS on the website, we're gonna see a minimum hole size of an eighth of an inch in diameter. That's a large difference that should be considered. When considering the bridge thickness, if we look at the 5052 aluminum on the website, we're gonna see a minimum bridge thickness of 0.048 inches. But when looking at the ABS at a quarter of an inch thick, we have a minimum bridge thickness of also a quarter of an inch. Additional things to consider when doing internal geometry on your parts is that excessive internal geometry or removing a lot of material can cause the parts to warp and be fragile in post-production making the parts unusable. Also, excessive internal geometry can cause us not to be able to do a post-process on your part. So even though it qualifies for our initial checks, we won't be able to deburr your parts in the end. All of these max and min values can be found in the design considerations on the material side of our website. Thanks for watching, stay tuned for more. is 96.1 the ads Karen loves commercials when I'm surfing the internet at home I listen to you guys online Karen Karen when I'm at work I listen to you guys online Karen Karen 
In the car, I even have you playing on my phone. Karen. Pretty much have you playing all day long. We do it for you, Karen. Other radio stations make you wait for the commercials. Not us. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you ready for this? Get ready for another music-free commercial block. One hour of nonstop ads starts now. Go to commercial. This is WADS 96.1, The Ads. All right, welcome back. Here we see the quickly emptying pits. There you can see the Honeycracked team. What's up, guys? How you doing up there? But the rest of the, the pits is looking pretty spare. Everybody's been either eliminated or sent home. Just a few competitors left making it to these championship rounds. It has been a long day here today. We've seen some amazing fights on both of the streams. And now we are getting ready for more 30-pound action. We are getting ready for elimination quarterfinals, Plyohazard versus Captain Caveman. Say that again? Captain Caveman. Oh, OK. I thought you said Captain Caveman. Yeah, don't you remember those cartoons? Voice Captain Caveman yes. versus Plyohazard. Eight. Seven. Elimination six, bracket round five, two. Four. Quarterfinals. Three. Yeah. Two. Quarterfinals. Yeah. Someone's one, going home, fight, Kyle. Someone's going home. Fight. Someone's gonna go on to face other disco. Neither of those is really a win in my book. Plyohazard is uh stuck. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> The weapon that was on Plyohazard has now been replaced by something else. Plyohazard is mostly taped. They've got a saw, an actual saw, not like a hammer saw, like a wood saw. I don't fully understand what's going on. Where is Captain Caveman? Yeah, the mini bots are doing some work, but I don't see Captain Caveman here at all. This really does look like Comedy Central right here. I don't know what's <laughs> going does. on. This is a 90s throwback. <laughs> 90s throwback night. Here we are. We'll be listening to the cranberries as this fight goes on. I spot a couple of zombies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, no! no! Oh! oh, the weapon viciously removed from Plyohazard by Captain Caveman. <laughs> Captain Caveman viciously wobbles its way towards Plyohazard. Oh boy. This is, I don't understand. You guys have lots of time. Lots of time. And you know what they did? They took us back in time. Yeah, I feel like I'm, I see two prehistoric beasts just kind of very slowly um, trying to uh, assert dominance over one another, but it's... Okay, Plyo has taken a new, uh, a new tactic here. Yeah, absolutely, spinning in a circle and... Hey! Hey! Fluffy's joining the fun. Fluffy actually shook their own camera loose doing that move. That was yeah. really aggressive. Pretty sad. It just literally sneezed out that camera. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're down to the last 30 seconds of this fight. Battle? This is the first 37-minute uh, fight of the entire competition. Yeah, absolutely. We forgot about the time limit, guys. Sorry we've been here forever. <laughs> <laughs> Wooden armor, by the way, really effective. Especially when held on with uh, pink duct tape. Not sure what the judges are gonna really be able to deliberate about. Yeah. 
Yeah, there wasn't much to talk about. I'm really not sure. Huh. <laughs> yeah. Huh. 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 Phenomenal. Do, 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 do. Uh, yeah, so the winner of this match has to go on to face other disco. So we're going to... Yeah, we're going to go doing a thumbs up, thumbs down on this one. So who here thinks Captain Caveman won that fight? Can we get a thumbs up? Interesting. Okay, so who here thinks Plyo Hazard won that fight? Can we get a thumbs up? Okay, we got a thumbs up from Leanne. One thumb. Nobody won that fight. Nobody. Ah! <laughs> Leanne's like... That is actually I the really right answer. I really like the saw actually working briefly and trimming off those red flags. There you so go. That. There you go. It All was right. something. Yeah. Well, uh, focus on the positive. Sure. Okay. So the winner of that match, by single judge's vote. <laughs> that might be the first time that's happened in combat robotics history. Plyo hazard. <laughs> <laughs> We had two votes for nobody, but since we have to have a winner, your winner is Plyo Hazard. I love it. All right, I'm into it. Let's go. I'm wearing a Hawaiian shirt with cows on it. A robot just won by one vote and zero against it. So there you go. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Kyle. Yeah? What were some of your favorite matches of the day? Man, there have been some really, really good matches today. Um, I would have to say I've liked pretty much anything Mixtape has done so far. It's been fire. Uh, they've had some phenomenal showings. What did you think about um, the, the Lynxes? The, the Lynxes? Yeah. What are you talking about? The double Lynxes. Oh, I see. Yeah, very cool. Um, we're going we're gonna to also take a look at some of the highlights from today, I'm, I'm being told. Oh, okay, fair I'm enough. I'm being told, sorry. Yeah. Let's go ahead and take a look at, uh, at some of these recaps. Let's do it. Five, four, and also one of the most talented. Three, yeah, really two, nice guy, really one, powerful robot. Fight. We love watching Robots his work. fight. Oh, look at this. The spin up for Project Liftoff is good. That was so fast. You can see it, it is spun up completely. Ow! Oh, sending Ablation into the corner. Ablation is not looking happy after those hits. That is some massive damage from Project Liftoff. Everything looks off kilter inside of Ablation. The unstick is coming so early in this match for Ablation, that is not a good sign. It looks like maybe one of the bunny ears on Ablation is gone. You yeah. can kind of see it like canted to the side. It's stuck there on the floor. Good hit there from Project Liftoff. And look at that. I think, yes, the left side bunny ear is Yeah, you're is totally gone. right. It is gone. So if they get flipped over again, that is not going to be good for them. They are out of unsticks. Now, one thing that I did talk to the Kazmers about with Project Liftoff, they have been talking to the Greatest Challenge team about the way that they have uh, program their bot for translation and they have and put a lot of those same techniques into their programming for Project wow. Liftoff. So we not only have the massive amounts of damage that Project Liftoff is well known for, we have a lot more control for that robot in this tournament and you can really see it in this fight. These are huge hits from Ablation. That weapon is very, very dangerous. And here we go, Ablation back on its head. Definitely more mobile on its head here in this uh, this part of the fight. Huge hits here. Incredible. Project Liftoff getting up to full speed. Oh, I love Project Liftoff when it's at full power. I want to see another huge hit here. Oh! Yes! <laughs> Project Liftoff stuck up on the side rail yet again. You can see those brand new spiky wheels vibrating themselves off of the side rail. Very well done. Getting back up to speed again. Ablation not able to take advantage. They were too busy trying to figure out what 
what's going on with their right side drivetrain. 35 seconds left in this very destructive fight. The ping-ponging that we're used to seeing with Project Liftoff just hasn't been here. They have so much more control. And look at this. I think the power on ablation is off and stuck up against the rail. I think Project Liftoff may be doing this. 15 seconds left in this match. This one is likely to go oh! to the judges. But look at that. Project Liftoff still fully functional after that massive exchange. Ablation a little bit worse for the wear, but still working. And one Woo! more big hit before we send it to the judges. You gotta love that. Oh, this, these two competitors put on an amazing show. Look at the smiles on everybody's faces at the cage. And that was an instant classic. Absolutely. Project Liftoff showing their new control and maintaining the power that got them all the way through the September tournament last year. They still have a chance today. They'll be facing off against Eruption in the elimination bracket later on. Absolutely phenomenal. Two former champions. It's going to be a banger of a match. They're going to go on to face Spartan, the birthday boy himself, after that, whoever wins that fight. So that is going to be absolutely amazing. We still have so many good three-pound fights for you, and I think Project Liftoff still has a phenomenal chance, as long as they can get past Eruption. All right, let's go talk to our friend Lindsay. She has some super chats for us, I heard. Lindsay, how's it going over there? Good. However, Chris, I don't appreciate you putting me on blast for my TikTok viewing habits. What's wrong with crystals? Nothing, but I think he was implying that there is something wrong with crystals. Crystals are great. You know what is also great? Super chats. <laughs> let's, uh, <laughs> let's look at some super chats. <laughs> All right, the first one is from our friend, Anthony D'Ambrosio. You'll see him competing here with Blackbird. Uh, huge props to all the competitors and amazing bots competing today. Absolutely brutal path for anyone to punch their ticket to the finals this event. And of course, go Team Shred It. Anthony is also responsible for like 70% of the t-shirts that you see around here today. So thank you so much, Anthony. All right, so this one was sent to us by the bot Bloodsport itself. I don't know how it types with those blades that it has, but it wants to say, thank you NHRL for storing the husk of my former body <laughs> in your robot museum. <laughs> currently rebooting into a new physical manifestation for my Las Vegas championship journey next month. Wow, Bloodsport just gets creepier and creepier every year. Okay, but cool. But it's so eloquent. I mean, it How really... How does it have that vocabulary? Yeah. Husk. It is a, it is a vicious and, and destructive, very well-read machine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'll give it that. <laughs> oh, okay, well, I am very excited to see Bloodsport in BattleBots next year. Lindsay, how's the things in the chat in general? Is everybody feeling okay over there? Uh, yes, people are feeling great. There is a big topic of discussion around mixtape and jet lag. Yeah? Uh, there was a bit of a controversy. I think it was like 89% of the chat uh, thought that that match went to mixtape. Um, so there's a, you know, definitely a topic of conversation. For me personally, if I were to judge that match, I would have also said jet lag. Um, but I understand the case. So yeah, same. It's, it's one of those, those matches where you can really split hairs and it will go either way. Um, but uh, yeah, there's always going to be something to say about it. Yeah. Well, we're going to go to cage three and I'm going to contemplate how Dominic Yankaskis is with popular opinion. That's crazy. Um. <laughs> Eruption versus Project Liftoff. Here Eight, we go. This is seven, the fight we've been talking six, about. Eruption, five, Project four, Liftoff, two former three, champions. Two, one. Two fight. hard robots hitting robots. Fight. Elimination bracket round five. The winner of this match moves on to face Spartan. The loser goes home. Oh, wow. That had to hurt. Oh, my goodness. Nobody's coming out of that impactful. Eruption's coming back to settle an old score. Project Liftoff uh, defeated Eruption earlier this year. It was actually July 2021. They Mid last not, year. They have not faced each other since last year. These are two very different bots since then. 
is Project Liftoff just not able to get those teeth onto the plywood? Yeah, they that having is one some of the, issues. One of the biggest issues with Project Liftoff oh. is once they get a side put up, oh my goodness, all right, Brett. Brett getting a little bit aggressive with their self fighting help there. And there goes Project Liftoff back up to full speed, takes them no time at all. And they have had their one unstick. They do not get any more. They are stuck in exactly the spot that they do not want to be. Their minibot is dead. They are out of unsticks. And I got to tell you, Eruption has no reason, no reason to help them out in this situation. It's true. They don't have any reason to. Well, that bot hits hard. I mean, come on. Do you want to go through the rest of the elimination bracket after getting smacked in the face by Project Liftoff? Oh, I hear, some, I hear some calls from one team to go ahead, hit us. Hit Come me, on. hit me, hit me. Brian is saying, no, thank you. I do not want any more of what you dish out. That bot hurts. Tap out. The winner is Eruption. Eruption. I got to say, while he was under a lot of peer pressure, I do not think Brian made the wrong call in I that particular caved. situation. I definitely no would have caved. No way. That was the smart play on Brian's part. Do not get hit in the face by Project Liftoff <laughs> any more than you have to. That bot is vicious. Let's take a look at this replay. Oh, some huge exchanges early in that match. And then at one point, Burt really wanted to get in on the action, too. Yeah, that was obviously an accident, but it was quite an interesting one. All right, so as you can see, Project Liftoff goes home for the day. And uh, Eruption moves on. They will be facing Spartan. Will Brian give uh, the birthday boy any, any measure of uh, mercy in the next match? We'll find out. Probably not, though. We're prepping in cage four. Oh, there we go. So it looks like we've got some 12 pound action heading your way. I see Kill a Jewel there on the right and Blackjack there on the left. The winner of this match will go on to face huge in the next elimination quarterfinal round. Both these bots had a really good day today. I will say Killajoules had an interesting time with mobility and uh, going up against a bot like Blackjack, there is no room for error, especially when it comes to your driving. So that's gonna be very interesting to watch. I wonder if they had a separate weapon up there because it looked like after that last match, they, uh, they did taco that thing just a little bit. They did, yes. They do have a couple weapons on the table that I saw when I was doing my little pit tour earlier today. Um, very well prepared team. They, they had a lot of spare parts, a lot of spare pieces, uh, but man, they definitely took some hard hits in that last match. Well, half of it was what they were dishing out. Yeah, for sure. All right, the winner of this fight qualifies for the December championship. Oh, my goodness. Uh, yeah, that's quite a significant factoid. Yeah. That adds quite a bit of drama to this match. Will the indomitable tag team that is Alex Peza and Drew Davis be able to maintain this streak that they've been on? I mean, they have really been on a tear today. Now, if you want to check out the 30-pound finals, we will be starting those probably around 8 o'clock tonight. Yep. Someone's going to be getting crowned. I'm very excited about that. In the meantime, here in 12-pound action, we still have several more rounds to go. The winner of this match will go on to face Huge. We'll also see Kronos versus Yab Nall in the next round. Really excited about that. And up in the undefeated bracket, we still have Disco and Psycho, who have yet to face each other today, both undefeated going into that round. Both have been just hitting so hard today. I see E.T. on that tattoo sleeve. Oh, yeah, his tattoos are actually really phenomenal. Like, really cool artwork. Phenomenal. It's just not going to get out of your head for, like, weeks. Phenomenal. 
We're gonna be sitting down doing the podcast like two weeks from now. And you're I do it all the time. Like it that drives up. you guys nuts. <laughs> All smiles over there in the uh, Team Shreddit camp with Blackjack. Cool name for a bot. Blackjack versus Killajewel. Awesome. Kill Jewel's got a long seven, road to hoe on this one. Six, they are going up five, against an extreme four, low mobile bot three, and a mini bot two, that is specifically one, designed for robots. December qualifier on the line, Kyle. Yeah, this is going to be a crazy oh! one. Nice hit there for Blackjack. The weapon not moving on Kill Jewel after that exchange. Mini bot doing its job, high center and Kill Jewel. Blackjack trying to find another angle to come in and do the most damage possible. But I think that first hit is telling the story. We have not seen the weapon come back up on Kill Jewel since that encounter. At this point, it seems like Drew is just trying to take it a little easy, not do too much damage to his bot, save the bot for the save next it. round. Qualifying Dude. is nice. A dumpster is even nicer. Absolutely. And that is something Drew has been chasing since he got here. This is his first foray into the 12-pound division. He's been doing a wonderful job, but he definitely has a long road in this elimination bracket to get to the end. And this is the strategy you've seen all day, the mini-bot high centering. Kyle, I'm going to leave you in very good hands, and I'm going to switch it over to Lindsay Bear. I like her. That's great. Yeah. Her and I get along famously. That's really good. You enjoy your break, my friend. All right, so you can see the pace of this match. It's casual. Blackjack coming in, doing what they need to do, taking the hits that make the most sense. Their mini bot doing all the work. Oh, hey, Kyle. Hey, Lindsay. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. How's your day been back in the, what are we calling it now? The On Club. Oh, the On Club. Uh, yes. yes. Mm, My day in the On Club has been good. I've also been doing some announcing over on the Titanium stage. Yeah, I did some of that earlier today. That's pretty cool. That was fun. Yeah. It's a little more fun up here. Yeah, I have to agree. It's nice, it's <laughs> nice up here. It's nice up here. This is uh, this is a little bit of chaos going on. Well, what we had is a early encounter where Killajewel lost their weapon. And so now Blackjack is in that place where they don't want to do too much, where they get knocked themselves out, but they still want to make sure it's a decisive win. However, I have to give props to Killajewel because losing their weapon today has just meant it powering down and not physically losing their weapon. Correct, yes. So <laughs> like has happened before. End of this match, power down those weapons, head for the door. No, all across the board, this has been a marked improvement for Killajewel over their last competition. The bot's driving better, the weapon's working better. They are just doing phenomenal as far as improving that bot. There we go, that's the end of that first hit. Look at that. Phenomenal. And there was just no more weapon power from Kill Jewel after that, so it was all about taking the shots that they needed to take for Blackjack in order to win this exchange. Yeah, I mean, Blackjack really didn't, they didn't give them a lot of leeway there, even with their weapon being down. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, you got to make sure you're not going to break yourself while you're trying to break your opponent. Yeah, been there. So this one goes to the judges, but it's pretty clear which way the judges are going to go on this one. That's, uh, I mean, pretty undisputed Blackjack victory all the way around. I would think so. I mean, that's what I saw. Those two have been doing phenomenal today. The the odd couple that is Drew Davis and Alex Peza, the chef and the teacher. I love it. I love it. They, I they love work it. so flawlessly together. Like, I, I think it's so cool. All right, so judges, I think we can do this one with a quick thumbs up and thumbs <laughs> down. 
So go ahead, thumbs up if you think Killjoy won. Anybody? No? Okay, what about Blackjack? Thumbs up for Blackjack, anybody? Three for three. All right, there we go. All of the thumbs for Blackjack. Blackjack is your winner. We are heading over to cage one. Who have you got there? I have no idea. Ooh. I'm excited. Let's wait for the voice of God to tell us. No. Next. Oh. The winner is Cronus. <laughs> <laughs> that is not true. Yum, Gano. Oh, the winner is Cronus. Cronus. All right, all right. I'm into it. All right, so Yab Ganal versus Cronus, the winner of that fight, will move on into the elimination semifinal. Two, one. Fight. Robots fight. Wow, that is a lot of speed coming out of the gate with Yab Ganal. Cronus, wow. as you will recall, was on fire at the end of their last match. It is impressive to just see them back in the box again after that much smoke was coming out of them. They got jumpstered and thrown outside to burn out. I don't think I have seen that much magic smoke in, from a robot almost ever. It just was cascading for minutes and minutes. Yeah, and I like how it hung low on the yeah. floor, too. That was really it was cool. It's a little spooky. I yeah. mean, we're coming up to Halloween time. We're coming up to Halloween time. It did look like that was a bit of an electronics fire. We did not have the typical lipo smell in the arena that we get, so... Whatever it was, that was quite the rebuild that this team had to do. Yeah, now it's like nothing had happened. Yeah, absolutely. Brand new. Beautiful bot. Looks like it came right off of the combo robotics store shelf. <laughs> it's like a pin, but without needing the corner of the cage. Yeah, like they lifted the forks up just enough to stab them into the floor. On Yab Ganol, the long boy themselves. And the back plate on Yab Ganol starting to come off. Not a good place to be, especially with how mobile Kronos has been in this match. They've been able to get behind Yab Ganol several times. There they are again. Boom. Oh, I think it has been officially removed off yeah, the back. Yeah, that is definitely removed off the back. That means they're grinding against the actual frame rail. The armor is gone at this point. Hopefully, there's nothing too crucial back there, and Yabnal is able to continue this fight. But Keep in mind, Yabnal, not a palindrome, as we have been educated uh, time and time again. Yeah, not a palindrome. Weird. Nope. Weird how that works. <laughs> All right, got some pin action continuing on. Yabnal keeps ending tap up. Out. Ah, ah, that's there we the go. tap is out. Yabnal Cronus. taps out. Kronos is your winner. Kronos is your winner. They, wow, what a comeback for them. Literally leaving the arena in a dumpster in their last fight <laughs> to now beating a massive player in this division in Yabnal. I did not see that fight going that way, I gotta be honest. Yabnol has been doing a phenomenal job all day today. Yeah. Cronus uh, pulled out the win, though. You know, you gotta hand it, hand it to Cronus, too. I mean, aside from that last fight, they've really been so dominant. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's such it's a cool design, too. It's been really fun to watch them. Yeah, yeah. It's great to see a new competitor come in and try something else and really put out just such a cohesive and beautiful look. Absolutely. Now, this is an interesting looking fight over here. Hurt Caboose. Oh, yeah. Versus Mixtape. Oh, this is a good one. Yeah, this is going to be a great fight. This is Calvin Eba and Mixtape. They're going up against Eight, Angel Vidal seven, and Hurt Caboose. Six, Hurt five, five, four, been so mobile three, today. They really, really have. Yeah, really one, impressive. Fight. Robots fight. These are two guys that probably should be building a heavyweight right now. <laughs> Yeah, they've got some uh, important dates coming up. Yeah, but they're here. They're putting on a show. They're doing a, a phenomenal job. Mixtape setting her caboose on fire. And her caboose pretending like it's not happening. But like we said earlier, there's got to be some psychological component to seeing your bot engulfed in flame. It yeah. makes your driving maybe just a little bit off. Maybe makes you make some more drastic choices than you would have before. There definitely adds a, a like an element of urgency. You yes, know? most assuredly. Ooh. You don't want to stay in that position for very long. Oh, like that's not where you want to be. Yeah, that right there, that's dangerous. 
just like right there, that's where you get to a place where belts start to get a little bit loosey-goosey. Your connectors start to get a little bit shaky. I and mean, you want those connectors connected. Exactly, <laughs> yes. You want your wheels to stay on their hubs. It's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. I have to say, though, this is my first time seeing mixtape uh, up close because normally I'm in my enclave. Ah, yes. What are your thoughts? The level of flame is otherworldly. Calvin told us when we had him on our podcast just a few months ago, mixtape is fire. <laughs> he wasn't lying. <laughs> he was not lying. I love this. Look at that. That is a beautiful, beautiful flame by mixtape. The pin with the fire. It looks like some of that fire lingering on Hurt Caboose after the fact. Yes, yeah. there are parts of Hurt Caboose that are still aflame. Still aflame. You have to wonder what is... Oh, oh. no. like a melted action figure. One of the wheels is still spinning, the other one not so much, but both of the wheels look real melty, and all of that 3D printed armor is oh. now not so 3D and not so printed anymore. Angel had been doing such a good job of avoiding this exact outcome, and you can only outrun it for so long. Uh, something to remind the fans of, the way 3D printing works is you heat up a material and melt it into a shape and then let that shape cool. Oh. What is happening right now is oh. that 3D ma printed material is remelting into a shape that was not intended. We've got a, a mobile s'more. Yeah, that is just sad. I mean, I'm sure the bot is mostly okay on the inside, maybe, but the outside is cooked. But you know what? Props to Angel is not tapping out. No, he, he is a uh, bit. holding it together, even though those <laughs> wheels are basically just jello at this point. <laughs> They're not able to engage with the floor just because they've melted off. It's oh. seven, six, five, four, three, two. One. That's the end wow. of this fight. Mixtape wagon oh. wheels their way to the door. <laughs> Wasting no time with that fire extinguisher. Oh my goodness. And there is nothing but joy on the face of Calvin. He That fight went exactly the way he wanted. Oh, that's a maniacal smile. He knew exactly what he was doing. You know, yes, Calvin's smile can vary between <laughs> maniacal and wholesome just so yeah. easily. Absolutely. So we are going to have to go to the judges. We are going to ask them for one word each to describe that fight. But before we do, let's get a little bit of a recap here. Hurt Caboose Oof. trying to find an angle to take out those wagon wheels. You could tell that was the strategy going in. A little bit of success right there. There were a number of really good exchanges that I think worked out in Angel's favor for the first maybe minute and a half of the of the match. Yeah, but I do think that fire panic set in. Yeah. And once that flame started to really penetrate right here, yeah. that is when Angel started making some choices he might not have made otherwise that got him into a position where he got pinned. And that pin right there, that is the oh. end of the road. That is when you just started to cook all of that external armor. You can see right there, the drive is not working as well as it should, yet another pin happens immediately thereafter, and that is just concentrated flame on that wheel. I mean, if Chris was here, he'd be saying hot, hot, hot. Ooh, nasty. Nasty, nasty, nasty. Uh, yeah. That and used to be a whole robot. That just moments ago. Yeah, now it's now it's not. All right, so we're going to get a one-word response about that fight from you guys. We're going to go ahead and start with you, Miss Cushing. What did you think about that fight in one word or less? Fire. <laughs> Jack Tweedy, what are your thoughts? I'm disappointed I don't have my flamethrower on me to show solidarity, but... Yeah. More than one word, oh, yeah. Jack. <laughs> Dominic, what did you think? Annihilation. Amen to that. Your winner is Mixtape. I've never seen anything like that. I mean, Mixtape is fire. I'm telling you. I can't wait for the album. It's going to be phenomenal. <laughs> when that album drops, I'm when going to the party. When that album drops, exactly. Five alarms. All right, so we, here we go, Cage 2. Malice. Versus Voxel V1. Oh, yeah. This is going to be a good time. Voxel V1 versus Malice. 
Here we go. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robots fight. And that's two very loud drum spinners kicking their way all the way up. Wasting no time at all, going face first into each other. Thankfully, Voxel says Voxel on it. So yeah, otherwise, it would which be one very is hard to tell which one of these bots is which. Absolutely. Two wide drums. Whoa! Lots of sparks. Those are the two forks that were originally on Malice. They are now gone. That's a neat little kick flip over the bot. Yeah, it was a nice little gyro flip. Gyro flip action. And uh, there's the one unstick for Voxel V1. A little bit of a violent unstick. Oh, my. Now, is it high-centered, or has it just... I think it's high-centered on... Yeah, it was a little bit high-centered on that fork, but now it looks like there's something tweaked. Mm -hmm. They're not able to get engagement with the ground with those wheels while they're upside down. Normally, Voxel Tap is out. able to drive upside down, but something is tweaked is on the frame, preventing malice. that from happening now. Winner of that fight is Malice. All right. Love to see the handshake after every match. I mean, it was a really good match. These two did a great job. I think they were both proud of their performances. Just something happened to that frame. Yeah, I have to wonder what happened there. It was hard to see if it was caused by a hit. Was it just stuck? I do find it funny when it is the broom that brings <laughs> the bot back to the door. Like, oh, we just swept your bot up off the floor. The broom has so many jobs here at Norwalk. It Havoc. really does. The safety broom is very important. We really couldn't do much without it. We should probably get a broom sponsorship at some point. Oh, mm. I like the way you think. Right, right. Get big broom dollars into, into this That's uh, what we business. need in combat robotics is those big broom dollars. <laughs> Well, what, what do we see here? That looks like a plyo hazard. You can tell by the uh, patented pink duct tape in the back. That <laughs> means that we're heading into 30-pound action right now. Oh, boy. Yeah. We're nearing the end yeah, of these Yeah, plyo hazard uh, had uh, their dominant uh, judge's decision win over Captain Caveman in the last round. They, they literally got every judge's decision, and that was only one. Yeah. Now... I, people in the chat were wondering, was this their best performance to date? Plyohazard? Yeah. Yes. This was their best performance to date, except for possibly that one time when they were actually not Plyohazard. <laughs> they were... All right, let's go. Plyohazard versus Other Disco. They we were... Got the uh, this is elimination semifinal Eight, round between these seven, two. Six. Five, four, now the winner of this three, goes on to two, Phenomenon? One. That fight. is correct. Robots the winner of this fight. fight has to go face Phenomenon. Oof. Biohazard saw is off. Biohazard saw arm is off. Biohazard is up against the wall. Now the, uh, the weapon on other disco is definitely uh, at full speed. It looks like during this match, I know they're having trouble in, in their last match, but it does it's not look like It's hard to tell if suffering. they were having trouble in their last match or if they were just saving the weapon. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. they could have been strategic. They didn't really need the weapon in that last match. <laughs> I guess that's a good point. It doesn't look like Plyohazard has a lot of options right now. It got its uh, one and only unstick. Yeah, one and um, only unstick. You've got the Colts and wheels oh. being protected by the wood armor. It's still going, trying to find its way through the night. <laughs> Tumbling its way. Yeah, oh, Plyo wow. Hazard looks like it spent a little bit too much time out at the cocktail truck between this last fight and this one. <laughs> Perhaps drank one too many Melchie Brain specialty drinks. You know, duct tape goes a long way, but it doesn't go all the way in combat robotics. No, yeah, and it's not as good as the Gorilla Tape armor. That's really where it's at when it comes to tape armor is the Gorilla Tape. Yeah. 
Now there are pieces of biohazard literally all over this corner of the arena. Other Disco is now spreading those pieces all over. Yeah, the, uh, the wood armor is almost completely off of this bot. We are now left with the uh, very fragile metal armor underneath, or metal frame underneath. And we head into the last minute of this fight. And there's Andrew Kazmer smiling maniacally as his bot limbers around the arena. <laughs> A lot of maniacal smiling at this event. I mean, this late in the day, especially when you built something as ridiculous as Biohazard and it <laughs> qualifies for the December final <laughs> again? Again! Uh, a second year in a row, Biohazard qualifies for the December final? And at this point, it looks like it may go all three minutes with this deadly other disco robot. Yeah, it's uh, it, it very well may. And the Colson wheels have held on for the entire match. Normally, those would have exploded by now. So ridiculous. We're down to the last 11 seconds of this fight. And we're going all the way. We're going to go to the judges. I feel like this is probably another Tap one out. word. One word decision. Yeah, I believe this might be a one-word decision. But you know, if I were Plyohazard, I would be really, really proud of that showing. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, top notch bot in other disco. They survived the entirety of that three-minute round. Their weapon even worked for part of the fight. <laughs> Oh, so we just found out at the very end, Biohazard tapped out so we don't have to go to a judge's decision. Wow, that is all class from the Kazmers. What else do you expect from such awesome competitors here at Norwalk? So, congratulations to Other Disco. They will be moving on. They're going to be facing off against Phenomenon in the next round. That is going to be a really fun match to watch. Phenomenon. Exactly. And now we're going to go over into cage three, and we're going to see what is happening there, voice of God. Oh, the winner fights Voxel version one. The loser of this fight is eliminated. And it looks like, looks like this might be just one heck of a fun match. It's do or die. Strider versus... Shred it, bro! Oh, Shred wow. it, bro has struggled against this style of robot in the past. Uh, that Eight, also means that seven, he has had a lot of six, experience five, fighting this kind of robot four, in the past, so we will three, see how he does. Two, one, fight. It's all a learning robot experience. Fight. Ooh. And that is the way all about the box rush. Smash and smash some more. Do not let them spin up. Do not let them work. All right, it looks like a major piece of something came off. Yeah, Perhaps. that would be the uh, horizontal weapon armor on Shredded Bro is now gone. Ah, uh, yes, you're right. They need That was working for them uh, against Strider. I wonder how these exchanges will go now that they don't have that. It's going to be a totally different game, and Shredder Bro is not going to win any of these exchanges upside down. The weapon's spinning in the wrong direction, setting the force in the wrong direction. It's not going to be good. They've got to get themselves right side up. Yep. However, Strider does look like it's struggling after those initial it exchanges. It really does. That left side especially is really having a hard time getting going. It's able to sometimes, but it's intermittent. All right, now with Shredder Bro on the uh, side that they want to be on. Yeah, and now they're winning every single one of these exchanges. Shredder Bro learning all of the lessons from its fights with Droopy. Taking them apart. Just absolutely dominating the pace of this match so far. This is just classic Evan Arias style driving. Hit you, hit you three more times while you're still up in the air, and then hit you again <laughs> after you hit the ground. You can just tell that this is the type of match that, like, Evan Arias lives for. Absolutely. Most aggressive driver in combat robotics. That is the goal. That is the moniker he wants. He is showing those stripes right now. Tap Absolutely. Out. That is a tap wow. out. The winner is Your winner. Shred it, bro. Absolutely earned every second of that win. He is setting, sending Strider back to California. 
I have Ooh. to say though, Strider to me, one of the most memorable bots of today. Yeah, done phenomenal job in this competition. We've seen some great fights from them. It is absolutely no shame losing to Shred It Bro, multiple time Norwalk dumpster winner and champion. He just, the, the, those pops in the air. I mean, what, you, what can you do against them? Yeah, no, nothing you can do. But and once that left side of their weapon went down, there's really not a lot they can do. So we're heading over into cage two now. Next in cage two, jet lag versus war hard. Jet lag slightly crispier. Eight. A little seven, more browned six, than before. Five. <laughs> Four, but three, uh, if anyone can two, handle it, I think it's one, Lars. Five, yeah, Lars did a great job five. all day today. I mean, when I look at Lars's style of drive, it is very Evan Arias-esque. Yeah, he definitely took a lot of cues from Evan Arias's driving style. Tight little compact bot. It's a oh. hard target to hit. Oh, but there's the experience kicking in. War hard, getting the better of those two exchanges. That weapon is humming away right now, full speed ahead. Yeah. Probably not the sound you want to hear if you're Lars, but definitely if you're War hard, that's what you're going for. Yeah, it looks like War hard's weapon is not spinning up at this moment. Uh, I wonder what's going on. This is all ooh, jet lag right there. Nice hit, Lars. A lot of head-to-head -head action uh, in, in this match. As it should be. <laughs> wow. Nice hit there from, uh, from uh, Lars. All right, trying to pin, trying to pin and get some uh, hits in at the same time. Yeah, I don't know if Jonathan Juarez is going to be able to get that weapon going back up again on War Hard. It's a very difficult position to be in at this point with a minute and 20 seconds left in this match. Yeah, when, when you're fighting a bot like Jetlag that is not going to give you a, an ounce of space to, to breathe, uh, you need your, to have your weapon. And if you don't have your weapon, you at least need to be on your feet. <laughs> able to use all four of those wheels. Finally, uh, back on its all four wheels in that position. It was unfortunately driving upside down uh, for a huge portion of this match. And there, there they are again. That weapon on jet lag hitting at just the right speed to flip them over almost every single one of these engagements. So many pieces just getting peeled away on Warhard there. You can see that the the grinding damage on the back. Last 30 seconds left of this fight. It looks like we're gonna go the full three minutes here. Yeah, we are definitely gonna go to the judges with this one. I don't know how hard it's gonna be for the judges though. This has been a really nice performance. Beautiful hit there from Jonathan Juarez and Warhard though. Showing they still got some in the tank. Yeah. Beautiful there job go. there by Lars. Lars. Backing away and turning off the weapon just before the clock goes out, not to get that late hit. Yep. Still showing, though, that he, uh, he has full movement and he has his full weapon. It's going to weigh on the judge's decision. Absolutely. So here's some of the highlights of this match. Beautiful hit there from War Easy or War Hard. Boom, nice hit wow. there. And then that is where it turned around at that moment right there. The weapon never really got back up to speed again yep. on Warhard. Whew. All, right, All right, we have the judges. So let's go ahead and do a, uh, a quick, like, hands up, hands down type of thing for this. If you think Warhard won that, give me a woo. Three, two, one, woo. No? No. I didn't if hear any woos. Jet lag won that. Give me a woo. A woo. woo. 
<laughs> that was the least enthusiastic woo I have ever heard. None of you will ever be Ric Flair. It's that is a big problem. It is 1 a.m. Only in, only in merry old London town, but yes, correct. All right, we'll hit 1 a.m. We're just not there yet, Jack, and I do hope we replace you before we get to 1 a.m. Um, I think relief is coming for him soon. Good. Oh, my goodness. I sure hope so. I've seen Jack melt on this pod or on this uh, <laughs> live stream in the past, and I don't want to see it again. Yeah. Um, all right. So we are going to be moving on to some more action. That was a beautiful display by Lars and Jetlag, though. What a great match. Uh, so, yeah. Does that mean Warhart goes home now? Uh, has Jetlag lost yet? I don't think so. Wow. So I think Warhart is going to the elimination bracket, but... Yeah, uh, Warhart is going to the elimination bracket. I may bracket. be wrong. Whew. All right. Well, fair enough. I mean, that is a scary place to be in that elimination bracket right now. Uh, you know, I know that there was a, some controversy maybe in the chat between... You know what? Scratch that. Let's go check out the titanium feed. Yeah, let's see what's going on over there. You know, there's been fights in there all day long. There really has. It's been a really fun time. You know what it reminds me of over there? What? 50 Day. Oh, the good old days it's at got, 50 it's Day. It's got a 50 Day vibe over there. You know what I mean? Where you can stand up, basically put your nose to the Lexan. Exactly. <laughs> right there on the Lexan. The, the one announcer running the entire thing. Yeah. It's really We've cool. We've grown a lot since then. Oh, here we are. What's going on over here? This looks like we're setting up. Now this, now this looks yeah, like Yeah, this is Eruption versus Spartan. This is wow. happening right now as we speak. These are two top-notch competitors down in the elimination bracket. The winner of this match will move on. The loser of this match does have to go home after this fight. Now, Spartan has been known to pull off major upsets in the past. It, Absolutely. It beat Lynx earlier this year. I guess it was technically Spartan X, but... Still Johnny Sumpas. Yeah, Johnny Sumpas driving the bot, the same weapon system on the bot. And, now, and look at this. This is classic eruption, just going around, getting to the side of the bot, trying to get control, avoiding those weapon-to-weapon -weapon hits. It's hard to tell if the weapon on Spartan is still running. No, it is, I, it yeah, is. It's it absolutely is. still running. Yeah, it's just a blur of speed right now. But you can see it when it stops. What's that piece that's <laughs> rolling away there? That looks like it was important because now the weapon has stopped huh. on Spartan. That's yeah. not good. I wonder what that... It looks like a little speck of black. I wonder what it could be, but clearly it was important. And yeah. now we have Eruption pinning Spartan to the side of the cage. And I'm not sure if Spartan's weapon or if Eruption's weapon was working after that engagement either. So now both of these bots are relegated to control bots. We'll see how that goes. The pin can be held for 10 seconds. It looks like Brett's kind of getting in the way of the pin being let go there. Now the, the clock does say it's at... No, oh, no, the clock hasn't been running for this match, ah, so it's being, uh, the, it's a manual clock, so we don't get to see what time that is going on. See, it's very 50-day, right? Very 50-day, I love it. The, the, the time is being kept, just not on the screen, which is fine. So there we go, Eruption doing everything it can to get control of this fight. Now, we do see the back of Spartan has those wedgelets on it, those, uh, those forks. If he's able to get the back of his bot facing the right direction, he might be able to get some pins himself. But since their weapons have gone down, this has been all eruption. Yeah, eruption so far. I mean, looks like... Looks like they might be stuck. Yep. Up against the wall. Now, eruption has really been able to dictate the pace, the speed, the control of this match. Absolutely. So that was an unstick for Spartan there. But Eruption, once again, getting back there to take them out up against the wall. Boom, yet another smash up against the wall there. Boom, another, another smash there. In another world, I think Brian Boxel would be an amazing control bot driver. Yeah, I would love to see that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he's been really focused on this drum design for so long now, and he has really mastered it. It is so rare to see that drum go down in a fight. This is like super rare, but when it does go down, he is still able to use his bot as a control bot super effectively. Yeah. All right, so that's the end of that. It's pretty clear who won that, but we'll still get the judges' decision yep. for you later because that's pretty crucial to the elimination bracket. We're going to go over to cage three next. Who's Excited over to there? See how that goes. 
Oh, looks like we might have a little jack situation. Next in there. Cage 3, Hound versus Jack Move. Exactly. All right, there Eight, they are. Seven. Now, Six, what a day for Hound. Five, I know. Hound four, has been absolutely three, crushing it. Best performance two, we've seen from them. One. Fight. Robots fight. Two extremely effective mini bots, too. Both of them putting a lot of work in for their main bot competitors throughout this entire tournament today. Just a pile of bots. Absolutely. So Four there you see pile. the pin. And then the effective strategy that they have been employing all day. Alex Peza puts them up and sets them up, and then Drew Davis comes in for the kill. It has been happening all day long in two different weight classes amongst three different bot sets, and it's just flawless every single time. Nobody has had a good answer to it. They've really perfected the strategy, and I think a lot of times people ask, why why build a mini bot? You're going to have the disadvantage, or uh, a multi bot. You're going to have the disadvantage when it comes to, you know, the weight of the two bots going at each other. But this is how you do it. This, this is, is exactly how you take how you advantage it, yeah. of the opportunity that comes with having a multi bot. Yeah, and it, it is a thing where damage to the mini bot does affect the damage score for the entire match. That is the risk that you take. And right now, it does look like Alex Pez's mini bot is not functioning. Ah, there you go. So that is going to count against them. But Hound is missing an entire drive side, it looks like. They're not functioning at all. Oh, I see the plate on the mini bot. Look at it. It's it's uh, it's out a little bit. <laughs> it's uh, no longer fully connected. Yeah, so that's part of why they are not able to move, it looks like, as effectively as they were before. And now Jack uh, Jack Move has got to get itself right side up. They have fixed that problem. Jack there Move has go. use of all four wheels, it looks like, at this point. Giving them Ooh. a big advantage for the rest of this fight. The uh, angry huge, huge eyes on Hound are uh, surprisingly intact. Yeah, well, you know, you got to use that angry huge eyes armor. Jack Move actually trying to help their mini bot out. Like we said, that's an important part of their strategy to get them back up and functioning again. So while they have a few moments, uh, while their opponent is kind of immobile, they're just giving them a chance. But uh, they don't need them to win this fight at this point, especially since they're pretty much the only ones fully functional. <laughs> All right, I have a quick update on the Eruption match. Eruption is uh, deemed the official winner. So I, I think that means Spartan will be going home. Spartan is going home. Happy birthday, Johnny Sumpas. You've done a phenomenal job today. We're in the final eight seconds of this match. We will be going to the judges. Yeah, neither bot looking too happy at the end of it, but uh, they're both mobile? I don't think I would want to be a judge for this particular match. Guess what? We've been doing that to these poor people <laughs> literally all day. We so. have really been leaning on them today. Yeah, it's been, it's been a lot. It has been a lot. We've just been subjecting them to so much internet hate. I'm so sorry, guys. <laughs> Thankfully, our community is pretty nice. They are and if you're being nice. a jerk, hey, stop it. Yeah, no need. No need for that nonsense. All right, so here's some replays. Got, at this point, three out of the four bots seem to be moving. All right, so here we go. We're going to go through a judge's decision on that one. This is going to be kind of a harder judge's decision, so we're going to take our time a little bit and see uh, like how they deliberate and how they figure this out. And there they are. Oh, hey, look, it's Bradley Hansad. How you doing, buddy? He looks so much uh -huh. more awake than Jack Tweedy. <laughs> Hopefully now Jack can go to bed. It's what, 1 a.m.? Yeah, it's a little after 1 a.m. Yeah. in, uh, in Mary old London town. So, Brad, we're going to go ahead and start with you because we haven't been mean to you for a very close judge's decision yet, so you are the first one. What did you think of that fight? Who won and why? All right, so that fight was uh, pretty close. Yeah. Um, ultimately, Hound dying at the end really pushed it over for a jack move for me. Um, slightly more aggression, the control early on, 
Jack Move was able to capitalize on some of those big hits. Yep. So I had 11 to 6, Jack Move. Wow, not even close for you at all. Okay, fair enough. So Leanne, what did you think about that fight? Yeah, uh, pretty much same thing, literally the same score. So uh, good job, Jack Move. Fair enough. Dom, take us home. What did you think? Pretty much exactly what the other judges said, but I had a 12-5 for Jack Move. All right, so there you go. Your winner, Jack Move. Same strategy working for them all day long. If Absolutely it works, phenomenal. Keep doing it. Like, I love the odd couple pairing. They're so funny, and they do such a great job. <laughs> the baker and the teacher just crushing it all day long. It is great to watch. It's uh, almost like they've had time as a team to work together and sync up. Yeah. You know, they've been working together, I'd say, a long time. Yeah, they've both been on Team Shredder for a minute now, yeah. and they've both been, um, you know, helping to build bots together, and, you know, they both should be working on a heavyweight right now, so, you know... <laughs> It's yeah. nice. It's nice. Priorities. <laughs> priorities. <laughs> if I had to sort out my priorities, it'd be the same. Now, as per usual, Drew Davis did not have much time to do anything. He had to run back up to the pits, grab yet another robot, and run back downstairs. There you see him preparing to go up against Apex with Jack or with uh, the Flex. Here's my favorite thing about Drew Davis. Maybe one of one of my favorite things. Always cool under pressure he's running so many bots yeah. often with his children which could i imagine add a whole extra level of stress well yeah especially as you go later and later into the competition yeah. and those kids are staying up further and further past bedtime but nothing presses him no you're right you're totally right looks like we're trying to figure out some things cage side what are you going to do? So you got Jack Rabbit Flex. Whoa, 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 whoa. Don't go throwing that man's mini bot. You don't need to do that. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> you let the bots throw the, the mini bots around. Apex has also been doing a phenomenal job today. This is one of the best showings we have ever seen from them, making it all the way through to the undefeated quarterfinals. Ridiculous. Wow. The winner of this fight will have to go on to face jet lag. Not a small feat. No, not at all. But yeah, both these bots doing an absolutely phenomenal job. Both of these bots have come up through the NHRL system. You gotta love it. I mean, some of the most powerful and competitive three pounders in the entire world at this point. And they were homegrown right here. Right here. I remember being at Drew Davis's very first event over at 50 Day. And now look at him. <laughs> <laughs> Drew Davis. All right, so here we go. The winner fights Jetlag. The loser fights Sepiel. Oh, no. Nobody wins at the end of this, actually. <laughs> yeah. Actually, you both have to go on to face really tough competitors. So, eesh. Apex versus Jackrabbit Flex. Okay. Yeah, they Eight, were not thrilled seven, with that news six, about Sepio. Not five, at all. Four, Drew Davis, three, cool, calm, and collected. Two, Alex Pezza, one, excited five, and happy to be here as always. Fight. Alex Pezza adopting a bit of the Jameson Go stance. Yeah, he's, he's really been practicing with that lately, I've noticed. Wow, weapon to weapon exchange actually going to Jackrabbit Flex. Really cool. Apex, another bot that has been at, in the Norwalk family for so many years now. Yeah, Apex, really the uh, the Apex predator of Team Cyber is just probably the most successful bot from that team. You can see how much war Ooh. this machine has been through here at Norwalk. Jackrabbit Flex, though, just on it, not giving it a chance to even square up. Although, Apex got a good hit in there. I'm seeing a belt loose. And that's tap a tap out, out yeah. from Jackrabbit Flex. The winner Flex. is Apex. Drew Davis says, I'd rather fight Sepiole <laughs> than keep getting hit by this kid. I'm done. Thank you very much. 
at this point in the competition, you kind of have to think that way. You need to yeah. hedge your bets and figure out what is my best course of action here. So here's a replay to kind of relive the big moments of that of that match. Yeah, I mean, uh, so Robert Walsh doing a phenomenal job just controlling the pace of this match, not even letting the minibot be a factor, focusing all of his attention right on Jackrabbit Flex and just dominating the end of that match. Really yeah. well done. They will go on to face jet lag in the next round. Oof. That's two very young competitors, two phenomenal drivers, very good weapons. That's going to be a lot of fun to watch. I cannot wait. Yeah. Um, but we still get to see Drew Davis and uh, Jack Rabbit Flex. They're going to be going down into the elimination bracket, and they'll be facing Sepiel. And that will be definitely a match you will not want to miss. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, nobody actually wins that match. They both have to go on to face ridiculously hard <laughs> competitors after the fact. That's where we're at at this stage in the game. It just doesn't get easier from here. No, there's no easy path at this point. You no. really, to get to the end, to get even just further in this competition at this point, you really have to go through uh, some tough competitors. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so we are heading over into what looks like some 12-pound action. Well, this so this is a, is a grudge, grudge match. match. Okay, we can do some grudge matching. It's that time of day. Match. Yeah, why not? Have we commented on these NHRL bucket hats yet? No, I haven't even noticed them. We have bucket hats now? Oh, yeah. I see uh, some uh, NHRL staff wearing them. That's awesome. The you 90s are it. back. The 90s are back. 90s robot combat is back. Yeah. 90s bucket hats yeah. are back. Hawaiian shirts are back. Are they? Next thing you know, ska music is going to be back. Ska music never left. Ska music totally left, Lindsay. <laughs> Ooh, is, uh, this is Semtex? Yeah, this is Semtex all the way from across the pond in very old Great Britain. I was uh, quite sad when it was eliminated earlier because Absolutely. that bot hits hard. It hits so hard. Oh, my goodness. It is. Um, so he was telling me that they don't normally have 12-pound competitions in Great Britain. Huh. Um, so he competed in one of the very first ones there back in December, won the entire thing, and was like, wow, i got to bring this to America now because that's where they have the best 12-pound competitors. So that's why he's here. He wants to test the, the literal metal of his bot against the competition here at Norwalk Havoc. I love it. I mean, we are, like, really responsible, I feel like, in a lot of ways for bringing back that 12-pound division. It wasn't happening at very many competitions, and it is just so prolific here. We have some of the best in the entire world. It's thriving. Absolutely. Hey, if Jameson Go wants to play in that division, you know it's doing well. <laughs> the, the reason why I love 12 pounds is because it's, it has a bit more of a bang than a three pound bot, but yep. it's still accessible as a builder Absolutely. to be able to afford Eight, the resources, seven, to acquire six, the resources. Five, but uh, four, here we go with the countdown. Three, two, one. Fight, robots fight. Now I imagine for Semtex, any time with the sticks to be able to fight and test this bot is just like incredibly important information for him to take back to yeah. then improve the bot. Look Ooh. at that. Hit. Oh my goodness. Major influences for this bot, of course, come from Brazil and the entirety of the Toro line. Now, can Semtex move? I am not so sure after that exchange. Ooh, Looks that like both the weapons might be out. Yep. Sometimes when you hit that hard, yeah, it also you shake causes... Yeah, loose. Yeah. I'm not sure I'm seeing it. Yeah, that was a rough one right there. Oh, now he's going after Brett. Yeah, that would be uh, oh, oh. That, that would be fluffy, and fluffy oh, is fluffy. not having any of it. Ooh. Yeah, that's why you don't do that. <laughs> the quickest way to kill your bot is by going after the house bot. These are 12-pound bots. I think fluffy weighs somewhere in the 300-pound range. It's like a. That's a knockout. Match is over. 
Yeah. Feeling pretty grudgy. I hope they settled their grudge. I hope they settled their <laughs> grudge. Not with Fluffy, though. No. No, and now Fluffy will have a grudge forever. Yeah, that's not good. Don't do that. No. It's just not going to help your career. Fluffy doesn't forget. Bubbles does. <laughs> I think Bubbles is now officially Florence. Oh, really? Flo, yeah. I like that. Yeah. Nice. Ooh. All right, so we've got a big fight coming your way in Cage 2. Let's go to the voice of God. Tap yeah. out. Oh. The winner Not is... Not a tap out? Red Hawk. <laughs> Red Hawk, you don't have to fight anymore. <laughs> Next in Cage 2, Mixtape versus Red Hawk. All right, so big fight here. Mixtape, Eight, Calvin Eva seven, going up against Red six, Hawks. Five, Red Hawk, four, hard hitting horizontal three, spinner. Mixtape, of course. One, fight. Hot, hot, hot. The three fight. pound arbiter of fire. Uh, that flame doesn't get old. It's just hard to see what your bot is doing inside of all of that. I think that must be part of the strategy. Obscure vision with flame. Make it hard to see what is going on with bright, bright fire. <laughs> and the length of the fire is so long that you just can't escape it very it's easily. It's like two thirds the box. Yeah. Oh, oh we got some fire Red Hawk is on Red fire. Hawk. That's not good. You don't want that. That's definitely the opposite of what you want to happen there. Yeah. Oh. So the winner of this fight will go up against Hound in the next round. The loser of this fight is eliminated. Just no matter where Red Hawk tries to go in the box, the flame is licking right behind it. And that weapon has not fired up on Red Hawk in quite some time. It's hard to tell what happened. It could be anything at that point. The fire we could be seeing could be the weapon belt. Exactly. It could be the printed pulley. We have no idea, but we do know that it is not working. All right, looks like uh, Calvin is easing off the flame. Or he's out. I mean, that was or a ton out. of fire that he just doused out throughout that entire time period. That and is one cooked hawk. Red Hawk, however, no longer on fire. Yeah, but, the uh, flame has been extinguished. Not sure it matters at this point if that weapon does not come back. Ooh, no, yeah, this is uh, now a control bot match, and that is not how Red Hawk is built. You can see the horizontal configuration on mixtape. Big, vicious-looking plow on the front there. Perfect for corralling Red Hawk, getting them into the corner, getting the pins that they need. It is scooping up Red Hawk exactly the way that I think Calvin was hoping for. Yeah, exactly. Everything working exactly as designed here. And when you don't have a weapon spinning on your bot, there's only so much you can do. Now, we don't have a clock on the screen right now, but the timekeepers are keeping time in the back. We will let you know when we get to the end of this fight. You know, now, so far, I don't think I've seen much damage at all to Mixtape's wagon wheel wheels. No, they do get distorted, but they still seem to function at the end of most of their matches. So surprising, because they're so dainty and thin. So we are down to the last 20 seconds of this fight. Against all odds, we may be going the full duration of this match. Yeah, but I will say that it seems like half the drive and the weapon is down on Red Hawk. And everything's working on mixtape except for yep. the flame that they're probably just out of. I, I see some children absolutely losing their mind in the front row. They are loving this match. As yeah. are we all. It was a very entertaining match. So mixtape and Red Hawk, this one goes to the judges, but I think it's pretty clear who was the winner of that particular contest. Let's check out this replay. The first two thirds of this match were all about the fire. Red Hawk's weapon was working, but somewhere in the flame, that weapon stopped. We're not exactly sure where. Yeah. Hard to tell exactly, but I'm sure when they get back in the pits, they're just gonna find a melted mess of wires. Melted mess of wires, melted mess of belts. Hard to tell, there's so many things that can go wrong when that much flame gets inside of your robot. 
It's just oppressive, that flame. Impressive, oppressive. Yeah. While the flame dominated the first two thirds of that match, the plow really got to shine yeah. in the back half. Yeah, it was all about the control. It was all about the domination from that point on. And there's a little bit of roasted Red Hawk for you, taking it back up to the pits to share with the fellow competitors. Definitely gonna wanna carry that away, not by hand. Yeah, no, so definitely hot. not. Good idea to use the safety mechanism for that. Let's go ahead and go to the judges. Oh, look, we're switching up. We're, go, we're doing all kinds of different things over here. All right, we're giving Dom a break, so we're going to go over to Mr. Belkin first. Who do you think won that fight? Um, you know, we see mixtape over here on the uh, West Coast all the time, and it's just significantly better in the East Coast, so mixtape. Fair enough. All right. A little West Coast uh, shade there, I think. Yeah, Maybe cool. a little bit. Uh, Leanne, you it. represent both coasts a little bit here. What do you think? Who won that fight? <laughs> you definitely have to give it to Mixtape. So much fire, and there is a lot of aggression and control. So, yeah. Absolutely. You got to love damage from a firebot. I mean, that's always a good time. Brad, what are your thoughts? I mean, control, damage, aggression, and a show. Mixtape gets it for me. Amen to that. That All sounds right. like a great date. All right, so we're going to be moving over into, I believe, cage one to figure out what's happening next. So this is going to be a 12-pound grudge match. We're having a few of those today. I'm okay with that. The 12-pound division needs a chance to shine. I see some cow-related grudges. Cows versus bees? Honey versus milk? Milk and honey? I mean, oh. Ah, wow, there it is. There it is. What's that? Eight. Seven, oh, cows versus burgers. Six, yeah, so we are having five, a little bit of a four, uh, a cow match. Three, two, one. Fight, robots, fight. Now, do you notice something different about Bugsby? I do notice something different about Bugsby. They are full on sporting. Oh! Oh! <laughs> what? That was a glitter bomb coming out of Bugsby, and they've got the cow patty. The wow. cow bun on top of the burger. This is the most beautiful version of Bugsby I have ever seen. What? what? Is happening? what? <laughs> Why are they sparking? I don't understand. This show came with glitter and fireworks. I don't understand. <laughs> now, this has got to be... What? What? This is insane! This is Norwalk Havoc right here, ladies and gentlemen. Wow! <laughs> Just a smoking husk after that brilliant display. Uh, I think they might have damaged themselves with that fireworks display. It looks like they're not moving after that and no contact was made. Bugsby just do a little dance. They sacrificed themselves so that we could enjoy their presence. What is that? That's not supposed to be there. Is that a battery pack? I don't understand because to my knowledge, there has been no contact between the two bots. So... Where did that come from? I have no idea. But Bugsby's just dancing around in the glitter. Yeah. Having a great time dancing around in the glitter. Fireworks, glitter. This is better than any uh, 4th of July barbecue I've ever been to. Absolutely. Even though that burger does not look edible, I still want to go to this one. Definitely not food grade. Definitely not food grade. There's the battery. You can tell the date <laughs> on it. This is the expiration date, I think, on that battery. 9-17-2022. Don't use that. All right, I think we're being counted out. Knockout. Yeah. Not the <laughs> winner. Is. Not the winner. Not the winner what? is. The winner is. Who is the Cronus. Winner? Oh, Cronus. Cronus. Nice of course. job, Cronus. <laughs> you did it. Cronus wins, ladies and gentlemen. They weren't even in the arena. Impressive. We all win that one. Yes, everybody in here wins that one. Everybody on the live stream wins that one. That's rainbow glitter, too, by the way. That broom is going to have to do double duty. I know. Once glitter gets into the arena, it literally never gets out. Okay, let's see this again. Let's see this again. Woo! Wow. 
Now, are fireworks legal in Connecticut? I don't think so. No, but they did get special permission to use them during this event. <laughs> Not necessarily from the state of Connecticut, <laughs> but from Austin McCord, which is what matters, quite frankly. I mean, I don't think the U.S. law applies in this building. Yeah, no, it's... we don't We don't really work with the U.S. No. law inside of this building. It's no. its own special uh, diplomatic arrangement, I guess you could say. <laughs> Where it's a legal zone for Norwalks and Havocs. Yeah. I'm, I'm just, it's going to take a little while to process what I just saw. I don't know what that was. It looked like they were just putting on a beautiful show for us, and I cannot complain about any of it. Thank oh, you no. so much to these two teams. That was absolutely phenomenal. Round of applause for them, ladies and gentlemen. Woo! What a show. What a grudge. What a match. Milk and honey. Burger versus cow. <laughs> Glitter versus firework. And the only people that lose that is our box crew who yeah. has to clean up whatever that was. Inhale the glitter, inhale the smoke. Yeah, none of that was healthy. No. But highly entertaining. I mean, I don't think anybody would, uh, would regret it. This is where we do dangerous things safely. Yeah. So we're going to take a quick break, quick breather. We'll be back a couple of minutes with a few more fights. Ben, and today we're talking about tab and slots. I'm really excited about this. I use tab and slots in my designs all the time. But maybe you're not familiar with tab and slots, so let's talk about what it is first. So originally, you take your design and you have a female slot, so a hole in your part, that'll actually locate into a male tab that goes into that slot and that holds it together. So this little box here that I have, we have four tabs and slots in each corner. So as I put it together, it holds itself together really nicely, right? And that's the beauty of that design. So if we're needing to weld something together or even hold it in a certain location when we bolt it together, it's a great fixturing mechanism that you can incorporate into your design. But as you're designing this, it's important to remember a couple things with regard to the slot design. Anytime you put a hole in a part, you're introducing a new area in which the part's weak. If it's prone to high vibration or a lot of stress, you might see cracking in the corners of a slot, especially a square type of shape. And so if you have a square slot like this, you will eventually see some cracking that'll be in the corners. There's an easy way to reduce this stress and cracking in the corners, and by simply just throwing a little tiny radius in the corner. Just by putting in a small radius like this one, we reduce the stress in the corners substantially, and you won't see as much cracking. One important thing to note though, is if you do put a radius in the corners, you do have to increase the size of that slot by the radius in order to make sure that the tab still fits into that slot. You can also chamfer the edge of your tab if you want to do it that way, but you are going to be prone to having a little bit of a sloppier fit this design. The next best thing that you can do, and this is what um, I prefer to do if I have the option, is to put a full radius in the corner. So make a full half circle in each corner. That half circle reduces the stress exponentially on this part. And you won't see as much cracking or stressing, if not at all, especially in a high vibrational type situation. But this one, you also have to increase that diameter of the slot or the width of that slot to your tab um, to that full radius of those corners to ensure that it slides in and fits. A lot of people don't like this because then you end up having a little bit more slop in your design. That slop in that design sometimes makes it harder for things to be put in the right place. The next best thing is to do a dog bone design. And that's simply putting a corner, a hole in each corner, and then softening those edges, radiusing those edges into those corners. What this does is it allows you to have essentially a square hole that has a softened up radius. So you're able to make the slot the same exact dimensional size as the tab. These things that we're doing to the slots, we can also do to the tab. We can soften those radiuses and stuff on the corners of those tabs to create a less stress in those corner joints. Lastly, it's important to know the dimensional thickness of your material. It's great, you can go onto our website. When you select the material, you'll see the dimensional thickness in both imperial and metric to fit your guys' needs. When you're designing that slot, we recommend you being at least 10 thousandths of an inch larger in diameter and width than your tab. Your thickness of your material is gonna be the, the width of your slot. Make sure you're at least 10 thousandths of an inch larger than that. 
and you'll have a nice slip fit. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more. Welcome back from the break. Check out our very empty pits. All that remains are the ones that are still in the game and the people who are packing up their stuff to go home. And it for is, the ones still here, it's gonna might be a long night. It might be a long night. We shall see how it goes. By the way, we want to say thank you to the Titanium Stage. Titanium stage broadcast has ended. They've done a phenomenal job over there running two boxes back and forth action for the entire day. Um, absolutely loved it. Check out our control room. Hey, control room. They're you could busy. run any sporting event from here in the entire world. Absolutely phenomenal setup that these guys have put together and that they've been working hard on all day and all night. I used to be based out of the control room. I remember that. Yeah, it's like, it was otherworldly in there. What is up, Team Honeycracked? How are you guys doing? I feel like they're multiplying. There's more at the table every time we go. Yeah, she's bringing more and more of her students constantly. I love it. And there's, there's the glitter. Now he has been sweeping in that box straight through since yeah, the match Yeah, since the ended. end of that match, he's been sweeping and yeah. sweeping and sweeping this poor man. Long way to go. Got to teach him the military sweep. You know, the little teeny tiny. Oh, we got shishes. some fans. We got an Izzy. We got a Chad. What's up, guys? Good to see ya. Um, we are heading into the uh, the second half of the broadcast, which we like to call the weird part of the night here pretty soon. We're not quite there yet. Not yet. Not but yet. we might get there soon. We're approaching. Um, critical weird hours. Yeah, critical weird hours. Right now we are at the part of the night where we are kind of waiting for comp competitors to be ready. You get 20 minutes between matches um, and the best case scenario, right? In some other scenarios, you might have 30 minutes. You might have 40 minutes, right? Because other matches are happening and you kind of have to wait for them to be done. But now we are at the part of the night where there's not that many matches left. So everybody has to have 20 minutes to fix their bot between matches at least if you're ready before that. Obviously, we'll let you go before that. But uh, at this point in the night, everybody's running out of spares. Yep. Everybody's frames are getting a little bit tweaked. It's a little bit harder to pull those bolts in and out. Yep. Takes a little bit longer to get your stuff back together. So we shall see. And maybe you're running on empty. You've been going all day long. Absolutely. Yeah, that's a big part of it. You know, a lot of times in this particular way, uh, people are making silly mistakes. Uh, they're putting their top plate on and cutting a wire. They're, yep. you know, doing things where they forgot to connect the battery to the actual motor before they actually put the top plate on. Just stuff that you would never do at three o'clock in the afternoon, but now it's several hours later, you have been up since 6 a.m. and you have been just using your brain all day long and you're done. It's crispy time. Speaking of, speaking of using your brain all day long, we yeah. Have some competitors who have been fighting all day, some with multiple bots. Absolutely. With, yes, but all of them with multiple bots, actually. So we have Huge and Blackjack. More 12 pound action. Super excited to see this. The winner of this match does have to go on to face Cronus in the next round. Oof. Yeah, going to be a good time. Now, is this an elimination bracket? Yes, this is in the elimination bracket. Uh, Huge is perfectly designed to face a bot like Blackjack, but I will say this strategy that Blackjack has been enacting all day might come in handy in this particular fight. It might, but it's, it's hard to get any purchase on this bot. Absolutely. So I don't know if the pin and hit strategy is, I mean, it might work, but uh, it's gonna be difficult. Yeah, absolutely true. You know, it, it is the case that just a few years ago, Huge was a strategic challenge. People did not know how to beat a Huge. 
I feel like people understand what strategy works now. Definitely better than a couple years ago. The challenge is implementing it. Right. Right. Just because you know the plan does not mean that the plan is, does, is going to work. Everybody has a plan until you're punched in the face. Exactly. All right. So we've got a factoid here for you. The winner fights Kronos. The loser is eliminated. We are in the elimination bracket. Woof. Tough road ahead. All the marbles for this one. And the doors are closing. And the match will begin shortly. So this is the last quarterfinal match in the elimination bracket. They will go on into the elimination semifinal. Man, and sitting up there in the undefeated bracket, Disco and Psycho. <laughs> That's going to be a fun one to call. Oh. It's like a tongue twister for the entire fight. Yeah. Yeah, got to keep that straight. <laughs> <laughs> Next in cage four, Blackjack versus Huge. Voice All right. of God has been extremely Eight, enthusiastic seven, today. Absolutely. Six, We've got the Dorfman five, brothers. Four. Versus Three, the odd couple two, that is Drew Davis one, and Alex Fizzer, the chef and the teacher. Fight. The chef and the teacher. Iconic duo. All right, they're trying. They're trying their strategy. So Beautiful far. work there from Huge, knocking Blackjack back up against the wall. Ooh. If Huge can keep Blackjack facing the wrong direction in this fight, this will be an easy victory for them. Yeah, this is exactly what Huge is wanting. Yeah, but they're they executing flipped. their strategy flawlessly. Huge is doing everything right, controlling this fight with driving, not something you see with this with Huge, especially <laughs> up against such a mobile competitor like Jack uh, Blackjack. And such an excellent driver in Drew Davis. And you're right, Lindsay, that minibot has done absolutely nothing against Huge, but at the same time, Huge's weapon is not low enough to hit that minibot, it seems. Right. They're it's probably, almost like that minibot is just a non-factor. They're probably not going to lose points for minibot damage. So no, that's, there's that's nothing, a plus. There's nothing that can happen to that minibot. They're just <laughs> there. Casting distraction spells, but other than that, <laughs> not really doing much. The same can't be said for Blackjack Mainbot. Uh, no, it is that's... right in the uh, path of fire. Yeah, and it is struggling at this point. Yep. Still mobile, still zipping around, but you can see that a uh, toll has been taken. It's not quite the same zippy bot we've come to expect for a Blackjack. And uh, to my eye, I can't see much that has been done to you. No, not at all. The wheels look perfectly intact. Ooh, nice hit there. Huge definitely got reared back with that exchange. Yeah, but the wheels are able to bend and really absorb whatever was going on there. And uh, they once again emerged unscathed. Yeah, when you see Huge get into trouble, it's when you see a volley of those and the wheels start to degrade after three or four of those. But yep. that's just not a momentum that Blackjack's been able to get up so far in this fight. Ooh, grinding away on the top pla plate of Blackjack there. All right, about 25 seconds left in this match. Huge still licking the top of Blackjack with their blade. Yeah, just sparking away across the top of Blackjack. Not really doing any noticeable damage to Blackjack's weapon. No. Not really affecting their drive, although Blackjack is... Oh, there's some movement wow. out of Blackjack. Something was holding them up. They were not moving with the speed we are used to seeing from that bot. And there we go. We are at the end of this match. They sprung to life just a little bit too late. Yeah, they gained a lot of their mobility back in about the last eight seconds. Yeah, not super helpful. We'll see what the judges have to say about that. But uh, yeah, that was a rough one. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard. I, you know, who do you give control to in a match like that? I 
Yeah, we're going to look take a replay here. I think at the beginning, you definitely give a lot of control to Huge. They controlled the pace. They were able to get Blackjack flipped over. Uh, they were able to get a lot of grinding hits across the top of Blackjack, really control where Blackjack went in the box, which is yep. hard for a Huge. But then that kind of shifted from neutral to a little bit more in the Blackjack camp by the end of the fight. Again, another difficult match, I would say, for judges to score. Yeah, we will see what they have to say. Um, so we're going to be going to our late night judges crew next to see what they have to say. The late night judges are the, uh, I guess a lot of you guys were hanging out over at the Titanium stage before. So thank you so much for joining us here at the main stage. Um, all right, so we're going to go with you first, Leanne. Leanne, what did you think about that fight? Who won that? I think like it was kind of close near the end there. Um, I feel like you definitely had uh, a lot of the aggression and control at the beginning, but you started to see that slip at the end. Yeah. <laughs> that being said, I still give it to them. Fair enough. Have to agree. Have to agree. All right, Brad, what did you think? Um, I think the noticeable damage that you kind of saw a few little bit of back plate that just kind of edged, you know, huge into the damage category. Yeah. Control was there, aggression was there. If we saw more of Blackjack at the end there doing what he was doing at the very, very end, maybe it would have been a little different, but I gave it to huge. All right, fair enough. Alon, what did you think? Uh, you know, sit here, gave it to huge. Um, mainly, they're, they had a little bit more damage that they dealt, um, and they controlled a tiny bit more. It was tied at the beginning, or not in the beginning, in the middle. Um, in the beginning, they really had control, and they were more aggressive, but it ended up going there, their way. Yep, have to agree with you yeah. there. All right, that's a unanimous judge's decision for huge, huge, which means they will be going on to face Kronos in the next round. Oof. Excellent first outing for Blackjack. Oh my goodness, I love to see Drew Davis in the 12 pound division. Really great run for him today and can't wait to see what he does. Meanwhile, oh boy. speaking of people making their forays into the 12 pound division, <laughs> there you see Jameson go. This is the winner's wow. bracket final. We are going to have Psycho versus Disco. Psycho Disco. Psycho Disco. Oh, that sounds like a fun place. <laughs> Next in Cage One, Psycho versus Disco. The so Dorfers had no time seven, to relax. No. Nope. Hopefully, five, we had time to eat this four, time around. Probably three, not. <laughs> two, one. Fight. Robots fight. There we go. Disco Weapons coming out up strong. To speed. Psycho coming out collected. Like two rams head to head. Oh! Psycho getting the better of that exchange, but now flailing a little bit. Now back on its feet where it wants to be. Looks like there's some mobility issues going on with Psycho, but it still wow. hits hard. Yeah, that is not pleasant. Oh my goodness. Looks like we're having a little bit of drive issues from both bots right now. Yeah, a little bit of crab walking, a little bit of limited mobility on one side of each bot. A little bit more speed coming out of Disco. But still a lot of sparks. Yeah, eventually these bots will find each other again, but they have not as of yet. There we go. We got a lot Ooh. of mobility out of Disco. They shook loose whatever was blocking them there. And now they're doing this really awesome strafing move around Psycho. <laughs> they're making it work. All right, there is considerably less sound now. Yeah, what is going on in here? Psycho really having a hard time getting out of its little square. Don seems confused. Jameson might seem concerned. This is still a relatively new bot for Jameson. He's probably still getting used to the specifics of how this bot moves around, how to best deal with this bot when part of the drive isn't working. Wow. Wow, that so... weapon on Psycho is vicious. 
And there you go, Disco Ooh. stuck up in the corner. I do believe they still have an unstick available to them, yeah. though. Nice work there from Fluffy. Ooh, it looks like a wedge up front has been bent upwards. Yeah, that weapon on Psycho is ridiculously powerful. Psycho looks like unable to maybe pursue Disco, who's still very mobile. Absolutely. The challenge that Jameson has now is to try to keep the front of his bot facing towards Disco. Yeah. Not an easy feat. No, Disco is moving ridiculously well, in spite of the fact that its frame and that front wedge does seem to be somewhat tweaked. Right, Definitely not the same shape it was when it came in. Definitely not. And with six seconds left, the judges are going to have an incredibly difficult call to make. Whoa, that's Ooh. a great last impression for the judges right there. That's Let's how see you want to go that out. goes. Oh my goodness. So Disco and Psycho went the full distance. As Ooh. I was expecting, to be honest. These are two formidable bots. Yeah, top they notch. They know what they're doing. Absolutely. Top notch competitors in this division. Um, Disco's been in this division for a while now. Psycho, brand new as far as this season goes. I believe the last, uh, what was it, the, the May was their first foray into this division. Yeah. All right, let's look at this again. So many pops in the air. Yeah, and Psycho really did get the better of almost all of those exchanges with the very few exceptions of these that did seem to take out their left side drive. Boom. Oh, that was, that was a really good one. That was vicious, yeah. And there did seem to be some mobility issues for Disco at part of the match, but that went away, and they were able to be a highly mobile bot at the end of this fight. They just weren't able to win any of those weapon-to-weapon -weapon contacts, so yeah. we'll see what the judges say. I am so glad I don't have their job, that's for sure. <laughs> Me too. Judges. All right, so who should we start with? What do you think, Lindsay? Uh, let's go to Brad. Oh, okay. Brad, what do you think, buddy? You can take your time. Okay. You can deliberate for a second. This was definitely extremely close, and there were moments that kind of had to change a few points for me. And, and you know, damage seemed about equivalent in terms of the drive issues that they both suffered. Disco had a little more control, but being flipped upside down. And ultimately, what did it for me was kind of aggression and the fact that every time there was a weapon to weapon contact, Psycho tended to win that that then engagement so yeah. by one point i put psycho ahead wow. wow okay all right uh i'm not wowing because i disagree with you just that's close it's close Whew. all that right what i expected though mr belkin what are your thoughts more more of the same uh i've got also psycho winning by one wow Whoa. all right so the winner officially is psycho but leanne take us home is this a unanimous judge's decision yeah, I looked up my score, and it is also 8 to 9. Wow. Wow. All right. So there you go, 8 to 9. The winner of that match is Psycho. They won that match with one half of their drive not working. It just so hits close. that hard. So close. Just one point. So they will be moving on. And Disco will continue on in the elimination that bracket. Is so they're not going home just correct. yet. correct. Yes. Wow. All right. So, yes, they will face the winner of Huge versus Kronos. So let's go ahead and set up the three pound bracket before we move on to our next fight. So if you look over into the undefeated semifinals, we're gonna have Malice facing off against Jack Moon. We're gonna have Apex versus Jetlag, the young guns. That's gonna be that's gonna be coming up next. But if you go down into the elimination bracket, we've got some bangers going on. We've got Vo wow. uh, v Voxel V1 versus Shredder Bro, Oof. Hound versus Mixtape, Jack Rabbit Flex versus Sepiol, and the match that I think we are all looking for. Whoever wins that fight is gonna go on to face Warhard. I really feel like that's going to determine a lot of oh, what's yeah. gonna happen in that elimination bracket moving forward. Oh yeah. Whew. All right, we have got some crazy matches ahead for you in that three-pound division. As we always do, it is the most stacked division in the entire world here at Norwalk Havoc. Gotta love it. There are some names in there that maybe starting today we would not have assumed would be there. And that yep. is what I love because you can't predict what's going to happen here. Yeah, and you can't predict who's improved their bots to the point where they are right. now a championship bot. You know, right. some of these bots we've known are, have been, you know, really good mid-tier competitors, people that definitely make it deep into the competition. This might be the day that they go all the way. I 
hope so. That's what I want to see. I hope. That's what I want to see. All right, the winner of uh, the winner fights Malice or Jack move. The loser drops down to the elimination bracket. These are the two young guns, Jet Lag versus Apex. But when you think about the years of experience both drivers have, yeah, I mean they probably outnumber some of the older builders. Here. Absolutely, absolutely. Next in cage three, Jet Lag versus Apex. Yeah. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robots oh fight. So many similarities you can call out about these two drivers. You can tell they have really studied this competition. Whoa. They know what works. Oh One boy. thing that is clear about the two of them is they have almost no mercy. <laughs> yeah. Nope. They just want to go at you head to head as many times as they can. They're not going to let you get back up again if you fall down. They are going in for the kill every single time. And it worked for them so far, so why change it now? Absolutely. Both bots upside down at this point. Looks like, a, again, a little bit of a mobility issue from jet lag. Part of their wheel guard is poking out, which might be the cause of that. Oh, and one of those... Yeah, one of the guard plates guard. on the side, that is gone. That serves two purposes. It helps them get underneath their opponents. It also blocks some of the weapon contact from hitting those essential side mounts for the rails for the weapon. And I imagine it helps stabilize them as well because now we see it popping up a little bit That's on, on exactly one of its sides. That's exactly right. Yeah, the weapon starts grinding on the floor without those keepaways there. Apex still, still going strong. Absolutely, yeah, a lot less damage to Apex so far in this match. That's not to say they've won every single one of these weapon engagements. They've just gotten lucky with a lot of these hits that have ripped yep. off essential pieces to jet lag. Ooh. Apex, the dominant Apex Predator of Team Cybears. There you see Lars, who grinds it out, I think, almost every weekend, every other weekend at events all up and down the East Coast. Absolutely, yeah, just grinding away, getting in as much fight time as possible. That's a belt we see coming loose on Apex. They do run multiple belts, but losing them is not a great sign at this point. No, not what you want to see with 50 seconds left in the match. We just heard back from Control. The winner of this match does qualify for the December oh, finals. This is a big match. This is a big match. The winner of this match has a <gasps> chance at a golden dumpster and a giant prize. All right. Jetlag could have held that pin, but they want to go out with these last 22 seconds with a bang. Yeah, I think I think Jetlag knows that a pin is not going to get them enough points in the no. judges' eyes. They're going to need to get some major damage if they can in these last 15 seconds. But neither bot's weapons are up and spinning at this point. Woo! Wow. This match has gone the full distance. They are just ending it, pushing face to face, dead center of the arena. Nobody getting the advantage. <laughs> Wow, I mean, that is oh, just brutal. Apex's weapon showing the judges that it's still working. That is a big deal to show that your weapon is still working at the end of that fight. Wow. Whoa, okay, okay. Apex getting the better of these weapon exchanges. Boom, look at that. Both bots and that exchange flipped over onto their backs. Apex getting yet another hit, ripping off that side guard rail there, then knocking them over. Apex coming in from behind. All of these highlights of this fight looking like Apex. Now, Kyle, do you have a theory? Because, you know, you can look at these two weapons, these two build designs. They look fairly similar. What do you think gives Apex the advantage? Uh, they do have a slightly larger diameter on their weapon, but that doesn't necessarily tell the entire story. Yeah. Um, it, this late in the competition, it could be all kinds of things, right? They sure. just could be have just a little bit more juice left in their motors. They could have just a little bit better belts or maybe newer belts on their drive. It's hard to tell at this point. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. we're, we're looking at materials wearing out at this point. It's a bunch of factors. Let's go to our judges. We'll start with you, Leanne. Leanne, what did you think about that fight? It was close. 
Um, I guess because Apex did show that their weapon did work at the end. That's that was definitely valuable. Um, I think that they have it just barely. All right. Yeah. Fair enough. All right, so we'll go to you, Alon, next. What did you think? Who won that fight? Yeah, I mean, if uh, Apex's weapon spun up at the end, then it's uh, Apex. If it didn't, then that would have been uh, jet yeah. lag in that case. So wow. Close. Very so narrow. Close. Yeah, very narrow there. All right, Brad, bring us home. Well, uh, you know, the weapon spinning up was important, but for me, even if the weapons, both weapons were dead, I still would have had Apex just by a small margin, so Same. it was Apex for me. Yep. Yeah, I mean, phenomenal job. Absolutely. Apex is your winner. Um, so that's... Whew. And going to December finals. That is crazy. Even going bigger. Going to December finals. So, so proud of him. That's amazing. We have seen him come up through this system with Team High Bears, just improving yep. every single match. And he's really come out as the captain of that team, the, the most dominant competitor in that team. So it's really cool to see. I have to say it warms my heart. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. All right, we're heading over to some Cage 2 action. Next in Cage 2, Shredded Bro versus... Voxel V1. Oh now, this is a fight we've seen <laughs> eight, seven, several times here. Six, it's never five, a bad time. Four, three, but this two, time, one, one of them is going fight. Home. Robots fight. And Evan really wants to qualify for December. And he's driving like it. Yeah, he is. This is classic Evan Arias. Just aggressive, fast, brutal, and accurate. I have to say, I feel like this is maybe some of the best work I've seen Shredder Bro have this year. Yeah, you're absolutely right. You are absolutely right. And I got to say it. Shredded Pro has not had their best year this year. No, they no. really struggled in a lot of these competitions. In a lot of ways, this is Evan reclaiming his spot. <laughs> hey. So. Tap out. Oh, oh, wow. The winner is Shredded Pro. Two and two record now against Voxel. They just improved it by one. Wow. And they did it where it matters because they are still alive in this competition. Voxel V1 will be going home. Evan Arias and Shredded Bro moves on. They will face the winner of Hound and Mixtape. We could very well Oof. have a Mixtape Shredded Bro <laughs> match. So exciting to see. I want to see it so badly. I'm uh, not saying yeah. that a Hound and Shredded Bro match would be bad. Of course, I want to see that, but fire's fun. We just want to see that fire. Got to see the fire. And Mixtape is a big, chunky bot. Yeah, you know? it really is. It's a Shredder huge target. Shredded would have a lot of bites on it. Yeah, there. it's a huge target for Shredded Bro. This is just classic Shredded Bro action. Look at that. Oh, trying to get your bearings? We don't care. We're going to hit you again. Oh, trying to get turned back around? Don't care. Going to smack you up in the air. Oh, you're stuck against the wall? Don't care. Going to smack you up in the air. <laughs> Just over and over again, relentless until finally that tap out button is hit. Yeah. Voxel V1 says, I am done. I do not need any more of that. I'd like to have most of a bot when I go home. Yeah, you know he's going to be back in November. Yeah, he's so. coming back. It's fine. He just does, he wants to not have to fix everything. I don't blame him. So here we wow. go to the elimination final in the 30 pounds. This is the part of the night where the Dorflers are just. So busy. Someone get these men some donuts. They need something to eat. Next in Cage One, Other Disco versus Phenomenon. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robots, fight. The winner of this match goes on to face Yahoo. In the final yeah. of the 30-pound division. It is so loud in here <laughs> right now with the sound of these two weapons. 
Brandon Bennett Young is here at the competition in Norwalk time and time and time again. This is and the he second wants time. that dumpster. He does. This is the second time he's had to face uh, to face Phenomenon today. Phenomenon tap got out. the better of him last time. And the quite winner frankly, is tap out. The winner is Other Disco. Yeah. He learned all of the lessons he wow. had to learn from that last match and that last loss to Phenomenon. The winner is Phenomenon. What? Thank you. The <laughs> winner is, in fact, Other Disco. I would say two very evenly matched bots. Yeah, very evenly matched bots. But that was over in a flash. Yeah, very quickly. Impressive moves from them. I mean, absolutely completely different from the first match that we saw today. Whew. So now other disco goes on to Yahoo. That's exactly right. 30 pounds is coming to a close here very shortly. They got to have their 20 minutes, though. Yes, they are guaranteed those 20 minutes. Get the bot back up and working. And maybe the Dorflers can grab a snack. Maybe grab a donut. That would be nice. So here you see Other Disco getting smacked back by Phenomenon right there at the beginning. Phenomenon coming in for another hit. Oh, what? Hey. Just there we like go. that. Okay, so the winner of that match was Phenomenon. Sorry about that. So that's what I thought. Yeah, and Phenomenon the, won that match. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that's what I thought. And then the I was uh, questioning no, my sanity no, for a minute No, we're all there. good. Phenomenon was the winner of that match. So we're going to head over to... Looks like uh, we're going to go to three-pound action now. Next in cage three, Jack Move versus Malice. Man, so Eight, Phenomenon's going seven. on. Seven. Six, five, four, three. This time of two, night is becoming one. the Drew Davis fight. and Alex Robots Pezza show. Fight. It really is, yeah. It's uh, Drew Davis, Whoa. Alex Pezza, and the Dorflers. Oh. Malice, big wide drum you see there, the all black pop, black on, on gray on white. Drew Davis and Jack Moore. Malice getting thrown around. But that guard on the side of Jack Move has uh, dislocated itself. It's somewhat ablative. It's supposed to be coming <laughs> off a little bit. Yeah. Jack Move trying to self right on the wall, not able to do so. Oof. Jack Move does not want to be on its head for this long. No, not at all, especially since they were doing such a great job in those weapon-to-weapon -weapon impacts. Yeah. It's so hard to win those when you're upside down. Excellent move by Malice there. Just while Jack Move is stuck up on the wall, taking full control, taking that opportunity to get more damage points. That's a piece that wasn't supposed to come off the robot. <laughs> Uh -oh. And I do believe that was That's tap a out. tap out. It took him a minute to hit the it, but they yelled it first. Malice. Man. Oof. That was close for a long time. That was very close for a long time. But once they got upside down, that was just a hard, hard match for Jack Move to win. Beautiful hit there. Look at that. Jack Move get, knocking them all the way across, ping-ponging them around the arena, but then Jack Move got upside down. Got stuck on their own mini-bot. Okay, gets knocked up into the wall. Okay. Boom. Gets knocked up into the wall again. Oh, they were going to get right side up, and then that's oh. the battery. That's not supposed to be outside of your robot. Ooh. That's, I missed that the first yeah, time Yeah, me around. too. Yeah, that shot was a little bit closer. Gave us the, the yeah. view on why they actually tapped out. Makes a lot of sense. You need the battery to you run the bot. That. Hard to hard to really do anything yeah, yeah. without if power. You, if you don't got the power, you ain't yeah. doing anything. So, yeah. uh, you know, we did not get a big lipo fire out of that one. That's okay. We did get a very decisive victory <laughs> for Malice. Excellent job for them. They'll be moving on. And let's go over to cage two.
Next in Cage 2, Mixtape oh. versus Hound. Speaking of fire. Eight, seven, wow. six, five, four, three, two, one. The way Hound has been performing tonight. Three, yeah, they've two, really done a phenomenal one. job all day. Fight, Hard robots fight. All right, creating chaos with the fire. Not letting you have a great line of visibility here. Just a reminder, the winner of this match goes on to face Shredded Bro in the next elimination round. I can feel the fire. Yeah, there's a bit of heat coming over here. <laughs> Hound trying to get some damage points in here, trying to figure out a way to get through that front guard on Mixtape. Boom, they got Whoa. off to the side of Mixtape there, causing them to careen around the box, but Mixtape right back on top of where they're supposed tap to be. Out. That's a tap That's out. The winner is Mixtape. I don't even know what made them tap out at that point. It they was very urgent. Very concerned and very yep. urgent. They were slamming on the box to tap out, and there's that smile from Kathleen. Is it joy? Is it evil? You'll never know. I think I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's both. It's a little bit of both. Yeah, it's a little bit of both. If he didn't enjoy the mayhem, if he didn't enjoy the destruction, he wouldn't be into this sport. That is for sure. Exactly. Let's but check you can't out find replay. anyone nicer than Calvin, so it's okay when yeah, he does he it. Yeah, he really is the nicest. Now, here you go. You can see Hound Oof. sometimes when it's not fully engulfed in flame. But most of this match, Hound is fully engulfed in flame. It's like opening the fiery gates whenever that uh, that is in the box. This is my favorite when uh, the flame is actually shooting past Hound a little bit, and yeah. you can see the outline of Hound just uh, just silhouetted in flame, disappearing. <laughs> Excellent match. Still don't know why that urgent tap out happened. That really wasn't clear in the replay. But either way, something made them decide they did not want to continue on in this elimination bracket. So let's go ahead and prep cage three. Oh, I think that that bot and hound might still be very hot. Yeah. Yeah, a little crispy. A little Someone crispy. touched it and I heard it. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe a little bit too hot to handle at this moment in time. Yes, they're carrying it with a pair of pliers, it seems. That so, is the uh, common way to carry your bot <laughs> after you face mixtape. Yeah. So crazy. Like, Calvin essentially, like, what he told us on our podcast was he built links. He optimized links to the point where it was, as he put it, just unfair. <laughs> and then he said, what's a design that doesn't win very often? Oh, I know, a flamethrower. Let's try to win with that consistently. Let's see if I can turn a flamethrower into a championship bot. That would be more fair. I'd say he's had some good luck so far. Oh, is that what it is? Luck. No, no. There's no <laughs> luck when it comes to anything that Calvin Eba designs. Absolutely not. No, he has been absolutely dominant today. I mean, just so much fun to watch him coming up through this elimination bracket. Setting so many bots on fire. Losing yeah. once by a judge's decision today. <laughs> uh, you know, if uh, House of the Dragon on HBO ever, like, loses their CGI budget and uh, they can't have, like, the animated dragons anymore, mi uh, Mixtape could be a good fill-in. Yeah, absolutely. Talk about two guys, by the way, that haven't had a moment to eat today. Yeah. Uh, is it, again, Drew Davis and Andrew Pezza? That's Alex Pezza. Alex I'm Pezza, so sorry, Andrew Alex. Davis. I was looking right once at you. again. <laughs> Coming back. This is going to be, I believe, Jack Rabbit Flex versus Sepiol. Ah. Don't worry, real easy fight up against Sepiol. No big deal for them at all. This was the match when they heard it could possibly happen. Yeah, it Both made Drew them, cringe just a little yeah. bit. <laughs> I saw a collective eye roll. It was like, ugh, I don't, ugh, that thing hits hard. <laughs> I don't want to. Their soul left their body. Yeah, no fun, no fun. Sepiol is the kind of bot where you might win, 
but you're definitely gonna have a lot of repairs after that fight. And at, you know, elimination bracket round seven, you don't want a lot of repairs No, at this point. no, you're running out of spares, you're running out of brain power at this point, and you're probably yeah. out of snacks, maybe not. We do have the best snacks here at Norwalk. Well, our snack game is pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good. If you wanna come here and compete, the snack game alone is worth it. Never mind the robot fighting. Back in the, the 50 Day Street days, the snacks were pretty good, and we have only improved since then. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it's true. We have always kept up on the snack game. <laughs> we know it's important. That's why it's always surprising when folks like the Dorflers are like, oh, I haven't eaten all day. It's like, but there's there's been really good food here all yeah. day, man. Next in Cage 3, Cepio versus Jackrabbit Flex. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robots, fight. Winner of this match has to go on and face Warhard in the next round. <laughs> Sepio oh. off Pilcher, Jackrabbit able to take full advantage. Whoa, oh. that was a crazy exchange right there. Both bots reeling after that hit. Whoa. Jackrabbit Jack rolling around on its rabbit ears, able to self right up against the wall very quickly, very effectively. Nice work. But boy, does Sepio hit hard. It really does. Although that wedge on Jackrabbit Flex is really holding up. It sure is. It covers a fair amount of the surface area up front. There's a lot of sides that are nice and juicy for Sepio. Jackrabbit's got to be very careful about that. Minibot doing a great job kind of controlling where oh. Sepio went in that exchange. Whoa! Oh, I think I see a belt loose on Sepio. That's not good. Not good no. for Sepio at all because I can hear that weapon humming away on Jackrabbit Flex. Maybe Jackrabbit is tight centered, it looks like, because their mobility seems to be there. Yeah, absolutely. And that mini bot is still kicking. It ain't happy, but it's still kicking. <laughs> Getting Get smacked in the face by Sepiel a few times. It doesn't really want to move straight anymore. I don't want it either. No, definitely not. That is such a hard hitting bot. Oh, nice exchange there. Jackrabbit knocking Sepio clear across the box. It almost seems like while that wedge was doing such a good job of deflecting the blows from Sepio, it's now almost uh, preventing them from getting yeah, as it's good a of a bit bite. Yeah, it's a hindrance now. I think you're absolutely right. You can see a little bit of deflection in the front of that wedge. It's kind of digging into the ground, preventing them to get up to speed. You know, it's not entirely a hindrance because they got some good pops up there. With 45 seconds left in this match. Wow. September 2022. Working our way through the elimination round. The winner of this fight has to go on to face War Hard. Funny story, the winner of that fight has to go on to face Jack Moo. <laughs> oh, no. Could be a Drew Davis versus Drew Davis elimination round. He'll either have to fight himself or pick which bot he wants to move forward with and which he wants to forfeit. Or he can just link both bots up to the same transmitter and then do a beautiful choreographed dance in the box for three minutes. How come no one's done that before? Uh, because uh, because nobody has has a sense of adventure like we have. <laughs> All right, so we have it. gone the full three minutes. This one will go to the judges. I think it's pretty clear who's going to end up coming out on top of that considering Jack Rabbit Flex was fully functional that entire fight in spite of a little bit of movement impediment from that wedge. But let's check out this replay. Look at those hits. The first half of the match was really back and forth. I mean, it's so clear why they cringed when they heard they had to yeah. face Epio. Like, this thing just smacks so hard. Look at these hits. Ooh. Oof. Ooh. Yeah, a little bit of a entanglement you know, there. The match happens so fast, and there's so many pops, so many hits, that you miss those moments. Yeah. Where, oh, a belt is entangled in the weapon. Yeah, absolutely. So let's go to our friends, the judges. I do not think this is gonna take you guys long. If you think the Jackrabbit Flex won that fight, can I get a, oh yeah. Oh yeah. 
Oh, yeah. There we, there we go. go. Yeah. That's what I'm looking for. Brad Thank understood you very the much. assignment. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the winner of that match is Jack Rabbit Flex. They will be going on to face War Hard in the next round. Absolutely ridiculous. They are just doing so well in this competition today. Yeah, they're killing it. They're killing it. You love All right, to see so it. let's go talk to our dear friend Ricky, who's got a special Ooh. guest. That's right, Kyle. I am here in the Norwalk Bot Museum with our own Nick Buchholz. Uh, he, of course, is also, uh, in addition to a Norwalk Havoc um, uh, staple, he is a uh, proud member of the Bloodsport team. And we have an amazing announcement from Bloodsport as a team. Can you uh, talk to that a little bit? Uh, yeah, so we are unveiling the all-new Bloodsport for the upcoming BattleBots season um, and, uh, and commemorating adding Bloodsport to the Bot Museum. Well, that is a, a very exciting development. I think we have some footage of this this new blood sport ready to go. Ooh. Ooh, yeah. exciting. And there they are. Of course, this, she is. this is the old blood sport, right? Yeah. So we've got, uh, you know, a basis of comparison. And here Ooh. on screen now, you can see the new blood sport. Whoa. Now, uh, Nick, if you can talk me through this, I can see right away this is a meaner, leaner, uh, angrier robot. Uh, first thing you got to notice is this uh, immense head on the robot. Can you talk a little about that? Yep, so we're moving our whole weapon system, the motors and controllers and everything up above the blade this year. And that just gives us a lot more room to have larger motors and a more powerful, more reliable weapon system. Gotcha. Can you show me on the robot, um, you know, some of the space that you might have saved by moving those motors up top? Sure, yeah, so this entire set, center section inside underneath here is where the weapon motors would sit. And basically, removing those allows the whole chassis to be a few inches smaller in all directions, giving the blade more reach, it makes the chassis lighter, uh, it just optimizes the robot all around. That is uh, some really impressive development there. And I've also heard, uh, I noticed that those front wedgelets, right, on the, uh, on the render, those look a little meaner, a little bigger, a little different. And I've heard that there's some Norwalk inspiration in that. Yeah, so Norwalk's always been a proving ground for us. Um, here we see the old Beetle that became uh, Bloodsport 2. Uh, so this was Paper Cut. And uh, this season we've recruited Brian Boxel uh, of Eruption, and he's been prototyping out the new Wedgelet designs on Eruption. So uh, it's super exciting to have those um, new flexible Wedgelets. Hopefully those stay on much better for us with all the different forces we're putting on them. And uh, we're super excited to see how it works out. Yeah, well, we're super excited, too. That is a really uh, just impressive amount of development. And uh, with that, again, thank you. And we're going to go back to Kyle. Wow. Uh, that is huge news. Absolutely yes. amazing. It is so cool to see how the robot community kind of connects across the entire universe. Uh, the, what happens here at Norwalk absolutely affects what goes on at BattleBots and vice versa. I know uh, we now have something absolutely ridiculous happening in Cage 1. There's about 40 people lining the entirety of Cage 1. Maybe 50? Let's see what this is all about. God. Thank you, God. <laughs> oh, you can tell which one of us lives with Chris. <laughs> All right, so can we count? I think it, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's like the entire Honeycracked team. Hey, guys. Hey, Honeycracked. What's up? That's like half of the box is the Honeycrack team, and then the entire rest <laughs> of the box on three sides is surrounded by competitors, most of them holding controllers. All right, so it looks like we're having some technical difficulties before this very important rumble gets started, but let's see what we can see in there. We've got Stabby Minibot. We've got... We've got Bugsby. Kyle, can I, can I give you a confession? Yeah. There is nothing... I love more than a bot with a knife taped to it. <laughs> Nothing. What is this in the middle of the box? Hold on. <laughs> there we go. I don't even know what's coming off the back. Is that pliers? Um, 
I've got questions. Yeah, me too. And then it looks like we've got more Team Honeycrack bots over here. Yep. We've got a... Uh... Next in cage one, what three pound happening? weight class. What is that? Undefeated to put your Round one. The winner is. The winner is. All right. Now look at this. You've got. Uh, if you like knives taped to a bot. I mean, oh, this is like, my sweet spot. Yeah, there's like 40 of them taped to that bot. So a no winner has been declared yet, obviously. Obviously, yeah. Nothing has happened Get yet. Get ready for a robot rumble. Yes. All right. This is what we're here for. This Eight, is worth the price seven, submission. The crowd six, loves it. Everyone five, who's not in this room four, is now running in three, to see what's going on. Two, one. Fight, robots, fight. And that was We've the goal got to explode the batteries. We've got three pound bots. We've got batteries. We've got. <laughs> I have no idea. We've got mini bots with knives. We've got Bugs Bee. We've got, I, I don't understand. we got blue cheese. So many knives. Oh! oh Bugs Bee exploded! Bugs Bee's in pieces! Prom head, I just made it go into pieces. <laughs> what are you doing in there? Why. This is so weird. All right, do we have any knives left in the competition? What happened to all those batteries? I don't know. Prom had, oh, they were high centered on a piece of Bugby's uh, bun. Oh. Okay, I see the knife. It's still in action. Yeah, there's all the knives. Why? Why Whoa. is this happening? Why isn't it happening? The, amen to that. Amen to that. You're right. <laughs> I'm asking the wrong questions. <laughs> A surprising number of bots are still alive. It's really quite disturbing. Yeah. Yeah. We've got some on their heads. That might be uh, the answer as to why the knife bot is still active. And then there's but, uh, just all those juicy, <laughs> like, lipo batteries in the corner over there. Go for the lipos! I don't know what they're doing over there. It kind of feels safer that they're over there, but why? Somewhere out there, Jim Haney is watching this, and he's happy that he's not going to have to deal with the aftermath. Yeah, I don't know. Jim really liked putting on the spacesuit. <laughs> oh, he landed on the lipos over there. Don't spin too fast. That could be a lot of fire. Spin fast! <laughs> spin fast! <laughs> Can they get back over? Let's see. All yeah. right, they self right in. Beautiful move there. Gotta love that. They have no front armor anymore. Bugsby still kind that, of Bugsbying. That is the base of Bugsby. Yes, it is. And it's still going. It's a shell, a zombie version of its former burger self. I mean, they've had a rough day. Yeah. They've really been through a lot. <laughs> I've heard of eating bunless burgers, but. If you don't have the meat either, then really, what do you got? Yeah, they've been disemburgered several times <laughs> throughout the day today. <laughs> <laughs> oh That's goodness. a Norwalk word. Uh, yeah, that word does not come up anywhere else in the entire universe except Norwalk, Connecticut, <laughs> during these events. Uh, and, and only when Bugsby's here. All right, we still got a little movement. Not much. Not much. No knives. Nope. I don't see any knives. Nope. Don't know what's going on. Looks like the knives aren't there. Looks like maybe <sighs> the rumble is starting to unrumble a little bit. Minute and 45 on the clock, but I'm not sure where we're This is get that there. part of the bar fight where everybody realizes they were way too drunk to start the fight. And they and, don't have any teeth left. Yeah, they're just kind of stumbling around, maybe swinging wildly in the air. They're on the ground and they just got one arm still just, swatting. Uh, I'm gonna get him. Ugh. Gonna get him. <laughs> Why are you mad? I don't remember. What is this aluminum foil bot? I don't know. It was probably set up that way to deal with mixtape at some point. They just yeah. never took the foil off. Maybe they're trying to bake a potato inside of there. Ooh. Don't eat anything that comes out of any of these cages. Yeah. And that is the That's end it. of this fight. They seem to think that there's a minute left. All of the batteries disagree. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>
And that yellow minibot is the winner. Clearly. Clearly Victorious. The, clearly the Team Honeycrack yellow minibot. Oh, wait, hold oh. on. Oh. Oh. We're, we're keeping this going. Okay. Five minute rumble, got it. So we're using all the battery life in these bots. For some reason, nobody actually ruptured those lipos. We got 23 seconds left to really make a big mess. <laughs> but nobody's those even lipos. functioning. My question is, why no fluff? Mm. Make the fluff go. Make the fluff. Fluff is the stuff. You got nine seconds, Fluff. Are you even moving? Did you run out of batteries? There we go. Three, two, two one. one. That is the end. Only one bot is still functioning, kind of. And even one they wheel. are buried underneath a uh, burger. <laughs> so the winner of this bot, you are. You are the winner of this rumble, ladies and gentlemen. It was absolutely ridiculous. That is what we are here to see. The loser, the bot cleanup crew. The winner is the friends we made along the way. <laughs> the knives we, uh, we saw along the way. Yeah, the knives we take to all of our bots along the way. All right, so we are getting ready for a 12 pound fight. These are the bots that have qualified for December. We've got Disco, we've got Huge, we've got Kronos, we've got Blackjack. Absolutely ridiculous. That's a hefty looking uh, quad. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we've got Huge versus Kronos coming up. The winner of that fight will have to go on to face Disco. We've got Psycho waiting up in the winner's bracket to see who is going to, uh, who is going to win this entire 12-pound competition. Absolutely stacked 12-pound division in this particular uh, fight. So ridiculous. Next in cage four, Kronos versus Huge. Eight, Huge. seven, six, five, four, three, two. That's exactly right. One. The winner of this fight will go on to face Robots Disco in the elimination fight. final. The winner of that will go oh. on to face Psycho. Oh. Oh, the weapon on Huge, it's not doing the weapon thing. That is maybe the biggest hit against Huge that we have seen today. Yeah, absolutely. What a well-built bot in Kronos. Keep in mind, we saw this bot thrown in a dumpster on fire <laughs> earlier tonight, and it is now out there stopping Huge's weapon for a huge portion of this fight. That's back up to speed. Thank goodness. What a hit from Huge on wow. Kronos. Yeah, that weapon is back up. Not what Kronos wants to see. Not at all. I do like the color symmetry between these two bots right now. I don't know if they planned this, if they coordinated their, their paint scheme. But it looks, looks nice. Yeah. Yeah. Huge trying to get their directions, trying to get their bearings. Kronos doing exactly what they need to do, catching those wheels, spinning Huge out of the out of alignment, pushing them the wrong direction. It's fearless. Coming at that weapon from the side, very smart. And then sometimes head on. <laughs> sometimes you don't have a choice with Huge. Yep. It's not the most predictable machine, even when you're driving it. Now I see a, a screw, a, a something has come out, and ever since, Cronus has not been quite as mobile. Interesting. And uh, you just doing some dancing. Yeah, I was gonna say, <laughs> this is some uh, American breakdancing competition stuff over here from Huge. Whoa, whoa. Huge said mobility, we've got that, don't you worry. This is like when you're in the pool and you try to start like a, a wave pool. Corona's <laughs> <laughs> trying to get some kind of movement. It looks like the uh, the right side of their drive is still functional. The left side is not. They're trying to gyro up off of that. What's going on with Huge? The top plate's coming off there. Their dancing made their uh, their top plate kind of split away from the body. Yeah, that is definitely not a place where Kronos could and hit that's them. that's a battery. That is a battery just dangling <laughs> out of the back of Huge right now. 
Now, if Cronus had the mobility, that would be a very sweet little morsel for them to go after. Yeah, not the best thing in the entire world. No. And their weapon is back with eight seconds left. Oof. This is a weird one. This is a weird one. I mean, this is going to go to the judges. I think it's pretty clear which way it's going to go, but I can't say Huge did a great job. Mm. Both of the competitors seem very happy with the outcome, though. So let's go back to the replay. This is the weapon exchange that made us all go, wow. Huge pops up into the air. They're not able to get that weapon going for quite a while after this. But they were able to get it back up a little bit later. Yep. Boom, nice weapon-to-weapon -weapon exchange that Huge took full advantage of right there. And now Cronus tries to come at the side of Huge's weapon, an excellent strategy. Yeah. Did not work out perfectly for them every time, though. Honestly, Cronus really managed that as well as they could have. They really did, yeah. Super yeah. impressive matchup there. All right, so we are now going to go to the judges with that one. Let's go ahead and start with Brad. Brad, who won that fight? Uh, well, this was actually really close in terms of the judging criteria I have to base this on. Yep. Um, for me, Huge had the aggression. The control was kind of split for me. Um, you know, both seemed to have lost a drive side. Huge had some of that momentary weapon issues and losing, you know, a few parts coming out of him. Ultimately, I gave a slight edge on damage to Cronus because of that. And that sways it in the favor of Cronus for me. Well, wow. yeah, all right. So we've got one for Cronus. Let's go up to you, Alon. What do you think? Who won that fight? Alon, you are on the mutes. Yes, um, okay. For me, uh, huge got aggression by one, um, based on this criteria we've got here. Um, they were slightly more aggressive. They were chasing a little more they're winning more interactions most of the time. Control probably went to Kronos because most of that match, Huge was flopping around. Yeah. And then damage, in my opinion, was tied, so that ends up 9-8 for Kronos. Wow. Whoa. Okay, and Leanne, bring us home on that one. I also had 9-8, wow. but it was in favor of Huge. Uh, just from like how um, they weren't fully disabled at the end, and so they were still hobbling. Uh, but yeah, it was really close, um, and I can be the one that's not <laughs> in agreement. Yeah, split wow. decision still going the way of Cronus. Huge. Oh my goodness, they are eliminated by just two points there. Two points. It doesn't get any wow. closer. Wow, absolutely crazy. Uh, all right, so the winner of that match is Cronus. Uh, they will be going on to face Disco in the elimination final. That is insane. Wow. What a crazy bracket. And then after that elimination final... They got to go face Psycho. <laughs> in the actual final of the entire 12-pound bracket. Ooh. This is such a ridiculous 12-pound division. All right, so we're going to take a quick breather. We'll be back, and we might be different people. Who knows? I'm Jake with Ten Cut Ten, and today we're going to talk about internal geometry considerations. So let's start by talking about what an internal geometry is. So on a part, anything that's inside of the outer shape, it's like holes or slots in our design. And then also anything that's webbed in, like these, are gonna be internal geometries that we're gonna be talking about today. As a general rule, we like to stay 50% of the material thickness for internal geometries. So let's look at a quick example. We have a material thickness of 100,000. Our internal geometry, say a hole, can be no smaller than 50 thousandths of an inch in diameter. So different materials, thicknesses, and manufacturing methods change the size of internal geometry that you can use when designing. So let's look at two examples and compare them. So the two materials that we're gonna compare is a 50-52 aluminum at an eighth inch thick cut on the fiber laser 
And the second is an ABS at a quarter inch thick cut on the CNC router. So if we go to the material guidelines on the website and look at 5052 aluminum, we're gonna see a minimum hole size of 0.044 inches in diameter. While if we look at the ABS on the website, we're gonna see a minimum hole size of an eighth of an inch in diameter. That's a large difference that should be considered. When considering the bridge thickness, if we look at the 5052 aluminum on the website, we're gonna see a minimum bridge thickness of 0.048 inches. But when looking at the ABS at a quarter of an inch thick, we have a minimum bridge thickness of also a quarter of an inch. Additional things to consider when doing internal geometry on your parts is that excessive internal geometry or removing a lot of material can cause the parts to warp and be fragile in post-production, making the parts unusable. Also, excessive internal geometry can cause us not to be able to do a post-process on your part. So even though it qualifies for our initial checks, we won't be able to deburr your parts in the end. All of these max and min values can be found in the design considerations on the material side of our website. Thanks for watching, stay tuned for more. Welcome back to, uh, yeah, even more fights. I am so excited about this. I am uh, joined here in the broadcasting booth by Chris. Hello, Chris. Hey, Luke. How you doing? How was your break, Chris? Uh, delicious. I had some lasagna. Yeah, absolutely. All right, let's take a look here at these pits that are very quickly emptying out. We are reaching the end of the bracket in the 12 pounds and in the 30 pounds competitions. And, um, Let's take a look here at our live audience, the audience that is sticking here past 9 p.m. here in Norwalk, Connecticut. Give yourselves a round of applause. These are the diehard fans. You gotta love that. And they're sticking around for something really great too, Luke. Yes, our very next fight here is going to be the grand championship for the 30 pound weight class. Someone's getting a dumpster. Someone's going to be getting a dumpster here. All right, so let me set this up. Uh, we have two BattleBots builders here. We have Copperhead team member Chad New running Yahoo. Mm -hmm. He has had an amazing day. He's gone undefeated. So and he unscathed. Is the winner. Yeah, Yahoo's looking great. It looks like it's fresh out of the box. And facing off against Mammoth team member Brandon Bennett Young and Phenomenon. Phenomenon. Now, if Phenomenon is able Phenomenon. to defeat Yahoo, then we're going to go into a sudden death rematch. If Yahoo beats Phenomenon here, that is it. We're going to uh, crown a golden dumpster winner. Either way, these two builders are going home with either first or second place here today in the 30 pounds. One of them's gonna be going home with $1,000 in a dumpster. The other's gonna be going home with $400. All right, here Next we go. We're gonna jump straight into that fight right Phenomenon now. Phenomenon versus Yahoo. Oh, I'm excited, Luke. I am so amped for this eight phenomenon seven, here in blue yahoo six, here in pink five four the grand three, final here two, for 30 pounds one, a thousand dollars and a dumpster on the line all right chad new here crossing the box with his drum spinner facing off against the uh vert here of phenomenon which has gotten under yahoo finding the low ground getting under yahoo Brandon Bennett Young says, I want to have two fights here tonight, and I would love to take home a golden dumpster. Chad, though, he's Ooh. a veteran of this sport. He's been building oh. combat robots since he was a teenager. And look at that. Oh, no. Wow, there was like a little stutter there from Phenomenon. And now they're facing off weapon to weapon. Both of these weapons are looking great. And once oh, again, Yahoo landing a big hit. Phenomenon right now. Look. And look at that! The battle wow. is out! That is it! We have just crowned a winner of the 30 pounds bracket here. Chad, New, and Yahoo! Wow! Chad here, he looks stunned. Chad, you're going home with a golden dumpster and $1,000 cash. Brandon coming over here to congratulate. Brandon finishing here second, winning $400. And no dumpsters at all, Chris. None? You get nothing. You just get a check from Austin <laughs> McCord. <laughs> all right, let's take a quick look here at this replay. Incredible. Yahoo stayed planted to the floor, getting under Phenomenon, and uh, in this 
absolutely crucial kill shot, pulling out the battery from Phenomenon, forcing Brandon to tap out. So uh, with this win, Chad New went absolutely undefeated in the 30s today. Incredible performance from Yahoo. Chris, awesome. I think I think that uh, that you're supposed to say it in a different way. N Yahoo, Yahoo, ooh, ooh, ooh. right. For those for those <laughs> '90s kids out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For the elder millennials like Chad and I, you know. <laughs> yeah. What an exciting match to round out the '30s Amazing. for the day. Amazing. Awesome. An awesome absolutely job. decisive win. I love that in the finals. It was a dicey first 15 seconds. You know, they both uh, it looked like got one really great shot in on each other, but yep. then Yahoo was able to just kind of keep pinning down Phenomenon and slowly grinding away at that armor. Yeah, absolutely awesome. here. Incredible. We'll probably catch up with Chad here in a minute. Yeah. All right. Now, uh, Chris, you're a good friends with Chad. You know that he is a uh, giant pumpkin farmer yes. based in Colorado. Yep. Fun fact, uh, Chad runs at one of the largest pet stores in the Colorado, like, in the entire state. Um, he was telling us, because we, we rode in together uh, this morning, he was telling us that uh, you can purchase, this is true, you can purchase, like, a thousand houseflies for, like, six bucks. Think about the prank applications alone. If you if you really don't like somebody, and you'd like to, you know, ruin their life, ruin <laughs> ruin their life, <laughs> you can buy refrigerated pupa, pupa, and they will they will mail you thousands of pupa for pennies on the dollar, and uh, you can just strategically place these pupae all over your nemesis's house, you know, within a couple days. It is, it is like uh, the coming plague, all right? Like, <laughs> like a biblical plague, Chris, all right? And then, you, I mean, he also does sell amphibians and reptiles, too, so if you want it to rain frogs... <laughs> right. Well, you yeah. need the frogs anyway to eat all the flies. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So, uh, yeah, there's a, a little bit of, uh, I guess, revenge tips from Chad New. Golden dumpster winner, Chad New. All right, giant pumpkin farmer, Chad New. Giant pumpkin farmer <laughs> slash fly wrangler. professional revenge artist, yes. Chad New. This is legitimately what we were talking about at like 8 o'clock in the morning when we were driving in. And this whole, that whole story <laughs> fits right into Weird O'Clock, which we're, uh, we're very quickly approaching. Weird O'Clock starts at what, midnight? Is that right, Chris? When I lose feeling in my face. <laughs> All right. It looks like we are loading out cage four. And uh, Chad, I mean, you've got to feel good. I mean, you've flown in here. You've spent over $1,000 to get here. And you're recouping part of that from, uh, oh my gosh, look, it's Chad. He's already standing there in the, uh, the winner's circle with his golden dumpster. Let's go, Chad. <laughs> All right, and we've got Allie here to talk to Chad. Yahoo, right? So was it based off of the iconic Yahoo? Uh, it definitely is. That's how you say it correctly. It is. It is. And I have a Yahoo email address, which I hear dates me because it's not <laughs> Gmail. Yahoo myself. So you're in good company. Two of us, but let's, we're here to talk about the fight. We're here to talk about the fight. Uh, you just had a flawless day. Is that what you envisioned coming here, going undefeated? Well, pretty much. I mean, it, it, it's like this. You know, I'm we're... Me and Team Copperhead, we're big American winning machines. Nobody can hang with our stuff, and you know everybody else is just gonna fall. Sh just, I'm just kidding. To totally kidding. Uh, they're, they're, everybody is amazing. All the competitors today were great. We just had a uh, you know a, a lucky run. Um, you know preparation and experience where we're on our side this go around. But uh, you know I got lucky. Every every fight is uh, a top tier robot that could take us out. And we just got a few lucky breaks, and uh, you know they might get us next time. All right. Speaking of lucky breaks, did you break anything major? What was your damage like today? Uh, uh, there was a sticker smudge. It, it was pretty pretty major. Wow. Um, a little paint was scuffed, but I think we can rebuild. We'll make it bigger, stronger, faster next time. All right. Final thoughts on your day here. 
Uh, I just want to say hi to my, my children and my wife at home. Hopefully they're in bed. You better get in bed, Maxwell. Um, and thank you to everybody. Thank you to the Norwalk staff, the announcers, Austin, just, just everybody for putting on this great show. And, uh, you know, we'll be back in December. All right. I was going to ask you, we're going to see you back here, but we want you to give that one final moment with the golden dumpster. Um, you know, you are used to growing major pumpkins, so I think you can lift that above your head one more time. You might have the strength. Let's go, Chad. Yeah. Round of applause. <laughs> Yahoo! All right. Now, uh, Chris, when you close your eyes, tell me that uh, Chad doesn't sound exactly like, like Seth, Seth Rogen, Rogen right? Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, I see it and I hear it. Good for him. I'm so proud of him. All right. Whew, I got to come down okay. from that adrenaline rush. All right, uh, here's what's happening. As we near 10 o'clock, we are going to be ending the stream because YouTube cuts us off after 12 hours. We're going to be restarting the stream. So stay here on the Norwalk Havoc channel, and uh, we're going to be bringing the finals, uh, the final fights of the three pounders and the 12 pounders. We will see you on that second stream very soon.